Oop, camera's not on. Can't have that. Hide our bone a little bit there. And hello and welcome, everyone. Uh oh, can't have that. We don't like the echo. Hide our bone. We hate hearing ourselves. Yeah, there we go. Fantastic. So. We are going to get into game. We are going to be playing, but uh, news just dropped uh, with uh, Spheres of Influence uh, drop date and free trains. And I know everyone's favorite thing. I know people are kind of excited about Spheres of Influence, but really what everyone's here for is the free train content. And not only that, now we get to RP as an octopus, which is truly everyone's cursed RP dream. So um, we are going to have free trains. Choo choo. <laughs> We're gonna check if the construction queue bug is fixed. Okay. Free trades. It do be like that. In this bonus pack, a free download for all Victoria 3 owners, players will see uh, new models of rare classic engines from the Dawn of Rail transport to the years of the Iron Horse. Uh, I forget, I don't know which developer, but um, there's been a dev that's either been hosting on Reddit or somewhere else, like all these train designs, so this is uh, what appears to be coming from that. Five experimental trains, we have the planet, and by the way, none of this means anything to me. Uh, John Bull, Saxonia, Terror... Cherepanov, uh, Le Continent, Je suis un chat, uh, five engines from the mid century, GNR Sterling, uh, Jupiter, uh, Zuban, class 23, or uh, I don't know how to say 23. I know Zwei and Drei, but not 23. Uh, class G, uh, 120 uh, Oost, uh, or we just pronounce as few things as possible, 120 U. Something like that. And we have Train Package Deep Dive here with our rain resident train expert, Mike. Uh, when Norway? Norway's gonna be a bit. Huh. Nor Norway's got a- My name's Mike. Whoa, this is a big dive. All right, we're gonna actually take a vote on the YouTube if we wanna watch all of this. Do we wanna watch the train dive? I wanted to keep the, I wanted to keep the vote going for what country we're playing whether it's Spain, Portugal, or the bongos. The bongos, by the way, is a non-answer answer. If you vote bongos, it doesn't actually affect anything, but that's the joke answer. That's the I wanted to participate answer. Where is bongos? I'm voting for bongos. Bongos is a non-answer. For those of you who are unfamiliar with my YouTube polls, I often feature something that allows you to see the result of the poll that's not going to affect the poll in case you want to just, or if you just want to click a button. Usually the option is something like, I chose this option because I don't know how to read. Peggy but 12. Let's see this. Well, you did it. We did it, guys. You united them into one powerful Octopus group. RP. Tentacles, it's for me. One battle. Woo! One ideology. Your good friends came gladly. Look at us, ink it up the page. And though some required a slightly firmer grip, not a single bullet has been fired. Just uh, one. <laughs> Big hype. <laughs> also, what a banger, like, this is something that people never talk about, but I do love the art of this, the spheres of influence art, like, with all the people in here, the people signing contracts, all the foreign dignitaries, I think that that looks cool as well. But that's just gonna be, that's gonna be it there. Um, let's see, we, let's, let's swap to the train, well, no, we're gonna keep the vote up for, I wish I could do two polls at once, because I want to pull, keep pulling whether... I guess Spain's really far ahead of Portugal, so we're going to be playing Spain. And uh, we are going to do another poll for if we want to do... Do we want to do deep uh, train dive? And this is on the YouTubes. If you are on uh, the Twitch, 
uh, all two of you, or all four of you, hot, um, then the, the pull is on the Twitch. But uh, we're going to continue on here. Releasing on the 6th of May, so it's on May 6th, uh, which is way... So I thought late May was going to be the very earliest that we might see this. So, um, you know, very exciting that it's going to be early May. Spheres of Influence is now available to pre-order... Uh, releasing on May 6th. It's now available to pre-order if you're looking for the best deal, or if you're looking for the best deal possible, make videos and then they'll give it to you for free earlier. Yeah. Okay, check out our expansion pass, including Spheres of Influence. Alongside this, we have more information about the expansion below. Uh, put your diplomatic skill to the ultimate test in Spheres of Influence. A new expansion in Victoria 3. Pull other nations into your orbit with your tentacles. I don't know, they misspelled tentacles here, but it's with your tentacles. Um, uh, economic leverage or straightforward bribery. Uh, build a durable international faction of like-minded government. Man, this is going to be so, so cool. Pursuing common goals for uh, pursuing goals for a common good or the glory of your power. We're also probably going to do this, uh, it, go over this again in any sort of like dev diary thing. But May 6th, May 6th is so much earlier. Like... The, the, the turnaround, almost every single major patch, there's been at least three months before the next major patch. So the fact that we are having 1.6 and then, uh, you know, two months later, April, May, having another patch is going to be, uh, I, I, th I think this is uh, much better than what I was anticipating. Um, but, uh, Paradox's interactive grant strategy simulation of the Victorian age offers, uh, I wonder how fast we can read this, a new way to improve your will on the world. A coalition of reactionary powers can form to, uh, blocks, uh, blocks to work against your threat of liberal forces in other nations. Interesting. Use, so it's going to be really interesting if, uh, you're going to want to, like, liberalize or not for Diplo or power block reasons. That'll be so cool if it adds like that layer, that texture or like that layer of texture to the game. Speaking of texture, slimy octopus time. Okay. All right. Um, okay. Uh, use your economic might to co-opt uh, co or coerce other regimes spreading the banner of your ideology wherever your fleet sail. Ah, oh, the Cold War mod's gonna be so sweet with this, with like some of these features, I think. Uh, resist or embrace uh, uh, d uh, domestic, I wanted to say diplomatic, domestic pressure to change your traditional foreign policy or as your interest groups organize in the lobbies that push you into to build new coalitions of power. Spheres of Influence adds many new game actions and systems to illustrate the quick-moving nature of diplomatic relations in the dramatic era, including new content specifically about the great game, the decades-long competition between the British and the Russian empires for preeminence in North uh, India and Central Asia. This was supposed to be a DLC patch in the first place. Yeah, but that was, like, before 1.5, like, upended everything. Good evening, Paul. Uh, fierce competition. Use your prestige uh, to become a great power and use your and create your own power block. Dominate other nations uh, in a diplomatic arrangement to pursue common economic or ideological goals, um, whether it's promoting open trade around the world or spreading values to various other nations. So, um very excited for this and like this notion of like a power block like uh obviously the first thing i think about is hoey where you have like the three major power blocks right um and so it'll be interesting to see power block customization choose uh, the identity and principle of your loose alliance whether it be uh promoting ideological concerns like the common turn or an economic uh economy oriented uh block pushing for cross-border market integration like uh zolverine uh, you can even customize colors and emblems for your block. Everyone's going to be octopuses. Um, the great game. New events, journal entries, uh, and decisions inspired by Russian and British rivalry in Central Asia and a new objective. You can play as any of the uh, powers uh, central to the conflict, including Persia and Afghanistan. That's going to be so hype. Uh, Persia, I think, is really, really fun for new players. And so if this is... It'll be really interesting if they add a whole bunch of stuff for that. That'll that'll probably be like the place to play if you're like new. A newly redrawn map hype highlights uh, the many competing interests uh, in this frontier between uh, empires. Foreign investment, and this is one that I think I'm hoping I'm hoping becoming playing tall will become more of a strategy that you can do, um, and this would definitely make it. Take a look at at the Steam page. There's screenshots. <sighs> I don't have this, uh, the Twitch set up to, I don't have my restream set up in a way to look at that. 
we might do that. If we take a break, we might set it up to look at screenshots. Um, for an investment, invest in that. There's also screenshots, I think, in this thing. Uh, for an investment, invest in the economic uh, development of countries outside your direct influence, uh, making them profit for, uh, making profit from financial success. So now, not annexing people will be viable. Like previously, you just annex stuff because they don't build anything. And if you could build stuff, hype. Nationalization, start a diplomatic play to seize foreign assets in your country. Like this sounds so cool. And this is like, uh, the, I'm also thinking this could be super sweet in a lot of mods too, right? Uh, it, that are like the, I'm thinking of the Cold War mods specifically. Uh, subject to rations, adjust the payments for your vassals, protectorate, and meddle in their internal politics and more. We like that and more. Is this gonna? Yeah, we're gonna. There's gonna be a lot of tentacles jokes. Sorry, everyone. Uh, interest group lobbies. Uh, domestic interest groups uh, will pursue uh, uh, foreign policy objectives. Domestic interest groups will pursue foreign policy objectives. I wonder what that can mean. Promoting amicable relations with some countries and hostility with others. Bro, that'll be so sweet if they, like, damage relations and improve relations with some stuff. Um, tell me on a scale of 69 to 420 how excited should you be for this DLC? Uh, fries. Yeah. No, like, this, D this DLC, like, uh... This DLC, so, th okay. Um... On, we're going to get through this and then we're going to answer that question. Uh, power block uh, monuments. Build majestic monuments to emphasize your power block's influence to the great octopus uh, and dominion over world events. Uh, new historical flavor. New historical cha uh, characters and companies most centered on great game content as well as uh, events. New journal entries, lobby, related clothing, and related content. New clothing and event art. So to answer the question, like, uh, when the game came out, there were, I had three principal complaints. Like, uh, the UI, the warfare, and the diplomacy, right? Uh, and uh, to be fair, this doesn't say anything about the Diplo play, but whatever. We'll get there when we get there, because this is a teaser. Um, the, they fixed the UI for the most part, like, almost entirely. I mean, like, the UPI, UI is, like, uh, still semi-opaque, but that's just because the game mechanics are opaque. Almost everything you do doesn't have uh, a really profound immediate effect but instead has downstream effects right when you build more construction it doesn't instantly give you more more buildings that increase the size of your economy uh instead it allows you to build more buildings at a greater rate which is going to help your economy down the road when you increase literacy you don't actually even increase literacy immediately you increase uh an equilibrium towards which literacy trends and the same is true for like um uh, uh employment ratio so the stuff like this uh, but then also, it's like diplomacy, uh, or sorry, warfare. I think they've made warfare like way better. It still has some problems, whatever. And, but the last thing, diplomacy. This fixes the last thing. So this is like, this is like, the game is like, I think it's going to be huge for the game. I think the game's going to pop off and have like at least 30% more like concurrent players, uh, like in terms of its overall trajectory and right after spheres. I would be surprised if, like, they kick up to, like, 12k or something like this. And so... You can look it up on the website if that's what you prepared the stream for. Oh, that's right. Okay. Uh, we could do that as well. I hope it fixed the laissez-faire bug. Uh, I think it did. What's a deep train dive? Bro, you have to vote and hope. You gotta vote and pray. <laughs> you wanna run the train? We can run the train, but you gotta vote and believe. Uh, I like how most big three YouTubers were here. Seriously, I guess we do have a lot of the we do have a lot of the boyos in chat, right? Uh, Tark is a big three YouTuber. I think Blue Hawk is making videos for the game as well. Um, who else is? OPB's not in here. I don't expect OPB to be in here. He's going to be trying to get Victoria tweaks off the off the ground. But let's see. We can go Steam, uh, Victoria three, Spheres of Influence. And then we'll move it over to this tab if uh, they have a bunch of added pictures. Hey, so we got a bunch of screenshots. Zol for rain. Here, let's uh, let's do it through this. Is the patch released? The patch is released, but we're going over this first because this news is also just like released right now. Navy's in a bad state. Yeah. Oh my god, $30 DLC, have they no shame? Well, okay, so how many... So here's the thing. How many developers do you think are working on the game currently? How much do you think their salaries are? And how much revenue do you think they're getting? Like, um, uh, if you want a game that has, uh, like, is an organic, like, living game that has ongoing development, they have to generate revenue somehow, right? 
Um, and so, and then it's a question of how many guys you want in there. You're not Red Hawk, LeBow? Okay, just kidding. Blue Hawk uh, ousted himself as not a YouTuber. Seems way too much as, for DLC. Okay, let's continue. Uh, we'll get into that, I suppose. Form a power block. Central identity pillar of vassalization. This doesn't look centered, so that's a little triggering. But you do get to make your own emblem. Oh man, there's going to be so many people making inappropriate. Actually, you know what's going to be the emblems? We're going to have like, uh, someone's going to make a mod for like the, what is it, the anime girls like emblems. Uh, wow, that map looks so dope. Look at this. And like, it looks like they have differing degrees of influence in some areas. Like Ortejuj seems to have more influence than Turkmenia and Bukhara. Okay, we raise subject payments, reduce subject payments, exempt from service, appoint colonial government, grant own market, increase autonomy, knowledge sharing. Knowledge sharing? Hype. Uh, and we say, ooh, there's so much, like, I don't know what this stuff off to the left does exactly. I don't even know if you guys can see my mouse movements. I think you can. Um, the pro-British, yeah, you guys can see my mouse movements. Pro-British lobby. Uh, peace, uh... So this is a lobby. So we're going to have a new mechanic for lobbying. This is so hype that we could have uh, this. Like, uh, uh, lobbying is so hype. So we're going to have interest groups that support lobbies that you can appease by create a trade agreement, create an alliance, form a defense pact, improve relations, harming relations or embargoing or launching diplomatic plays against Great Britain's rivals, and you uh, decrease appeasement by breaking diplomacs. Uh, yeah, so, like, I think getting high infamy and just, like, going ham on the world should have bigger consequences, and hopefully stuff like this creates bigger consequences. People harming relations with Great Britain, like, will make these guys mad. That's hype. Uh, Tiggy Castle uh, actions against the subjects of Great Britain. So if you annex a bunch of your subjects, they get mad. They're like, what's this integration? Is this for 1.7? Yes, we're taking a look at it now because the news just dropped this morning. This looks super, super sweet, though. Uh, we have the great game. Progress towards the left will benefit Great Britain, while towards the right, beginning in the 19th century, has emerged. Generic uh, term for conflict between Great Britain and Russia for Central Asia and its surroundings, with both governments regarding a comprehensive military victory over the other as to be impossible. The great game has come to be waged through a series of indirect battles for leveraging... Yeah, you know it's Afghanistan where we're using indirect warfare. Uh, waged through a series of indirect battles for leverage over countries uh, lined between both nations. Uh, victories, Caucasian War, Afghan and Protectorate, inclusive, inclusive, interesting. Uh, advances, Russia and Force Treaties, and will complete if, uh, uh, every, uh, with every, uh, country and in the regions as a member of either the, of the power blocks, or either of these guys to get decreased. And I assume you'll get, like, bonuses or whatever stuff. Corruption, do be, do be doing. Um, we can, uh, allow investors to invest, allow investors to buy mines, uh, iron mines levels from Krakow for 300 gold a level. Oh, this is going to be interesting how exactly that works. So, uh, this is going to allow foreign investment, or will it even allow domestic investment? Where we're... Is this going to change? Is ownership going to be bifurcated where we're going to have some state owned and some capitalist owned? Just joined. What's new? What we're going over right now is going to be um, Spheres of Influence, uh, which is going to be released on May 6th. And then we will be um, uh, going into game uh, playing 1.6, which is the new update today. So two months from today, they will be releasing another thing. They should flip that bar if I understand it correctly. They might flip the bar, I don't know. Well, we'll continue on. I, I assume also the this is like two months from now. So there can't be changes, stuff can get updated. We'll see how things go. Manor house, building in the Midlands. What is this? Property portfolio. The manor house owns 65 subsistence farms and five rye farms. So this must be a capitalist owned like conglomerate of buildings and it's talking about dividends oh bro this is so cool so this is the private investment house dude this is hype 
This is so sweet. This is so sweet. Check bottom of the screenshot. Yeah, we're not gonna... I don't want to dwell too much on that one screenshot. Uh, uh, we're trying to figure out what exactly it is you're telling me to look at. What is this? What are we looking at here? Uh, ruler, politician, and something. Circassian army. Is this clothing? This is probably clothing. That's a dope jacket. But, uh... This is probably clothing here. See, like, what is this? Nobody asked for this. Bro, I would love this. Yeah, this is clothing here. Uh, Victoria 3 is going to be GOAT once all the DLC is out. Yeah, I think Victoria 3 is going to be so much better. And then we have, whoa, building registry. So we have financial districts in each state. And I wonder if these places have zero employment. I hope they have, don't have employment and they're just uh, a way to keep track of everything. But we have the financial district, so this must be all the publicly owned buildings in each of these places. Um, and the reason I don't want them to have employment is because um, if they have employment, it will make the game lag. And they could just have all the employment to be local inside the buildings and have this be the tracker of all this stuff. Uh, the financial districts, rather. And, so, uh, and then you can nationalize stuff so you can seize all this stuff. Uh, but this is looking really, really sick. Yeah, can take a look at the drip again. But I'm I'm super excited for this. And so I guess it's gonna be like different kinds of ownership. Oh man, that's so cool. All right. Uh, so. Uh, without spheres of influence, players will be able to use foreign investment in their subjects. Players with spheres of influence will be able to form mutual pacts with other countries uh, to allow foreign investments there. So, without spheres of influence, only uh, foreign investment in subjects, which is still really, really nice. Um, this is, like, the most important thing because this allows you to actually have subjects without, like... Uh, right now, ha keeping subjects is, like, non-viable because they don't build enough. Uh, players with... Sw and they don't build enough on the resources. Players with spheres of influence will be able to form mutual pacts with other countries and allow foreign investments there. And there is a power block uh, principle to allow foreign investments within the block. Why is Persian blue? Why not? And so, here we have included in Grand Edition and Expansion Pass, we have... Power blocks, decide what kind of values, uh, customize, you know, appearance, foreign investment, invest in the economies of willing countries throughout the world. Uh, the great game, excuse me, uh, between, uh, you know, England and Russia. Interest group lobbies, this I'm so hyped about, uh, because I think that they, I think that they need to do, like, more with some of the, the political systems they have, and this is, like, them doing more. Yeah, we were looking at the Steam page for this, um, and so we were looking at, uh, you know, some of these. <clears throat> uh, new subject interactions. Hold your subjects in check by changing their rulers, adjusting the amount of income they need to pay uh, uh, to you, or even grant them control over their own market. I don't know exactly what strategy, why you would want them to have their own market, unless you were trying to... I mean, you do it because you're trying to manipulate prices. I guess if they're price dumping something um, that you care about, I don't know. Um, enforce nationalization. Seeing this is the means of production. Big dice. Uh, take uh, over the foreign investments of your country if you dare to antagonize other nature. There's Carpathian Knight. I think he makes content for Victoria 3 as well. Right? If anyone wants to check him out, he's in chat. We gotta figure out how to do unified chat. Um, it, it, I wish we would have... Yeah, we need to figure out how to do unified chat on screen between the YouTube and the Twitch. Although it's almost all YouTubes in here right now. Shout out to YouTube. I apologize to the three Twitch viewers. Uh, power block monuments. Build majestic power block monuments with your various effects that influence countries in your sphere of influence and historical flavor. Meet a plethora. Ah, oh, I actually, like, low-key hate the word plethora. It's like... I feel like no one uses it except when they're trying to have, like, a vocabulary that seems more advanced. Plethora. Plethora. It's like you learn it in, uh... Uh, you learn it in, like, high early high school, and it's like, this is the word you use when you want to say a lot, but you want to sound fancy. Um, meet a whole plethora of historical characters involved in the great game, and discover new sets of clothes, companies, and, uh, events relevant to the region. Plethora. 
plus one. We get some uh, Twitch chats in the chat. We do have we do have uh, the loud car in the Twitch chat as well. I don't think we can send it in the 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 twi uh, Twitch for everyone, but we do have a loud car. It's like it's like the image is like there's way too much going on to actually be able to tell if it's a loud car, but we do have the loud car emote. Um, how do I feel about Surfate? I don't have an opinion on Surfate. Plethora sounds like a body part. Tark out here, first one to use the loud car emote. You can't even tell what's going on. <laughs> we will we will look to improve the emotes and also get more emotes. But that is um, kind of the announcement that we got. And let's see what the vote was. Looks like people want to see the deep train dive. So we will look at, oop, not that train dive. Not the tentacles. Not the tentacles. Although I know some of you would have voted for the tentacles, but instead we'll see the deep train dive. We're gonna dive. talk about trains. The first train that we really need to talk about with this whole pack is the planet locomotive, which you're gonna find in Great Britain. The planet is not the first locomotive used in Britain, but it's one of the first that was used in a Oh, thank you, industrial, Dr. Dapper, for the sub. Quite mass, mass produced way. Thank you, Butcher Gear, for the standard sub. Design, which was actually used and reused. The most famous of the early British locomotives is probably the Rocket, but the Rocket was a one off. It wasn't replicated again and again. The Planet was. The Planet was a successful design, it was used by multiple railroads. You're going to see it on multiple railroads in Vicky 3. And we're going to see that design appear again and again in other countries because it was so successful. One of the best places to see that planet design get reused is, in fact, the United States. In the United States, we start off with a locomotive called the John Bull. The John Bull started life as a planet locomotive. It was exported from Britain to the United States in the 1830s. The planet design was very successful in the UK, and so it was one of the first things exported. A planet locomotive was exported to the US in 1834, called the John Bull. It was called that because John Bull is the personification of Britain and all that. Uh, and when they used that the John like Bull, Bull in the United States, they discovered it wasn't really fit for conditions in America. American rails were cheaper, they were windier, they didn't have the same support that they did in Britain. So after one season of use, they start to make some small tweaks to the John Bull. Just, you know, maybe a larger light in the front, cover the driver because the weather was worse than the United States. And over time, the John Bull became this sort of ship of Theseus. It was retired in the 1870s. This guy strikes me as like a 100% train expert, like uh, where he's coming from, not like um, video making expert. So he probably knows so much about trains and is like trying to like, which one should I talk about? He's probably reading from a script too though. After 40 some odd years of use, and by the time it was retired, it looked like an entirely different creature. It had a different smokestack, it had extra wheel slap to the front, it had a pilot or a cow catcher attached Octopus to the front train as well. Land. The tender had turned into this enormous cab. It was almost unrecognizable, and yet at its core it was still the same locomotive, just with every part replaced over time. In the 1890s, the old retired John Bull was pulled back out, dusted off, and uh, refurbished a bit for the 1893 World's Fair. They wanted to show off the history of American locomotion and railroading. And when they did this, they tried to undo <laughs> some of the changes that had been done to the John Bull over time, but they didn't have the original records anymore. So what they ended up with was this weird hybrid of the original <laughs> design plus some of the later modifications. This is what we're using in Vicky 3 because I think it shows a good transitionary stage in early American engineering and railroading. It's uh, about... Bro, that thing looks so dope. We, we're we gonna have this model in game. When is it in about trains? Is starting tra hype train appropriate? Oh my this god. This weird ramshackle, That's we don't know what true. we're doing. We're getting parts from everywhere. Let's throw things together and see what works. That's the core of early American railroading. And I think the John Bull exemplifies it perfectly. 
on the other side, Benji, we have the Cherokhanov locomotive for the uh, gifted used sound in Russia and starting and the hype train during the train. Also dates from the 1830s, <laughs> and it's one of the first locomotives <laughs> used in Russian railroad. Makes sense. It's very similar to the Planet design. It doesn't vary that much, and it wasn't as successful as the Planet because that the Cherokhanov like locomotive was a wood burning locomotive, unlike the coal burning locomotives of Britain, and. Frankly, it just didn't have the power at the time to cover the. That frankly just has so much emotion in it, like regarding trains. Let's go back. Unlike the coal burning locomotives of Britain. And frankly, it just didn't have. Frankly, just like so the much power disappointment. At the time to cover the distances <laughs> required to connect Russian cities together. It was an interesting experiment. The locomotive itself was sound, but railroading conditions at the time were very challenging for Russia. Oof. And investment in the early years wasn't that hot. The Cherepanov locomotive still exemplifies what early Russian railroading was like. Experimental, trying out different designs from different places, struggling to find the right niche to fit in uh, under the economic and technological conditions that Russia was facing at the time. Then you have the Saxonia, used uh, by German states in Victoria III, but obviously not from all of Germany. This is actually his the first Saxonia day. <laughs> is an embellishment upon the planet type. It starts to show some unique features of early German designs. Uh, Germany began by importing tons of British Look, designs. Look, if a guy chatted me got much better this much about things. railroads, they start to add their own little I'd flags. let him come inside. Uh, the Adler locomotive is one For of teeth, the first obviously. German inside, locomotives my used, but the Saxonia I believe, is more emblematic of early German railroad. <laughs> you can see these nice little flares. The the smokestack has this wonderful little ironwork at the top. The wheels look much more like carriage <laughs> wheels. They got this wonderful little flower design going on. They're starting to experiment with their own own wheel configurations. The the Adler is basically a copy of a British locomotive, but the Saxonia is actually trying out something new and useful specifically for German railroads. Then we have our French locomotive, the Continent. It's a generation after the other locomotives, but still emblematic of early French railroading. Le Continent is a uh, Crampton locomotive. Bro, that looks like... That looks so much more hype than the other ones. It's basically a dragster for railroads. It's got two unpowered wheels in the front and one huge big wheel in the back. So that every time the wheel just rotates once, it goes super far because it's just one big wheel. It doesn't have a lot of grip, but it goes very fast. And French rail doesn't have a lot of grip, but goes very fast. Roads want it there nice. because their main priority was connecting stuff to Paris. Around Paris, it's flat. You don't have to worry about having a ton of grip to go up and down hills. Your Crampton locomotives, like Le Continent, that you again will see in Vicky Three, are perfect for early French railroads. <laughs> Not a lot of power, fast, able to go where you need to go. In this case, Paris. That's the only place that's important. By the middle of the Victorian era, more railroads and more countries were starting to design. experiment with more radical designs. The novelty of the large wheel of the Crampton was built upon later on by British engineers. And you can find a perfect example of this big wheel, go fast design with the <laughs> Stirling locomotive. Big wheel, which will go appear fast. In Britain in the <laughs> mid Victorian era in Vicky Three. The Stirling, again, yeah. has one humongous wheel which helps it go very fast doesn't help it with pull large heavy that humongous has as much emotion as like the disappointed and one again has one disappointment for humongous like. wheel which helps it go very fast so doesn't hyped. help it with pull large heavy loads but britain doesn't really need that britain is still ultimately an island that doesn't cover very vast distances relatively speaking you need something that goes fast but you don't need it to go that far Something like the this guy does love his job. It's good for passenger service, eh, okay with freight service, but it's good for that. On the other end of the scale, when it comes to working conditions, you have the Jupiter. This is the United States' mid era locomotive of choice. It is a 440, the American locomotive. It is the perfect design for the conditions of mid century America. It's robust, it can take a beating. It's a oh, simple that design looks hot. that's just as flexible with uh, freight as it that. is with passenger service. And it looks pretty too. I mean, come on, look at that. Look at the fancy gilding. Look at the paintwork. 
Ah, it's got this big old smokestack on top. It's a great locomotive. Everybody was using this design from like the 1840s up until 1880s even. And then it gradually look, starts look, to filter Look, it even out. says choo-choo at the side. It even says choo-choo on the side. But you can still see these 440s on like smaller short lines up until the end of uh, the steam era, really. For an even more long-lived So why are we watching uh, this guy instead of gameplay? We have the Sudvani Class 23 representing the German The patch is available. Now, Germany covers a lot this of ground with a lot Steam of different requirements for <laughs> geography, for traffic and stuff. It's hard to find a perfectly emblematic uh, locomotive for all cases everywhere. But this Austrian Railways Sudbahn See, this Class 23, nice. I think is pretty good. It when ended up being good, dispersed okay. amongst other countries after World War One, but it was originally built in the 1860s, and the last instances of the class being retired happened in 1953. Most were retired in the 1920s, but some of these lasted for 90 years after entering service. The Paradox is giving away train models um, for free. It was a very simple design, very robust, good for uh, medium haul stuff well, with practically everything. Guy, exactly. There's still some surviving um, examples of it in Austria and Germany that you can find at various museums. Then we have the class he's G He's so locomotive. excited. You look at that eyebrow movement. This guy is so hyped about this. He, this is like his moment. He's, he's actually, oop, uh, to my knowledge, he's actually been working on this for so, so long. And this is the point where he gets to show up all this stuff. Various museums. Then we have the class G locomotive in Russia. The class G is much like the Sudban, uh, a six wheeler mm. type of locomotive. Better That's nice. for freight than for passenger service, but very robust design. We like, like that. the United States, I Russian railroading I'm... required hauling things over vast distances with little infrastructure support. So their locomotives <laughs> ended up having very similar looks to the American ones. They're simple to, to fix fairly versatile with whatever fuel they can deal with. They're just meant to run things over a long distance and not have to worry too much about like what you have to build to support them. This is in contrast to our final locomotive, French locomotive that required a lot of work, broke down, he's and still so broke high. down once quite famously. Even while he's ripping on this thing. French viewers, but I'm gonna butcher the name just a little bit, but apologize it's the class the 170 viewers. West. This Most is the famous Jesquil for shop. its uh, central role in the Montparnasse crash, where it actually had its brakes fail, blasted right through a terminus, crashed through the outer wall of the station, <laughs> and then tumbled down a floor into the street below. It's not the most reliable of locomotives, but it's, it's the most emblematic reliable. of French <laughs> engineering and French design. Emblematic of French engineering. <laughs> These sorts of locomotives, although they had some engineering faults, remained in service up through World War One. Some These are the sorts of things that you would still see hauling troops up to the nice. front uh, in Flanders. Might even still be chugging along, wheezing along, really, in the 1920s. <laughs> we picked out 10 locomotive designs that cover the whole span of steam railroading wheezing, really? history. They'll be with you from the very beginning of the game through to the end. And yes, we provide we so much more flavor to every corner <laughs> of the game. How do we pin that? <laughs> I enjoyed picking them out, and I hope you enjoy them just as much. We're going to pin oh. Jess, Sweet, and Shushu. Bye-bye now, he says. So, <laughs> that is kind of a big part of our update. Someone had a comment that was, it's funny how, uh, uh, Metro's comments, it's funny how I'm autistic as fuck, claim I am not uh, a train autistic, and then uh, and on uh, stream have said, there are two kinds of people in this world, people who love railroads and fucking liars. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> All right, so we're going to be getting into game in a second here, playing as friends, but before we do... Before we do, oh no, oh no, where'd the game go? There it is. It's not reliable, but it's fast. <laughs> it's what I tell my girlfriend. Okay, um, so before we get in the game, there's something we must do. There's something we must do, everyone. We must go into the settings. New game, game rules. Hey, you know what's back? You know what's back? Autonomous investment pool. <laughs> We're going to see, supposedly the bug is no longer appearing, um, and so we're going to see how that goes. I'd like to hear the guy's opinion on the fact that uh, railways are uh, deficiary is, are not too good in Victoria Street. Yeah, the truth does hurt. Leave a comment and like the video. 
Oh, that's right. We're gonna do that. So we have to go to watch it on YouTube. Okay, I guess you guys will want to know what my comment is, huh? So. Let's see this. Oh, you guys can see I've been watching Risk a little bit. Let's hide my stuff. Je suis un choo choo. Perfect. Perfection. <laughs> Je suis un choo choo. <laughs> It's like the perfect comment ever. Je suis un chouchou. We need the trades uh, from the other areas this, so this guy comes back. I think we're gonna get him. Since we're on train grind, build the Trans Siberian Railroad. As Spain, <laughs> this is the goal of the run, build the Trans-Siberian Railroad. <laughs> Jesus. All right, so we are in here <laughs> with 1.6. Look, we have markets. Okay, so first of all, look at this. We're cooking with freaking heat now. We can see the landowners, uh, if they're happy, how much clout they have. The information is so much more pregnant with information. Um, I can't wait until the tentacles patch. Now... I mean the octopus patch. I mean spheres of influence. Uh, we will be taking a look at this, right? Because don't we get... We get something new. We get this. Woo-hee! Look at this. Could be understood in French as I am a darling. That makes it even better. That's like... That makes it even funnier. That's so perfect. Okay, so we can sort by... Hey, let's look for all the capitalists. All the people who matter. Um, and we see where they are working. We see their culture. Political strength? Oh, baby. We can look at their political strength, too. We can sort by engineers. We can look in individual states. Can we look at people who are unemployed specifically? No, it doesn't look like it. We can look at peasants. If we look at all, and we sort by, oh, okay. It'll be academics first. We can see all this stuff. We can see which interest group they're supporting. This is gonna make it so much easier to parse through information. I don't know exactly what we use this for yet, right? Because, oh, can we not look at unemployed specifically? Okay, fair enough. Incorporation, lives in an incorporated state, bro. Lives in an unincorporated state. Bro. Okay, okay, okay. I see you. Loyalty. Has loyalists. Uh oh. The truth hurts in Spain. Has radicals. Okay, I guess that's fine. Culture. We can see what the culture is. So this will this might be useful for seeing how many discriminated pops are becoming like ownership class. Um, and so, you know, this will be really high. <laughs> Everyone's hyped for the octopus patch. <laughs> discrimination accepted culture discriminated culture this is this will make it easier to tell if there's so one thing that i talked to dev and they said that um it's discriminatory migration is possible and it's always been possible but functionally it never happens right uh which just means the numbers are such that it never happens people would rather starve in china than move to america and so the question is, is we're going to be trying to keep an eye out for this stuff. So the census data thing is going to be useful for that because, you know, we will be able to kind of take a look at some stuff, maybe. All right, discrimination, discrimination, religious, uh, employment, only employed, only unemployed. Ah, okay, okay. We can take a look at this and sort by only unemployed and see where all of the unemployed pops are. Construction bug is allegedly fixed. But not intentionally. It was accidentally fixed, which is why it wasn't. It didn't make it to the patch notes. Is satisfied standard of living. 
Above expected standard of living. Oh, we can look at below expected standard of living specifically. That's an interesting one as well. We see pop growth uh, is growing or is shrinking. So we can see that is interesting. So it's mainly going to be like unemployed people or people who are making no money, this type of thing. And then we can see size is at least a thousand individuals. I guess I think we want it on all. And then we can click reset, which is nice considering like all the things you can click. Okay, so this is pretty sweet. I, I Again, I'm not sure exactly what we use this for, but um, uh, we will we will do this. Vote on what? Oh, okay, we gotta change the title of the YouTube stream. Wow, we have 350 YouTube viewers. Shout out to you guys. It's gonna make it hard to keep up with everyone, but we are gonna be starting out here as Spain, or as everyone else likes to call it, Spain. Um, so this will be a big thing. Okay, so Spain in particular is actually, on a recent video, one I recommended as a new country for beginners, being really, really nice. Um, it, notably, you have pretty good mappy, uh, pretty good buildings, and we are going to be trying to... Oh, the, here's the... I think... Oh, this is better, too. So we have conciliatory relations, this type. So it's... Uh, overall, this is uh, quite a bit nicer in terms of, like, at a glance, seeing what they're about and how they, uh, you know, their attitude towards you. But if we went for this... Now, this, I think, is the biggest and most substantive change, um, is this thing right here, which is that uh, you can now see how likely people are to join against you. Um, now, I think that they have a preference for France, and we can see why they have preference um, for these countries uh, for various things, which is going to have to do with, you know, their attitudes, um, their sympathy, their uh, ideological difference, all of this, like, and so this makes the play so much more transparent, and the player being opaque is, like, one of the biggest reasons why, um, like, uh, the game is, like, really, can be really frustrating, and the fact that now we can see, okay, why things are the way they are, and how things are gonna happen, good day, I. Thompson, the, this is, like, for me, this is the biggest change, and, like, specifically for new players, right, if you're a new player and you want to start, before it used to be you'd start a war, a great power would thumb your pie, you would have no idea why you'd, <laughs> Uh, you'd start a different war, another great power would thumb your pie, and then, like, now you have this. We have unlocked Iron Man runs. Exactly. Um, we're not going to do Iron Man for this stream. I thought about it, but the reason we're not going to be doing it is because in case we encounter some bugs, we want to be able to reload. But um, this is, like, this is what you needed to play Iron Man. Now, the thing that I think is really spooky about playing Iron Man is you can accidentally switch sides and break your entire run. Um, so if you, uh, the declare neutrality button is exactly located where the switch sides button is, <laughs> uh, in a diplo play. So if you switch sides to a revolution in one of your subjects' countries, <laughs> uh, you just break your run because you will lose. <laughs> and so that's a little spooky, but look at this. Like, we can see, um, that their preference for France, they are antagonistic towards France, so they really hate France's guts. But they don't like us very much, so they're probably not going to join us either. They probably just stay out of it, right? But here, Austria has a preference for France, and they don't like us, because they're wary towards us, and differences in government, and sympathetic, so they would, prediction, probably join France here. And so we can, we will be able to see, uh, like, what's going on, or understand why people are joining and not uh, joining, and this type of stuff. You want to see it tested to see if those numbers hold water? Yeah, I, I imagine there's some going to be some, like, die roll, and it's going to, like, uh, there's some sort of roll where it's, like, plus or minus 20 or something like this. I, before, uh, I love you before you got three words, and now you got a spreadsheet, basically. Um, and so, and before uh, suddenly a major power joins, you either reload or take the bad thing when uh, stepping out of diplomacy. Yeah, so now you can take a, like, a way more informed risk. Like, if the number is close... And you're like, well, I want to risk it anyways. You understand you're, like, risking it, right? And now it's like, uh, yeah. Great Britain be like, do you mean our play? <laughs> Basically. Check the market tab. All right, we'll take a look at the market tab. All right, what are we looking at here? Members? Is this what we're looking at? This is kind of sweet, where we see where all the trade centers are. What are you talking about, Joey, in terms of checking the market tab? Or here? Economy outliner. Mm 
unrecognized countries. Bro, countries are sorted by unrecognized, uh, <laughs> real countries? <laughs> unrecognized countries. Real countries? <laughs> unrecognized countries. In the ledger. In the ledger. Markets in the ledger. What are we looking for, specifically? The IG leader showing the trade next to it is so nice. They add new graphs in the markets. Holy check, expanding a building. All right. They add new... I guess we'll get to that when maybe stuff starts moving. Look at expanding a building. Oh, I think you mean in here. Okay, so what are we looking for? Someone said expanding a building. Yeah, we will kind of take a look at a lot of this UI stuff at the start here, because this is uh, what we have new. Peasants, job seekers condensed. What's this? Ooh, list item. Ayo. We can look at the condensed or the full information, looking at job seekers, and see a lot more of the information. We can see what PM they're on. Uh, predicted earnings of new level. Infrastructure balance. Construction efficiency. We can take a look at the construction efficiency. And we can sort by the construction efficiency. Unpause the game, it adds new graphs. Okay, we'll, we'll take a look once we get there. Yeah, this is exciting. Just gotta kinda quickly peruse and see if there's anything too crazy looking. I forget, like, all the things that they said they were gonna do. Liberate country- Oh, diplomatic demands. Look at this. They added a bunch of stuff. Um, you- Or they added, like, different icons, right? This didn't used to be liberate. And you didn't used to be able to just, like, liberate from this, uh, UI. Make protectorates in there. Regional actions. Generally, we're looking at a, probably a ton of UI changes. But this outline is so much nicer. Um, you know, and it's, like, even telling us, like what I think is expensive in here. And so this is going to be big hype. I think we're going to try and do iron frame right away. Um, what do we start with? Standard start. We're just going to go that first. Into Atmo. Like, 80% of starts you do this. Can discriminate pops migrate? So allegedly the game mechanics allow them to, but the values are such that like it just never happens basically. Is the construction bug fixed? We will be seeing in just a moment here. So I guess we're gonna kind of get started. Um, we're probably gonna wanna build up a Navara a little bit. Um, I guess we could take a look at, hmm. Let's build a couple construction sectors in Navara. We're gonna put this on auto expand. Um, and this on auto expand. Oop, not subsidize that. I know Joey's in chat, but we're not going to subsidize a bunch of things. Still. Okay. I'm going to fix up all of our PMs, as you kind of normally do. I don't think we turn on the mines just yet on the things, but we definitely do the fishing wharves. Never forget the fishing wharves. And then we will just look to trade for that. Oh, did they improve this? Usually it starts off on bakeries for most countries and you have to manually swap to that. So if that's an improvement, that's super nice. Um, we're gonna unpause, let the game think. Oh, the, you're gonna see price trajectory right here. Is this what you're talking about? This must be what Joey's talking about. We're gonna see price trajectory in terms of here. Like in this little little UI uh, space here. We're going to import from the Qing market and the British market. Uh, let's also take a look at diplomacy. Look at our strategic interests. I think we want to do this uh, so we can maybe piggyback the UK's war. So something I realized is uh, we could sway in for Tomsk, Qing Tomsk, and then trade Tomsk to Russia for Alaska. This feels super, super sweet. 30 bucks for spheres of influence. So, hmm. 
I'm of the opinion that I don't have a problem with the price, but I think I'm also going to be getting the game uh, in for free anyways. Actually, I think I already paid for it. But, uh, let's just start a poll. Is 30 too much? And then... We're going to start it on the... There we go. We'll see what the people of the YouTube think. Mini shards. Yeah. Hey, uh, Poppins, how's it going? Your infamy is in the top left corner. Our infamy is in the top left corner? But look at this. Look at this. At a glance, we can now see we're like, we're, we have a significant problem with these two things. Right? Which is super hype. Also, we, we, okay, if you have any children, if you have any children, please have them leave the room. Because we're gonna we're gonna show something that they they shouldn't be taking a look at, uh, but we also have we're maybe going to update some of this today. Um, yeah, don't want children seeing the spreadsheet. We're maybe gonna update some of this today because they nerfed a lot of stuff. Notably, one of the things they nerfed was they really significantly nerfed uh, hardwood. I think they just cut the outputs in half. Uh, it used to be 2040 uh, at a cost of 30 and 50 uh, softwood input, and so I guess we'll check and see what exactly it is now. Um, but I do think they changed that up. Oop. That's not the that's not the droid I was looking for. But let's take a look at where can we find some. Okay, so here uh, we have. Okay, so instead of costing 30, it now costs. Uh, it now costs 25. And instead of costing 50, it now costs 40. Um, and so it's you're still going to want to go focused hardwood, but I think this is a nerf still um, to the efficiency, but that's okay, because one, the, one of the problems was having a huge glut of uh, uh, <laughs> replay the trade guy. We might replay the trade guy. You know what we might do is if we have to use the bathroom, we, we might replay the train guy. I'm gonna, too late, the children saw the census die at. Oh my god. I'm... You're right, I'm sorry. I would like to apologize to everyone who has children watching for showing up the census data. Um, yeah. Yep, yep. Okay, so, uh, focused hardwood production, we probably turn this on here. Um, I mean, I guess we can take a look where we have logging camps. Um, okay, I think in general you still want to be, like, on focused if you're going to be building it. So let's just do this. So that should be that should get rid of some of that, um, and then we want to number the beast. Uh, we want to spend some of our authority, uh, and also start passing some laws, maybe right. Uh, we do start out with the church in, or is these guys in power. Um, I, in theory, you want to re-roll pretty aggressively, but it looks like we have a lot of stuff locked in, anyways. But we could re-roll this agitator. We have an authoritarian guy. We have an army. This guy is a radical. Oh, that's interesting. We start out with a radical. This guy's armed forces. This guy's abolitionist. And then... Okay, so we don't have any landowners. So we could look to try and exile uh, in order to roll particular landowners. Um, to force an ideology. Because landowners, okay, is by far the most powerful. Interest group. Uh, this guy's authoritarian. He is a slavery. So I guess we start with... Yeah, we do start with slavery here. Uh, overall, we have relatively good laws. Um, obviously, we don't like the slavery, but relatively good laws. Um, I don't think we have any unique interest groups. Uh, we do have the Catholic Church, so we do have the pop growth uh, as part of our thing. Uh, but yeah, we don't have anything unique. Uh, $30 is the cost for decent pizza this day. Seems fair to me. Yeah, I mean, like, you also have just generic uh, inflation. Uh, and it's like, okay, are they supposed to... I, it, it's moving from 20 to 30. That's my understanding, right? I guess we could maybe go dedicated, please. And so, actually, we could maybe try and spike a jingoist landowner. But it's like... Uh, traditionalist, no thanks. We also don't have unlimited bureaucracy. Authoritarian. 
And maybe we don't want to reroll too, too aggressively on some of these. On these, we need a guy anyways. We don't want the slaver. We don't want the traditionalist, although he's not very popular. It's like, how much should a game cost? I don't know. The, given the amount of time of Victoria 3 I've played, like, I've played over 2,000 hours. Like, I'm really I'm getting a pretty good ROI. Uh, <laughs> why you show the spreadsheet? <laughs> Little brother just pooped his pants. I apologize. My bad. Is $30 too much? We see currently 35% of you guys, or 30-something percent, say yes. 6% uh, say it's cheap. 29% say it's just right. And another 29% don't know how to read, which is... You know, that kind of tracks. Um, but the, the <laughs> I love putting that option on the polls. That, by the way, is an option where you just click it because you want to click a button. Um, but, uh, like, I think that, like, yeah, the if you look at the hours ROI and you, like, think about, like, you know, going out to have fun for a few hours and how much that costs... Like, obviously the ROI is terrible, and, like, the R... I mean, there's so much, like, free-to-play games. What's wild is, like, the game model now, like, where they generate a ton of their revenue is from, like, MTX, and, like, from, like, uh, the... Like, the people who pay a ton and pay, like, a thousand dollars on, like, uh, you know, graphic, like, uh, on skins and stuff. And this is where, like, a lion's share of the money is. And so you have a lot of people involved in those like gaining gaming economies where they play the free to play game but they don't actually like support the game and the game is supported by these people playing like one thousand dollars but like no one's gonna pay one well i guess maybe some people might pay one thousand dollars for a bunch of train skins but like that's not how paradox is like trying to get money and they got to get money for development of the game so close poll percentage french dlc didn't give anything there was so the thing is is they don't want to lock a bunch of the features behind a paywall and so there was a bunch of, we got agitators during 1.3, and we got a bunch of the changes to revol the way revolutions work, and so I would include that in 1.3, which is, like, this is the development they did on the game during that time. Okay, I think we can maybe start going. Gotta improve literacy in chat, basically. But the, the, the French one, like, a lot of the stuff it put in was in the free patch. I think is the best way of looking at it. We're actually just gonna kind of do the big standard, aren't we? <laughs> let's, let's get ready for the usual. The huge. Um, I guess we're gonna improve relations with a couple boyos too. Why are we poor relations at start? That kind of sucks. Uh, eventually we're gonna try and look to cheekily take Portugal, but not at the start here. I think we're going to import iron at game start. I think we produce some of that, so that's fine. We import iron from... The Swedish market's about to go away. We have an adjacency to France. We're really a little bit concerned about France, so... I think we're going to import from France. We're going to swap iron frame buildings. We're going to need to spend a little bit more. Ooh, yikes. This is not the way we want a consumption tax, either. We want to go for services... Luxury clothes. I mean, maybe we do liquor. I think we... Don't, no, we don't start out suppressing or bolstering anyone. I don't think we want to. I think we're just going to look to organically do the things. Um, we do want to get try and do a law pass, though. Probably not going to do property of women. Rights of assembly is, like, just kind of shooting ourselves in the foot a little bit. Oligarchy... Hmm. I mean, we could immediately try and get rid of the religion. Religious stuff. The thing is, is that's not going to benefit us for a while. You know what we're going to do? We're just going to try and get colonization here. And that'll be, like, a kind of comfortable pass. And if we're doing that, you know, we start off with decent laws. Maybe we just, like, um, can spend all of our authority here. And we don't, like, need to worry too much about uh, other things. So let's go to decrees. Road maintenance here. I'm not sure the second best place for us to build. To be honest. Aragon, maybe? So, Aragon, or let's see. Let's actually take a look at who has a lot of pops. Yeah, let's look at peasants. Castile, Navarra. 
Eastern Andalusia, Valencia. So we know Valencia has that. Castile. Castile has two things. Alright. So maybe build up in these two. And then... Porcelain? I know coffee makes more, but I'm anticipating we will add more um, glass before we add more of the other stuff. And then we're going to put that on auto-expand, this on auto-expand, and then I think that'll be in good shape. Is taking, retaking Gibraltar viable early game of Spain? It might be viable, but I don't think it's worth doing. It might be viable, though. Do you ever go after Constantine with the colonization company? Get trains immediately? We need the trains. Uh... Do we ever go after Constantine? Not too often. Constantine is actually a pretty good state. The reason we don't go after it is primarily diplomatic, which is that we would rather not... Um, France will just generate... A, they'll have a very negative attitude towards you if you take Constantine. You can trade it to them, though, but if you're trading it to them, you would probably rather take something that's lower infamy, but... They will trade very aggressively for it. Um, we're going to lose access to the Swedish market, so let's look at productivity, which kind of sucks. Uh, I guess we'll import from the Belgians as well. We might go for Morocco pretty early here. I think traditionally that's been what we've done. I mean, we could even go after them now, and we could see who's going to join against us. So it looks like people will just leave us alone here right because they don't want to really join either side uh unless they're hate joining but everyone who so mascara might join right uh uh and so these three countries hate them more than us but we still might be able to protect her at morocco here i think we're still gonna just like take gaza because this is just like way stronger but what was the change on the corn laws? Haven't played the events uh, for 15 years and no modern conservative. There was no change that kills modern conservatives, so I don't know what's going on there. And people have, so, some people have like reported this. I don't know what causes you to like never roll a modern conservative, but I've never had it happen to me. Just not the French train that had the little accident with the building, a happy accident, if you will. Great Britain responds to the opium ban. Big nice. We're going to talk about the train pack until 1.7 drops. Train pack or riot? Is 1.6 live for everyone? Yes. What's the biggest feature in your opinion? The biggest feature is this. When we started diplomatic play, now we can see who's likely to join and why. This is something that I think should have been... I think this should have been, like, a, such a huge priority. Because I think for newer players, this is the most frustrating thing. Is you would just start a play, a GP would join against you, and you had no idea what was going on or why. Um... And now I think you have a much better understanding of this. Uh, and I think that this improves the game quite a lot. So. Let's take Gaza. So, like, here we can go in and we can see that, look, Portugal might side against us. Um, because, and we can take a look at why. They're antagonistic. Uh, except, I think Portugal, we start with an obligation so they can't side against us. Uh, Great Britain might side against us. I guess we'll we'll take a save anyways, I guess. Just kind of, like, habit saving. Uh, but uh, I think that, you know, now, if you... For the people who want to play Iron Man, I think this is the patch that, like, uh, really opens it up. You know, for that to actually be, like, viable. Oh, we can upgrade everything. The buttons are so much better now. Just every update, they made Spain worse. The truth hurts. Corn laws re uh, does require free trade now to end. Wait, what? No. You can't, you can, can't you just set to import prioritization after being export prioritization on the grain? Oh, could we even force corn laws here? Could we Maybe we could trade with enough people. We kind of love to force corn laws, so let's see if we can. That's kind of a lot of, uh, 
not the game think. No, we can't. Tragic. Tragic. Let's get rid of all these grain trade routes. I wish there was a delete all routes button. That'd be kind of sweet, wouldn't it? I think we deleted maybe one of our other ones. Oh, but we're importing a ton of grain. Hold the phone. Maybe we can. You played as Iron Man the whole time and just accepted the psychopathy? Yeah, I think that leads to a lot of just not declaring plays, though. If you're trying to play properly under such conditions, which is like... Plays are like one of the- no, we're so close! It was one of the ways you learn the game, you know? How do we decrease the price of grain? Or how do we increase the price of grain? Oh, we could do this. Which just fires, pops. We're like so close to... No, we can't do it. Oh well. Oh, I guess we could maybe release someone in our market. <laughs> we could release a subject to force uh, corn laws. I think that's a bridge too far. Because the our subjects are also providing grain into our market. Um, but I think that's I think that's just too much. <laughs> I think that's like so not worth it. There's like no way that, no, there's like no world in which that's correct. Right, that just has to be wrong. Set the farms on orchards so they don't make great, they're already on it. You might have, the, you might have said that before we checked. Actually, wait. No, and we can't, we can't do this. That'd be another way. Mobilize all the army. Oh, mobilize all the army. You guys are right. You right. You right. You right. You right. You right. We might actually have to load to make that work. Because <laughs> we got to 23, but yeah, we can mobilize all the army. Good looking out. We're going to load to make that happen, though. Or maybe you could destroy some grain fields. Ah, uh, yeah, I guess we could do this, too. That's right. I mean, that's not exactly something we want to do. But yeah, we can... Uh, we can say, hey... We're gonna conquer this. We're gonna kill the trade route where we're importing grain. We're gonna set to export prioritization on grain. We're gonna export everything raise the things. What's the poll about? So the spheres of influence, uh, some people were commenting that they think that um, uh, $30 is too expensive a price tag. Uh, and I, I don't think it's too expensive. Uh, you know, if you look at like kind of how much uh, like hours generally go into these types of games, I think $30 like, dollars for like that many hours of enjoyment is like really like, I think that that's, the, I think that that rate is fine. Um, but I just wanted to see what everyone else was thinking regarding that. Um, so, oop, we do have to have the landowners in government. They are in government. Uh-oh. Extra supplies. Extra supplies. And then let's also do that, and maybe we can get the price over 25? No, we could delete some. Like, deleting some grain actually wouldn't be the end of the world. I'm not sure if we're supposed to delete the ones that have a lot or the ones that have very little. We're definitely not supposed to delete maze. Or if it's actually probably, can we build better stuff there? That's probably the way we will look at it.
I hate deleting buildings, but like us focusing core mods is, is like more valuable. These guys are still mobilizing up too, so the trajectory is up. Maybe we didn't need to delete all those, but we're gonna get plus twenty five percent. I said we're gonna get plus no 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 no. That's the wrong direction. Terrible. The rice farm is actually the best bang for your buck, I guess, in terms of deleting and then having to rebuild. Now that I think about it. Alright. We should get corn laws. We should get corn laws. We should get corn laws. We're on export prioritization, my guys. There's corn laws. Hey, so let's kill all these trade routes that are going to be terrible now. It doesn't need to stay above 25%, you just have to get it there. We have minus one infrastructure also. And it'll help with removing the debuff. $30 for more button clicks, man. Yeah. I can understand how some people feel that way. I think we've done a lot of button clicks in our day. Alright. We do have the entire army mobilized, and now we can actually <laughs> import some grain. Uh, although, it won't, we won't be able to import very large routes uh, through the fact that we have some issues. Kind of waiting on, yeah, seeing what this is about. Uh, they're going for the Shaozhou Treaty Port, which is kind of the new standard. They often go for this. Uh, now, I think they're scripted to go for it, but we'll see if we can get Ching Tomsk. Transferred to bet is a friggin' wild ass, like, ask. We're gonna see if we can sway in. We don't have really good relations with the UK. Uh, the UK. Yeah, the relations are poor, so we might just side on their side regardless in order to reset. Corn. Deleting buildings, nice guide to beginners. Yeah, basically. Here you gotta delete. You could just open the market and scroll down and see all the trade routes for this one good. Oh yeah, you're right. It would be better. Let's see, let's let's end the poll because I think we it's been going a, a hot minute. And let's see what the results are. We do see that uh, most people don't know how to read, 35%. 32% said it's too expensive, 25% said just right, and 6% said cheap, to be age. Uh, like, in terms of, like, hours of enjoyment, uh, like, it's just an extraordinarily good rate um, for me. But also, I think I'm going to get the game early, so... Is Tom's going to be in here? No. So we could ask for something that's landlocked. Alexa. Why is Ching Tomsk not in... Oh, because we don't have an interest in the region? Yeah, we don't have an interest over here. Can we make an interest? No, we can't make an interest over there. So that... that what I was thinking is... Uh, yeah. They, they wanted... Russia wants Ching Tomsk, and so if you could sway in for Ching Tomsk... You could just trade it to Russia, even if it's landlocked, for Alaska. But we can't really get anything. War reparations on either of these is kind of like a nothing burger. So we could go trade agreement. Trade agreement with Ching would actually be pretty nice. Fighting the UK and them slapping us around because they would start with the treaty port on us would not be nice. We could try and get the treaty port back. I think what we're going to do, though, is we're just going to side with Great Britain for nothing. Well. Hmm. We could also see if we could yo-yo swam. Suddenly free Tibet. Yeah, free Tibet. 
Map modes, check them. They added new ones. Okay, 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 okay. I see you. Strategic regions, they had. Standard living. Standard living, new? I don't think so. Population radicals, pollution impact. I don't think that's new. National GDP. That's just for our GDP. Military? I think military is new, isn't it? Migration attraction. Mass migration attraction. We do see that. And that is going to be a new mechanic as well with the cultural communities. Mass migration potential targets. Countries in conflict, I think, is also new. Did we not click that? Oh, it's a ledger. Okay. And then country attitude. I think this is also new. No, maybe it's not. I can't remember. You can see who's got good and bad attitude towards us. Did you check that if corn laws now requires free trade? I don't think you can do it with free trade. You mean to get rid of it? Oh. Yeah, okay. We need free trade to get rid of it. Interesting. Well. We're actually going to take a quick save and test this out. Because we want, we definitely want corn laws coming to Brazil, basically. Um, but if that's the case, we can just set import prioritization. And it doesn't get rid of corn laws. Interesting. Okay. Well, that's going to be kind of good for us in the short term. In the long term, it means we're going to generate a lot more radicals. But we will see. Maybe they just hard nerfed corn laws. Ethics of export exploitation. I think we... I think morally correct is just the better one, right? Not like that, it's not. Hmm. Not much we can do there. We are above 75 legitimacy, though, so that's nice. Paradox and nerfing stuff is so gross, as uh, much as I love the devs. Wait, what? Some stuff should be nerfed. We do like the nerfs sometimes. Yeah, I think we just... Oh, it sucks we can't ask for Tomsk. We can't even ask for war reps now. Maybe we can trade Alxa for Tomsk? I mean, Alxa's like... Okay, it's 1.6 infamy. Where is it? Bro, just this landlocked in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of Ching. Let's not do that in case we can't trade it to them for Tomsk. Because, oh, we probably still wanted to uh, just join. We could offer support late. What's this about? Alright. Let's do some of that action. We can actually stand these guys down. And then maybe we go for North Peru, using the cheese, in terms of doing stuff specifically. We have to embrace it. Try siding with Ching for a day? That doesn't work if you have another diplomatic play. It seems expensive, but you already own Vicky 3 due to the, you already got it due to the Grand Ignition, or Ignition, Ignition, the Grand Ignition, yikes. Let's get rid of this. Hmm, it seems that we are losing money. <laughs> no bread, no freedom. France already likes us and our conciliatory. 
UK does not like us and is not conciliatory. Sucks that we have just start with negative relations with the, those two. Those two are like the most important to get good relations with and we start with bad ones, so. Do you know that two plus two equals four? This is true. Can we, before the tick, maybe get a reset on colonial exploitation? So we can get 11%? Alright, I guess not. We'll acquiesce. Bum bum ba da dum bum ba da dum bum bum ba da dum. You guys know how it goes. Could upgrade law enforcement. Don't hate it. Considering it's like half our float. Kind of start with booty laws. I guess we do want to get no health system at some point or swap the health system. That's going to be a little bit rough for us. Let's see what we need. Uh, I think we need a lot less for Duro e Campania now. Asturias needs the mines to level 3. Navara. Where's Asturias again? Okay. So we want Duro e Campania. So I guess we're going to add a construction center in Asturias and do this and auto expand it. We don't have access to a company yet, but we're going to hope that we get one soon ish. Is the infamy map mode new? Huh? I'm not sure. You can take a look at it though. You can see Bolivia has been a little naughty. Pura Espana. Not sure we like that type of language. Actually, it's more that, you know, we don't want to do stuff in other languages. What if you only get a market liberal landowner from Corn Laws only after you get free trade? That would be for Vega. That would be hilarious. Yeah, uh, they needed like 10 steel mills before. Yeah, it used to be a lot worse. They've definitely improved it or made it cost a lot less. I wonder if we're still getting Shadow Realm here. So the idea is we get Shadow Realm because the port is here. We don't have access to the port. I guess we check. A modern conservative, you don't say. So we'll do an inspiration for our age. And this guy wants to start a movement to enact laissez-faire. So we, of course, will let him start that movement. Start the movement, dear sir. And we'll forget about colonial exploitation for now, I think. Dear sir, you said you wanted to start a movement. A movement for free trade. Where's the movement, dog? We let you start the movement. All right, let's just cancel this because we know we're gonna be switching anyways. Start the movement, please. Start a movement for laissez-faire. Please, sir. What? This man just needs a little bit of help. <laughs> All right, we're gonna wait till Monday for him to start the movement. Yeah, there we go. Well, no one joined? All right, so there's five. Low support. But now that the movement started, we're going to grant him leadership. And we are going to go for laissez-faire, the very best law of all time. We're standing on our chairs, this is true. Is the construction bug fixed? A little early to tell, but I think it is. I guess we'll see next time something gets constructed in a private queue. Alright, we get uh, Lorenzo Marx. I have to reread an explanation of the pronunciation. But, with LM in tow, we can comfortably go after Transvaal. And I think we want to before they start colonizing, because we really hate it when they start colonizing. So, okay, why can't we. Right, we have to wait for our strategic interest to get granted there. Because we moved it. I guess we shouldn't have moved it. Oh well. Maybe, maybe, maybe. We should be road maintenance in Asturias? I guess we're just going to build a level 3 iron mine and then let it sit. Getting stock changed now. Some boy retires. Landowners petition government. Oh, 
Oh, this is new. This is definitely new. Having options in this. We'll see what we could do. Trying to they want us to pass laissez faire. I think we can I think we can bear passing laissez faire. Still haven't acquired an interest here yet. Okay, now it's interest. Okay. And we will see who wants to join against us. So Great Britain doesn't like this, but... A big part of it is they're already involved versus Great Xing. Turmoil in Great Britain. Economic imperialism strategy makes it so they don't want to join. It's going to be nice being able to tell why people join or want to join, because... The system previously completely opaque. Um, so I guess we're just going to take our smallest stack here. We need to reorganize that stack at some point. Best change in 1.6? What you just saw right there. The fact that you can see who's going to join Diplo plays and such. Where's the movement? Oh, the movement just ditch? The hell? You guys are right. He did just take the money and run. Remember the ports? Uh, in LM, our army will get bricked. Oh, we need a port there. Bro has 2,000 hours of Vic3 and hasn't memorized the state's names by now. Terrible. Where's a Vic3 YouTuber? I think they changed Secret Police. You can dispose of people. Yeah, we're going to do Secret Police this run. Actually. As a result. Or, yeah. We're going to play around with it, because they added new choices, right? New character interactions. Also, I think Presidential Republic might be a lot better now, because I think you can st step down. We're not on a Presidential Republic. The best features in the new trains. Yeah, we might have to watch the train guy later. Infamy has no bearing on their decision, or is it included in relations? Uh, I think it only matters if... I think it only matters if you're actually at another level, and this is how it's always been. Infamy matters, oh my god, the place where you normally check infamy, it's not there anymore. How do we check infamy? Oh, okay, just right here, sure. I guess, yeah, that's an improvement. So, uh, once we go over 25, then it will give us a penalty. And then once we go over 75, it'll give us a bigger penalty. We can arrange for an accident with secret police. Yeah, someone might trip and fall out of a window, fall on a bullet. Love they call for it, arranged an accident and character interaction. Is it actually called that? That's perfect. Best features, ships now splash when they sink. True. But yeah, it's always been um, at a particular level. It changes what's going on. So that's kind of how it's always run. Um, yeah, so let's see. No, we can't trade agreement anyone. Thank you for letting me know it's in the top corner. But that's something you check a lot, so that's actually pretty nice that it's uh, in there at a glance. That'll take some getting used to. We're so used to, you know, clicking our flag and looking for this. But now we have our modifiers uh, here, which is going to be nice. I think this guy should be able to handle it. If not, we'll add another guy. What are you drinking? Motor oil? Yes. Feature inspired by modern day Russia. Oh, I guess we have to... So, for... Looks like we're just checking the Twitch thing right now. For whatever reason, the, the notifications for me aren't going up. So, like, if you... If you sub or dono on Twitch, well, the donos are the, it's in the description below, but if you sub or dono on Twitch, I don't know if the descriptions are popping up or not. I'm not getting the notification noise. I tried to set it up yesterday. I thought it was working. Apparently it's not. I mean, we can sim. So, sorry, stream elements time. We can simulate a fake donation. 
and we supposedly had this set up. It looks like it worked. We did get a noise, but that is something we spent some time yesterday trying to figure out and figuring out, I think, successfully. But how to have a donation thing, because that's something that people have been requesting. It's like the only thing we have on our Twitch. <laughs> it's like super bare bones. We gotta link the Discord too. We'll probably do that later today. The plan is though, if we have a lot of people, we're just gonna keep going uh, for up to 12 hours, which is when the YouTube cuts us off. You can check the construction bug now. You are correct. Well, the, the bug seems to be fixed because it's not taking control of a larger percentage of the queue. It's actually just not constructing. I think we'll just add a couple of these in Asturias, get to our thing, and then we'll start. Why is this not in play? What the hell? I mean, I guess we could set this up and auto-expand. Pigs and Shovels really sucks butt, though. But let's just get these on auto-expanding so that we don't idle our queue again. We can turn on gas streetlights. I don't think we have any coal. I guess we'll do that once we have the coal. We might just subjugate Aranya. So the thing is, is we want to just take the state, but we don't want them to colonize, and it feels like every time we just go to take the state, they just start colonizing, and we're just big sad. Didn't know about the great trains of Mike, bro. Is it time to rewatch the trains thing? And before it's still in the game, yeah. Well, like, we're not getting our queue seized, it seems like. Well, we're also not on laissez-faire yet. It's also really noticeable on laissez-faire. Alright, so... Oh, can we check if they're passing a law? So they still have no colonial affairs. It doesn't look like they're passing a law. Free stat is going to cost us 10 infamy, so we don't want to do it just yet. Also, for whatever reason, the UK can get access through, which, like, sucks. The UK can get access to Orania, even though, like, Game mechanics-wise, if they join against us, they're not supposed to. Like, if Cape Colony's, like, neutral, but the game just lets them get access through. I don't know. Why is this not in playing? <laughs> uh, my favorite question to ask this game. Pretty much. Pretty much. I guess we could, uh, we can pull people what everyone thinks is the, the best, uh... What best feature... Uh, so we have, uh, the transparent Diplo plays, we have the improved outliner, construction bug fix, TM, and then the fourth option we're going to do is going to be the census data, which is this... Hide your children before, yep, well, I should have given you a better warning, but the census data. Because I'm curious what you guys think the best uh, improvement is. Here. Alright, so we've decayed enough that we could just take Aranya. I think we're just going to take a quick save. I'm just super used to save him before Dimple plays, but we're going to see if, uh, see what it looks like in terms of... Also, like, we're not... We're not sure of the exact balance of this. So we take a look, and Great Britain is... Great Britain does not like that we do this at all. And we can see why. Um, their preference overall is neutrality. Um, they want to support Aranya because they're genial and they have sympathy. A little sympathetic towards us. They have negative... Ooh, relations is a thing. Minus 10 from relations with Spain. So relations is a thing. So we're going to try and take it, and then we're probably going to be a little bit of chill mode. Uh, these guys, we're going to... Ooh, no, we don't want to do that. We just want to make a Shadow Realm army, because we assume the bug's still there. And this is always where we get banished. Why are you not using right-click uh, on some other country? Left-click is the way you just use, because I think right-click is faster. It is faster. Force of habit. You didn't... Um, 
I don't think you used to. I'm not sure if you always used to be able to do it, but... Census data, yep, we forgot. Oh yeah, we forgot the choo-choos. Wait, is the choo-choos live? Is that update live? That we get different choo-choos? Maybe we gotta restart the run and play as someone with unique choo-choos. We could play the French with the French choo-choos that go through the buildings. Does the higher score neutrality means they will 100% stay out of it? I think it's somewhat possible that they, from our pie here, as I was kind of reading it, because there was like a 50 differential and they really don't like what we're doing. It's not that they like Aranya, it's that they don't like what we're doing. But we see that... Uh... Yeah. Well, we still don't know exactly how to interpret the numbers, like, um, to be honest. And I think we're going to get a better grasp on how to interpret the numbers as the time goes on. Yeah, this guy's not popular, so he will never be leader. I think they also improved the UI in terms of being able to tell where guys are from. Yeah, so like this, we can... Go to the barracks in Toledo. Is there a good way for us to be able to delete out of just here? But it's easier for us to see what's going on with the UI here as well. You can see all the modifiers and stuff too. Let's see what, uh, is discriminatory migration allowed now? Well, I talked to a dev and the dev said it was always allowed. Um, but the values in the game are such that it just never happens. Which, like, I don't know. If the values are such that it never happens, then it's effectively not allowed. But my understanding is we will not be seeing a significant discriminatory migration. Um, I suppose we will see, but I, I don't think, I think it's going to kind of operate the way that it has before. Hello, Mr. P uh, Mr. Floyd Pinkerton. Welcome to the stream. The outliner is hands down the best part of the update. Hiring unpopular guys, top military. <laughs> Literal food. <laughs> the truth is. You love the new Persia and Afghanistan? The picture in the DLC page was cool. Yeah, the way it's looking like they're going to change things. Let's take a look. Ooh, nope. That's not what we wanted. Getting help in Windows. 53% of you guys so far say transparent plays, 12% improved outliner, 23% construction bug fix, and 17% census data. For me, it's... Actually, from, like, the gameplay perspective, like, for just me playing, it's probably the construction bug fix. But, like, um, understanding that, like, new players, like... It'll be such a big deal for new players that, like, the plays are more transparent. Like, just for the overall health of the game, I think I would definitely say the play transparency. We still run in this? Didn't we do that? Import prioritization? Alright, well, we should be able to avoid running a shortage in just a sec here. And then in the capital, I guess we can build up a artillery foundry so that we don't run this problem. Yeah, we probably can't, I mean, we can't afford our level of construction currently. I mean, we could just hope to run, roll a gold mine or something. Oh, we are just getting wrecked? That's not ideal. No! I didn't mobilize the guys in time. Alright, so we might actually even need a bigger navy for this. That's unfortunate. That's unfortunate. That's what we get for not paying attention. Is Ching full occupied? <laughs> I haven't seen this happen before. I Russia didn't even join. That was a separate play. What the hell? <laughs> Russia just got all this. Russia just waved the stick at him and they gave up. Great game is going to change Central Asia as more countries will appear. That's going to be dope. <laughs> There's a checkbox allowing lending of borrowing of troops in the mobilization tab. Yeah, but the checkbox doesn't do anything. 
Or, well, uh, it, it might do something now. They might have fixed it. Uh, historically speaking, the checkbox hasn't done anything. Why, wait, why is it taking you so long to get back here? Wow, we're gonna get a secession movement? <laughs> For LM. That's super obnoxious, because that's actually just gonna full-on break our war. We might load here, bros. <laughs> Because this is like, this is going to break our war with, um, Orania. This, uh, aptly times obsession movement. Because we will have to wait, the Naguni secession, we're going to have to actually wait full on for this play to pop, which is going to be take a whole bunch of time, and then we're going to have to land and then push. Yeah, bro, we're going to, we're going to load. Apologize to the chat. Did Orania get buffed? No, we just didn't move our troops there uh, fast enough because we were kind of. That's one hundred percent my fault. Oop. We're 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 trying to play and read and talk and do all the things, and <laughs> I just didn't mobilize the army, <laughs> and so. We sent them late, uh, and sending them late meant that they pushed our three stack, uh, and them pushing our three stack is, yep, yeah, we, we got wrecked, uh, because that was the only one we mobilized, so, this is what we did, except we forgot to move the 13 stack over, but our 13 stack should be able to whack up their seven stack pretty well, but then the rev... I wish you could pop, like, the revs and the secessions immediately and you didn't have to wait 100 days, but what would have happened is we would have had to wait for the entire mobilization phase, and during the mobilization phase, Orania would have enforced on us. Wargold breaking should be fixed. Yeah, this is another one. Revs should no longer nuke uh, war goals, and this is, like, also, like... I think that's probably the most frustrating experience you can have in-game, and the fact that they fixed it is, uh, big nice. You're interested in seeing if Puppet Mass uh, charging against impossible odds? I guess we'll see a little bit. We don't have that many. We're just going to keep our uh, thing with them. I hope at some point they revisit, revisit secessions and make them more like a negotiation. Yeah, this would be super nice. Because, like... That's, like... What happened there is, like, frustrating. Because it, like, really messes with what we were trying to do like fight a war but yeah apologies looks like we're gonna end the poll 49 percent of you really like the uh transparent plays and the transparent plays it's uh for those of you who are like want to play iron man and we might start playing on iron man as well although kind of embarrassing to say we're gonna play on iron man after loading there but um if you want to play on Iron Man, transparent plays just, like, has to be something you're just, like, uber in love with. Because, like, the... You're not going to randomly have to pay out 10% of your income on some plays. They will add investment in other countries. I hope it means no more lack of rubber and oil. I hope it makes that releasing the colonial administrations, like, viable or good. God, this guy's so slow. So slow. Can you use rapid advance? No, you can't. Because it's just 25%, you need 30%. Bro, are you not going to get there in time? Come on. There we go. Oh, maybe we're going to need a second army. Maybe the Orania did get buffed. Paradox was tired of them getting conquered every single time. Your dad was born in a town called Herat in today's Afghanistan. Persia at the time of Vicky III had a big war in it that, it, that it lost. I'm glad they probably were represented in the map. And I'm looking forward to the great game event because it was a major part of the era. Yeah. The game is a lot more fun when you accept, uh, when you accept that autosaves are there for us to use. Yeah, I mean, I think that... Like, if you want to play on Iron Man, like, I think that this would make such a huge difference. I think that, like, the reason we're not playing on Iron Man for this stream is just in case of bugs, like, more than any, because I do want to try it out a little bit, but 
also like if we're reading and like we're letting the game go and we're like reading chat and like this type of stuff it's like really easy to like mess something up looks like we're gonna have the so so secession so for transvaal that kind of this is gonna break our war goal too man but they won't be we're just gonna fight this out but what's gonna happen is yeah that's stupid as well um, they're not going to be able to enforce on us because they won't occupy any of our territory. Also, it instantly deoccupies the progress they've made, so if you're, like, from Aranya's perspective, it's also annoying. You wish they added more flavor instead of more clicks? Right-click works in government, too, like exiling granting leadership. Mm. Grant command to Isabel. The Orban. This is... Can we be enforced below zero? We can? God, that's so stupid. Now we have to wait 100 days. Bro. Uh, we will swap to Irania and capitulate before we, like, let this happen like that. <laughs> this is, like, obnoxious as hell, though. You advise from someone who plays a lot of Spain, use Portugal's obligation to exchange LM for the obligation. Free land and land border with Gaza. Easy gold strat. Oh, that makes sense. We can't do it now, though, but that makes sense. Alright, we just, like, low roll laissez-faire repeatedly. My favorite thing to do in Paradox games is the degree of cheating you can do. Is the degree of cheating you do. You can choose for yourself what is fun and not game breaking. Yeah, I mean, like, there's a lot of things we, like, don't do. It's not like we're swapping sides. We're, like, declaring on France for a bunch of territories and then swapping sides and capitulating. And then be like, we're so good. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like we're about to finish our coal mine in Castile. So we're going to turn on this everywhere we're gonna also start using harvesting tools ah, let's exempt I guess I'll put all the logging on auto expand as well we're not gonna set it up so that every place is logging immediately but we're gonna put it all on auto expand hopefully we can actually pass laissez there. Tark says, yo, I'm watching your stream on my stream. You should watch your stream so you can keep an infinite loop. Giga Chad. So, doesn't that violate TOS? Aren't you not allowed to restream someone's stream? Thought you could not. I thought it wasn't allowed. Eh, eh. This is like about what I'd expect. Dude, can I get any good events, please? This Please. guy says he's watching our stream, and then Any he's like, ones. just has it over his cam instead. I suppose that's one way Troops to... Spail and premium metals, we'll get that eventually. One way to handle things. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Let me go back to the game. <laughs> hey, we got the best law ever. <laughs> oh, the best law. And then the uprising is going to have to capitulate, and then, oh, whatever. Let's see. So we're going to go up to 1k research on Atmo. Probably just, yeah, the lathe will not spread by then, because we have high enough literacy, because we start with the schools. Yo, dog, I heard you like streams. So I got your stream a stream. We, let's see. Reaction content, little <laughs> bro. Reaction content's like, what the hell is this? God, this is obnoxious as hell. We got outmaneuvered, outbaited, and outsmarted.
I knew the front might cause problems. That's so obnoxious. They just got to push us, and we didn't get a chance to, like, yeah, whatever. This <laughs> is so stupid. I think they actually beat our army when we're trying to land here, too. Six weeks? You were literally just there, my guy. This is a catastrophe, guys. Yeah, Tark is streaming on his channel. There's a ton of cha uh, changes in Central Asia next update. Yep, two months. May 6th. Scramble for YouTube. <laughs> he also is streaming on... Yeah, we showed his Twitch. He's streaming on YouTube as well, I think. I think he cross-streams. Did they fix the... I... <laughs> I read that as prostate queue. <laughs> I was very confused. Did they fix the private queue? They appear to have fixed it. Um, well. Yeah, private construction is only using 24% here. They can use up to 50%. They are not intentionally using it, and they're using roughly a quarter of the queue, so it does look fixed. Um, so the most key and important thing appears to be fixed. Now this, this war is like big not fun because of, or I guess we could just get in automatically. So now we have to push Transvaal. This is like a hot mess of a war, but okay. It looks like we're gonna get it. Um. Has Gobir passed analytical philosophy yet? They start with it. Don't you know? Classic Gobir. Ooh, we could take a look at... Uh, they changed some of the stuff in Mongolia. Now it has eastern steps. More ranches throughput. Inner Mongolia. Was Inner Mongolia always there? They changed the name? But now, uh, Mongolia is more of a thing. Want to say big thanks for the, the Vicky 3 guys, my guy? You're, you're very welcome. Big nice. We gotta make a big nice emote. Currently, we only have a really, really bad loud car emote. We're working on the emotes, guys. Isn't it better for Spain to stay on wood construction and build more sectors than... Well, no, because the iron's way more efficient. It's better just to import the iron, I think. I haven't done, like, dark math on this, um... But I believe it's just better to import it. Still make a beeline for Atmo engine though. Let's see. I forget what the requirements are. I think that we just don't require anything. Oh, it has to be specifically coal mines in this Durius up to level 3. I thought it was coal or iron. Okay, well, I guess I'm going to put three of those in the queue. And that'll work for us. Switch to resource view. What about resource view are we looking at? Ooh, Asturias. Does Asturias... I don't remember... The... Do they always have that bonus? I can't remember. Inner Mongolia didn't used to have the river, I think. That would also make sense. We have Gobi Desert there. In Eastern Steps. I think Gobi Desert was also up here, and now it's Eastern Steps, which makes Mongolia, like, region much more viable. We're finally conquering Aranya after much pain. Wasn't Inner Mongolia named uh, Mo Monan or SMTH? Yeah, it was something like that. You were correct. Yeah, it's gonna be... It shows all the modifiers on both lenses, yeah. Because the other, the modifiers are relevant, you know? You're gonna wanna build, like, steel where you have, like, iron stuff or whatever, or coal stuff. 
We do enforce. Getting ready to enforce on Orania. It looks like they have not gotten colonization. Oh, and they have seven gold mines already. Hell yeah, baby. So I guess we're actually going to want to. Let's do some of that. Incorporate that. We want to incorporate it anyways. But us incorporating this, and then we will use the little extra authority we have. Uh, so we can build the gold mines immediately. Immediately. Seven gold mines. That's such a high roll for 39. Bro. Like, bro. B-R-O-H. Bro. That's actually more like B-A-A-R-O-H. Something like that. Alright. We're gonna violently suppress here to decrease the effects of turmoil, which, you know, is giving a minus state construction efficiency. We're gonna incorporate so we can use our policing there. And we're gonna build the gold mines. Ugh. Unfortunately, we don't have Atmo Engine yet, but, you know, it'll be good. It'll be good. What is this? What do these little arrows mean? Is that incorporated versus unincorporated in the UI? Um, next up, we're probably going to go for the North Peru trick. And look to take this. I think we got to let our infamy calm down a little because I think that's like 12 or 15 infamy. What does greener grass campaigns do now? Ah, yes, they changed it. Let's take a look. So now it gives plus 20 migration attraction flat. That's real nice. And 25% migration attraction. But that plus 20 flat. <sighs> that's going to be super nice because we can place it in places like Transvaal that are going to have a huge percent modifier. That's actually way stronger. So our flat here is like 25. Um, and we have negative modifiers here, so this is actually a bad example. But our flat here is only 25, so the fact that we could like double the flat, um, that's like super substantive. Bro, says Max, I agree. The former front lines, uh, so I think bug. Ah, uh, that might be it. Can you show all uh, e-conquered territories? What does it mean to e-conquer? Is that an e-girl thing? E-conquered? We've conquered this so far. That's the only thing we've taken. And now we're in like chill mode. Just a very standard start. <laughs> the first three wars of every single game. Although, as one of the viewers pointed out, uh, you can trade for this from Portugal with your obligation for free, and that's probably a better start than taking Gaza. We're about to get laissez-faire as well. Big nice. I think we're gonna kick these coal things to the front because of the, that we're about to get that. We're kind of losing a little bit more money than we'd like. But I guess we'll do this. Industrialists have had, starting to have a bit of come up. Petit bourgeoisie with a radical leader are kind of strong. Good afternoon, uh, flat OMG. Hmm. Have we seen the spheres of influence? Yeah, at the very start of the stream we reviewed all the spheres stuff. Isn't it bad to subjugate new world nations like Spain because they'll siphon off the little pops you have? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, this is a consideration. We can make them uh, close their borders uh, anyways. We could, like, make them pass closed borders, or we could try to. Uh, but I think overall, the fact... I think overall it's net beneficial. But yeah, the fact that they accept your pops is a little bit more of a annoying thing. But on a per infamy basis, this is just too much resources to pass up, I think. And, like, also the Antifagasta has, like, one of the best companies in the game. So... We get laissez-faire. We can't slot in the company yet. I think that we're going to need more light ships. So we're going to do this. The classic. We, yeah, we need this to finish. We're going to kick this up so this finishes a little bit faster. Government petition is finished. And so we can get rid of the corn laws by going free trade. I think this is what we do here.
We might use our one time here for the stream. Actually, this is going to be a long stream. We're planning on as long as we have over, like, maybe 150 between YouTube and Twitch that we just keep going um, up to 12 hours. And so, considering off to an awesome start with 380 of you guys, shout out to you guys, um, we're probably going to end up going a really long time. So, we'll see how this goes. When's the Ottoman run coming? We did... Ottomans may be something we're in the market for. I mean, so right now we're doing a Spain run. We're doing it on stream. Spain has a very vanilla type start. So, like, I think the starting steps video, like, it being a video video is, like, less important. But we are going to maybe try and restore control over all of South America or something like this. Um, I don't know. What's a, what's a theme -y thing? Yeah, let's type it in chat. It is... Are they offering us to be in their customs union? I think we say no. <laughs> but I just realized we can join someone else's customs union. It like didn't even enter my head. We're not a great power yet. Oh, but we can't ask to join because we have subjects. Right? Oh, did they fix this? Did they fix this? This wasn't in the notes. Oh my god, if they fix this. I'm so happy if they fix this. That's been such an obnoxious thing for so long. You can't ask to join someone's customs union if you have a... Oh, we don't have... No, we have subjects. We have subjects. So. One of the top content for creators for Vicky3. Who? OPB? My guy, gotta keep your sights up. Have you seen the screenshots for the new expansion? Yeah, we, we, were, we went over the screenshots at the very start of the stream. I actually got the screenshots a little before you guys did. Like, two hours before you guys did. And then I was told not to share them until a certain time. And then, like, I reread it a bunch of times because I had to do time zone conversions. I, like, w wasn't sure about things. I wasn't sure if I could show it off on stream, but I could. Would the game do the following? Espana Inquisition. Nobody... We could do... We could stay religious. No one suspects the Spanish Inquisition. Take back South and Central America as well, uh, well as Belgium and form the Aragonian lands of Italy. And the Aragonian lands in Italy. Ooh, this is hot. Can you do a Japan run guide? We might do... We're probably going to do a Japan run in 1.6, yeah? You should rev about three to four times. We should rev about three to four times and get a ton of inflation. Someone's thinking with their, their dipstick, Jimmy. Also, unlocking some of the power of the investment pool is also going to be really nice. We want the investment pool to take over a little bit uh, for the construction, so. I think we want the naval bases produced, like, after these coal mines, to be honest. That way we can do what we want to do. But we want the coal mines for the company. Yeah, we'll do that one. What is your expectations of what? A nice RP would be to reestablish control over Latin America. This is kind of what I'm thinking. Get revenge for the 30 World Wars and take the United Netherlands. Theocratic Spain. Spanish Inquisition for certain. No one expects the Spanish Inquisition. All right, we're going to go. We're going to try and stay religious then. I think if, if people want this. No one suspects the Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> Stay on state religion. Just just so we're clear, state religion's bad, okay? Just to be clear, I think we have one university. Oh, it's not the wrong tech. It's not empiricism, it's uh, the other one. My feeling when I mix up the philosophy names in a game. We got empiricism, we didn't get dialectics. Hegel would be proud. Also pass Parliamentary Republic, have the country break apart, have one year new states declare for our impression, and then back to monarchy within a year. <laughs> the true RP run. Yeah, definitely good to be back with the private construction queue, though. I'm so happy about that, because this means you can, like, it fills in the gaps so much better. It makes the gameplay, like, way better. We're not going to have to, like, baby the queue. Like you do when you're in control of it. Also a huge fan of this change where you can't uh, swap companies willy-nilly. 
which is why we're just floating our company slot because it, uh, it locks it in for like five years. Colonize Africa to save the natives from hell. When you're right, you're right. And you, you're always right. Gotta take the Holy Land for bonus points. Invading Palestine is just gonna make... It's gonna make... It's gonna turn into a politics stream if we invade Palestine. <laughs> They're gonna, there's gonna be people in chat be like... 100% turns the tables. Duro y Campania established. Let's go, baby. So good. Arms industry is building throughput. It's actually kind of a nice modifier in artillery building through. Actually, you know what? Maybe these modifiers are better than I think. And we maybe we could try and export these things as well. Oh, we're importing them currently. Yeah, well, we're also... This is getting produced. But joys. I do think we kind of like it in the capital, to be honest. So we maybe put one of these in the capital and yeah we already have that a hardwood is an input for these i think we're gonna take a save and go after bolivia though the spheres of influence already live no it goes live may 6th you think paradox will redo colonial administration because it doesn't give any benefit at all i think that part of what they've already done the fact that you can build another stuff makes it much more reasonable now but we'll see uh, your only question is, is it faster or not? Uh, we have to wait and see. So we can see transfer. We can see Bolivia is definitely going to join, right? Um, and then it looks like the UK doesn't even have an interest here. The hell? We're going to force the diplomatic play as well. Huh. Interesting. And then we're going to conquer state at Ifagasta. And then liberate subject. Liberate subject to Kicha. Make South Peru primary. Maybe go for war goals or reps. I don't think they back down to this. Oh, we probably could have swayed Brazil. No, it doesn't look like it. Okay. Brazil doesn't want the return state, CB. Holy Land, not worth. Maybe don't take the Holy Land. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Oh, small, uh, small Arms is now a leisure good. I forgot about this. Maybe we should be playing USA for the proper RP run. I gotta have a I gotta have a chat with the devs though. They didn't make tanks a leisure good. Terrible. I think this is our Shadow Realm army. So we'll change it to reflect that. I think that we do want a little bit more cav in here. We're gonna drop him in Castile. The reason being so we could use the rapid advance. Ooh, and our company's in the ledger, too. I know my camera's blocking it, but the company is in the ledger. Maybe we can just move the camera for just a second. Except it's, like, super... It's, like, super centered. I don't know. I don't trust myself. But, like, at the very bottom of all this, the company is in the ledger. I guess if we show the economic outliner... Yeah, you can see Duro y Campania. Uh, whether or not we're getting the bonus is in the ledger. So this is super, super nice. But, yeah. This is uber nice. Long live Generals Gaming. Hype. Big hype. Big nice. Big nice, big hype. Popular playwright. Oh, and this is only for five years now. <laughs> uh, can anyone in chat explain why we are transferring subjects instead of protectorating Bolivia? Well, I would have explained it, but you, got, you, got, you didn't trust me and you asked chat. So we'll let chat explain it. We will allow chat to explain why. I believe in you, chat. Can anyone from chat explain why we're doing it the way we're doing it?
the true test. They're worried. Please don't back down. Looks like they're not going to. Hell yeah, brother. This is like the most efficient war. So we're going to have you land with that. I think uh, we can't rapid advance yet. No. What is the Shadow Realm army for? So we call it the Shadow Realm army. The It's going to be for putting down secession movements in Africa. And the reason why is that our port gets bricked uh, because we don't actually control the port in here. And so very often your army will get bricked. I suppose we could ask Portugal for it using the obligation. But I like the fact that Portugal can't side against us. At least for now. But yeah, maybe we take LM from them. Oop, did we remember to... Yeah, we did remember to incorporate. Tanks aren't good. Eddie Hall is crying right now. Tanks aren't Alicia good. Bro, Eddie Hall reference. Hell yeah, brother. Like, uh... Bro, Eddie Hall is so strong. I've thought about doing, like, some, like, content for, like, lifting as well as, like, ideas. Like, on the... Just, uh, on the Twitch slash the appropriate YouTube. It's like, it makes me want to show some Eddie Hall videos. Didn't they change it to Peru, Bolivia, Confederation no longer fires if Bolivia is the subject? I believe so, but this isn't the reason. Because General's too handsome and very good at this game, I think. This is the correct answer. <laughs> Check the SL numbers in Migration Attraction Map Mode. So here's migration attraction. Here's mass migration attraction. Ooh, looks like bluey has got a lot. Potential targets for mass migration. The pause takes a lot of pause. Not annexing useless states. So is this decided it's gonna be aggressive colonial Spanish Inquisition theocracy run? And will it be available? The VOD will be available on YouTube, yes. We're streaming on YouTube. YouTube auto-saves all the VODs. You have to you have to search for it specifically in streams, though. Like, it's, um, it's not in the same section as videos, but it does save all the VODs, yeah. Looks like our guy is recruited up, so we can switch to Rapid Advance. I think we'll want at least two guys on Rapid Advance. Hopefully they can get in on this. I'm pretty sure they can. Ugh, yikes. Does this mean we have to make an adjustment? Shoot. Maybe we can churn through enough of their guys. Oh, we have four guys over here. We might have to try and land with the other guy. Dude, Bolivia's army is not that big. If someone hasn't answered the the reason why I'm, we're gonna answer in just a sec, why you do it this way. Now look at the individual state on any. This. Are we looking at this or are we looking at the cultural communities, Joey? What's the best monarchy, presidential, or parliamentary? Parliamentary is best. Arrange accident. We do like the accident. Who likes Arby's French dip? How to get banned in chat. 
Did we time out the guy who talked about Arby's? Arby's is literally <laughs> my least favorite fast food restaurant. <laughs> I, I hate how good it looks on the commercial and then how bad it is in real life. It looks so good on the commercial. Just like unreal. You're just like, holy fuck, holy fuck fuck. That like sandwich of yours. And then you like, <laughs> get the sandwich and you're like, what the hell is this? I mean, maybe we can churn through enough of their army that this works. I thought we were strong enough for this. This kind of sucks. Okay, um... We're trying to make adjustments, like, really early into the war. I guess, here, let's switch to the military one. Um... So, maybe let's cancel this naval invasion. Add more ships. Let's land with these guys. Let's give them mobilization options. And these guys should have more attack. Give them one curious zero over here to get rid of that penalty. And the the naval invasion penalty should be way gone by then. I'm gonna station you over here. Dangerous, but it's a little bit closer. I guess it's kind of the same, whatever. Just try and make sure we don't lose this. So, in the migration map mode, okay, click on, be in a migration map mode and click on the state, right? Is this what you're saying? All right, we're in the migration map mode. Let's click on a state. Weekly migration attraction. Tells you who's there and stuff. I, I'm joking about bringing up Arby's. You can talk about whatever you want. I'm just memeing. I think banning you would be funny, but <laughs> not gonna ban you. <laughs> Although, <laughs> occasionally we ban people for the memes. 100% joking. <laughs> it's like, you just, like, do not feel bad for, about bringing up Arby's at all. That's fine. <laughs> Least favorite uh, fast food restaurant, Arby's. So you're saying there's a chance. I've gotten Arby's more than once. So, I've been punished. I thought there should be an economic measure of difference between Arby's and a good deli sandwich to measure inflation and lunch prices. I have a thought that there should be an economic measure of the difference between Arby's and a good deli sandwich to measure inflation and lunch prices. Interesting. The thing is, fast food in general has just gotten wildly more expensive. Which sucks, um, if you like fast food. Why is this... 8,000 weeks. Are they just getting... Oh, they're barely getting in progress. Alright, that's fine. I guess we should have been building in these places first, but... Because we're not going to quite have 18 here. But... We do have a better mix of stuff here. Hopefully we can get in. We get in the Nuguni Secession too. This is what the Shadow Realm Army is for. What's Russia's GDP in your game? You want to compare? Russia, like, did this, which we haven't seen too much of this before, but it's 37 million. It's like five, uh, six dollar difference these days. After living in the USA, I know two places never set foot in again. Tacos and, uh, Taco Bell and Arby's. For whatever reason, I'm, like, more willing to hurt myself again with Taco Bell. I always, it looks so good in the commercials, I'm like, okay, I'm going to Taco Bell, and then I get it, and I'm always disappointed, but, like, I don't learn. I've learned with Arby's, I don't learn with Taco Bell. The, the Crunchwrap Supreme's okay. How's diplomacy looking so far? Is it working as it says? It seems to be. 
Oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy. I mean, I guess as we get more naval levels, we'll see if we can churn through this. But this might be, this might be a failure, you guys. Could, of course, load, but we don't like doing that. That's what the Shadow Realm army's for. Historically, this has been way easier for us to get in on this corner with, like, a 15 stack. It has not been this hard. Um, oh, you know what? I know what the problem is. It's combat with. There's more infrastructure here. We land in Lima is where we're supposed to land. Because it has a little bit more infrastructure. Really, I mean, maybe the thing is we just need a 20 stack navy and a 20 stack army. Wait, why is... Why do we have some mobile artillery? That doesn't make sense. Did they increase the penalty for landing? This is, doesn't feel like it's it's been possible before. Can you zoom in on the grapes? Yes. No, or no. We can't. We can zoom out to see the grapes. Having a boat in a dream back for 1.6. It appears to be, like, extra not back. I don't know. I feel like we're normally supposed to win this type of landing, and so I'm not sure exactly. With change to corn laws, is it getting it still meta? What's the benefit now that you can't get rid of it until free trade? Well, I mean, the benefit is you still get to get laissez-faire faster. I mean, we could try doing multiple battles through this guy, but, like, the reality is we're gonna need... Well, he has less of a penalty now that there's 17 instead of 15, but... I don't know if we actually succeed this. Corn laws get completed, end of the corn laws, grain trade begin. I think it's still worth The thing is, is like, if the guy dies before you get free trade, that's real bad, right? So... And now we can probably try and ban slavery. Actually, the Catholic Church, unfortunately we have a traditionalist. Can we get a not a traditionalist? Hmm. Who hates it? Just the landowners? Sure, let's just go for it. Because they're super happy right now. Alright, we got a 7 on 7. It's 3.5k into 6k. <sighs> Why is this so much harder now? I'm so confused. This used to be like an easy clap, like, shoe in. Why is it so much harder? Can't do it until the landing stopped. Alright, let's see. So mobile's better. Transport the mobile. And two line infantry. And then the first you don't succeed, try try again. So 
problem is, is we're not gonna have an easier time going through these guys. They're on Lion and Dragoons. I don't think we have an easier time getting in on Antifagasta into the Bolivian army themselves. What the hell? Why do you have 64 conscripts? Try, I mean, we're just gonna try again. They, they did make Spain a little derpy with starting size of army navy. Yeah, the navy used to be bigger. We need 20 stack. No, we need 20 stack. How's the new pop sheet? Better, same, or worse than the Vic 2 one? I didn't play with Vic 2, so I don't really know. Thoughts on Annex and Cuba? Cuba's pretty good. State manpower is so dumb, they need national manpower and train your units and replenish from rather than a state by state basis. Maybe that's our problem. We're like not replenished. Uh, yeah, well, maybe this is. Hussars have the most offense, or Lancers have the most offense, right? So let's send the Lancers and the Curiousers to our 15 stack. It's now an 18 stack, but it's a fresh 18 stack. And then, I guess we're gonna mobilize one See how much total there's nine, so we need to have or wait, nine, ten. So we need to have a total of a twenty stack. This gets us there. And then we can also conscript up to like a twenty-two. Then use this army to land maybe. Kinda running out of time here. Sucks. We do have, yeah, three more frigates incoming, so. But maybe these guys have been worn down, whittled down a little bit. Yeah, I mean, 300 guys, 600, 800. I mean, they're going to get to recruit back up, but we'll have a fresh stack, so. Merge army is better, menu is so much better now. Yeah, did they fix the construction bug? They did. Construction bug appears to be fixed. Do they want anything from us? Ah, uh, they can't enforce the reparations, so we actually have plenty of time. They're never gonna land us, so we actually have unlimited time. Aberdeen Act, we see. So we're in super fine shape. Not in good shape in terms of the money. Why is this... Alright, we're just gonna kick that to the back of the queue. I'm gonna cancel the barracks and free stat. We're gonna do that. South Peru is in default. Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> this is how we win it. <laughs> they changed a lot of the Russian army. Yeah, they changed a lot of the a lot of the armies. No one expects a Spanish Inquisition. All right, so maybe this twenty-one stack, because they've turned been turned through a little bit, and because they're in default, maybe we can get in now on them. Should be fantastic. I guess we'll kind of, I mean, we're about to see how this battle goes. Um, I guess we might want to revisit some of the changes that, or revisit some of the stuff. This is going to be nice for us. It seems like, is the game really not faster? We've got to swap these. Someone said the game was slower, which was an immediate cause for concern. Does it feel like the game's going slower? 
with the cultural communities mechanic? I'm not sure. Alright, I think we do want to go for this. Can we use our one time maybe to get mech tools? No. That's when we're process is gonna not spread. Alright, so we're getting in. Finally. The game is slower. Is this the general consensus? Why why would the game be slower? Is it the the new UI changes that would make the game slower? I guess we ask people who are who are played a little bit. We can pull this in YouTube. It feels slower to me too. They made naval invasions harder. Maybe that's kind of, it. Feels it certainly feels harder. It's not normally this hard to get in here, but like they could have also just buffed North Peru specifically, like which would not be making naval invasions harder. So like it's uh, for me a little bit difficult to tell. I think we want to promote this guy all the way. Actually, maybe we just want to defend the front until the other boys get here. And then once the other boys get here, we can overwhelm them. They turn down the ticks. You think they turn down the ticks? Wouldn't the census data thing make the game slower? This is possible. Are we sure the construction bug is fixed? It feels fixed. Uh, it's going to make a bigger difference once we get several hundred, though, or it's going to be more noticeable. Maybe cultural communities give worse performance for better for early and better for late game. This might be the thing. I think they buffed Peru at the end of 1.5. Is there a new change to abdication? Trying to do the Russian cheese, but it can't. They did change it, and they did change it a little bit. They added other stuff. I think we're gonna get the progress towards water tube. I have to do the math on that. Someone, I remember someone insisting that it was better to, um, in regards to like the Atmo engine event, that it was better to take the take the money, take the the throughput. And I really don't think that's correct, but it is interesting. Looks like we have the Philippines getting in here. No, come on. Real, real, real. It took us forever to get in. And now we're going to have a landing over here. These guys get banished back to home. Now they're actually going to be defending the front. Bro, that sucks so hard. We're just a little bit too slow. Damn, we should have used... Should have done Force March. Alright, so I guess we get in there. Now, oh, well, this works, because they're not... Oh, they get stationed? Bro, is that new? Is this how they fixed the Shadow Realm bug? So they were just here two seconds ago, but then they teleport back to Iberia. And that's how they fix the Shadow Realm bug. I mean, I guess it's kind of okay, but we literally just saw them go over there and then teleport. That's kind of... well... Not an ideal solution, I don't think. But I also think that, like, having your guys banished to the Shadow Realm is really obnoxious, and so it's, I think it's definitely an improvement, but. I'm gonna switch all these guys to defend now. 
hopefully they can hold until we can get in. I guess the 20 stack, we're going to try and reland up here in Lima. 22 stack. Let's say 20 weeks. The hell? Oh no, they are. Oh no, wait, they're not banished to the Shadow Realm. They have to actually finish this. Let's do that. Take the enactment chance here. Hopefully, we can do this. Did you ever say why you transfer subject? Oh, I didn't. Here's why. Um, so what happens if you transfer North Peru and then you liberate the South Peru and Iquicha, South Peru and Iquicha merge with North Peru and so you get this massive North Peru which you can annex immediately because it's a puppet instead of like a different subject type. So if you protect her at Bolivia it's going to be forever until you get the gold but if you do it this way you can just immediately next war uh, annex North Peru, get access to their gold immediately and then on top of all that I think it's less infamy and they also in the latest patch did nerf the Bolivia thing so I don't even think you could do the Bolivia trick anymore anyways and so the combination of all that is uh why yes my bad Loki, my bad the option to offer a different law during petition is amazing 100% agreed is super nice you feel like the updates don't justify the development time it's definitely a smaller update I think we get in easier this time too with the 22 stack or whatever. Bro, we don't. God. This war is so obnoxious. I do think they made this harder somehow. I don't know exactly what the mechanic is, but it feels harder than normal. Oh, I guess we have this too now. Are we supposed to just try and... Wait, why can't you plan a... You can't reach it. Bro, do we have a Shadow Realm Navy? Low key, this is not it. Okay. Alright, we're having more troops at the start, so maybe we can turn through them. We know that they're in default. In North Peru. This is so messy. Is performance much better mid late game? We haven't seen yet, but it seems worse lower game. You're jamming the Vic 3 scene. Thank you so very much. If only the game had EU4 or Hoey combat. Instead, it has like halfway in between. But not like in the good way. Yeah. I feel like the game is much slower now. This is kind of what I feel like. <laughs> I guess we'll see the results of a poll in a second. Or like, specifically if you're blasting speed 5. Ooh, maybe we get in? Yeah. Do these guys just need to think? Nope, we have a Shadow Realm Navy. That's certainly not ideal. Let's see what the people think. 70% of you guys say the game is slower. I guess we should have had, uh, like, the game... We should have had multiple, more than more options than that, right? So that's my mistake. We should have had the game is the same speed, the game's slower, the game's faster. But I guess if, like, yeah, I mean, it's, it could just be slower at the start, though. You never know what they do during updates that's not, uh, that is not directly content right now. Is it harder because they made the generals defend more? This might be it. Maybe they have a generals on defense. This would 100% explain it. If they had, like, 10% more on the stat, yeah. Time to buy a uh, top of line PC just to play Vic 3 at a normal piece. You'd say it's a draw. Yeah, so then you don't think it's slower. It's not that you think it's faster. But it also, if th if this is the speed we play late game too, though, this is I'm super fine with this adjustment where, like, uh, the speed is more constant. But a low key does seem slower. 
Nobody's saying the game's faster, trust me. <laughs> well, nobody's reached late game, right? The question isn't... Or, well, I think that that's like... Yeah. I think the dev team looked at all your vids and said it made cheese gaming harder. I mean, I definitely think that they closed cheesy loopholes. This feels so much harder, though. Like, this is 100% not how the difficulty level that it, we've seen in the past on this type of stuff. Um, I guess maybe we swap off of this landing with these guys. And instead land with these guys. We definitely want someone on advanced front. Now we're gonna take the we're gonna roll the dice nice. Mobile artillery is gonna make this a bit easier. We could also upgrade everything to lancers. Also, oh, you know what? I think it's letting them station guys in other areas, maybe. Oh, oh, they're so screwed now off of this. Liberate South Peru, return Antofagasta. But that's what we want. But yeah, the the fact that yeah, they're gonna get they're gonna get wrecked now. Because they have this other play and they're assigning people to that front. But that also makes it so we have to really have to land Antifagasta. The Shadow Realm Navy is unreal. I think we just disband it, right? We do need another one of those, so... Oh, it looks like they're also smart about merging it, because look, they, is this, or is this the UI that is merged in the UI, but not in, like, actuality? UK wants to take on our debt. Well, worst case scenario, they pull us into the customs union, so this seems fine to us. We get in for freezies, good dealsies. Now this one will land Antifagasta, because we do want to secure our interest there. So it looks like we're finally going to enforce here. And they are going to keep people on this front, so that's going to make things harder for them. I suppose if we're going to switch to all defend, if they... Yeah, we just want to have this secured. We should have moved him immediately. Do we want to incorporate this? Probably not immediately. Let's go all filing cabinets. Let's look at our trade routes. Let's see Paul Allen's trade routes. Please be calling in your obligation. No, they're not. But we, we're kind of cool with that. It's been a while since anyone's taken on our debt. They have economic imperialism. Maybe they adjust some of these values as well. What GPU do we have? Oh, it's just like some two gigabyte forever ago thing. The game's more CPU intensive though. Yeah, someone's saying CPU. Are you taking Peru for RP or resources pops? Resources pops. Well, I guess we'll see if we brick Portugal's war goal here. Right, because it looks like Chile is pushed in here. 
I really wish they put more army into Chile, but... We'll start pushing. It's gonna be really obnoxious if Chile enforces on them before we do. That'd actually be like... I actually cannot think of something that would be more obnoxious. We're in this forever war and then Chile enforces before we can. Please just advance towards- oh, they said that supposedly this is supposed to work better now. Please take it as quickly as possible. Oh my god, no, don't assi unassign from the front. Please. No! Chile, get out of here. You're drunk, go home. That, like, that breaks our war goal. They may have fixed Ravs, but they didn't fix that. Let's try some of this. Did we see the announcement of the DLC? Yeah. Stop playing on a potato PC. I mean, the the graphics card is not the problem. We're also not running the game on max graphics. Okay, so... We'll see if we can do this a little bit better. Just try and push and the fronts don't like freaking freak out and be weird and bad didn't we tell you to come over here forever ago okay whatever please let us occupy before peru we have 90 percent but the thing is, is what it does is it, if the AI controls any of it, it just gives them to them, I think, is how it works. Alright, so we occupy. Jesus. Peru means Turkey, the, bur uh, the burden of Brazilian Portuguese. Isn't that weird? That is a little interesting. You couldn't get a friend against Transwall due to split state, but uh, upon reload it's totally fine. Yeah. Because you get annexed Peru after right up to take the war, yeah. Get chillied, basically. Safe scumming indeed. Uh, yeah. Yep, definitely a safe scum. We controlled a larger percentage of La Paz, but they get it if it gets occupied. But yeah, definitely a safe scum. 100%. Not pretending like it's not. So here's what's gonna happen. North Peru is gonna annex all of these. And now we have the subject of Peru. Also, Chile is like, what the hell, man? <laughs> For a lot of reasons. <laughs> There's no more front to <laughs> If I was Chile, I would be sad, too. But we can go in and we can annex these guys immediately. Now, we do see that makes a lot of people big madge, but nobody who were too crazy... I guess Bolivia really cares, but they're the only one who really cares, it seems. And then the prediction is still not in Bolivia. And they might just back down. But having Antifagast is, like, good for a couple reasons. One is the company is really good there, but now we can annex immediately. So it's much faster access to the gold mines, which is really nice. And also, it's incredibly infamy efficient to be taking it like that. Wait, you walked away for a second? How did you end up landing? Uh, Chile uh, declared on them, so they moved around troops. And then Chile occupied the capital before us, so we reloaded. But then when we reloaded, we were able to occupy the capital first. So, yeah. 
Landowners are now big upset with us. Can we pass secret police? What do we need? Armed forces? Let's do some of this. And let's do secret... Ah, oh, what do we need first? As you can see, we're really not used to forcing that. I guess we'll do central archives in a little bit. Wow, their, their flag is, like, basically the same. Probably need to reach the chain log, but maybe the game feels harder because they made some AI improvements related to military systems. Yeah, so this is what something someone suggested is perhaps uh, the AI is actually utilizing the fact that um, uh, they're actually utilizing, like, defense when protecting against a landing. So that could be why it felt, like, way harder. And I 100% I think that, that that's, like, in terms of theories, that seems like a really good theory. So we're gonna try and land one side and just uh, push the other. But also, like, Antifagasta, we get access to the really good company earlier. You know, like, overall, I think that this, uh, like, this is the meta open, I think. Like, full stop is uh, this transfer business. But you have to be relatively large to do it, and apparently it's a lot harder. It's always been kind of a little bit hard. Ooh, I didn't realize we could swap that. We have a tool shortage? The hell? I mean, I guess we'll import it to not suffer. We have a trade agreement with Prussia. For France. We'll do some of that too. Yeah, and this is pretty painless for us. Relative to what we just did, which is hyper painful. Um, we will have some more interests. Alright, we already have a native one up here. Go Congo. I think we want one in La Plata for when there's a native uprising. We can do some cheese there, some cheeky cheese. How would you feel if uh, Chile safes come on you now? I would be annoyed, but also I think if the game were functioning, we occupied more of La Paz, but the way it works is if you and an AI occupy it, it always gives it to the AI. But yeah, <laughs> Chile safe scum, that'd be annoying. <laughs> if the AI could safe scum, that would be annoying. I don't think we're safe scumming to something that's, like, unreasonable, though. But. The military AI will not create explicit garrison formations and important HQs that will focus on defending and not travel too far from it. Yeah, so it's, they didn't send everything to the Chile front, and so we still had to fight in... But yeah, okay, taking this uh, Peru this way is nice. Yeah. I think Spain is about as small as you can to take both South Africa and Peru before 1846. Uh, this might be the case, considering how much struggle we had before this was definitely not the case. Like, on the latest patch, you could do it with people smaller than Spain, but it might be the case now. Yeah. Which I think is fantastic. I think it should be hard to do what we just did. We're just adjusting to the nature of it being hard. Alright, so obligation is for them is going to be going away soon. I guess we kind of weren't very heads up about this. Wow, we can rival so many people. Um, we're going to rival people that don't matter. Or that are just never going to side and plays against us, basically. And then we're going to try and improve relations with some boys. And then see if we can rival some more boys that are not going to be a problem. 
the amount of rivalries we can make is also seems a bit strange. We have way more options than we I think we normally would. Just looking to get a maximum float here. Sweden's not gonna have a lot of diplo interests, so they're probably not gonna they're probably not gonna have to deal with it very often. So this is going to be nice here. Same, you choose Spain rather than Portugal. I did it based on the votes. All right, so we want to see if you want to give this away using the obligation. Will you give anything else away? I don't really want the Sunda Islands. And you won't give that away. Alright. We're gonna lose this obligation soon anyways, so we're just gonna do this. Get the rest of this. Which is gonna be nice. Now I think we won't even have to deal with the Shadow Realm issues anyways. It's my understanding of how that works. And we could go after Brunei. There's a chance they back down here. Now we can take a look, and it looks like Bhutan really hates everyone. That's fair. I can respect that. But we don't see any sort of plus values over here. So we're not expecting to get sided against. Doesn't look close. I guess the one we really have to care about a lot is Great Britain. Looks like Great Britain's super on board with us doing this, though. Let's just protect right here. Portugal, Sweden, Belgium are going to be kind of hard now. Mid-sized powers. Are you excited about Spheres of Influence? Super excited. What major changes are you expecting in it? I'm expecting the Octopus RP. Saying that Spain is better than Portugal in any way is crime punishable by death. Putin came here and rigged the election, I see. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> I do like me some, some Putin jokes. Uh, we're gonna make this the South American army. We're gonna be operating in the region a lot. We're just gonna complete the full meta, the full meta thing, going for um. The last meta thing that we have left to do is go for Brunei. Belgium cut us off. Fair enough. Ooh, wait. Oh, transfer subjects. Yeah, no thanks. They are protective towards us. But they want... What subject do you even want here? Oh, Philippines or Cuba. Makes sense. Can we ask to join the customs union? Spain is not part of a customs union. Dag nabbit. We can't ask to join customs unions. Bro, my kingdom to be able to join a customs union like that. Macau. Oh. Yeah, we should have checked Macau. Macau would have been really nice. Has performance increased this update? Uh, it seems like the game's going slower. Is that a mod that adds infamy to the top part? No, that's in vanilla now. Are 1.5 saves compatible with uh, 1.6? Almost certainly not, but I haven't checked. This is not something I have checked. Je suis un chouchou. I suppose in a couple hours, uh, well, it's been, we've been live for like three hours now. 
Um, we're going to see if people want to go over the changes, because it's not going to necessarily be all the same people. Do people want to see... Uh, spheres changes, and maybe at 12.30... Uh, keep playing. Uh, or we could show it later. We'll start the poll, see how people are feeling about that. And then mechanical tools, you say? I think that also gives us... Ooh, yikes. this we'll import a little bit for now looks like they backed down right yeah um and we need to do a play that's gonna cost us a decent chunk of infamy ecuador is gonna be well actually i kind of like going for new granada we don't have a diplo interest in the region though see here we see the USA looks like no one's intending to deal or intervene although Bolivia might Argentina might Chile might just because they want us to stop doing this and maybe Austria might I guess we'll take a save and see how this shakes out looking to restore the uh the Spanish Empire if you speak Spanish you're coming with us Increased immigration rating, or they change the same? They change the way it works, and so I'm not sure exactly how it's going to shake out, but they made the, um, ooh, we can pass a lot. They made one thing a lot stronger, which is the, uh, the, the decree to increase it. They made that a lot stronger. Oh, uh, yeah, we wanted to go militarized police force, and then we couldn't. Let's go colonial exploitation, though. Let's restore the colonial empire. Upgrade everything. It looks like this is all cav, so we maybe use this as a rapid advance army anyways. Send these guys on over too, as well. My game from 1.5 seems to work. Interesting. You set your guys to defense. Your allies take my battalions. So you can, on offense, are they taking it, or are they taking your battalions on defense? Because you have to, on formation settings, you have to untick this if you don't want them to bar on defense. Although I haven't tried unticking that, I think you do want to bar on defense. This is not 1.5. This background music has been stuck on for a while. We'll change it. It might be a bug. Let's do this. Thank you for letting me know. This is the type of thing I don't notice. Trade agreement from Russia. Dynam wants maybe in the customs union. I guess they improved relations with us. They might have changed the AI quite a bit on some of these, like, in some of these ways. I mean, if they fixed uh, borrowing on offense, that'd be fantastic as well. I don't think they did. They're fearful. We'll give them a couple more reasons to back down. Brazil is Crimea. It's called Cisplane, uh... This is Palatine, aka Uruguay. I have all the goodies, at least UI wise. I don't think it ever was. Oman tends to lose Zanzibar even if they weren't their subjects, and that's where all your infamy goes. Yeah, so, uh. Oh, in terms of this being meta? Uh, yeah, so it takes a lot longer to annex them, uh, and what happens is if, if the ruler of Oman dies, once this guy dies, and he starts fairly old, uh, Zanzibar breaks free automatically. This is like a scripted event. And so, borrowing on offense works now? Oh, that's such a nice change. But, 
Um, once this guy dies, uh, Zanzibar automatically breaks free, and yeah, having to spend a bunch of infamy to, like, not get the Zanzibar thing is actually really obnoxious, so... We've stopped going for Oman as much as a result. Looks like you guys... Uh, generally speaking, want to see spheres changes. Okay, so we're gonna... At 12.30, we're going to... 12.30 PST, we are gonna take another look at the spheres changes, but... These guys are set to push, so they should be able to borrow from this army, right? Because we're set to allow it, so... Yeah, we're gonna do slow down because we're still in introduction phase, but... We'll see how this shakes out. Now, where are you guys from? What is your story of Galatia? Toledo. Okay, we're gonna merge you... With our bigger stack, I guess? I don't know how these guys broke away. I think we are going to, yeah, we're going to designate or make it clear that these guys are our this stack. They're our cavalry stack. I mean, I guess we could land with them as well. Really just make this war... A lot more straightforward. Yeah, we'll just make the war... We, we'll tidy up the war a little bit faster. That'll give us a little bit more flexibility. Because we're only on 8 infamy. We do actually want to... It'll make it uh, different. The strongest nation to play in your opinion. It depends like what your goal is and what, like, what the context is. Uh, but overall, I think that... So like... Prussia, if you're going for, like, a world uh, conquest, Prussia, you can control the forming of Mega Germany, which is, like, pretty significant. And you don't need to be hyper-powerful at the game start in order to have, like, a really, really strong trajectory. Um, for GDP, like, rushing to 1 billion GDP, Great Chain is very clearly the best. Um, you can make an argument that, like, France is really strong, but I think it's between those three in the context of single player. Great Chain, Prussia, or France is going to be best. For a lot of different reasons. We can pull this. Why don't we pull? Why don't we see what the people think? So, we're going to do the spheres changes in about 10 minutes. But, um, strongest country. And why don't we just toss UK in there? Although I don't think UK is the strongest. Um, but Qing is economically going to be the strongest. Just because you have this massive population and a ton of money. Uh, Prussia... Uh, is in particular good because you can force the unification um, and you get really big. And of the two, Prussia and Austria, Prussia is better. And then France has insane bonuses and the strongest military at game start. I mean, France has the strongest military overall at game start. They don't have the navy, um, but yeah, we'll see. What about Russia? Russia is also very strong. Russia has the best resources. So, like, in terms of long term prospects on resources, like, Russia's one of the best if not the best especially if you go for persia early on but anyone can go for persia early on um but like russia is really strong as well like russia would probably be like we're excluding austria because we're thinking of this as just like germany formation because like germany austria like prussia is not way better than austria just the entire forming of germany is like the thing uh, but yeah like russia would be next like they'd be they'd be ahead of the usa um I think I think they're also ahead of the UK. So I didn't know you used protector at the first war, then reduce autonomy, and then conquer most of the states and the subject discount. Must have been lucky with leader deaths. Yeah, you can get lucky with Oman. But it's like it's not that common. Like so I would rather just take Zanzibar off of them directly for the colonization reasons. Uh, and I think what we're going to do next is we're going to go for Congo for the native interest and eventual Congo uh, and the eventual conquest reasons. We could, I forget we can also annex Philippines and the, the likes of them. We don't really care about some of these. Um, do we care about war reps? I mean, I guess it'd be kind of nice. I guess we're running positive balance. We shouldn't be doing that. It's clearly a mistake. What are we doing? We're talking to Chad is what we're doing. Rookie mistake. I think we have some... We have a little bit of an infrastructure problem there. I think we're researching railroads right now. Yeah. We're going to get to see the choo-choos. Maybe we can see some of the choo-choos. 
We might not show off the choo choos at 12.30, but we are going to show off the spheres changes again. No Sokoto option? Unfortunately not. Easiest to dismantle, dismantle GDPs immediately as Great Britain. Is it easiest to dismantle GDPs as Great Britain? This might be true, because you don't have to deal with... You can land them and cheese them. France also might be easier. France has the best military at game start in terms of the land army, but like you can recruit up as Great Britain. Great Britain has a ton of money. Who's your favorite nation to play? Probably overall Qing. Um, but I also like playing, like, Belgium. Oh, it changes to Quito. Nice. I also like playing, like, uh, Belgium. I like playing the guys who have good resources, so Persia, uh, Prussia is all pretty fun. But you've never had Zanzibar split off when you go for Oman at the start. Yeah, it, I mean, it's just something that can happen, so it's like... Oh, we didn't even read. We gotta read. I guess if we get punished, we get punished, huh? Oop. I thought we were holding alt. We were not. France views this as a potential threat. Please stop. I thought we had a trade agreement. That was maybe the France of yesteryear. Oh, we can nuke a lot of these routes, I think. Take a look at the poll results in just a second here as well. We gotta build more tools ourselves. It's gonna be like about to export tools. It's like no shot we can export tools if we can import tools like that. We also have to get on the steel as well, the steel train. Alright, we were just hoping that maybe they'd transfer for like uh ban slavery, but Putting these in so they're more likely to back down, of course. Ah, oh, we got 1k messages today on Restream. Big nice. How must a UK player behave in uh, multiplayer to keep the lead? Is it uh, fingers and pies? I think that the convoy rating is really strong in multiplayer, but... Especially if you want to micro it, I think it's pretty obnoxious too. You always like playing as two Sicilies. Two Sicilies is nice, they have good map beat. And uh, doing one of the, doing any of the like uh, major nation formations like feel a lot of fun. It just like feels good, so. We'll just do that one. Land battle also slower, AI much better at it. AI is much better at land battle. Russia seems strongest, fast reforms, attacks a lot of pop, uh, can fight anyone from the start. Persia beats Russia in a 1v1 if they, like, had a land border, because Russia doesn't start with skirmish. Uh, you think Great Britain actually has stronger military than France due to India assisting? I don't think the their help always helps. TBH. I don't know, let's see what the people think. Wow, that's such a close vote. Between Qing, France, UK, Prussia? Holy shit. And no one thinks, uh... Alright, Portugal joining is a, a bit of a mood. It's a bit of a vibe here. I think we're gonna just take war reps off of Portugal. I don't think we're going to protect her at Portugal, which uh, would be a little bit tempting, but I don't think we're ever going to do this um, unless Great Britain is, uh, unless we're on the same side of a play as Great Britain. And I don't think we're strong enough to, I think we also like want to maybe have either an obligation or on the same side of a play with them. There's a South Indian separatist movement. Did I check the new company bonuses this patch? I think that was, uh, I don't think they redid them. I guess we could take a look here. Uh, but my understanding is they didn't actually redo the companies. I believe that was uh, a carryover for 1.5. But we can take a quick look. We're kind of closing in on 
12.30, though, so I think we're going to be looking at some of the stuff. Uh, infrastructure, this looks normal. I don't know if that innovation is new. Looks like now we're in generics, so we're going to stop potential companies. Uh, convoys and Australia's approval. The problem is I don't necessarily have everything memorized. That actually looks a little bit different. 10% offense, 5% steel mills. How much did they change stuff? This is the same as before. This company's really good. It's in Lima. No, wait. This isn't that company. I'm not that company guy. I'm not that guy company. I don't remember this. Ilva, I think, is the same. I'm not sure. I guess we, we're going to have to look at a lot more of them. But this is about AI. French AI is the best. Yeah. Biggest update change? Definitely 1.5. I would agree with that. I vote for British because they don't have to transfer EIC and have the strongest suite early. Yeah, it also depends what level of cheese you want to do because you can, like, infamy reset and stuff. So, like, I don't know. It depends, it depends what you mean by all the things. You know what I mean? I guess we... I guess we should have considered taking some of this stuff off Portugal, but I don't think we want to. I think we eventually just want to subjugate, so... Is Feeland Electric Company still busted? It might be. We can't check it in-game if we don't have an interest in the region. But I think it's time that we go over some of the changes. I'm just gonna assign this guy to the front so we don't forget, because that's the type of thing we would do. And I guess maybe we're gonna use this, the Shadow Realm army as well here. Uh, and then we are going to take a look at some of the changes, because you guys were interested in seeing that. So, because it's been several hours now, and uh, we can take a look at some of these spheres of influence changes. Alright, so, browser time. Thank you, Mozillist, for the tier 1 sub. Thank you so very much. Be nice. I don't know why my update, uh, my, the sound for updating me when whatever happens is not working. I have to, I have to look into that. But we have here, uh, update. Uh, today is not only the free update Black Current 1.6, we also have an update uh, about the expansion pack, Spheres of Influence, which is going to drop on May 6th, and a surprise for a pack for, a surprise free pack for all the players. First up, the free track bonus, Choo Choo, that is Je Suis Un Choo Choo. Can I get some Je, je Suis Un Choo Choo's in chat? Uh, but we have become Choo Choo, Destroyer of Worlds. And that is a bunch of new trains. Give us an HD. There's also, and I advise checking this out if you are interested, this guy talking about all the trains, train pack a deep dive. I don't think we're going to do this unless there's overwhelming desire to watch this guy talk about trains for an 11 minutes again. Uh, it's but a great locomotive. Everybody was using this design from like, and the he's last super hyped. instances of the class being retired. Oh, let's it's find the this class one. 170 list. Most famous for its... Uh, central role in the Montparnasse crash, where it actually <laughs> had its brakes fail, blasted right through a terminus, crashed through the outer wall of reliable. the station, and then tumbled down a floor into the street below. It's not the most reliable of locomotives. <laughs> but... 
But he goes, he talks about trains for 11 minutes. It's pretty cool. You get some Je suis in the chat. But uh, we have a bunch of different trains that will have art assets. He breaks it down. You can see it. It's on Paradox's channel for Victoria 3. And so if you wanted to see that, wow, we're not subscribed. That's wild. I would have think we were subscribed to that. Okay. Um, but, and then we also have Spheres of Influence, which Peggy allows you to 12. RP as a octopus. Well, you did it. You united them into one powerful block. One banner, one ideology. Your good friends came gladly. And though some required a slightly firmer grip, Sport. not a single bullet has been fired. Just, uh. Both times one. I show up, we're watching the train, man. <laughs> <laughs> all right so that's that um and so releasing on may 6th put it in your calendar uh is going to be spheres of influence i love the art on this um very very nice you got the whole big shebang um and you put your diplomatic skill to the test there's going to be a ton of features we're just going to kind of look through the features um, fierce competitions use your prestige to become a great power and create your own power block so there's going to be introducing a power block mechanic um, dominate other nations etc um, you will be able to customize it and create the look of it we're going to have a lot of people making offensive things all hail the octopus uh, and then the great game there's going to be a bunch of stuff in central asia between russia and U uk we're going to take a look at some of these um uh, what is it? Uh, the screenshots in uh, in the in the Steam page, and so we're gonna look at this. Foreign investment is gonna be a huge one, allowing you to directly invest into your subjects, um, or not just subjects, but anyone who you have uh, an agreement with. Sudden octopus is the scariest type of octopus. Um, octopuses are really cool because they're super smart. They can like open jars and stuff. Anyways, nationalization. You can use a diplo play to seize foreign assets in your country and prevent your wealth from going overseas. Like this combined with this, just seems like it's gonna be such a blast. To figure out what the correct strategies for this type of thing are on top of i imagine if you generate a ton of infamy they will be able to just nationalize the assets uh for like zero infamy or something like this which is interesting uh subject interactions adjust the payments from your vassals interest group lobbies is a mechanic i'm so excited for and they've like not done anything to suggest but your interest groups will form lobbies that will want you to have a certain international type of things and so this can be a reason why going high infamy is bad uh i i think that the game should punish you more for high infamy we don't like playing high infamy and it'll be really cool if this is uh kind of the way things go build majestic monuments i assume since it's going to emphasize your power blocks influence and domination i assume they're going to give some sort of bonuses more historical flavors and we can see here they're mainly just kind of repeating the same thing but power blocks foreign investment great game interest group lobbies this type of stuff so to that end, let's actually take a look at some of these screenshots um, for some of these features uh, that are present in the uh, Discord. Um, so uh, we have here, uh, this is a power block uh, where we have, look at all these countries inside the power block. We have the leader here. Um, we have principles. It looks like you can set the principles. Like we have construction three, whatever that means. I don't know what that means, but um, we can invite countries and the, uh, we have the central identity pillar is a customs union so and then there's cohesion there's like so many things in here where we can only speculate what this uh means but uh, uh it's very 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 exciting uh, i love how patch 1.6 explicitly says 3v3v3 3v3 is a good idea does it really oh no wait we see you we we read the username and then we realized what was going on uh, agitation for 3v3v3 3v3 continues um, but we have the form power block you can make your own insignia this type of stuff I assume someone's gonna make it the anime girl like the I assume day one we're gonna have the anime girls power block mod but um, 
Okay. Uh, we have this. This is part of the great game. This looks just like so dope, but we'll see exactly how... I don't know if this is a feature of Power Blocks, the partial incorporation of Power Blocks, this type of stuff, uh, but it's super exciting. And then we have some diplomacy stuff where you're seeing more interactions. These are overlord interactions where you can do a bunch of stuff. Uh, point colonial government and knowledge sharing, raise subject payments, reduce subject payments, exempt from service, um, I'm guessing exempt from service is definitely one you're going to want to put in on your really small powers that the tiny little e -d 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 like units aren't very useful anyways. Um, and so this will be a thing. Uh, we see puppet, puppet, personal union, dominion. Uh, that looks kind of normal. Looks like we could do all these interactions. It looks like this. I don't know what this is about. Uh, oh, actually, look at this. Look at this stuff. I think what this suggests is you might be able to diplomatically rank them up to the next thing, right? Because that's the vassal icon. This is the dominion I Oh, no, this isn't the dominion icon. What icon is this? But maybe this progress bar represents a sort of diplomatic way to integrate. That'd be super cool if this is how this works. Um, but let's continue on. We have the lobbying mechanic. So this is... I'm super excited for it. We see two interest groups are supporting this lobby. And we see they have an appeasement of two. I don't know what the appeasement's going to do. If it gives you bonuses. If it prevents, like, turmoil or this type of stuff. But we see that we increase appeasement by creating a trade agreement. Creating alliance. Form a defense pact. Improving relations. Harming relations or embargoing uh, rivals. This type of stuff. And then by being kind of basically a bad neighbor, we uh, decrease appeasement. And so in this way, we... And we see this icon, which I don't even know what this means. I think this means foreign investment, maybe. Something like this up in the upper right. But this is uh, there's there's some things going on. The things be thangin'. Uh, we do see also the Great Game, which is going to be a struggle between uh, Great Britain and Russia. We see here in a lot more choices and a lot more um, sorts of, uh, like, tags that are at the start of the game. We see Turkmenia is... Uh, decentralized nation um and a bunch of these new guys and so this is interesting and so i assume there's going to be a lot more resources and juice in this area and reasons for going for this area and so this is going to be exciting more autonomy to the right of the bar less autonomy to the left of the bar makes sense um and then we have here privatization so we can allow investors to buy the mines and these investors won't just be foreign although they can be foreign but we will have this stuff which this is uh, the manor house right which appears to be the holding house for all these companies that have been publicly bought and so we have like subsistence farms are owned rye farms are owned and they're owned by the aristocrats over here uh, i'm thinking what this is uh, it doesn't look like there are any employees which is fantastic because employees would uh, hurt performance um and uh, so we don't want, the, or maybe there are employees, that's that 3.5k, but hopefully it's just ownership class. The more different types of employees, the more we'll make the game lag. But this is how all of the ownership and stuff gets organized. And so if you are buying something in foreign investment, you'll get like a manor house or whatever in your area. We do see the drip, as it were. I think that there was something else we needed to see. But yeah, we see the drip, new drip, new clothes, who dis. Um, and then we also see... Uh, you know, extra new drip. And then uh, we see Persia has, of course, changed color. Persia's not blue. I like this color better, but you guys you guys disagree. Uh, and then here's what we were talking about, where we have financial districts now as an industry. And you can see the ownership. Like, there's an 8 on this steel mill. There's a 4 over here. There's a 3 here. And so the fact that you can open stuff up to investment, and then it gets purchased, and now it's capital is owned... I guess, or like super capitalist owned. I don't know exactly what all this stuff means, but this is very, very, very exciting. I'm super hyped about this. Uh, did sick lose states? They, oops. We could take a look if sick uh, lost states. It does look like they lost uh, Chitral a little bit uh, and maybe part of Kabul. I'm not sure, but this is so very, very, very exciting. So this is kind of where we get uh, a lot of that update from. Uh, is a combination, if you wanted to check this out, this is on the Steam library that we're getting all these screenshots, uh, which is very exciting. The last update was today. Uh, it's going to be coming out on May 6th. Uh, and then they also have this up. And there is, I think, going to be another dev diary. Um, we will have our last dev diary on 1.6 tomorrow. Uh, on March 7th, and so this is big nice, and so let's get back into the game. 
let's get back in the game. I think we might revisit that in like three or four hours or so for the people who haven't seen it, uh, but did just want to show that off a little bit and we are back in game. Let's get our chat back. Thank you again, Mausolist, for the sub. Although I think that was a while back. So I think we are good to go now. Glad we moved the armies for when we would forget. This is super big nice. Let's see also how we're doing on the numbers. Let's see Paul Allen's numbers. Wow, we have so many viewers. Oh, on both Twitch and YouTube. I think that's... We haven't had that many in Twitch in a while. Or like, kind of ever. But we are going after... I think we need a little bit more hype music. Because we're fighting Portugal here. That's a little more hype, I suppose. But it looks like we're slowly gaining progress into Portugal. We will be landing into here soon, TM. Uh, yeah, once our navy gets there. And so this should be a relatively painless enforcement. Uh, and then this is the uprising. Could be from publicly traded. It could be. Uh, Mr. Reason for Peru, Bolivia reason. Because someone that repost, I can explain it to you. Um, so the reason why is that when you uh, take North Peru and you release the others, they will fuse with North Peru. Uh, becoming a single state uh, and so this is going to be good for you because you will be able to annex it immediately it's a puppet and so this transfer allows you to annex immediately and get immediate access to the gold on top of this uh, apparently uh, I believe if you subjugate Bolivia they don't actually annex them anymore as part of the change that was made so you will get them as a subject but you're just getting them as a subject so it's like subjugating the Netherlands in order to get the Dutch East Indies uh, and because they are not going to be annexing them, it seems like, is a big part of the change um, as well. But even without that, um, you were getting so much free stuff and also free reduce autonomies and also getting the gold way faster uh, by just releasing North Peru and then, uh, or sorry, subjugating North Peru and releasing the other two. They all fuse, you get access to the other two for basically free and then you could also just take antifagasta for the company uh and then immediately be able to push in which is what we did and we annexed it and so we have all of this like 15 years faster than we otherwise normally would um if we were to just subjugate the other ones so let them riot let them eat cake or each other i suppose we have a construction sector there so i think we're gonna do this and then if we don't have a construction sector, we're going to put one at the back of the queue. And do this. Desperate times call for desperate allies. How will Persia be, be blue attract 3v3v3 meta? I assume people will pick Persia more frequently. Oh, did we, forgot to, uh, did we forget to do war ups from... Or did we enforce war ups on Portugal? Wait, what? Did we just miss them capitulating? I guess maybe that's what happened. Okay. Well, these guys are done, so we'll enforce. These guys are about to be done, so we'll just stand this stuff down. You can't get the landowners or you're back as Austria. Is there a way to force corn laws as Austria? Probably not, but that would be the way to do it. I forget. It's been a while since we did our Austria run. I think we've also only played Austria once. Wow, we have way more authority. We should be spending it. Um, well, we don't really need to bolster the industrialists now. We could bolster the intelligentsia. In fact, this is more legitimate. Um... Bolstering the intelligence is generally good. We could also actually use, look to use our authority. Did our authority get... Hmm. Were we using our authority somewhere and then it got just bricked? Also don't hate using these better greener grass campaigns to seed it. Yeah, let's try and... Well, it's not going to be good there yet. But let's actually try something. We're going to greener grass in Castile. And then we're going to do that. And why we're greener grassing in Castile is 
So the new mechanic for cultural communities, I think, is interesting. And we're increasing migration attraction a ton here. So we ha should have an additional plus 20. Um, and the idea is, is that we want to seed cultural communities in that region uh, so that mass migration is going to be easier. I guess Galicia is higher. <gasps> mass migration attraction is not affected by that, it seems. Can this tooltip lock? This tooltip can't lock, really? The, cool t the tooltip just can't lock. I would like to know why they have the mass migration they have. The tooltip's not locking, though. Whoa, I want to know why. Tell me why. That's migration attraction of this. Oh, migration attraction compared to the average in the Spanish market. Okay. But seeding things with the mass migration is going to become better, I think. And by that, I mean getting the cultural community there and then just lifting it because that way migration will, more migration will happen without it needing to be quite as high. Did I check the canned meat option? I did not. There's supposed to be another one, though. Let's take a look. Canned meat versus canned fish. I still think you can the fish, but eventually late game you switch to canning meat. Vacuum and packaging, you need both. I love it, but don't you find it boring to say meta every time with Conquering Transvaal? A little bit, but like... This is- it's just so much better. Appreciate the explanation, Choo Choo. Zesui and Choo Choo. So is it just me, or bankrolls seem to stop if country went into default? Uh... It always stops when it goes into default. Is it five years no matter what now? I don't know. This is a change. Why don't you play with the middle click lock setting? I suppose we probably should be. <clears throat> well, to answer the question, we're not used to... ...having to do that. And then we, like, right-click to open the content context menu. <laughs> but this doesn't, this doesn't open anything we care about. <laughs> like, it's not... <laughs> They added offensive borrowing. They did? Okay, this is great. Let's incorporate all these. I didn't want to build a railroad there eventually. We'll just put these gold mines at the back of the queue. What are we researching right now? Railways? I don't think we want this next. I think we do want... Man, I'm so excited for spheres. That's, some of those features look so, so sweet. It's a setting. I know it's a... Well, I mean, we can... We also, we, I mean, we do want to look at the thing. For those of you who don't know, timed lock is going to be time or action lock. We're not going to show nudity, definitely not. But changing these settings so that the, the thing locks way faster is like the first thing you do when playing this game. But. See, middle button, we want to have it on middle button to do the thing. I also don't want to be coming through this too much. I don't see, I don't see lock, uh where the action lock is in terms of the button. So we're, we're just gonna move on and I'll look it up later. What's up, Arcade, how's it going? 
Imagine the game slow down after you, oh, Spheres of Influence releases. This is... This is the thing. What do constructed sectors do? They allow you to... They go burr is what they do, to be honest. If we're being real. They go burr. We're gonna recruit up mainly Navarra, because Navarra's gonna have best access to the super cheap iron. The construction queue is healing. Or is it? So they should have control of roughly half the queue. Nope, the bug's not fixed. The bug's not fixed. So they're paying for a little less than half of the queue in the private construction queue. But they're getting control of 75% of the queue. Bugs not fixed. Bro. Bro. I guess we'll end the poll. So you guys thought that Qing was the strongest, and then UK, and then France, and then Prussia. F, basically. Oh, this is such an obnoxious bug. We might seize control of the queue as a result of this bug. It's really annoying. It took a while for it to show up. General molding time, basically. How oh, can we swap that without needing to? Oh, let's load and see if we can keep all our auto expands by doing it like that. I know you. I've never done this before, but I know you can do it. Didn't they say they were not able to reproduce it? That's what they said. But, like, uh, you can't repro- uh, I think that it's- Yeah, well, I don't know. I don't have an answer. I'm disappointed. This is, like, easily the most annoying bug, so... The bug only shows up with a lot of construction. If you start as GP, it happens early. Yeah. What is the bug? So the way it works is um, your investment pool transfer, whatever proportion of the construction good cost is, that's how much control is supposed to be given to the private construction queues. So you, you see here is roughly half. It's supposed to give half control of the private construction queue to the private construction. What the construction bug does is instead of giving it a proportional amount, it just gives it the absolute maximum amount. Under laissez-faire, that's 75% private construction queue allocation. So this means that you are using government funds to fund the private construction queue, which gives you way less agency as a player to construct what's building, and it's not working as designed. Um, now, if it was as designed, we wouldn't really super hate it, to be honest. Um, but it's not how it's supposed to be working, and so, as a result, we do super hate it because it's, like, really annoying. Uh, make of the Protectorate. Is anyone going to thumb our pie over this? So, like, we can see that USA is a little bit less likely to join. We can take a little bit of a save, but we do see France. Look at this. Okay, we see France has a positive attitude and a negative one towards us. So we're going to save and we're going to see if this means France joins. Looking to get data points here. If you reduce the construction queue to like five buildings, the bug will go away. But as soon as you queue a lot, it comes back. Oh, interesting. Sounds pretty laissez unfair to me. You are right, my guy. We're going to see... So we're kind of expecting 
to see France side against us. And it's going to be exciting if they do, because this will be a data point for the type of threshold where they have a slightly positive reason to su supporting New Granada. Maybe Sphere's influence update, it maybe gets fixed. I'm going to be upset if they don't fix it before then. <laughs> But the construction bug is not fixed. It, it, to be fair, it took us longer to like actually spot it than like w what we normally would have taken. So we don't see an immediate side against us. And France sides with New Granada. Okay. So we have our data point. They sided with them for free. They had a positive value. And so this kind of lets us know that even though I assume this is a roll and maybe doesn't happen deter deterministically, but they're slightly likely to side with them, maybe? Is how this works? PDX should give you a chance to test their patches. Uh, I think they will for spheres, specifically. We'll see, though. Um, so we can't go after them. Philippines and Cuba. I think they're both puppets, so I think we could only just annex them. Yeah, I don't think there's reducing autonomy anywhere. You see, Etche looks like they would want to support them. Interesting. I'm not sure this is exactly what we want. We do need to generate a decent chunk of infamy. You know what we can do is we can go for Zanzibar. I think I like this. I think I like going for Zanzibar here. Or, I mean, we could see if we could protect her like someone like this. Right? Where, hey, we don't see a positive value anymore. Except from Costa Rica. So France is unlikely to side against us, so maybe we can go after Venezuela. The thing is, is we had so much trouble landing. I We should be able to land that nine stack, though. Okay. And we want to restore the Spanish Empire as part of our kind of RP, so we, have, we do have to go after these guys. Venezuela refused our demands. So Sag. Let's ship over here. The mobile artillery and one. Let's we'll trade skis. And now we're expecting to not get Spain siding against us. Yeah, we'll take that. Seems like, uh, true, leash true capitalism, cheat the state, pay for your stuff. Yeah, it's a feature, not a bug. So the construction bug is still a thing, yes. To be honest, direct construction has always been a lot better anyways, just more reason to use it. Uh, I like the simulation better, and it requires a lot less clicking, and we can record and make content a lot faster without the bug, to be fair. And we're going to spend a lot more time, like, fiddling with our queue than uh, just kind of giving the general idea of what our queue should do, and then the private construction fills in the gaps is kind of more how it goes normally. Also, like, I, 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 I like the thing. We're going to need to put in a ton of auto-expands now, because the, like, instead of just being able to focus on kind of what we want to focus on, so... But yeah, you, you're correct for the absolute most high power level play. You actually would rather have direct control. But better... From a gameplay experience, I don't think it's better. From a, like, maximize the GDP. Or, like, do as pushed a thing as possible, I agree. Is it safe to come back? Haven't played in a while, is it safe to come back? Uh, what was your complaint before that made you want to leave? Maybe th that'll help me to be able to answer your question. I never left, so... Uh, the construction bug is kind of annoying, though. It'd be nice if the pre-diplomatic window gave an estimated number of convoys after conquering protectorating. That would be nice. 
For me, that's kind of a low priority, though. Russia has way more cav at game start. That makes sense, right? I like the RP aspect of running LF in an economy you have to work around with private money builds. I, I, I've said this a bunch. I wouldn't mind as much if it was working as designed. The thing is, is like making guides for the game and then like the guide is like, are you going to make the guide around the bug or are you going to make it around how the game actually is? Uh, like, I don't like this. Like, I don't like making a guide around the construction queue operating normally when it doesn't operate normally. I guess one of these maybe goes in back. Nah, we'll, we'll finish all that up. Actually, let's do this and then kick this one to the back. Should be fine. Hi, so is the update cool? Update's super cool. It like, uh, if you've been wanting to play on Iron Man, it basically makes Iron Man viable uh, because the diplomatic plays are much less opaque. Um, I'm not sure why the bug under LF don't automatically gain 75% control for whatever. You're not sure why it's a bug? Because that's not the way the game is supposed to work. The game, it's, it's supposed to be proportional to the amount of money they contribute. So here, the the they're contributing, like, what is this, 45%? Uh, so this is the amount that's coming from reinvestment. And so what it's supposed to do is, however much a reinvestment is paying for for the construction, they get to decide what's built. So the private investors, they're reinvesting the money, um, okay. And then on top of this, the state, the country of Spain, is investing an additional, what is this, uh, 31,000, and they're building whatever they want to build. But what's happening is that they're getting control of, instead of getting control of where 25,000 of these dollars are going, or these ducats, or these doubloons, instead they're getting control of 45,000. And so, uh, like, in terms of what it's supposed to represent, I don't think it makes sense. Um, they've never automatically gained 75% uh, control of the queue, uh, but that is the ceiling for how much they can pay for. So before, under interventionism, which is 50% allocation, the absolute max that this you could get from the investment pool transfer was 30.5K in this situation. And other than that, the investment pool would just grow. So having a higher investment pool uh, thing is actually an advantage you want it to be higher to uh, have a because this allows you to make you bigger use of your investment pool instead of having it grow um and under laissez-faire the maximum would be like 45k but it would not be uh it, this would be the maximum not uh the the absolute ceiling not it wouldn't always go to the ceiling immediately You wish there was a middle ground not to correct, but the Thomas Q can be fed a bunch of priorities. Well, that's kind of like how it feels with, ah, what happened? Is the stream still going? Something refreshed. You don't like that. I think it's still going. Okay. Um, <clears throat> but the, the, what exactly is the construction bug doing? Uh, it is giving, it is giving, um, the private queue maximum allocation based on your economic system law instead of proportional allocation. How come you don't want more flavor in the game? Uh, your 1,000 hours an hour video, I do want more flavor. What do, you, what do you mean? When did I say I didn't want more flavor? There's some flavor stuff that I don't care about. Like, I don't care that... Look, I like trains, my guys. I'm probably not going to notice too much on the, the train update, to be honest. I know this is... I know this is... Controversial. Happy Batch Day. Happy Batch Day to you too, name. I'm not sure what difference it makes, uh, but the investment pool is empty. Um, so generally speaking, what happens is the investment pool will clear out when you're on laissez-faire and will get to zero. And this is this means you're fully utilizing it. And then you will be paying a proportional amount. And you pay the rest, or who is paying? The government pays. So the government is paying for privately controlled construction. Which, to be fair, I think that this, as a simulation, wouldn't be terrible. But the point is, is it's not operating as intended. Like, if this were the case, then I think laissez-faire would not necessarily be the best law. It would be the best law after you have, like, one or two thousand construction. And before then, I think interventionism would be better. It would change the metagame. Like, um... We would have never swapped to laissez-faire. 
Uh, is that uh, possible why the funds weren't matching the designated allocation? I don't know exactly what you mean by that question. We could deal with less unique cultures, to be honest. Wait, the bug's not fixed? The bug is not fixed. I thought the bug was fixed. It took us a lot longer to hit the bug, but we... We hit the bug, and so we swapped back to uh, privately controlled construction. Guy with Greek name, more cultures means more lag. Ah, uh, yeah, if that's what you're talking about, yeah, I don't want more cultures in the game. I want more mechanics for different nations. I don't want more cultures. More cultures bad. More cultures make lag. This is exactly the answer. I think we... We'll get started on some of the auto-expands that we normally want in. Like this. This. And the auto-expands sort of simulate the private queue, but we want the stuff expanding in particular where we want it. We want the paper mills here in the capital. We want the arts academies here. Um, we're also approaching having like a decent amount of construction. Uh, so I think we're going to level 5 a uni here. So we'll do that. At the back of the queue, colonial exploitation is coming in. You always use interventionism, so you never notice. It's not as noticeable on interventionism. Yeah. Um, it's very acute on laissez-faire, because it feels like you can't clear the queue. And normally what happens if you have 75% allocation on laissez-faire, you just add more construction and it's super whatever, because that's an indication that you have a huge investment pool, but you don't actually have a huge investment pool. And so, yeah. Can armies still be shadow banned in 1.6? Not only can armies be shadow banned, it appears that navies can too now. Which is a development of sorts. What did we just pass? We, I feel like we just passed something I completely... Okay, we got the... Yeah, we got the law. Got it. Wow, it's so tempting to tax tobacco. That's a lot more money. <sighs> Do we want to hurt the lower strata to tax tobacco? How many peasants we have? What's our peasant distribution look like? Like over half is peasants. Maybe we're supposed to tax tobacco. Maybe we're supposed to tax tobacco. Get started with the colonial stuff. Census suffrage we don't hate. We know that we want to actually somehow swap to private health insurance. Who wants NOR health system? Those guys do. Okay, so we're going to reform the government. We're going to go no health system. Well, actually, we can't replace yet. Repeal and replace? Jesus. I'm getting flashbacks. We're going to stay state religion because nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition. Um, I suppose we actually want to go cultural exclusion, though. That way we can siphon off pops from our subjects. Hmm... We could try to go dedicated police force. That'll spark a rev. Do we care? Yeah, maybe we don't want to rev them. We don't want to rev their engine. Looks like they're revving either way, though. Or they're, they're going to rev in response to anything we do. Unless we piss off just them. Would like us some sense of suffrage over oligarchy. Let's see if we can do that. The people is agitating for it anyways. So we'll be able to pass it through pretty quick. And we'll see just how big the rev looks. If it looks big, we might back down off of it. Diplomatic demands. I often forget that we can look at things this way. So reduce autonomy. Nope, we can't reduce autonomy on anyone.
I think we want to improve relations. Very often you can actually diplomatically incorporate these two, Chile and Argentina, so let's see if we can do this. I think we're going to subjugate some of these guys up here, like Sulawesi. We also have a thing with Sulawesi. Let's use the South American army here. We didn't check. We need to read the thing that it says who's going to side against us and why. They almost never side with Sulawesi, but we have to check more often because we're trying to understand um, the new system. Wow, a lot of uh, things. Did they do something with performance this chat? They supposedly improved it, but it seems slower to us, to be honest. And so... Um, I don't know, is Krakow achievement even obtainable anymore? It probably is. I don't see why it wouldn't be. Um, but performance seems slower early, but it's supposed to be better late game. I guess we'll see. I guess they'll never do it. I wish cultural unifications uh, were a thing, where you could be just German instead of North-South German and just Italian. Yeah, I, do, I would be a fan of this. What's the optimal numbers in university purely for qualification purposes? Depends how fast you're building there and how fast you need the qualifications. Uh, also, it depends how much you want to cheese things. Like, if you're having trouble employing up, uh, like, in the mines, for example, you could actually swap back to picks and shovels, which will change the ownership to merchant guilds, and it's much easier to get uh, the merchant guilds, like, the shopkeepers employed. And then once the shopkeepers are employed, then you could sort of swap back to Atmo Engine. And so if you're willing to do this level of micro on a bunch of things, uh, swapping ownership off of Capitalist back onto Capitalist is uh, something that you could do. But, like, it's also incredibly tedious. So it depends what you mean by optimal. Uh, someone should uh, test it with intervention and see if it's related to the private queue building aggro, which it doesn't give IPT for aggro. Not 100% sure this is how it works, but yeah, if someone could test that, what exactly sparks the bug? I mean, we just see the bug universally every single time. We should suggest that to the devs for the test to get Davy Jones, the truth hurts. You afraid to get wet. That's like my favorite meme format. What's the matter? Are you afraid to get wet? <laughs> it's like me telling a girl how much I like construction, and then the girl's like, look, I don't want to hear about construction anymore. And then it's, what's the matter? Are you afraid to get wet? <laughs> it's classic. All right, they back down. Why can't we go after Belungan? Didn't they back down? Oh, because we have this. Okay, fair. Fair, fair, fair. Fair enough. That wasn't possible and the allocation reverted to another configuration. This happens to me when I only have one building in the public queue to manually simulate the effects of having laws fair while having interventionism. Let's see. I'm not sure exactly what you're getting at, but it sounds correct, so that makes me kind of want to know what you're getting at. This is a commenter on Twitch. This happens to me when I only have one building in the private queue to manually simulate the effects of having a rising fair while simulating interventionism. Yeah. To force it to do 75% or whatever. This is revving just them. I think we just go try and pass sense of suffrage through them if this is the case. Spanish Empire had a radical ca racial caste system. I feel like racial segregation would suit better. Oh, for the RP per only? Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess we could take a vote. I really would like to be able to siphon off, uh, like, the Spanish pops from these guys. Because these guys are... Is oh, no, wait. I guess we would have to look in our entire customs union. But like, so we have like Quito, right? What's your... So these are indigenous. I guess these are, they have European heritage. Oh no, this is cultural, right? And then these are his, uh, his Hispanophone. And so we can't actually siphon off these guys as migrants. So it does make a substantive difference because we would be able to pull migrants from our subjects. Spanish never came care about race you were as long as you were Catholic. 
I guess we have a, a bit of a discussion in chat regarding the things. It has to do with IA controlled investment or the human choice only investment. You find that it, when we do human only invest, it creates a lot of inconsistencies. One is able to manipulate the setup to 2575. Yeah, if you don't put in enough into the human queue. And I was wondering if something is happening in your case. No, it's not the, that's not what's going on. It's not, it's not the case that we didn't have enough stuff in the queue. We had like a queue with a plus 32, like a filled up. Uh, apparently it doesn't happen as much if you don't have as big a queue, like if you just build exactly how much construction you have, so this might have been what was happening earlier, but like, we also don't want to not be able to queue up things, so... I think we can... Ugh. I was thinking we had more bureaucracy. Hello there, Kersak. How's it going? Is the DLC about South America good? Uh, it is if you want to play in South America, yeah. It adds quite a bit of stuff. It makes Brazil a lot more fun to play. Um, still wouldn't necessarily recommend Brazil to beginner, because there's, like, some of it's hard to do, but, yeah. Peter asks, are you going to do achievements more? Um, generally speaking, when we've pulled it, people are less interested in the achievement runs. Um, generally speaking, if people really want me to do achievement runs, I'll go for it. The best of pillow togs. We're talking about the the octopus, the octopus expansion. I thought if you form Iberia, you get Cuba and the Philippines. Was that changed? Oh, that I think that's correct. Yeah, so we shouldn't annex them. I think you're correct. We always forget. If you play with auto queue turned off, a go LF and queue only farms, you will get no investment pool transfer. Then queue only manufactories, and you still get normal IPT. Is that correct. Hmm. Funds in the investment pool can only be used to build manufacturing industries, mines, forestries, rubber plantations, oil extractors, infrastructure, whaling, and fisheries. Yep, that sounds correct. Oh, that might have been what you were referring to earlier. How do you get so good at the game? I have over 2,000 hours, so that's a big part of it. Also, making tutorials about the game actually forces you to understand the game better. I don't think I've understand it, uh, understood a game to this extent, and I think a big part of it is having to be able to explain something to others like forces you to really crystallize how the game works and a lot of my like really early tutorials i like didn't understand what was going on um uh, but uh the necessity to understand like the necessity to try and explain something uh, created like a situation where we're like understanding it now because we have to understand it in order to be able to explain it Oh, we still haven't gotten through our steel yet. I guess we'll import. For now. I also, I also think importing steel in engines is not terrible early on. So, I think we're pretty okay with this. And how do you rate the performance? Is it better? It seems worse, to be honest. A little bit worse in the early game. But I think that... I think that in the late game... The changes they made are supposed to increase late game performance. Um, so I think that maybe... I don't know if it's the... What's making the early game worse. If it's like... If I had to guess... Uh, I think that this new outliner... Takes resources. I don't really know. Um, and that maybe... This occupies more... Census data occupies more resources... And that this is causing the early game to feel slower. But if they have 20% fewer distinct pop types in late game as a result of uh, the migration changes, I, I assume it'll be performance will be slightly more flat. Form Daddy Beery a couple days ago, didn't you didn't get Cuba or Philippines? Did they change it, that in the new patch? Oh, you were asking a question. I don't know. Um, so if we look at the culture's nation, nation formation... It says, uh, Spanish, Catalan, Portuguese, Basque, and Galician countries. Is this a Spanish, Basque, Portuguese, or Galician country? Is it a Spanish country? It's, a uh, Carabino. So I guess maybe it's not gonna work. No, they made it worse. No, it, it, 
we still have to play the late game to see if it's actually really worse, but it's worse, like, right now. Worth it to keep subjects or always annex? You generally want to annex. There's some reasons you want to, uh, not annex. Like, if you're actually siphoning off pops from your, your subjects, uh, like, their population is decreasing because of migration, they'll be cheaper to annex later. Um, also, annexation is going to have, like, different prioritization levels. Like, for example, if... Peru was a really high uh, annexation pri priority because they have gold. Not everyone's going to have gold, and so you can have, like, pretty low priority annexations. Like, if you had a subject in Qing and they had open borders, which they don't start with open borders, and you were using them as a pop battery for the most part, you wouldn't really want to annex them because annex is going to cost a lot of, uh, you know, infamy, and so this isn't going to be worth it. Um, oh, I know what I can do later. I'm excited. So, uh, normally when we order food, because I think we're going to order food, and I'm not sure what we're ordering, probably something Spanish, but by, by Spanish I mean, you know, pizza, uh, but what we could do is while we're ordering stuff, we can put the train guy back on, hell yeah. How do you pull up the census data? You go into population and then you click on the census data thing. Native uprisings are now attackers, this could be the same for secession. Uh, it didn't say it for secession, it did seem to break our thing. Why not take Mexico? That's gonna be a ton of infamy. When you opened it up with what warning? Kids or stats were horrifying. Oh my god, I'm sorry. I apologize. I would like to apologize to everyone, those children. Well, I, I mean, I'd like to also apologize, because children, but... Yeah, we will see if we can reduce autonomy on anyone. I don't think we will be able to. No, we can't. We have three infamy kind of would like to acquire a decent chunk of infamy. I don't think... Can we just take Sidai? I don't think we can land them, to be honest, especially if the AI is more competent at defending landings. Um... Huh. So a lot of people think I, like, undergo for Benin, and that maybe we should go for Benin more. Maybe we'll go for Benin. I, I think Benin might be the very best place to conquer that I don't consistently conquer. So, maybe we go for Benin here. But we also do want to restore kind of our Spanish holdings, right? The problem is, is we still have... France is going to side against us if we do this. And we actually can't... Uh, if we didn't have this land, we could do it, but since we have it, we can't. Because, oh, I think they also changed it so France could also park troops there. I don't know if they do, but... So I guess we're just going to go for Benin here. And I think we're going to subjugate them and just look to get them the slow way. Uh, and that this is going to be a little bit better. I thought pizza was Ukrainian. That was the borscht. We used, we ordered borscht. Definitely borscht. What's a traditional Spanish dish, though? Arroz con pollo? Rip children and teens? I apologize. Did they also fix the laissez-faire bug? No, they did not. They did not, and we're, we're, we're not happy about it. So Sokoto might join, Bagimi might join, but it looks like we don't have to worry about anyone else, so... And this will also give us a native interest in the region, which is something that we're kind of... Happy to have. And we're going to do these not because we're really trying to colonize, but because we're trying to get stuff that we can trade uh, later. But they did not fix the bug. Paella? Yeah. Tapas? All right. We're going we're gonna to take a little bit of a vote here on stream. What should we order? What food get later? Because I think we're going to have enough viewers later that we're, I'm going to want to keep streaming for a while. So we have... Uh, Paella, tapas, or we could order pizza. We'll start the poll. So paella, tapas, or pizza. What food should we order? It's up to you guys what we order. Hello, player.
take the promised Borneo land. We already subjugated up there. I've started, like, just subjugating here uh, instead of annexing, unless, like, gold fields have already appeared. But now they've appeared. We'll be a little bit late to that gold party. Maybe it's better to just take it, but we've already subjugated, so we have a truce, so there's nothing we can do there. We get to open Sokoto's market, which is actually pretty nice. I don't think we're going to protect her at Sokoto, but we could think about it. And I think we're going to increase... Where Do we have any unemployed? We have some, and we have a lot of unemployed in Eastern Andalusia, so why don't we do some of this? And then... Where do we have a lot of peasants? We'll do some of that. We're gonna add five. We can add a little bit of construction too. This should be okay for landing with. I think we're just going to land with a bigger stack into them. Did they really not pick the bug? Yeah, they really did not fix the bug. The main thing in any food in Spain is you have to add olive oil somehow. Just make it more Italian. Get some Zervapi, uh, man. Can you eat pizza but being a bodybuilder? What? We are bulky as all hell. Oof. But when did this get to 100? <sighs> uh, did the laissez-faire guy die and that's it? I didn't realize you could roll a protectionist landowner. I don't remember that in the... Is that new? <sighs> well, okay, how big is the rev gonna be? Kinda low-key don't wanna fight this. Kinda think we can fight it. I think we're supposed to. I guess we're gonna take a save, just in case. This was something that was present really common uh, after 1.3 dropped in. We just realized it watching our one our one k hour review over a one hundred hour review, but it used to be that GPS will decide against your revs super super frequently, and it'd be really obnoxious. Um, but this is also going to make this war a little bit tough, isn't it? So if we were playing such that we absolutely would not want to save scum at all, I think we would maybe come off this because I think this maybe makes our war hard to win. Like, this is this Benin War. And this is more important than passing this through immediately, the sense of suffrage. I'm going to start thinking a little bit through, try and be a little bit more careful with our decisions, generally speaking. But I think we're just going to try and do it. But we could also... Okay, let's get rid of some of these taxes, actually. We could also suppress the guys, but I don't think we're going to get them below 100 in, like, the two seconds till the thing, so. Yeah. These little pie apples olives. Paradox had one job, basically. What would be your initial moves as Serbia? Getting to the coast as quickly as possible, uh, which is really, really tough for them, but buddying up with Austria and then trying to go after... Southern Serbia and Montenegro, probably, which would give you coastal access. Um, and so, but yeah, it's buddying up with Austria. Austria will be willing to help you against the Ottomans, and then you have to try and do a war where you can grab these two, because I think this is the lowest infamy grab you can go for and hope to try and keep uh, them in line. When you say the game is harder this patch, it was harder to land. Uh, also, they said they improved the AI in a lot of ways uh, that seemed to make it a lot harder to abuse through landings. So I, I'm guessing it's harder, which is a good thing. On a side note, uh, I don't like the modifier. It seems uh, like it's trying to rose up corruption. It's arbitrary. If you're 
Is it worth it to not annex or release uh, states as puppets if your GDP is too high with command economy to lower the modifier? I just think you just don't go... Like, if you're asking a question, like, what you should do, and it's related to command economy, it's not going command economy. Like, that's the answer to your question. I'm sorry if, that, I'm sorry if that's not the answer you want, but command economy is really bad. Uh, I think the modifier for representing command economy is fine. I think command economy has, like, enormous inefficiency. I think what you would not want is, like, uh... Maybe we should be landing with this army instead, actually. Let's land with this army instead. Because we kind of have them set up better. I think it'll be a little bit better. And I think we just have to fight the... those guys. And then these will fight the Secession. Looks like we didn't roll too bad here. And we can borrow an offense now, which is going to be really nice. Southern Africa, we do need a new guy. But this is a pretty good roll for our revolution. revolution. Everything should go through a little bit quicker. They only take 24 armies, so yeah. You ate a good pizza the other day? Bro, I'm getting so hungry, but they don't deliver till like four, so we're gonna have to wait like an hour and a half. You probably said a dozen thoughts, but uh, new thoughts on the Vic 3 DLC trailer? We've watched it a couple times, super big hype. The trailer itself isn't very exciting, but all the features are super, super nice. The screenshots are super exciting on the Steam page. Italian, Spain is the main olive oil producer in the world by far, I apologize. Yeah, it, uh, hmm. I'm not the, the culture's expert. So, are we going to get in through this? Okay, we totally get in through this. Um, but the question is, and I don't know the answer to this, is can we push with these guys? I guess, I'm guessing the answer is probably not. We're going to put up the conscripts to, like, put up a little bit more of a fight. You know what? I kind of like the having line infantry and mobile artillery on, or line infantry plus arty on the, the conscripts for, like, these landing squads, where you have enough to force rapid advance on the general things, and then... <laughs> then you do pull the old switcheroo because they will stay on rapid advance even if the ratios switch and then you conscript up to like having an actual like decent army is an Andalusia a major veggie producer in the European market makes sense the best Spanish food is jamón iberico hands down I agree you spelled jamón iberico wrong though You could upgrade the generals of your IG landowners with this cloud. Oh, you know what? You're right. We could have manipulated that to force to prevent the rev. I kind of don't like that manipulation too much. I think it's a little cheesy. But yeah, what he's talking about here is, um, in particular, like if we have a IG we are trying to empower, we can recruit up generals of that type and fire in generals of the other types, uh, so that uh, the clout uh, ratio, because it gives uh, extra pl interest group political strength, is like more in line with what we want. You missed it, what did we do about the rev? We are just deciding to eat the rev, which we're not thrilled about, but also caused some shortages on some things. Oh, did it nuke our trade routes for this? I think it nuked our trade routes. Oh, Navarra actually had most of our tools, yeah. Oh well. And it'll be it'll be a little bit painful, but I think we're I think we're in fine shape. You're the defender on the diplo play for native uprisings and not on secessions. I think that's how it's worded, but why Spain gets weirdly territorial about olive oil quality? Interesting. According to them, Italy puts out low quality of oil to the mass market, like places like the U.S. Surprised me at least when I studied there. That's interesting. My brother did like he studied abroad in Spain for a little bit. So I think it's unlikely we enforce on Sakoto, but maybe we can. But I think we can just enforce it on Benin here. I'm not even sure if we can push into this, but what I mean by is uh, if we enforce on Benin, oh, we can't we can't push this. Um, if we enforce on Benin, we will lose our front uh, versus Sakoto, which is what I mean by I don't think we can enforce on Sakoto. So I don't think we're going to get to open that market here. But I think we're going to get everything we want off of Benin. 
Because I don't think they can... Ooh, they can push us. Well, this is fine because we just reland, but... So it does look like they will not help. Sokoto didn't help by putting people in such that they could defend here. So this is something to note in terms of changes and if that was going to be the thing and if not and whatever. The fact that you can borrow on offense is so nice. I'm so happy they fixed this. This is going to make it so much better for like when you're prepping stacks and this type of stuff. Which nations do you want the flavor added to most and why is it EIC? Yeah. Um... I think Japan. For the content. Because people only want one thing. You ate the rev because you're hungry? Yeah. Doing rev for historical accuracy, true gamer. <laughs> Basically. Oh, we lost both of our native interests here. Kind of sucks. Um. I think that they did something to try and avoid the Shadow Realm, but now your armies just teleport, which is kind of annoying. <laughs> uh, if they get bricked from somewhere, they teleport back to their HQ. So instead of this guy having to march back, he teleports back, which is pretty obnoxious because we just want to reland with him. But I guess like we don't uber hate it, but it's not, it's not what we wanted. But we're just gonna land and enforce. It's fine though, because we're like we would have to deal with Spain here anyways, so. Or the, the revolution, as it were. Which is gonna be a little bit uncomfortable, but I think we'll be fine. I think we'll I think we'll get through it. Do you have to mind ratios when barring units on attack? So the thing I'm curious about when we're borrowing troops on attack is um in a theoretical sense. So I think you have to mind the ratios. Uh, but the question is, is in what way do you have to mind the ratios? Do you have to mind the ratios on the guy who is leading the unit or on the units themselves? And I do not know the answer to this question. But if you only have to do it on the units themselves, what you can do is you can have a one-stack cavalry army with rapid advance, right? We could create, like, an army with a bunch of guys. They all have rapid advance. It's a one-stack cavalry army. And then have them just borrow a bunch of cannon troops, allowing you to have the best of both worlds because you will get to have rapid advance while having cannons. So, you just join. How's the update overall? Uh, it's very nice. The thing that we wanted fixed the most does not appear to be fixed. I assume they will patch this, but the construction queue bug is still present. Which is a big sad. However, I think the game is way, 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 way better for newer players now because they increase transparency in the diplomatic plays. And this is, like, something I've been whinging about, uh, justifiably, for since the game released. But now diplomatic plays are much, much more transparent. And so this is an enormous improvement. And so I'm really happy about that specifically. <sighs> That's a bit of a thing. Hopefully we can resolve these plays in time. I don't think we can. So I don't think we'll be able to use... Uh, uh, what is it, uh, the, a yo-yo sway here to try and get it on this, but, because we're not going to enforce on Spain in time, but we can maybe sway, try and sway and see what we can get here, absolutely nothing, really, real talk, okay, well, I guess we'll, F me, right, <laughs> Richard's, Richard's got the right idea on the feedback, yeah, that's like, I don't know, I'm, I'm sad about the, the, the not fixing of the bug. I was very, very excited. Uh-oh. I'm gonna look to keep relations high with uh, some of these GPs. Or actually, I think we'd rather have our interest here. Well, once we annex the, re -annex the, the revolution, we should be in fine shape. And also, maybe we can, maybe we will have time to do the yo-yo sway if uh, Spain gets annex fast enough. Struggling to use the words there. Why are you not landing, my guy? The hell? Do we care about these guys losing popularity? Kind of would rather they not, so. We kind of do care. We already have a huge chance for enactment chance, and they're going to be a government, and popularity gives us authority, so...
Oh, they just can't do it. Shrimp the dream. Why can you not do it? You just have no troops left. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Because you got clapped by Sokoto. That tracks. Alright, let's try this. It looks like we're not going to be there in time to yo-yo sway here. I don't know why we can still ask for a sway after the fact. Oh, in principle, we should have helped the Heavenly Kingdom. Damn. Damn, damn, damn. We should have helped the Heavenly Kingdom there. I, I think they still lose. I don't think we can change this. But the reason for helping the Heavenly Kingdom is if we went not total separation, we would be able to discriminate them not on religious grounds. Like, if we went, um... If they're Protestant and we're freedom of consciousness, then we could incorporate... We could get siphon off pops from them. Alright, I think we've had... Have we been using this... Alright, we've been using greener grass. Bankogo is... Was not here... It's not present in Spain. What? But we have a cultural community for them. But it looks like we did get some migration from ba uh, back Congo, right? Or this is the only way I could possibly explain this. We got a little bit of immigration and then they immediately incorporated here. What? What's that about? So, like, right now we're trying to keep an eye out for any discriminatory migration. And we think if it appears anywhere, it's going to appear here. Because we are using the migration attraction thing. Alright. We'll see how things go. Yeah, we're just going to get in here. Did the post-revolution bug got fixed? I'm not sure which one you're referring to. It does look like they deleted all of our construction sectors, though. see where can we build sulfur which right here so that's where we will build fertilizer we also have to build it down here in order to turn on the antifagasta company so maybe you want to do that I think we can piece them out as soon as we get this. We are gonna get census suffrage as well. These guys are... I guess all the power went to the Catholic Church, huh? It do be like that sometimes. We are gonna get an election. Land-based taxation. Well, now's the time to pass Dedicated, I suppose. So we're gonna try and do that. What is the tax meta currently? Um, early game, you sit on land-based taxation until you can do prop tax, and then you do prop tax, and then you do graduated taxation, unless it's making you way less money. And the reason you wanna do graduated taxation, even if it's making you a little less money, is because the taxation profile overall is good for SOL. The rev deleted construction, it did be. Heavenly Kingdom. What about it? We should have supported them. We didn't. A little bit of a mess. But for religious reasons. Which sounds worse than it is. No one expects the Savannah in Inquisition. Gold mines are propping up our things. Ooh, yikes. What did we just research? Condensing engine. Yeah. Maybe we go pharmaceuticals. It's less of a priority now. Maybe we go egalitarianism, change the tax system. This will be nice. Two minus all mine. Do 
some of that. Almost done here. Have I read Meditations? Yes. I've read it twice. So the only way to play on Lazy Fair now is to switch off the auto cube, basically. Well, I, I think it's manageable if you're over 1 or 2k construction, but yeah, it's it's something to that tune of just turning it off, yeah. Alright, well... Maybe this actually is pushable. I don't think it is. I think we just enforce on Sakoto and we just get this front gets bricked. And then, or we enforce on them. Sakoto's now we're going to open their market. We're just going to capitulate. Alright, now we have zero infamy. So first things first. Let's see if anyone is going to give in to our demands for reducing autonomy. Brunei does. Brunei does maybe. So we don't want to start that play. Now here... We have the problem France and also Venezuela will want to join. We don't want to go for Bolivia. Hmm. Huh. Huh. So, I think we go for Zanzibar. It's a big chunk of infamy. But it's going to be nice for the colonization, so... We need to read the things. We're so not used to actually having available information. We needed to read who was likely to join against us. So that might be a little bit of a miss. But I think we can land them either way. So The only one that we really have to worry about is the UK. Because the UK would clap our cheeks right here. Uh, we're going to reduce this one notch. But still just look to add construction. Something like this maybe. You can turn it off when starting a new game, yes. Uh, you can also click, you know, escape, switch country, and then game rules and change it there. And out of the blue, one election gave rural folks 75%. That might have had to do with you not having access to enough um, tech for you, it might have been early in the game, and you didn't have access to enough tech to give you proper parties, and so it's just like the Royal Fuck Party. Also, if you, like, I think it's like if you're on Serfdom still, and you, what is the thing? If you, like, pass a trade system when you're on Serfdom or whatever, it, like, gives the Royal Fuck way too much power. Or if you go, like, Universal little Suffrage, like, it's an unreasonable amount of power. We're not going to regime change them, but, yeah. I like how you can kind of tell how many generals you need in this type of thing, just looking at the UI. We'll just do this. Please back down. You don't win this. You really don't win this because you don't have anyone defending there. Maybe you do have someone defending there. Should be kind of a little bit of an update to how things get played, but... Let's do that, and... Uh, I mean, in theory, we want to have some kind of... Defensive squad. I guess we'll put that up if anyone does the things. Now we're way more legitimate, which is nice. We reform, they want to join, which would make us less legitimate, so we're just not going to reform the government. It's really nice having a ruler, uh, a monarch that is uh, intelligentsia or, or um, yeah, not Catholic Church, or industrialist. Although we're going to lean more Catholic Church than normal. Really wish they would have fixed it. Me too. They said it would maybe be fixed. They can't produce, reproduce the bug. Yeah... It's literally on every save, yeah. Well, I think that it takes a while to set in on the game, and so they're trying to reproduce the stuff, like, very, very quickly. I don't know, it's literally on every save. I 100% agree. I don't... I think that if you're not reproducing it, you, I, I don't know. You might not be understanding how what people are articulating the bug is. Gerald's idea of a big chunk of infamy differs from yours. It definitely does. I really like the... the below infamy play. It's not that laissez-faire is bad, it's that it's bugged. Such that it's like, 
bad. It's just a number like stab. Rip. Rip stab. I think we land here just to enforce on them faster. I think probably should have taken this as well. Come on. A little bit of a miss, I think, probably. The reason for taking that is making going after Persia much easier. We could go after Macron, though, for the same reason. Um, we can maybe bolster or suppress someone. Maybe we're supposed to suppress the landowners here. Keep them down for longer. It's probably not important. We probably just put in taxes, luxury clothes, and uh, liquor doesn't even net that much. All of our pops are really consuming the tobacco you instead. Let's get a couple more construction sectors. Ooh, uh, looks like Brazil joined the Ron Customs Union. I think we're gonna put these on auto expand to be honest. All the ones that we've built so far, we're gonna put on auto expand. Just to try and save ourselves some hair pulling out. We're not gonna auto expand them everywhere, but. We are gonna do it like that. Do it like this, did it like that, did it with a wiffle ball bat, so. Oh my god, we're not on that. Jesus. Now, did we lose our queue where we were? Yeah, we did lose the queue. Or we had Glassworks auto expanding. And this auto expanding. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, sup, Mr. Marcos? How's it going? When IP runs out, it starts stealing your money to fund private construction? Yes. The real steal. As someone who's never played with a private construction queue on, you see nothing wrong? Yeah, basically. <laughs> it all looks fine to me. Oh, we need to land them anyways, because it wasn't our only war goal. We need to land cap. Rip the drain. I just got here. How's the update been so far? Really, really nice. Uh, I like a bunch of the changes. Um, one thing that I don't like is they didn't fix the construction bug, which was kind of my biggest complaint. But um, now diplomatic plays are much, much, much more transparent, which is fantastic. And you can see why people don't, why people are joining against you, how likely they are to join. It's much more transparent. And like, this is like long been, this is for a long time been like my biggest complaint about the game. And it seems to be fixed here. So um, the fact that that's fixed is absolutely fantastic. U.S. gets a button where it can trigger European migration. It's called kidnapping, and we don't talk about that here. Time to time him out. You always wait for the hotfix minor patch on Paradox game? Waiting for 1.6.1? Yeah, the... I I mean, I have to imagine like that that's like the first thing that they want to fix. Like... Uh. Bolivia's having problems, you don't say. So... We don't really care about some of this stuff. Let's just let them have slavery. Let's actually let them have the, both of these, because if we fight them again, we actually want to be able to put those in so that they're more likely to back down. Alright, so we get Zanzibar, which already has a port. Big nice. Don't think we need to add a barracks, do we? If they do have a port, they're very likely to rev, but now we can establish colonies everywhere in this entire thing, which is going to be super nice for us because we can look to trade. Freedom, equality, and brotherhood. Big nice. Do we want the radical or do we want the reformer? Okay, first of all, this guy is rural folk, he would change to uh, reformer. This guy, change to radical. Let's give the guy, the intelligence guy, more popularity. That should be better for us overall. I remember when that event used to be the thing, like the, how you'd get multiculturalism is by doing that event chain for that journal entry. Bro, do you even know what a paella, what is a paella? I always confuse it with the tortilla. 
the, we have to worry about the Treaty of Tortillas. I love the Freedom, Equality, and Brotherhood event. Bro. It's about brotherhood. Oh, we do want to declare war. So let's reduce autonomy if we can. On people. Quito, we can. They might. Two point whatever infamy. So, since you guys don't really want to... You're rebellious. We have to keep in mind that rebellious people can also side against us in plays now. Can we go for Macron then? Maybe we go after Macron? Speaking of Macron, Macron's been a little bit... The uh, France Macron has been a little bit... He's been mixing it up. One guy is 74 years old. Ain't nothing in common with the tortilla de patatas. Paella be rice. Tortilla be omelet. Jesus. Yeah, I, I like, I know the Mexican stuff much better because I am Mexican. <laughs> than I know the, uh, the other stuff. Let's see how the vote's going. Looks like you guys voted for Papa Paella y Tapas. Paella y Tapas is what you guys voted for. Alright, so we look to protect it. Looks like the coast is clear, and this is what I'm talking about. For those of you who don't know, this interface, dramatically improved, lets you know why people are looking to side against you and stuff, uh, and if they're going to, because it shows the preference. And generally, we, we haven't really pushed it and seen too much, so like, the Sick Empire currently has 43 preference, so we, do, we don't have enough data points to really have a feel for what numbers mean what. Kalat has a difference of 100. Right here. So maybe we see Kalat side against us in this. Um, and maybe the Sikh Empire as well. But we see one expecting to see Kalat. I think this world matches Tortilla Espanola. Espanola. Tortilla. I'm pretty sure paella is an ancient Spanish dish invented to provide sailors with healthy dishes that they could take on long voyages. Uh, as only tomato, grains, and cheese were widely available to combine. <laughs> Tomato, grains, and cheese. Yes, yes. Of course. So we will put in the things to make them likely to back down. I think we could go for an expanded navy too. So, in particular, let's add a bunch of light ships where... I think we have a place with a lot of unemployment. So let's add a bunch there. A bunch more. I think they're probably not recruited up all the way. Where are you guys from, and what is your story? You're probably from South America. Andalusia. Oh, you're from the Rev. That's what you're. That's where you're from. That's what your story is. Got it. That's where you're from, and what your story is. All right. Mobilize these guys up. Man, that changes so much that, like... Now you can borrow an offense. That's a, that's another big change we're a fan of. Paella is a type of margarita. Sounds... That sounds true. Got off work. How's the patch? The patch is nice. Uh, in particular, uh, diplomatic plays. You can now transparently see who's going to join um, or see why they're going to join this type of stuff. So this is really nice. Everyone remembers the Catholic Treaty of Tortillas. Oh, the Treaty of Paellas? Or was it potatoes? Papas. What's the advantage of banning slavery in another country as a war goal? Uh, the advantage of banning slavery in another country as a war goal is it makes it more likely that they back down. we just as soon have them back down and us be able to start another diplomatic play. Um, and so that's why we're doing this. Uh, we are hoping that they back down. They might not. It is what it is if they don't, but this is what we're hoping for. Uh, the What makes them back down is, like, the total amount of uh, maneuvers, like, levied against them. And so these three maneuvers cost us zero infamy, but allow them to... Allow us to get back downs much more frequently. And so this is why we're doing it. 
Bro, I thought he was asking where we were from. I am from Paella. I am Paella. Breaker of Worlds. Alright, so we see... Look, France is involved in a big fat play right now. So they look like they're neutral. And they are getting this... Involvement in the United States versus Mexico, Prussia versus Austria. Their involvement in two plays makes it very likely that they... Or they trend a lot towards neutrality over New Granada. I don't like... Okay, so this is their neutrality score versus their New Granada score, which is protective attitude, sympathetic, these types of stuff. So we're going to take a save and see if they join. But this is what we're talking about in terms of, like, dramatic improvement. Um, there's also... A, if you have children... Have your children leave the room. <clears throat> I'm going to show something a little, a little inappropriate for the children. Another thing that they have is you now have this access to the census data. And we haven't really played around with this too much yet. Uh, but we do see a bunch of spreadsheets, a bunch of stuff. Uh, notably, we can, like, look at, hey, where are the unemployed people at? Uh, and see where they're at, what their, if they're, what their culture is, what their story is. Um... And I, I don't know too much in terms of how useful this is or how we're going to, like, utilize this in order to, like, look at information. But this is available and this is, like, a big thing. Um, I think that's what a lot of people are most excited about. I just don't know exactly how I use it at this point in time. Um, but... I think we mobilize these guys, put them over here. And then we transfer maybe some of the line infantry from this other one over there. Maybe we do this and make this a defensive army. No, that isn't what we did. What did we do? Well, these guys can be a defensive army now. They're from Spain. Let's do that. We'll probably have them defend the homelands. Oh, I know what it's doing. I'm stupid. It's the, the extra army is the army that's merging with this one. <laughs> Brilliant. Generalist saves the day with his big brain. Definitely pizza. What are your thoughts on the new Shogun series? I haven't watched the new Shogun series. I don't have Hulu. If I had Hulu, I would check it out. Although I don't watch very much TV. I just finished Altered Carbon on Netflix. And other than that, I actually can't remember the last series I watched. I might rewatch. Um, I don't think we care about that. But trying to remember what the numbers were on the Ottomans now, and I can't remember. Their preference for New Granada is now 59, but that's just because they have a different attitude towards them now. But they were cooperative before, so that's a little interesting. So the Ottomans have thumbed our pie. We might reload here. We might just try and fight it out. I think we'll try and fight it out. Duro y Campania are getting the bonus from it. Which actually makes me want to export arms, although now is not the time to export arms. Um, I think we will mobilize this guy so we get ready for so that. These guys are traveling to the Panama front to merge. These guys are stationed in Zanj. As far as I can tell, would be going in the 4th Spanish army, which is our Shadow Realm army. So let's just merge them over here. Let's upgrade everyone. Get everyone ready to go. Eh, we probably don't want them to be using all the stuff.
We're still a major power. Really would have liked to have someone to have invited us to the customs union. And if we were trying to uber push the run, I think we would try and do that. But I think we're also fine, just kind of in a little bit of chill mode. Now, why can't we do a customs union right now? Rip. They want Tarapaka as a treaty port. Where is this? Do we want anything from them? I think we would maybe want to live Iraq and maybe we could do it if we land here. Ottomans are very, very, very bad at handling some things in the game. Defending against naval landings being one of them. But this is something that's supposed to be much improved um, by the things. Getting access to census data now requires to spend a fat percentage of bureaucracy. Is the game speed better? It appears to be worse. Um, but uh, I think that that might just be it's worse early game and later game it's better. I'm hoping that's what this is. Um, yeah. We're gonna move this guy over here. We're gonna move this armada over here. Do we have our interest? Do we assign it in time? Oh, we don't have enough maneuvers. Ah, that's obnoxious because we put on all the stuff to make it more likely to back down. That's our bad. I think we don't put anything in on the Ottomans then. Um, that way it's easier just to decay them out. So I think we'll just do this. Looks like we have a bit of an advantage there. Popular playwright. The playwright nerf. It no longer gives five years. This was another change. The the fully optimized runs, like on the really small starts, would involve just re-rolling for that particular thing. So it looks like the minus 20. Uh, I think we just look to play D on this front to be out fair. And wait until our 18 stack gets there. But this looks like this looks like uh, uh, this Arabia station. This looks like the way they defend. So let's actually see what that's about. So unfortunately, we couldn't release Iraq. It's a classic. And we'll land up here in Panama, which Panama is generally really poorly defended because it's a different strategic region than the capital. So we'll see how this would be. Destiny manifesting, basically. Biggest benefit, staying below 25 infamy. Um, it's morally superior. It's actually like, um, so countries develop attitudes towards you they're much more likely Ooh, we just didn't notice that this was going or actually we probably didn't have an interest in the strategic region but they're much more likely to develop like a really negative um attitude towards you uh, is a big one they're more likely to join plays against you this type of stuff uh, and it's a bit of uh, a bit of a bad one definitely gets work at generalist gaming you're struggling to play beyond the 60s due to it to being heavy on conquests it's definitely worse bro it's supposed to get better I mean, we're also going on speed 5 while streaming, and it's only 52. So... Yeah. I don't know what to say, guys. That's such a bummer. It's supposed to be better, like, I don't... Uh. This is interesting, though, that, that they're doing this, and that's going to be a thing. Yeah, it looks like you can still do a little bit of some cheeky cheese. They didn't have anything defending this, but to be fair, they're a small country, and they just have the little thing, so... Kind of makes some sense. 
Oh, it looks like we get to the fronts before we do. Their seven stack. They're still not gonna. It's still not gonna make the cut here, though. We're just gonna be enforcing on them and then white piecing out on. Uh... Oh, looks like they are gonna try and land us here with a thirty-four stack and a seventeen stack navy. We're gonna move these guys over. These guys should actually be on the other front, but whatever. To try and help defend against that landing. Are we getting in here? Oh, we have a naval battle. What the hell? Okay. I don't see their navy anywhere. Where's their navy? <laughs> Visually not present. Brazil now has barely any peasants to put to work in 1836. This is kind of one of the problems normal. Have you been following the Turtle Island tomfoolery on Discord? A little bit. Uh, I mean, I see that it seems super OP. I don't want to do a run on it. Because, like, I think it's, like, an aberration. But maybe if people want to see, like, the absolute nonsense, we could do it. Spain is one of the most interesting countries to play. Interesting. I'm not sure I agree, but I think that it's, like, really, really good for beginners. This was my thesis. Either it's really flexible, you got a lot going on, you have good, uh... Okay, let's see if about increasing education. And now we can enforce them below zero without having to actually do anything. And they're not going to get in on us very easily. I don't think we... Yeah, I don't think we even beat their navy, do we? Maybe we do. We'll ship over there. Oh, what... We got a tech. What tech did we get? No, we passed the law. Okay. I think it was dedicated police force, yeah. Do you want to go cultural exclusion at some point? Did we? No, we haven't gotten the tech yet. That's the tech we're researching. Maybe we just chill? I think we just chill. We're not actually going to get off of censorship because we're planning on going secret police this run. I'm not sure it's better, but we want to try it. It's super gimmicky, it's certain fun, and requires a lot of planning. Yeah, that seems like, um... Also, the, the amount of time it would take me to play, uh, in exchange for, like, the amount of content I could produce on it, like, that ratio seems like it's also not very good for me. In terms of the Turtle Island stuff. But, like, if people want to see it, we would do it. Like, w going the Rome run took forever to record the last ones. It also kills performance quick, so it's suitable for a short stream. Yeah. It sped up for me on restart. It might be a memory leak or something. This would make sense. We're not going so slow that I feel like we need to do that. But thanks for letting us know, Addy. Yeah, that, that would make sense. It was a memory leak. Can't order pizza yet. We have to wait till four o'clock. I mean, tapas y paella. Looks like our navy couldn't handle their navy either. You know why it couldn't? Well, we might not have enough heavy ships. This might be part of it. Oh yeah, they have a ton of man wars, but also they only have one commander and we have a bunch. God, that's so stupid. <laughs> So if we just do this over here and shift one of these guys over. Promote this guy. Luca supports Italian unifications. Pacific Coast interest deactivated. Wait, what happened here? I thought they were at war. They were really white peace? What was the war over? Don't look like the USA took anything. The hell? I'm very confused. I mean, we want to bring Mexico back into the fold at some point, but...
I don't know what that was about. Not a memory leak. Preliminary testing says that they're uh, thrashing Cache even harder now. I'm seeing 10% misses on a week. Interesting. So do we want to try and land them? Let's say they have a bunch of little fleets. I don't know why they're doing that. We could test their metal. Let's test their metal, actually. Let's see what you got, boy. The Ottomans are the w absolute worst, hardest country to defend against naval landings. And so we're going to see what they can do. But if they use these one stacks to break us for just a second while they redistribute this 88 stack, that would be so sick. Nope, we just get in automatically. Yeah, okay. Fair enough. <laughs> just kidding. You just get in automatically. <laughs> yeah, okay. I get you. <laughs> I thought the AI was going to be better, but I mean, guess not. Just swapping them all to defense so that the when the other squad gets there, they'll lead the armies. And we can make use of this guy for landings. So once this finishes, we'll do another one. Destiny unmanifested, basically. Time to rescue the former Spanish colony, exactly. So we'll see if they can defend here. So, but like historically, or like uh, in 1.5, like Ottomans were 100% the easiest person to enforce anything on. And I think we might see that because of like, this nonsense. Okay, so now they just, like, don't believe in this front, because they're trying to redistribute. So now we can push. Because they forgot that this front existed. Not that I I know anything about how hard, easy or hard this is some, to, like, program an AI to do. And, like, obviously it's super easy to gimmicky them, but, like... Let's see what the first battle looks like. I think they managed to get some guys back in time if this is only a 50. Oh, it's, we have a naval battle. Okay, so before we lose this naval battle, let's cancel the naval invasion. And then we'll land over here in Kars, which is a separate strategic region. Oh, did it just count this guy as beaten? No, 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 it didn't. Okay, so... We'll try landing there. And I mean, they're probably going to capitulate soon, because we have no war goals on them, but yeah, we can land in there just fine, but... We'll do this, we need more construction. Something like this. And egalitarianism will allow us to swap to prop tax if we have... What do we need in Gov? I think it's military, right? Our military is one of the bigger ones. We could just do this because we have to put these guys in the same party anyways. And use them. Let's try and do that. Proportional taxation. Is 1.6 live? Yes. That's what we're playing on right now. It's wheezing along. Can attempt can attach multiple areas at once, yeah. It's probably been asked already, but do you think the change from flat IG influence to pop uh, political power will make shifting away from conservative politics easier or harder? This is a patch uh, this is something from 1.5. This is a change from 1.5 that sneaked its way into the patch notes. So, I think it's exactly the same as it, is, it was in 1.5. Does it make sense to play on 1.6? Oh yeah, I would be playing- I'm not gonna swap back to 1.5. It's not like- the, the performance being worse is not like... Cataclysmic. We could rustle 
We could rustle Rush's jimmies. I mean, they're... Oop, they might pull us into a customs union, though. Maybe we were, if we wanted to rustle their jimmies, we had to do it earlier. Glad to see this is still happening. Wouldn't be... Wouldn't be... Wouldn't feel the same without it. Um... Do we need railroads? Let's see if we are out of infra anywhere. Not really. Okay. Diplo demands. I think we can reduce some autonomy in some places now, so. We're also gonna check where we, where has like uh, higher chances and stuff. These guys just accept, so we'll reduce in Sulawesi first. I think the most important one might be getting Congo on board, so we'll reduce on them next. Congo accepts, then I guess we'll do Brunei. Or maybe... yeah, let's do Brunei. They refuse, alright. I think somehow we incorporated a lot more guys into this army than we wanted. Naguni, Sothu... Actually, it's all Africa. From there. I guess it's all Africa. Um, since it's, like, actually, like, a landing squad army, by the looks of, like, what's going on, I think we will edit them and change them to look like this. And we'll change the name. Africa Army. Performance is much worse on big countries, says Mr. Marcos. Okay, so... That might it change what, how you feel about it, Sebi. You missed the factory system of Vic 2. I didn't play Vic 2 enough to, like, miss anything. I played, like, 60 hours of Vic 2. Two Sicily sides with Constantine. Interesting. In exchange for what? Become subject? Call ally. Mm. I think we will not be involved in that. Sardinia Piedmont. Bro. Are we seeing... It's like, Italy's coming to the aid of North Africa. I love this change. So they, uh, the petition now gives you options. And we'll probably actually pass what they want there. No migration control seems fine. I mean, I think we'll lose some, some pops to our subjects, but yeah. Let's see, we did have a poll active, let's see. All right. Yep, we're gonna over, we're gonna order Papas and Itapas. Thank you for the subscribe, sure kid. Oh, we missed some subs. Where where did they? No. How long ago did they sub? On the Twitch. I really gotta change the notifications system. Wait, why is the... it's not appearing here. Here, we're gonna try and play and diagnose at the same time. Shoot. Not that one. Oh, okay, we always choose this option. Rene War is breaking out. We don't need to micromanage that at all. Yeah, definitely super appreciative, super appreciative of the 
the Twitch like stuff, but it, it's not popping up in notifications right now. And it's not also not popping out in the chat. You have 800 hours in Vic 2? Yeah, so it's like... Is it a good idea to secure stays for oil late game? Yes, 100% yes. Uh, if we have a low infamy play opportunity, like something we'll do is just conquer Bahrain. The problem is they're having a rev, but... And also going after Nej is very strong. We do this 100, like every game. So one year in 1858 has 15% cachet miss. That's 18% higher than 1.5, yikes. You don't even know what the title screen looks like, or the game actually, on Vic 2. Oof. Does anyone actually play this game on Speed 3 and below? I do when I'm streaming, and it's going quick, but like, Speed 3 feels kind of slow right now. So I guess the performance is worse, but... But this has kind of become... I, c I don't think we've had an instance where there's been, like, zero problems on a patch drop, and usually the first patch, like, 1.6.1, tends to be pretty good. But, I mean, I'm so delighted over the, uh, the change to, like, actually being a transparent Diplo plays. It's, like, it's such a big deal. I've been meaning to give a feedback post to the devs that I think that you should have a... In the same way that you can turn on or off private construction, I think that you should have an option to turn on or off uh, local goods, because I think local goods are a problem. But here, we're just going to annex Bahrain, I think. Speaking of oil... Pros, cons, well, actually, maybe we reduce autonomy here. We take a look at the stuff. This is what I'm talking about in terms of the biggest changes for those of you who have not yet arrived. The fact that uh, you can kind of know a little bit what was going to happen with plays is, like, really, really nice. Incredibly nice. The nicest of nice. I need way more cannons with these guys. Nine lancers too, so 16. I guess we only need a couple more cannons. We're just very lancer oriented right now. Pros, cons of taxing transportation. I generally like transportation as a tax. Um, so the, the general thing is like you have two considerations whenever you're doing a tax um, on the consumption taxes. Your first consideration is going to be how much money it is netting you to the economy per authority, and this is the primary axis that's important, but the secondary one is going to be what the consumption profile looks like for your pops, and you're generally going to want to tax things um, that specifically target the upper strata more than the lower strata. So, if you see here, their biggest expenditure is actually on transportation, so we really like taxing transportation services, uh, you know, luxury goods and this type of stuff. Services to a lesser extent, because it's going to hit the middle strata. The reason for this is that there are exponential needs. And so as your wealth level increases, the amount of stuff like services or stuff like furniture, transportation, this type of stuff that you need exp increases exponentially, not linearly. So it requires more and more wealth to increase your standard of living. Because of this, the lower strata on a per wealth basis is much better at increasing average standard of living, which has a bunch of positive effects. And so you don't want to tax the lower stratus goods. And so this is a reason why, so for tobacco specifically, you see that that's the number third expenditure. We are taxing tobacco right now, but it's because we have a lot of peasants. If we get rid of a consumption tax, like in the near future, tobacco's on the chopping block, even though it's the most efficient on a per authority basis. And the reason for that being is that it's negatively affecting SOL more than the other ones. But we have enough uh, peasants that like right now, it's more critical that we're like de-peasanting than it is we're doing this other thing. So. That's kind of how we think about that. I hope that answers the question. We're going to set all these to auto-expand too with the wood. Speaking of deep peasanting this is the way. Now, it might be the case that you want to... Here, let's prioritize softwood... 
on places that have really high level. So eight is not that high level. Ika has a high level, so we'll prioritize Softwood. But Joe's has a high level, we'll prioritize Softwood. Castile, uh, I guess we'll find our level eight and prioritize Softwood. I think you're still gonna need to do this. They did change up the PM a little bit on this. So. Is provided construction queue still bugged? Yes. How's the update? We like it. Um, we don't like that it didn't fix the construction bug, which is kind of the thing that we wanted most fixed. And so, yeah. Did they add something to turn on and off market access? No? I'm, I'm not sure I'm understanding your question right. Do we see an improvement late game? We haven't gotten to late game, so this is the question. But uh, Mr. Marcos is here with the numbers and saying that performance is significantly worse. And it definitely feels slower already in 54. Um, which is certainly not ideal. But we could return state. I'm gonna put in war reparations, hoping to make them back down. I think we maybe use this army to land, so we'll just bring them over here, uh, kind of preemptively. And maybe they back down, maybe they don't, we'll see. Ugh, why are we illegitimate? Someone must have died. Alright, well, we could kick them out. The problem is, is if we kick them out, we lose access to actually passing the law. Can we do this? I think the rural folk also support passing this. Prop tax. Yeah, the rural folk do. So we'll switch to something that actually has rural folk involved. So we'll do this. And then we'll also reduce taxes so we're above the 50 threshold. Which is going to be a little bit expensive for a hot second, so... I suppose uh, a lot of people in chat... We're going to pull to YouTube. How many people in chat have already seen the Spheres of Influence stuff? Have you... And if not a lot of people have seen it, maybe we take a look at it. Or we plan to take a look at it maybe at 3 or something like this? Like about a half an hour? Because we've taken a look at it a couple times, but, 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 this is pretty important slash big news. And I think a lot of people who are tuning in are tuning in because they're curious about what's going on. We do have two years time. We're super okay lowering the tax rate for that. Um, and then we should be able to just conquer Bahrain. We're going to take a look here in our... Okay, so we could would expect Hajaz to side against us. That's not really a big deal. But being able to see why and like stuff like this, it's just so nice. This is such a big improvement. Ooh, Bahrain actually built an army. We haven't seen this in a hot minute. I don't think we've ever seen this. Shout out to Bahrain, coming up. I don't think I've ever seen Bahrain have any military, so that's pretty significant. I'm just gonna move this stuff over here. 1882 is much slower. Yeah. Is it worth considering that we can government can subsidize rails anyway, so it isn't as efficient as it seems? Mm. I'm not sure what you're referring to in terms of the efficiency. Good question about pop jumps. Just had a French run with lower strata, high, uh, high SOL, and upper strata being lowest. It doesn't make sense right now. No, no, that's... Uh, in that French run, if you, uh, so your upper strata consists of, your upper strata consists of capitalists and aristocrats. If you, if you go on to, uh, cooperative ownership, this always makes your, like, upper strata starve to death and be completely eliminated, uh, and makes your lower strata richer. Are you looking at spheres or 3v3v3s? <laughs> Base Bahrain. I think they gave one unit to all the Arabs that didn't have any armies. Interesting. They've militarized. It's over. The tanks are next. It's Jover. No more. Does that mean the Mara Shuffle's dead? <gasps> the Mara Shuffle might be dead. You need. Now you're gonna need two boats and a dream. They killed the Mara Shuffle. 
And someone said, tell me where to find Spheres News. Looks like it's on YouTube. Yeah, it's on a lot of stuff. What does your under 10 of your weekly balance mean? What does the 10 under your weekly balance mean? Oh, this is Infamy now. Infamy is now here. It's no longer here. So this is how you look at Infamy. Which is a pretty big improvement because that's one of the things that you actually kind of check before every single war. So. God, the, is the landowner being protectionist like something that happens commonly? I don't remember. We can get an obligation from the UK. That's going to be super nice. That's going to mean the UK can't side against us when we want to go for Portugal. Which we do want to go for Portugal, so. That's tremendous. If we tax consumption of transport... Oh, that's what the person was asking earlier. If we tax the consumption of transport and thus depress the buy orders... It doesn't depress buy orders. Uh, people want to buy a particular basket of goods... Um, and the goods that they choose to buy are not contingent at all on the price, but instead based on the number of buy and sell orders, or sorry, by the number of sell orders in the market. Uh, substitution doesn't work the way it should or the way you think it does intuitively. Um, they will buy based on the number of sell orders in the market uh, and not based on the price. So, so increasing the price does not decrease consumption of the thing. Um, but yeah, it should. It, they should be sensitive to price. You should be able to, like, yeah. It doesn't work the way it should. God, on 1860, it already plays like 18, so, so much slowdown. Yeah. Uh, just formed the Roman Empire in multiplayer, 1848. What should I do to expand your GDP? You go for South America. In 1848, uh, or in 1848 specifically, you might be able to still have time to go after Peru and then release and do the Peru trick. Um, so maybe this. Mara has four battalions in 1841 for you. Rift the Dream. I had to look up where to find Infamy at first. Yeah, basically. Econ 101, uh, prices don't matter to consumption. Yeah. Yeah, basically. It's pretty bad. Like, that's really how substitute. I really wish it didn't use the word substitution, because that's how substitution works. Like... <laughs> they, yeah, they consume based on <laughs> how much of is in the market, not, like... I mean, it correlates with it, but I think it's because this would kill performance if they made it so that it adjusted dynamically, but, like, come on. Please don't use the word substitution. It's not a substitute good. We're not even remotely talking about substitute goods. Let's see. Let's see how the poll's going. If people... Looks like more people have not seen the Sphere... Or more people have seen the Sphere stuff, because I assume that the hype people have also seen it. And have not seen it, so we won't take a look at it uh, just yet. We're probably going to be going a long time, though. Going to be having a lot of people coming in and out. This is something I often don't have appreciation for. So, like, the people... Nobody's been watching since, like, the entire length of the thing. Like, the five hours we've been live. Or probably very few people have been watching for five full hours. So, a lot of uh, repeating stuff and this type of thing. And so we'll take another look at it later. Then how the F does it actually work? It works based on the number of sell orders in the market and based on the weight. So if there's a lot of sell orders in the market, people will consume more of it. So. Tark is squatting. What do you mean by that? Hey, Constantine's hitting us with the emotes. Let's go, baby. That is, of course, on Twitch. We have a loud car emote. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> All right, the war started, so let's just capitulate, see our way out of it. We have the obligation now. I don't think we want to go for Portugal yet, because in particular, we have to find a spot where France is not going to interfere with us. I think specifically is what we're looking for. We could secure, we could continue securing um, oil for late game. It's probably worth doing. Let's see what, who we can reduce autonomy on. Venezuela. Um, you see, Quito is likely to side with us. No one's... Nicaragua is likely to side against us. They might just accept. I think that since they're not, like, guaranteed going to accept, I think maybe we just go after protectorating these guys. And we see Hijaz is likely to join against us, but no one else really. 
Army's already here anyways. Hard times. Hard times make hard men. Hard men make babies. Um... Yeah, we'll put it in the war goals. If Ottomans side, we'll be really sad because it didn't look like they were gonna side. Just on the thing. Hello, Mr. Gaming says Tark. Tark's been here the full six hours. I think he's also simultaneously streaming though. Still. Did someone just like ping him in his own chat? I believe he's streaming. Oh no, he's not streaming. He raided my stream. I didn't realize he raided me. Ah. Or at least I think that's what's going on. So we'll close that now. Brian has been watching since the beginning. He's the founder of the people. So is Joey. Or Emperor Cow God. Does the Peru infamy trick work with Peru Bolivia or only if they split up? So what you have to do is you have to transfer Peru and then release the other two and then it merges. What did they make change to make it run so slow? Raid. I'm not sure. Who raided? Raided. Oh, you raided us? Bro, how do we not have... Thank you, Tark. How do we not have the freaking... All of our, uh, all of our notifications are gone, Tark. It's so sad. I don't know what to do. I'm Twitch illiterate. The shame. He just stopped and exiled everyone to you? Basically. He got rid of the agitators is what he did. <laughs> They were saying something about the jawline, so he's like, you know what? You want to see what a bad jawline looks like? Check out this generalist gaming guy. Guy is obviously not mewing. I think we'll take the free obligation here. Oh, we shouldn't have done that. We should have waited to see if other people join. Nice backs down. Big nice. Can we reduce autonomy on these guys yet? No, not yet. We want them to eventually be able to go for Persia without needing, like, a land thing. Uh, I guess we could reduce autonomy on Venezuela now, and this would seem fairly good. Kind of sucks that we have this play chance. Just gotta double check here. Nicaragua's likely to join against us. France is, like, kind of an uncomfortable looking spot in terms of their probability, but I think we'll be fine. Could also go after Kutai. Let's actually just lock in Kutai here. Let's lock it in. We'll go for the things. Lodjan was telling me that I have raid notifications and you don't, for shame. Yeah. I, well, so I'm doing it through Restream. And it's like, it's not telling me anything since I became partnered on Twitch, and so maybe I have to reset it all. Ooh, we just become a GP. Big nice. Generous donations. We like those. I think we'll take Keto, because they're our subject, and so reducing autonomy will should be easier on them. What is this? Oh, that's the revolt. What's up, Bruin? I'm not even a real content creator, just had a manic episode, I guess. But I think that's every content creator, to be honest. Some just get lucky. Some have nice draw lines. Definitely not that your VGO has been fried since before I started streaming in 2.4 to fix the truth hurts. Late game Ching Run with migration disabled had 17% cache misses. Are you just pushing it to see like just exactly how bad performance is? Is that the the goal here? What's new in this patch? So the biggest, most, well, okay, everyone hide your kids. We'll start, we're going to show them what's new. We're going to show them what's up. We have the census data thing, which we don't even really realize, like, exactly how we want to use. But uh, we could take a look and sort by based on all these things and look at our pops and this type of thing. Um, you know, could look at all the Sunnis, all the Animists, Protestants, whatever. Um, and also, the really big one for me is the diplomatic plays um, are now much more transparent which makes playing on Iron Man viable if this was something you wanted to do. Uh, also, it's a little laggier and it didn't fix the construction key bug. So, there's that. We're less happy about that. Of the things that, you know, of the emotions we could be feeling about things, 
associated with stuff. We're, we're not feeling very good about that. But overall, very happy. Like, it's a step in the right direction. I think it depends on how bad this lag is going to be, to be honest. But, I don't know. Had a laptop once that is so busted, it had to use an external monitor and keyboard, still froze every 15 minutes while playing WoW. Oof. That sounds like a gamer experience. We're gonna capitulate here. We already have our uh, obligation. I guess we're gonna protect her. We're gonna just lock everyone in. Just lock in the Borneo squad. The Spanish dream. Of locking in the Borneo squad? You don't say. Oh, we didn't look at the... We should have shown off the thing. I, if you saw when we declared the war goal, it had, like, a different user interface that was, um, different. That showed reasons why people are doing stuff. Necklace Ching with migration? Yeah. That's such a... Uh, I mean, I assume they fix it relatively short order, but... You've been asking them for a while, but they could really improve performance by 90% if they applied a 90% IVP balance, and if they sponsored a 3v3v3. If they sponsored a 3v3v3, I'd definitely be willing to host. I have to imagine they would want someone other than me, though. I think we just get an obligation from Chile here. So we can't do a yo-yo sway because we have our own uh, war goal here, so I think we just get an obligation here. For freezies, good dealsies. And we... Sure, we'll just actually help them out. They'll also like us a lot more post this, so... I think you lied to us about not knowing about spheres. What do you mean? We know about spheres now, but it's also public information. Also, like, uh, if I knew, I would let you guys know that I knew, but I wouldn't say anything about it. So the Linux kernel, they say if cache node misses are about over 5%, your app is broken and we're at 17%. Oof. Who would be able to host, though? Um, so there's a, a Paradox Interactive Competitive... Um, I forget what they're called. It's like something 5. Speed 5, I think. But there's a Competitive par Paradox Interactive thing. Oh, now we could maybe... No, but we've already swayed in. I don't think we could yo-yo sway this. We can check. We can check if we can yo-yo sway him. I'm the Vic 3 guy, IMO. I'm not even close to the highest Vic 3 views. I believe Ludi gets the most Vic 3 views, and you could argue that um, OPB is the Vic 3 guy as well. Um, I'm the guy. Uh... But OPB does other stuff as well. Overall, I think OPB gets... I don't know if he gets more monthly views. All of his videos have more views than mine, but I post more videos. Let's try this and see if we can become subject. Yeah. There we go. We. <laughs> The yo-yo sway. You gotta love it. <laughs> Spain requiring our territory. A victory tournament would be like watching golf. Commentators talking about bird sounds to fill the time. Bro, but have you seen some of them burbs? Ludi is a great EU4 guy, but I prefer your style for Vic 3 since it's a much more in-depth game. Yeah, but if you're trying, if the goal is to try and attract new players to Vic 3, like, the fact that he has a large EU4 audience and you're trying to get more across, like, I'm saying from the perspective of a, the Paradox, it might make a lot more sense for them. The... The, like, the, like, people thought I should have been the one to do the tutorials instead of Ludi. And I think, well, I think that they give him a script either way, so it, it doesn't necessarily matter. I mean... Let's do that. 
Brutal. They call it the good old switcheroo. The good old switcheroo. Who's your favorite pie to thumb? Definitely the UK. I'm still not over, like, the our first Spain run we did where the UK sided against us every single play for 20 years and just, like, very triggered. We couldn't handle it. The Spain's, how's Spain's attitude? They're cautious towards us, so we could just side uh, just to get a good attitude. Which maybe we want to do this. Yep, so this will change the attitude. Hopefully. Yep, it does change the attitude. Get a nice little attitude reset for Freezy's good dealsies. Ghost is the only one going deep, uh, as far as you're aware. Everyone else is just doing passionate readings with B-roll. Yeah, this is kind of... Well, uh, I, I, actually, I don't think that's fair. I think OPB, like, the Victoria Tweaks mod is, like, this huge overhaul, and he, like, I think he thinks through the mechanics a lot and this sort of stuff. Um, OPB is generally, I would say, more concerned or interested in um, simulating realism than he is in min-maxing or, like, what's meta or, like, uh, underlying mechanics, though. I imagine OPB has the highest viewership of mainly Vic 3 channels. Yeah, the only reason I would have more viewership per month or more views per month than OPB would because, be because I put out way more videos than he does. Spain is now up. He's considering building another construction yard. It's a little bit more interesting than that, Richard. But yeah, the another thing is there's like a lack of like a really good spectator mode. Uh, I do think that there are interesting things going on uh, in 3v3v3. When do you incorporate state and when do you not? Generally, anything under a 20-year incorporation, you incorporate. And stuff that has longer incorporation, you don't. You prefer to incorporate stuff that... Um, you prefer to incorporate stuff... Here, we actually... You prefer to incorporate stuff that has coal and iron, and places where building industry is going to be better, uh, and then places that just have, like, rubber and wood or something like this and don't have a bunch of other resources that are going to be less of a priority, something like this. How are we liking it so far? We are liking it. We do feel like that there is a bit of a performance snag. Performance does seem worse. You can't get migration event with no migration controls. You can't get a migration event as Ching. Did you take something? Ludi loves to lie in his thumbnails, though. You know what grinds my gears about Victoria 3 thumbnails? A lot of them, they show, like, this massive positive balance. A massive positive balance, like, is an indication that you're playing, like, suboptimally. Like, it's really bad to have this huge positive balance. And those... I hate those thumbnails so much. But, yeah. Because it's not even something that's good. But, yeah, I don't post... Yeah. Yeah, Ludi posting a thumbnail about German World Conquest, then not even uh, taking enough to form Central Europe, turned me off from watching his videos. Yep. Uh, that do be thingin'. Uh, like, hmm. Yeah, I was not a fan of... I watched... I used to watch Ludi, like, five or six years ago, and to be fair, I don't... I haven't, like, watched any of his stuff recently. It's, like, really hard for me to comment on it. He might have changed, but I didn't like that he, he was, like, faking his runs. Or he was, like, passing his runs off as Iron Man and legitimate, and when, in fact, he was, like, uh, manipulating the runs. And so, that's why I stopped watching him. He could be different. Apparently, he posts his save files, which would make that impossible, so I assume to some extent he's reformed, but, like, um, I was not a fan of that. <laughs> so, currently, I have him, like, blocked so I don't even get suggested to him so like it's hard for me to talk about what's going on with Ludi because I like honestly I don't know. Ludi's a f uh, fantastic at memes. You seem to be really breaking down the big concepts. Yeah and sometimes the ends justify the memes. Also a lot of my memes are suspect to be honest. A little bit more a little bit offensive. <laughs> more offensive than we would like here. Uh, I think we're going to go for this company next, which is going to be really strong. we got to get the Silver Mine up a couple levels, though. I thought it was just level 3, but I guess it's level 5. So we're just going to increase that just so we can, you know, actually add it. I think we will need, then, a railroad at the back of this here. So we'll just put that in. Probably don't need a construction sector there. Is the port giving him It is. Alright, we'll keep that.
you weren't getting any, any migration at all. Is Ching with no migration? Not even mi migration from place to place? Actually, now that you mention it, is migration broken? Migration seems to be broken. <sighs> Bro, can we get one patch where there's like, the delivery is like not, so many people like when a patch comes out, they play it, right? And then they decide whether or not they want to keep playing it. And like, it's, I think they'd be able to retain players so much better if they, when they ship the product, they didn't have like a bunch of random stuff like this. Like, the construction cube bugs not fixed, and apparently migration just doesn't work anymore. Could we expect another 3v3v3 if the people agitate enough? Problem with Ludi is he doesn't have a spreadsheet. He doesn't tell the children to hide. He has a kid, so he can't. Yeah, this is the correct answer. Ludi has a kid? That's like... Yeah, I mean, I, I haven't kept up with Ludi in forever. That's wild. Yeah, not even migration to place place. Check DM. You're just talking about, is the DM for zero migration? You just sent me a bunch of screens. And I don't know what it, what exactly I'm looking at here. Oh, migration attraction. Yeah, the migration attraction's high, and then population in the Midlands is... Oh, it's just bugged in the UI. Got it, got it, got it. So we'll take a look. It's bugged in the UI, but not in... Oh, I don't know why I'm picking on the p picking the state that you like showed, or is it you were looking at the population? Or let's check exactly in a screenshot how you look at it. Midlands overview. Oh, but zero migration. But you're achieving migration. They should have some amount of migration, the map mode. Oh, we have to be on the migration map mode, is what you're saying? Let's pick a place that should be having migration, right? We should be having migration in Fristat. It looks like we're getting no migration. And this user interface as well. That's disappointing. You can only get targeted mass migration. You also try debug, you cannot get migration. Back to Civ 5 days, yeah. Migration seems to only be mass migration, zero migration everywhere. Seeing a bit in count some countries, but like single digits. Ching starts with closed borders, yeah. Five mass migrations going at a time. So it's only mass migration. So if we go here, where they're experiencing a mass migration event. Now we're seeing some migration, right? Uh, they nerf they nerf migration for performance, but somehow the performance is worse and the migration's non-existent. They keep shooting themselves in the foot. Yeah, so like, this is kind of, it's frustrating. <sighs> yeah. We're like, we're a little bit behind in the chat. We're gonna catch up, but this is just like frustrating to me because so, uh, so from an income perspective, from like how I, I generate revenue, the more people who are playing Victoria 3, the better this is for me, just generally speaking. Um, which also like I want people to play games that they want to enjoy. I would not want people to play Victoria 3 if they hate it. But the thing is, is like a bunch of people come back and they play the game when you release a new patch. If you release the patch a week later, they would just wait a week and they would play it in a week. But when you release the patch and there's something really significantly wrong with it, then they just, like, don't want to play. So, like, it's better to release stuff, like, later. And, like, not having migration is actually huge. 
Like, Sebi says I'll switch back to 1.5. I mean, I I might as well. I don't think I'm gonna make videos on this. Um, oh, I mean, we're gonna keep streaming today. Uh, also, just to be clear, the changes that they have made that are positive are like hugely positive, and I'm a big fan. I don't want to, I don't want to like rip on the game. Like, it's not like. As far as I can tell, game development's, like, a difficult thing, so, like, but, like, also, you, like, the major overhaul here was specifically migration. Unless I'm misunderstanding something, there's literally not migration, so, like, yeah. What was the stuff about Ludi you were talking about? Um, so he had, like, several runs where he, the, the only way that it was possible for him to get what he got is, was him cheating the run. And he was saying that they were, like, legitimate Iron Man safe runs, and they weren't. Uh, and this was an EU4. And this was several years back. You can, like, YouTube it. Or, yeah, you can YouTube it and see. And my problem is not... It has nothing to do with him um, scumming it. It's passing it off as Iron Man, and then, like, um, uh, like when people called him out on it, he was, like, uh, pretty nasty about it. And he wasn't like, oh, you know what, you're right. I just kind of wanted more views and, like, this type of thing. Like, my understanding is, like, Lathe does, like, some console commanding to, like, uh, do his runs and tell a story or whatever. And if this is wrong, let me know. But, like, I don't have a problem with that if you're transparent about it. Like, I have zero problem with people, like, um, doing stuff for content. But the problem is, is, like, the deceptiveness. Like, I use safe scum. Not a lot, I don't think. I guess some people th would think I would save scum a lot. But I'm, like, transparent about it. And usually it's to avoid things I think are just, like, in psycho AI stuff. And, like, to be fair, I played Iron Man before on, like, every Vic, uh, on every Paradox game before Vic 3. And then, like, the AI psychosis is just, like, too much for me. And we might go back to playing on Iron Man now that they have changed the thing. But, um, yeah, it's just, like, the deceptiveness I had a problem with. They're very likely to accept. All right, I guess we will. All right, they accept. But, like, I also just want to emphasize, I haven't, like, consumed any of Ludi's content in years. And, uh, the, how do I want to word this? I haven't consumed anything that he's made in years, and, like, he could be different now, and I wouldn't have a way of knowing. And I think he supposedly, like, publishes his saves now, so he's not doing what he was doing before, so... You, uh, you can't hate the logic if migration causes lag, remove migration, remove lag, call it a day. Yeah, basically. You're trying an achievement run as Paraguay, you're in the UK's customs union, and getting no pop, migration's broken. Which is, like, such a substantive bug. I, I don't even know how you, like... It's a really big bug. It's, like, an enormous bug. Someone get a bonus for solving lag issue by removing migration. Except lag's worse. The map... Uh, migration map mode is showing single-digit migrations or mass migrations and migration. Oh, got it. I don't know how they managed to do both at the same time. Take the population chart and see what pops are increasing. The The pops are going to be increasing from regular population growth. By 1%. Well, I mean, I guess we can... I guess we can get rid of this, huh? This little... This little edict we're using... <laughs> Guess that won't be that won't be necessary. Well, it still give us mass migrations, but no QA. Maybe I don't know. Like the this is pretty random crashes are back. They added a bunch of stuff affecting performance, but did they really add that much stuff? They added like the the tiger kids. Um, we're about to show something inappropriate. Um, they added the census data. Is this is what we're talking about. So, migration broken is worse than LF still bugged it, uh, yeah, it's definitely worse. This is de I don't think this is the worst patch. Well, actually, the other patch I was thinking might be the worst patch was a beta patch, and you can't really compare the beta patch. This has, well, 
for uh, X.0 release. No, this isn't the worst. There, there was some where the game would like crash in two months or whatever, uh, and it was like uh, they hot fixed it within several hours. But like, that just has to be the thing. Yeah. The worst is definitely one of those, but this is like pretty, pretty bad. They did invest a lot of time with the train guy. Bro, that train guy is so lit. We're probably gonna take another look at the train guy. It is the biggest question around Paradox games. Is the game fixed yet? Answer no, but I won't be around to check when it is. Yeah, well, like the people come and check. Yeah, the people are coming and checking on the point O, like, so 1.6.0, and then like, they're not going to be back until spheres. A lot of people, like a huge chunk of people, will just be like, oh, the game's broken. They won't check back in on 1.6.1. They're going to check back on spheres. And so, like, the, the like it's a huge loss of opportunity to increase the, like, player base. Which I care about a lot. Like, <laughs> it's pointless to play uh, about without migrations. Pops are the most important resource in the game. It's not pointless. You can still, like a little bit but it's pretty bad it also makes slavery meta we might go slavery because you could still move pops through slavery and the reason to ban slavery m is mainly to do with migration so we might try and enact slavery which is what we did last time migration was broken <sighs> last time they tried to implement it though the last time they tried to implement the cultural communities mechanic like this exact thing that like <laughs> they wanted to do it broke migration as well uh, and then they updated it, and then it was super broke. General is gaming. You're sick. <laughs> Are you sick? You're barely deficit spending. I am sick. Uh, I'm sick of... <laughs> I'm sick of... Like, this is such a bad, like... Migration is just broken. When they were, like, specifically working on migration. There are a lot of moving parts, so each time you nudge something, everything else breaks. Yeah, but they... Lenny will gain a lot of popularity if they do it right. Yeah. In the U4, there's still tools to alter saves and keep the Iron Man status. Yeah, and then also, on top of that, you could just, like, have an overlay that shows Iron Man status. Wait, so you literally don't get migration? It's only mass migration. This is the... Ooh, uh, that's a thing. But it's, right now, it's only mass migration. This is the only form of ma migration you get. So... I mean, we're still going to get some. I guess it's not as broken as the, the patch where it was, like, literal no migration ever. But it's only mass migration. Um, also, I wonder how long it takes them to fix it. I imagine they fix it within 24 hours. But there's a lot of people who will try the game literal today. And then on the basis of what happens today, they'll, like, you know... Ooh, we could go for an obligation on... From them... Because it looks like they are decently likely to win it. But then we have to fight Portugal and Italy. Or Mexico, rather. I don't think we want to wreck Mexico. But now might be a good time to go for Portugal. After this. Because we have an obligation from the UK right now. Oh, I hate this bug. It's still there. It isolates. We'll see if it go, how quickly it takes it for it to go away. But all of our market gets isolated when the route that it was going through gets bricked, which is what happened. So it was going through Venezuela, and so since it can't go through Venezuela anymore, now we have zero market access and it can't recalculate. We'll actually just save and reload. Some countries do see some internal migration, yeah. He's fully trans uh, parent on console, pretty much uh, even says he's bad without it. Uh, I assume you're talking about, yeah, I'm super behind on the chat. We're going to try and catch up while we do some of the war stuff. I assume you're talking about um, Lane. But, like, no problem with Lane. Like, I'm not, like, an elitist, like... You have to be playing, like, such and such a way, or, like, yeah. Before releasing an update, uh, I played at least once. What happened to a Roomba? I don't know. Oh, only Hoey 4 has okay on mine, I guess. Migration, what, never heard of it. 
-hmm. Hello, sir. How's the patch, Mr. Bombastic? Well, so I kind of want to focus on the positive, but as it comes to our attention that migration is bugged uh, for internal migration, but not for mass migration, it's pretty, it's pretty, bit, it's a bit of a downer. Um, but they have improved, they have made diplomatic plays transparent, which has long been my biggest complaint. And so that those are transparent now, I think is huge, especially for the people who want to play on Iron Man. We're not quite committed to the Iron Man, but I think that this is a very, very big change. It's a very nice change and I'm happy about it. But the, the construction queue bug is not fixed. Um, and which is why we switched to manual construction again. Uh, and well, we're going to go slavery because migration is not a thing. Well, okay, so the thing is, is if we want to do mass migration, it, uh, we're, I don't know if only mass migration is worth us not going slavery to get pops. We're going to try not going slavery, but I'm not sure if it's better. It might be worse. Um, We don't have uh, the thing to go secret police. We're going to be trying out secret police this run. Um, but yeah, migration's broken. Doesn't happen. This is the biggest TLDR. Some more testing. What countries get uh, migration is random each game? It's random? I achieved migration with default accepted pops at start, but couldn't achieve migration with cultures that weren't accepted at game start. Yeah, but we don't even have Spanish people moving. We have hard nothing. Just look at the pop growth in the tab. Oh my god, I found it. Just look at pop growth in the tab. I'm so behind that I don't even know if I can try and communicate and see the thing, but... Talk about census data. Turtle Island time? I mean, we could swap to Turtle Island. Surprise, YouTube allows the adult content. Yeah. Census data should not affect gameplay in any way. These states already exist. It's not present in a different way. Check for migration in the state of Africa. What type of culture is increasing? It would be a number of some culture present, but it could be pop growth. Oh, so you think it's being shown as pop growth instead of migration? Well, with the migration attraction of 106 or 107, they should be having way more pop growth than this, than like 1%. I like if it was included. Like the Toledo pop growth is still positive. They will have two numbers beneath it. Yeah, but the the thing is, is the here. Let's find Toledo specifically. The thing is, is so these are the pop growth we're seeing is almost exactly one percent, which is kind of what we get off of birth rate. Um, but it's just uh, birth rate and mortality, and none of the migration. We patiently await for the Turtle Island run. So. And Spheres will be broken on release. I will be so sad if it's broken on release. But I think I will get early access to it, and so I could just be super, super... God, that's so obnoxious, man. You send a photo to, on chat to Discord journalists right now? Yeah, a lot of people are pinging me stuff. Sebi is pinging. I can't look at every thing on Discord. But migration works, it's just sensitive. Uh, I think it's got to be some and not others. 100% is an enormous amount of migration attraction to not be getting any migration. Like. Imagine unintentionally buffing China. Yeah, it's time to play China. Do you want a quick bullet of list of the Turtle Island stuff? Um, we're going to order food soon, so maybe we do it. It's not UI. Mr. Marcos is... I trust that Marcos is, like... He's been, like... All he's been doing has been checking stuff. Since the thing dropped. I guess we don't care about migration attraction, huh, guys? You've been playing in Spain as well, you have internal migration. Yeah, so this kind of comports with the idea that uh, it's randomly rolled on game start who can get migration and who can't. That's so wild. You just gotta keep re-rolling the run until you get the migration. 
look down at the cultures with the exact numbers and see if they go up. <sighs> okay, so we're looking at the cultures. We have Sotho, Nagini, Boer. We don't have any other pops other than the ones the game starts with there. And they're going to be going up, but th we have literally just the ones that start there. So what did they fix? I mean, Diplo plays are now transparent. Oh, we can't land with this. Opium decision now works properly. Do they have the right communities? Uh... Communities are only supposed to be affected. Oh, you're saying that we don't have a Spanish community here and this is why? But here's the thing is like... The lack of a Spanish community, maybe this is it. And there's not enough differential. But how are we with over 100 migration attraction not... Well, okay, I guess there's one thing we can do to kind of check this. But I think it's just broken. But So there should be Spanish pops migrating between the Spanish states. And we have Spanish states that have literal unemployment. Um, and they're not exiting. But let's, let's just put a greener grass campaign here. But we have, like, here. Let's show it. We have places with literal unemployment. Or we did. I guess they're not anymore because we built a bunch of stuff there. But none of these places are changing. So there's no... Oop, there we go. There's one. Where was the one? Kajamarka. We're getting 63 since from Kajamarka since last week. Annual projected migration, 3k. Interesting. I mean, so maybe it works? Migration, it says that pops will only move if they are sufficiently dissatisfied. Also, the region don't have any cultural communities in Spanish in the region. Yeah, but how are we supposed to get a mass migration for this? We have 170 attraction. 160 attraction. 169. Nice. Um... Okay, so we should see a mass migration, no? And the founding of a new cultural community. Okay. Okay, maybe it's not bugged. Because Full Bay wasn't there before. Now Full Bay's here. We're seeing weekly migration, though, of nothing. With This is an insane number for mass mi for migration. I do think it won't trigger mass migration on the same market, so there will be no migration for Spanish people. Math is not mathing. I mean, this is a huge number, man. I don't think this is wad. I don't think this is working as intended, as designed. I mean, Naguni spawned here. It was like the same thing that we got over here with Castile. Where we got, and now it's gone, but remember a cultural community formed here in Castile after we put in the mass migration, the migration thing, and but just zero pops moved here. There was just zero pops movement. Look, we have a, and here we have 533 coming from the mass migration from 80, like, with a weekly projection of 27k from this mass migration. So... I think, okay, to whatever extent it is or is not present, it's not WAD. Like, this is not how it's supposed to be working. So, uh, if you're going to play, play with someone who has a lot of pops. <laughs> we have a decent amount of pops, so I, I guess we could probably just keep rolling with this, but... Um, we'll almost certainly be, like, starting over a new run at some point. Gotta see what the weekly is. So... Uh, we have colonial exploitation, but this is incorporated. It's a 
that makes free stat actually kind of suck because it starts with a really low population and normally you just like you roll the gold events and you get to like two million or whatever and you're able to actually do the stuff but we won't we will probably not be able to actually even employ all the gold mines and we can't <laughs> lo and behold <laughs> and it's gonna be impossible too shit man usa is it literally unplayable probably Looks like we have a lot of more people who have not seen the Sphere stuff than have seen the Sphere stuff, so we're probably going to take a look at the Sphere stuff in a little bit. And also, I'm going to order my Paella E Tapas. But I should make a Vicky 2 video sometime, would be fun. Victoria 3 Expert plays Victoria 2. I just like, I could never call myself a little, or not never, but like calling myself an expert in anything just feels very strange I I mean so the values are just fucked and it's, it's working as designed but the values are just super fucked maybe is like the way to think of it Still learning nuances in this game years later. You have to like super keep up on things. Because like stuff also just changes. I guess we don't want to we don't want to build construction sectors in for stat. So we're gonna run out of pops there. Or try uh -huh. I mean, we're gonna run out of pops in a lot of places. I mean, we might switch to Ching. I don't know. <laughs> You'd definitely be able to play as Ching. You got lots of mass migrations of pressure from Russia and Ottomans. You had racial segregation. I think it's the values. Just wad, but crazy values. I mean, they have like the stuff, but also like their attractions. Well, okay, I guess to spark the initial event, but we're still getting nothing. Laguni appeared. I guess we have to wait. I this just has to be the highest mass mig uh, mar mm, the has the highest migration attraction in the world. So. Migration does appear to be scuffed. Migration appears to be scuffed. It's unclear whether it's the values or just like actually broken. I mean, I guess we could also just run out of labor in places and see a little bit more, because it's not like we have a uber high SOL. So we'll keep, we'll keep at it, but. Give you a nice push here. Yeah, so if it is the values and this is the way things work, it's actually interesting because having a really high mass migration or migration attraction just to try and siphon off uh, or spark a mass migration location is like something that's valuable. So that'll make the decree really strong if this is how this works. We're gonna try greener grass and Transvaal as well. So Transvaal should have pretty... Well, I guess they don't really have too high migration attraction. The thing is, is, like, we were greener grassing... Like, Castile from the game start. I guess we're just gonna try it again. So we're up to migration attraction of 82, which is really high. Um, and we're looking to seed some pop cultural communities here, such that we actually attract migrants. We're adding more of that. we do that <laughs> you guys have fun trying to find each fragment of the world see ya
Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I mean, we've we've passed several weeks without this triggering of mass migration, as well. But we see them on the map. I mean, but like this is the massive migration. Well, I guess the annual projection of a hundred thousand is quite a bit. But they just decided they wanted migration to basically be nothing. Okay. Well, let's see. I guess this is just gonna be the super swimming guys. I guess we also don't care about national supremacy. Oh, we're on migration controls. Am I just an idiot? I'm just a moron, maybe. We're on migration controls. Maybe I'm just a moron. Maybe I'm just a moron. Well, that's, that's why we're not getting a mass migration event, but. Everyone content in their stats, yeah. No, I mean, the the, re the reason we're not getting a mass migration is because <laughs> we have border controls. <laughs> we need closed borders when we exist. Alright, we're going to keep playing. Maybe it's not broken. Maybe it's just the values. I don't... <laughs> We'll give him some migration attraction and pray. Or I guess we'll just land the other side here. They're already there, so... In eight days. Classic. No one would expect... Th People are just afraid of the Inquisition. They actually do suspect the Spanish Inquisition. I think we also probably want to encourage migration in one of these places, too. End of Agosta maybe makes sense. I guess we'll play around with this stuff. In Eastern Andalusia will get a lot of coverage as well. Because we care about adjacent states. As did they change the way corn laws work? They did. They made it so that you have to go free trade in order to get rid of them. The Spanish people should be coming to South Africa, but they're not dissatisfied. So, um, it, you're not going to, you need a certain amount of like turmoil uh, in order to spark a mass migration is my understanding and there's not enough mass migration and uh there's not a way to i also don't know if you can get mass migration from one part of your country to another i don't know if this is even possible uh, we didn't have interest in the region damn it we've been very focused on other things We'll do some of that, though. But yeah, performance is a little bit worse. Have we tried Chaos? We're trying it right now. <laughs> yeah, I feel pretty dumb. <laughs> but the fact- yeah. So there's no way, if if we need the cultural community though, that means there's no way for us to get Spanish pops to migrate to other places effectively. Which would explain why Mr. Marcos's test with the Chig pops is a bit of a problem. But the, the Spanish people should still be able to migrate from one place with a cultural community to another, is our understanding. Like this Spanish, we have a Spanish cultural community here and a Spanish one here. We have way more migration attraction here and here. We should be receiving some intermarket migration. I guess we're gonna build up there and find out what's what. New CK3 uh, DLC is mid as F, mid AF. That's unfortunate. Who needs migration when you can just annex China before 1850? Haven't anyone else mentioned migration bugs yet on Reddit? Plenty of performance though. Well, I think you're like, you don't really notice the migration until later. <laughs> 
Getting so frustrated with gameplay because France, the first sign of rebellion, the game automatically triggers a professional government event and makes me a republic instantly. Oof. Seems like a skill issue, just migrate to pops. Yeah, the truth hurts. I think what we're going to do is we might watch the train thing in a little bit. Actually, maybe now's a good time while I order my paella e tortillas e something else. One more train viewing, please. Yeah, all right, let's do it. Shout out to the train viewing. Because we got to do this for the... Oh, my God. We got to figure out what we're going to do in terms of infamy. Let's do that first. Never forget. All right, we can reduce on New Granada. They might accept. They're not likely to, but the 4.4 infamy... Does anyone else love siding with him? Looks like Nicaragua only, so let's do that. Wait, how can we not assign him to a front? Okay, we can. I was about to say, my god. Alright, it's time to watch the train guy while I order pizza, everyone. Strap in. Strap on. Whatever you prefer. We're going a little trainy. It's time to run the train. Alright, so we do have the train gentleman who, with his excitement about trains, which is uh, free with the 1.6. Uh, everyone gets it. Everyone gets access to 10 trains, and this guy's going to talk about all of them. That we really need to talk about with this whole pack is the planet locomotive, which you're going to find in Great Britain. The planet is not the first Ooh, locomotive shoot. used in Britain, but it's one of the first that was used in a sort of industrial, not quite mass, mass produced way, but it had a standard design which was actually used and reused. The most famous of the early British locomotives is probably the rocket, but the rocket was a one-off. It wasn't replicated again and again. The planet was. The plant was a successful design, it was used by multiple railroads. You're going to see it on multiple railroads in Vicky 3, yeah, and we're going to see that design appear again and again in other countries because it was so successful. One of the best places to see that planet design get reused is, in fact, the United States. In the United States, we start off with a locomotive called the John Bull. The John Bull John started Bull. life as a planet locomotive. It was exported from Britain to the United States in the 1830s. The planet design was very successful in the UK, and so it was one of the first things exported. A planet locomotive was exported to the US in 1834, called the John Bull. It was called that because John Bull is the personification of Britain and all that. Uh, and when they used the John Bull in the United States, they discovered it wasn't really fit for conditions in America. American rails were cheaper, Bologna. they were windier, they didn't have the same support that they did in Britain. So after one season of use, they start to make some small tweaks to the John Bull. Just, you know, maybe a larger light in the front, cover the driver because the weather was worse in the United States. And over time, the John Bull became this sort of ship of Theseus. It was retired in the 1870s. Ship of Theseus is such an important thought experiment as it relates to identity. Maybe we'll talk about Ship of Theseus when this is over. ...70s, after 40 some odd years of use, and by the time it was retired, it looked like an entirely different creature. It had a different smokestack, it had extra wheel slap to the front, it had a pilot or a cow catcher attached to the front as well. The tender had turned into this enormous cab. It was almost unrecognizable, and yet, at its core, it was still the same locomotive, just with every part replaced over time. In the 1890s, the old retired John Bull was pulled back out, dusted off, and uh, refurbished a bit for the 1893 World's Fair. They wanted to show off the history of American locomotion and railroading. And when they did this, they tried to undo some of the changes that had been done to the John oh, Bull they, the the they didn't pizza. have the original records anymore. So what they ended up what with was this weird hybrid of the original design plus some of the later modifications. This is what we're using in Vicky 3 because I think it shows a good transitionary stage in a transitionary early American engineering. Sorry, and I'll see my way out. It's uh, about 
this weird ramshackle, we don't know what we're doing, we're getting parts from everywhere, let's throw things together and see what works. That's the core of early American railroading, and I think the John Bull exemplifies it perfectly. On the other side, we have the Cherepanov locomotive uh, used in Russia early on. The Cherepanov locomotive also dates from the 1830s, and it's one of the first locomotives used in Russian railroading. It's very similar to the planet design. It doesn't vary that much, and it wasn't as successful as the planet because the Cherepanov locomotive was a wood-burning locomotive, unlike the coal-burning locomotives of Britain. And frankly, it just didn't have the power at the time to cover the vast distances required to connect Russian cities together. It was an interesting experiment. The locomotive itself was sound, but railroading conditions at the time were very challenging for Sorry, Russia. Guys. And investment in the early years wasn't that hot. The Cherepanov locomotive still that exemplifies hot, what early Russian railroading was like. Experimental, trying out different designs from different places, struggling to find the right niche to fit in uh, under the economic and technological conditions that Russia was facing at the time. Then you have the Saxonia, used uh, by German states in Victoria III, but obviously not from all of Germany at the time. The Saxonia is an embellishment upon the planet type. It starts to show some unique features of early German designs. Uh, Germany began by importing tons of British designs, and over time they got much better at these things and started to add their own little flares. Uh, the Adler locomotive is one of the first German locomotives used, but the Saxonia, I believe, is more emblematic of early German railroading. You can see these nice little flares. The, the smokestack has this wonderful so little ironwork at the top. The wheels look much more like carriage wheels. they got this wonderful little flower design going on. They're starting to experiment with their own, own wheel configurations. The, the Adler is basically a copy of a British locomotive, but the Saxonia is actually trying out something new and useful specifically for German railroads. Then we have our French locomotive, the Continent. It's a generation after the other locomotives, but still emblematic of early French railroading. The Continent is a uh, Crampton locomotive. It's basically a dragster for railroads. It's got two unpowered wheels in the front and one huge big wheel in the back so that every time the wheel just rotates once, it goes super far because it's just one big wheel. It doesn't have a lot of grip, but it goes very fast. And okay. French railroads wanted that because their main point is was connecting successful. stuff to Paris. I'm gonna use Around the Paris, it's flat. I you don't have right to back. worry about having a ton of grip to go up and down the hills. Your cramped we'll locomotives we'll like Le Continent that you, again, will see in Vicky 3, are perfect for early French railroads. Not a lot of power, fast, able to go where you need to go. In this case, Paris. That's the only place that's important. By the middle of the Victorian era, more railroads and more countries were starting to experiment with more radical designs. The novelty of the large wheel of the Crampton like this was one. built upon this later sexy. on by British engineers. And you can find a perfect example of this big wheel, go fast design with the Stirling locomotive which will appear in Britain in the mid-Victorian era in Vicky 3. The Stirling, again, has one humongous wheel, which helps it go very fast, doesn't help it with pull large, heavy loads, but Britain doesn't really need that. Britain is still ultimately an island that doesn't cover very vast distances, relatively speaking. You need something that goes fast, but you don't need it to go that far. Something like the Stirling is there perfect go. for that. It's good for passenger service, Okay, with freight wheel. service, but it's good for that. On the other end of the scale, I do love this guy. I'll be right back. I'm going to use the restroom. Have the Jupiter. This is the United States' mid era locomotive of choice. It is a 440, the American locomotive. It is the perfect design for the conditions of mid century America. It's robust, it can take a beating. It's a simple design that's just as flexible with. Uh, freight as it is with passenger service and it looks pretty too i mean come on look at that look at the fancy gilding look at the paintwork ah, it's got this big old smokestack on top it's a great locomotive everybody was using this design from like the 1840s up until 1880s even and then it gradually starts to filter out of use but you can still see these 440s on like smaller short lines up until the end of uh, the steam era really for an even more long-lived uh, design of locomotive, 
we have the Sudbahn Class 23 representing German locomotives. Now, Germany covers a lot of ground with a lot of different requirements for geography, for traffic and stuff. It's hard to find a perfectly emblematic right. uh, locomotive. Back in the room, not back in the chair. Somewhere. But this Austrian railway. We haven't gotten to the one that went through the freaking wall. I think it's pretty train good. Station, yeah. It ended up being distributed amongst other countries after Chair World stream. War One. But it was originally built in the 1860s, and the last instances of the class being retired happened in 1953. Most were retired in the 1920s, but some of these lasted for 90 years after entering service. The Sudbahn Class 23 um, was a very simple design, very robust, good for leading haul Santa. stuff with practically everything. There's still some surviving um, examples of it in yeah, Austria and Germany that you can find at various museums. Then we have the train emote causing the class performance G issues locomotive probably. In Russia. The Class right, G this isn't is the one yet. much like the Sudbahn, uh, a six-wheeler type I do like the look of this one a lot. Than for passenger service, but very robust design. Like the United States, Russian railroading required hauling things over vast distances with little infrastructure support. Je so their je locomotives should. ended up having very similar looks to American ones. They're simple to, to fix, fairly versatile with whatever fuel they can deal with, they're just meant to run things over a long distance. It's and worse and migration doesn't work. Too much but about, like, we have these trains for free. This is in contrast to our final locomotive. French locomotive. The French one. Find a lot of work. Broke down and broke down once quite famously. Right? You could see how hard he's trying to not throw even more shade. He's like, I'm about to ruin this train's career. Of work. Broke down and broke down once quite famously. I apologize to our French viewers, but I'm going to butcher the name just a little bit, but it's the Class 170 West. I'm going to butcher Most the name, but not as bad as the its, train uh, viewing central ruining the station. the Montparnasse crash, where it actually had its brakes fail. Yeah, you see him on the map. Blasted right through a terminus, <laughs> crashed through the outer wall of the station, and then tumbled down a floor into Whoopsie. the street below. It's not the most reliable of locations. It's not the most reliable. very emblematic not the most of French reliable. engineering and French design in the later Victorian era. These sorts of locomotives, although they had some engineering faults, were made in service up through World War I. These are Lack the of qualifications would stop it from playing up. Hauling troops up to the front uh, in Flanders it's French, you can't might it even more. still be chugging along, wheezing along, really, in the 1920s. He picked out the locomotive design. He's got so much contempt for this train. Steam railroading history. They'll be with you from the very beginning of the game through to the end. Player, and don't drag him. He just got off work. So much more flavor to every corner of the game. <laughs> I enjoyed picking them out, and I hope you enjoy them just as much. I did enjoy him. I enjoy this video a lot. Shout out to this video. He's like, I'm about to ruin this train's career. This is exactly what he's thinking right now. He's like, you don't even know. <laughs> All right. Uh, maybe we go over some of the spheres information. Probably not. Well, I guess a lot of people are getting off work stuff. We'll, we're going to pull whether we go back over the sphere stuff. But for now, we're going to just jump back in game and start up the poll and see. Actually, no, we have to keep the paella poll. People are polling what paella is best. On the YouTubes, that is. There's three choices and then a meta choice as well, as there always is. This guy seems to be trained very well. You're not wrong. He's very trained. <laughs> Alright, we'll, we'll see what migration looks like after we get migration controls. But I... <laughs> He's trained, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Very well trained. I wonder if we could see some of these unique trains. Okay, so that's the British one, right? I'm not sure if we have to do something special to enable it either, though. But the, the US one should be different, right? Well, it definitely looks different. I don't remember that being the US one. I thought the US one was a little bit different than that. Well, that one is just the caboose. Yeah. 
think we asked for an obligation. Or can we yo-yo sway this? I don't think we can. But we do want to get Argentina, so we'll see. You've never seen Ecuador turn into Quito? That might be because, uh... I assume it's because we're Spain. Yeah, so we can't yo-yo sway here. Because we're involved in another play. So we might just uh, content ourselves with an obligation. Hey, big man, how's the patch so far? I've got good news and bad news. The good news is um, the thing I've complained about most uh, over the course of the game's history, which is the lack of transparency in the diplomatic plays, this has been fixed. The bad news is that performance is worse, and I think they broke migration. I'm not 100% sure, but it appears that they broke migration. So there's that. Mm, I guess we go to trade agreement over the obligation, probably. It's probably better. Maybe obligation's better. Let's go trade agreement. Our men are professionals. Will the new train models be around now or into, not until... I think my understanding is they're around now. You have to claim the train DLC from Steam first. One step forward, two steps back, easy. Easy peasy. 1 a.m. is your limit at night. Good night, Zam. Sleep tight. Don't let the trains bite. We hate it when the trains bite. Maybe there was a way for us to wait until full whatever. I think we'll get another chance at getting Argentina for free. This is kind of the standard Argentina Chile fares. You generally get them for free when they have these native uprisings. Every patch, bad news, they broke migration. Yeah. I mean, I think it's... Yeah, I think it's broken. Hopefully this fixes pretty soon, but this is of course because uh, we had market access going through there, so it breaks it when we when we do the things. But yes. If you guys are on the YouTube, you can vote for what your favorite paella e tapas is. First time loading in 1.6 and it's been over five minutes on the load screen. Oh, I would just restart. You can yo-yo sway, just pause uh, the game for what sway you want, even if it's thumbs down, then swap to the other side and unpause. Well, it's too late now, but... Oh, I understand what you're saying. Okay, we'll check that next time. They must have a skeleton true for the dev team for the migration. Well, the, the migration one is... A, well, we'll see what happens when we get no migration controls. It might just be working as designed with, like, really weird numbers. But Mr. Barkos was just saying it flat out wasn't working properly. Well, it seems like... So here's the thing. It seems like... It seems like you can't... I can't pass Spanish pops from one province to another. It seems like there's none of this happening. This is not allowed. That's illegal. Um, which is a bit of a concern. Also, how do we have so much authority? Holy shit, dude. Oh, I see. I understand. We're gonna get rid of that. But is our, is our, she must be really popular. Did she just become an, no, she didn't just become an adult and she's had ambitious this whole time. I don't know what it's about. Let's send you there. Smell you later. 1.5 was months ago, yeah. There's a huge uh, fan of thin and crispy paella. You're a huge fan? Soon. Tonga community in Castile poggers. Yeah, so here's the thing: is we've seen multiple, we've seen cultural uh, communities appear and then disappear with zero migration occurring, which also leads us to believe it's bug. But we're on. Let's see what happens once we get off no migration controls. But we do, we do think that it's bugged. If it's not bugged, I apologize for spreading propaganda. Shut down the city. We must contain the spread of propaganda. No, no one gets in or out. Something, something. If you know the reference, you know the reference. Um, I mean, I guess, but it's so... <laughs> the fact that we can't populate this with our Spanish... Well, I don't know. We'll see what happens. All shall be revealed, everyone. Do we have rights of assembly support? 
We'll just give him momentum. We want those guys in government anyways, because our leader is of that persuasion. Alright, so I think we might want to suppress the landowners here. But let's just do that one. Luxury furniture, do this, and then suppress the landowners, just to try and make it so that the rev doesn't pop. Also could increase taxes a little bit. Let's see what we're at. Yep, yeah, so let's increase taxes and look to get some more construction going. Bury them in paper. Sounds good. If anyone hears my doorbell ring after 4.45, please let me know, because I've missed it a couple times. But how do you think 1.6 will change the matter? Planning on making a video for this, but I assume if you're talking about construction, there's been a few changes, like tools got nerfed, um, logging got nerfed. Logging probably deserved a nerf for, like, forever, but specifically the hardwood, so now there's not a huge glut of hardwood. Um, have we tried unplugging migration controls and plugging them back in? Now this might be the answer. And behind it is the planet. Communities are supposed to disappear for a while if no migration happens. Yeah, so this might be a chicken and the egg problem. But so, like, our Nuguni community appeared here and then no migration occurred. And so I assume it's going to leave. No, we actually have Nuguni. Did they all just teleport here? What's going on? Perform at gunpoint. So we're like super close to just passing it all natural. So we could change, we can enable protectionism. Or change the progress of the civil war. Refused urgent reform. We're not going protectionism, suck it. We're passing this law, baby. Oh, now it ticks up to 102? It do be like that. I'm not sure if we are passing this fast enough, so I guess maybe we rev? Alright, we're gonna use our one time for the stream. We haven't used our one time. The one time is to get this migration controls activated before we rev, so that we don't have to face a rev. One time has been called? UPST? Gross? What? This is going to go over, but I believe we get this tick first. You tried putting the migration in rice. <laughs> you tried putting the migration in rice. Uh. <laughs> you just put it in rice, guy. <laughs> Alright, they're just gonna accept that, so we'll do that. Sulu, they accept. Congo, they accept. Chile, they don't just accept, so we'll we'll get ourselves a little bit of a Chile play. Put the Africa army on this, they should be able to handle it. Oh, we didn't look to see who was likely to join. Holy shit, they built a lot of troops. Yeah, it's popping off. We called our one time, so like obviously this isn't going to pop before the thing. Bro, it's so close. It's so close. Oh my god, that's everything revved? We didn't look to see how bad that rev was gonna be. Oh, our capital's in Toledo? I thought it was in Castile. Alright, we're gonna load. <laughs> I don't wanna fight this rev. I guess we probably could fight the rev. I've been building military in Castile, thinking it was the capital. All the trade routes died. Uh, 
99.9% rev. It was 100% rev. Yeah. It's all over now. You just shut up and this is what you get. Yeah. Ugh. Is the migration in the room with us right now? No, the migration hasn't been seen yet. I'm just gonna load and quit the law. No, we need to pass this law. We 100% need this law. Bro. <laughs> so painful. I'm not even sure we beat this rev, man. <laughs> Cause they just surround us and clap us. Oh wait, we have a 34 stack, allegedly. No, we don't have a 30, why does this say 34? Oh, that's a fleet, <laughs> Jesus. It's a fleet with the wrong icon. Yeah, we have literally just the four stack here and I don't think that the other armies can get here, right? Oh, they can assign to this front, which is ridiculous. They shouldn't be able to. No, you can't. Can you? No, so we can't actually deploy. We can only deploy this guy to this front. So the six stack, there's no way. We just get annexed. Bro. Alright, we're gonna load a little way back and try and figure something out. Switch sides, play as the rev. But then we don't pass the migration controls. We don't get to see the thing. We don't get to see the thing. Switch sides, play as the rev. The anti-migration rev. We're trying to see if this is actually broken. I think if we go back far enough, we could just do this. You think it could be the simple issue of cultural communities not spawning often enough? This could be it. All right, we're going to do some things. We're gonna do some things different. We're gonna change our ways a little bit. I'm gonna suppress those guys starting pretty early. And this is the main change we're gonna make. I think, have we already declared on, no, we haven't declared, declared on Chile. Okay. So we'll play from here. We'll up the speed, which is good because you know, the thing's going slow. Oh, there was a poll I wanted to do. I forgot which what, what I wanted to pull for it. Son of a bizzle, dude. I guess you guys are just picking which paella, tapas, whatever is best. We got no love for pineapple bacon. You guys, it's not about the pineapple bacon life. Backroom dealings oppose. Supposed to the... We might call on the train guy. I should have called on the train guy once we got our food. I guess it's still gonna be a hot minute. For whom the bell tolls, it tolls for thee. Oh, we're actually gonna get a choice. We're gonna get a choice, I think, where we can enact protectionism. in order to prevent <laughs> the, <laughs> the revolution. Oh, this is the worst timeline, everyone. I think we actually change which events we get if we do this. Because it changed the, the ticking speed. Enact protectionism event, man. All right, we're gonna reduce autonomy on Macron, they accept. On Congo, they accept. On Sulawesi, they accept. On Chile, they probably don't accept, but they might this time. All right, they accept this time. Pog, that's just skill play right there. We get this event instead, which is nice. And now it's just, 69 very high. Okay. Okay, everyone. We've safe scummed our way into, uh, into victory here. Pineapple bacon is based. Bro, pineapple bacon is delicious. You send some love to the pineapple bacon. 
Any vassals to help us go through the rebellion is pretty lucky to have not made it so vassals can lick the rebellion's uh, side during a revolt. Or can help it. Actually, they can now, but I think that they're not very likely to. We might just support the UK if they have a bad attitude towards us. No, they're genial, so we'll just leave that alone. Vultures upon a carcass, so be it. Looks like we wouldn't have gotten the tick anyways. Or maybe not. Is it maybe, maybe not? Your love is not enough for the pineapple bacon. What's with Ecuador's name? It changes when you're playing Spain. If it's a subject. Maybe your game is bugged. You're seeing pups move internally throughout the continent on you, Ines. Yankee and uh, others? Yankee and, um... Yeah, I'm seeing zero Spanish pops move. But someone said it was, like, random based on, like, what country you have. But we have migration controls, so maybe migration controls just break all migration or something. But yeah, we have a ton of a migration attraction, and then Spanish, nothing. Like, a place that's not moving from a place that has, like, ten to whatever. We have a bunch of, uh, like, migration edicts in. Okay, we're up to extreme again, 161. I mean, it's gonna come back down. Okay, I know we used our one time, but I think this is gonna count as like a continuance of the one time, right? Did you try the new secret police feature? We're going to. We wanna do the falling out of windows. What are these tapas even? Where's your homon serrano and tortilla de uh, patatas? Good night from Spain. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the running joke uh, is of course, all right, we're gonna take a save. We got the migration controls. Now we can see what's up. Uh, the running joke is, uh, every stream we order food, we never order pizza. That's the joke. I hope I hope you guys understand. We never order pizza. We do a vote. On okay, so now we're getting migration attraction. So, who is coming? We're getting immigrants from Puerto Rico, Spain. Okay, so we're getting immigrants from these places, right? Neither of these are discriminated against. So, does no mig does migration controls just shut off any? Cause it, bro, who's here coming here now? It just tells us where they're coming from, but we see Basque at one point four k and uh, Spanish at one point seven million. Weekly migration is plus one point two k, so it has to be Spanish pops. Which seems to imply we should pass something that the the rural folk like, and that'll get us out from under this. We could pass wealth voting. I never hate that. Wow, there's nothing we can pass that's like reasonable that the landowners hate. I mean, we do want to get off of, we do want to go on to no health system, so that the church, uh, the landowners hate that, though. Because we want this rev to go away, please. 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 Can we have this guy fall out a window? Oh, we can just exile the dissonant. I think this kills the, the thing. No? Bueller? I guess not. So we could also see down here. So we have a huge migration attraction, but we're not pulling anything. Alright, we're gonna choose the one that we hope doesn't rev us. Okay. Maybe we just have to enact protectionism? God, that sucks. This is also not a lot of migration. Considering our value. So the values are, like, messed up. So these guys are getting sent to Castile. So, migration controls bricks migration. Transvaal does not have a cultural community. We cannot... Uh, 
you cannot kill an idea. So we can't create a cultural community here because there isn't a place where Spanish pops are suffering enough that it would be created here. The migration busted is kind of busted. It might be like not 100% busted. What's wrong with protectionism? It doesn't have a company. It has less investment pool contribution. Are communi cultural communities working as design? I don't know. They might be wad, but then the values are just super messed up. Like, I think the values might just be messed up. But also, uh, you get no migration if you have any sort of migration controls. So that's definitely a bug. So now we seem to be getting some migration. Can this just, like, go away? Hmm. Oh, this guy's a reformer. Okay, I guess we'll go property of women. Wow, that doesn't prevent you from being upset. Son of a bitch. Son of a bizzle. You can accommodate. Please stop revving. Not my gumdrop buttons. This is just such a big rev, too. APOC has migration on migration control, so it's not that either. Interesting. I mean, that has turned this on for us, which... And this is a decent amount of migration per annum, right? Because this is per week. But also, this is the only place where we're getting any migration. And the fact that we haven't gotten a mass migration on this high of value is, like, a little bit strange, maybe? Maybe it's not. You know what? Mass migration attraction... Let's take a look. We don't have... Well, actually, we have decent mass migration attraction. Castile. Our mass migration is based on the average migration attraction of the following eligible states. So, 40. So, we have mass migration of 40 attraction. They is 60. So, it's not going to work exactly the same, which means you can't cheese the mass migrations. But... We can't get intra-market migration. And we're just, like, one bad roll away from revving. Maybe we have to pass protectionism? Bro, I don't know. We could use a different rural folk guide. The problem is this guy we already exiled, a dissident. It uses cooldown. We need him to fall down the stairs. Why not just acquiesce to their demands? Because we want to keep on laissez fair. We might, though. But if you're on national supremacy, you can only get one from Mexico. If we can't cheat, if we can cheese, if we can't cheese, then we can't pizza. You got a pizza or French? <laughs> if you, if you French fry when you're supposed to pizza, you're gonna have a bad time. It being on eighty nine is way better because there's a lot more events. Well, I mean, it's still like not ideal, but. To be fair, these guys might stop being revolutionaries soon. What are you upset about, my guys? Law changes. So as soon as the law change decays one, we should be at minus nine instead. Because we're trying to pass property to women, so this will be good. We could pass protectionism for a bit. We could do this. We might have to do this. We'll see. Transfer states, please have Kenya in there. No. British Mauritania is nice, though. Not gonna have Kenya in there. We need to start playing.
What happened? Nothing, right? They both accepted our demands. Why did we get the noise? So we can see Egypt's likely to side, Liberia is likely to side against us, Tunis is likely to side against us, but now that that's a problem, uh, Great Britain can't join against us because we they own us an obligation. France is not likely, so we're gonna take a save and try and go for Portugal now. I think the numbers are off a bunch. Ooh, rev dropped to forty eight. Oh, that's what it was. It like uh, it, the rev must have reset. That's what the noise was about. But that's really good for us. You are correct, kind sir. A little bit of good news. I mean, maybe we just have to, like, maybe this is just the new sauce we're swimming in regarding the migration. Oops, someone's leaving. Where are you going? You going nowhere. They're going to Freestadt. Makes sense. One a week. 52 a year. Also, we have to, like, internalize that it's based on weekly instead of yearly now, which is a better way to do things. But also, one is not a lot to send, man. We go for war reparations as well. They're fearful. Please back down. Yes! Easy peasy, Portugal. The yearly numbers are off by a bunch, too. Yeah, I, I don't think the numbers are, like, what they should be. I'm gonna stop suppressing them here. And now it's down to a movement, so this will be nice. This will be big nice. One dude with a suitcase at the border. Yeah, that's one massive migrant. <laughs> and now it's over. It's done. Enough of that. <laughs> There's one boy. Wasn't about that life no more. We have a ton of infamy, so we're just gonna chill for the most part for a while. How's performance? Performance, unfortunately, is worse. But it might be better hyper late game TM. Uh, but that's just because migration is kind of bricked. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that's like one way to improve performance, just to stop the migrations. We, we now see very, very little migration occur. Nice to catch you live video, says James James Dean for sure. <laughs> for sure, bro. Uh, turn you from a bumbling idiot in the game to a half bumbling idiot. We're all kind of half bumbling idiots. You know, like mastery of anything uh, like takes like roughly 10,000 hours and then the game is changing simultaneously. So like in theory, I don't think there's ever like someone who's like completely mastery, has complete mastery over the game. That should be illegal. Why can we ask for an obligation. We can't just raw dog join, but we're on the same side of a war. We shouldn't be allowed to try and do anything. Maybe the thing is lying to us and they would be willing to transfer something. What we really want, well, we know that. Hmm. We would like to trade for Kenya. Maybe once we have a piece, we try and trade for Kenya. They don't have all of Kenya. If we could trade anything for Kenya, that'd be really good. The new Grenadine liberal revolt. Grenadine. Grenadine. Is it Grenadine? It's nice you can borrow troops on offense. You're gonna have to get used to the new icons. How's performance worse? It's just worse. Is how. Alright, nobody's in. We're in plays. Alright. We could also use the obligation to maybe get Kenya, to be fair. So this is going to be really good. And then we'd have to get Rift Valley, but they might also just break Rift Valley. Oh, City of Plenty. They've done Goose Cache misses, basically. This is the one. We're losing a power rank. Please, no, not my gumdrop buttons. Anything but the num gumdrop buttons. Cheers, nonetheless. And thank you, James Dean, for the donation. Thank you so very much. That's a lot. Wowza. Much appreciated. James Dean will be a name that I won't forget in some time. 
You can't trade Kenya with the UK as it's now part of their subject. You'd have to trade it with them. British East. Oh, you're right. We thought that this was already a thing. Damn, that's unfortunate. A little bit of a ball drop by me then. But if we could trade for Kenya instead of... Like, if we could offer them with value for Kenya or something like this, maybe that's good. It, actually, to be fair, we'd want to do it the other way around. We'd probably want to get Rift Valley and give them Kenya. The rest of Kenya, so... Interesting that they were able to form that already. I don't know why they were able to form that. I thought it required four full states. I guess not. It's kind of strange. I... In my head, I was like, where, where's our fight with Portugal? They backed down. Portugal said, nah. Let's not. Late game performance is worse, too. Yeah. Your only idea is that migration only works between non-homelands cultural communities. Non-homelands cultural communities. Oh, that makes sense. Non-homeland cultural communities. Yeah, that's the working theory. You're gonna try testing it. Non-homeland cultural communities. But I don't know why us switching to accepted pops... Us switching from... Uh, migration controls to no migration controls shouldn't have unlocked the migration to Castile. So there's gotta be a little bit more going on. I guess it was... Maybe it's because it was discriminated in the other state or something? I don't know. Gonna, I forgot to double check that the pizza is indeed, I mean the tapas is indeed arriving at the correct time. So I'm gonna check that. But. I think there's a progress here. Making my way down town, talking fast. Seasons fast, enough I'm done, etc. Mostly etc. So is migration broker now? Uh, at the very least, the numbers seem to break it. Like, it's not operating, like, anywhere near what it was before, at the very least. Um, but, you know, one, migra one migrant passing from here to here, it is happening. The cultural community's mechanics is also just completely different. Um, which makes it you want to seed pops. We haven't managed to pull in a mass migration. Uh... Oh, now we're getting Catalan. So this is a new... This happened without mass migration. Because we have turmoil, so now we have a Catalan here. So this was not mass migration here. Are they discriminated? No, they're not. And now we're receiving some Catalan pops. So I guess it's working as designed, but the numbers are just super messed up. Because this is we're getting like 50k a year with a migration attraction of 95, which is like nothing like what it was before. By the way, generalist, what is your heritage? Really bad that the big selling point on this patch was to improve performance. Yeah, like, I agree. Because it's not like, uh, it's not like feature bloat or something. Uh, my heritage is I'm a quarter Mexican, I'm a quarter Armenian, I'm a quarter German, I'm an eighth English, and I'm an eighth Welsh. Yeah. I am Armenian. Yeah. But just a quarter. Just the tip. My grandfather on my mother's side is Armenian. I don't think we want the other setback. I also don't think we want minus 10 in active chance. I guess we'll just take the setback. I guess I guess a bad event is a bad event, huh? It do be like that. And we maybe try and reduce autonomy on people in a more timely way, but... Probably fine. I think we're, yeah, pharmaceuticals into the company. Yeah, pharmaceuticals is maybe less important right right now. Let's see who we can... Uh... We maybe want to think about trying to expand our customs union. Yeah, but what made the Catalan people move here? Other than the fact that we have 95 migration attraction, which is a lot. Mr. Gaming confirmed Kardashian, basically. So, American, basically. What are you? You're a what now? Which one of those offended your sentiments, sir? I'll say it again. <laughs> Pretty sure cultural communities can just spawn randomly. I have a population in West Africa and North Dakota. I don't think it's 
random. I think when they are experiencing turmoil, they want to try and leave. And so maybe the triggers for when they want to leave are just, like, not as robust as they should be. It's like, kind of my thought. Really thought the capital was in Castile. Maybe we move the capital to Castile? Yeah, let's just move the capital to Castile. Castile just seems better. There you go. We'll have some issues for a little while, but it'll be fine. And now... Because we set up a lot of our auto expands and made a lot of our decisions, like... Building st where to build stuff and this type of thing. Although, to be fair, maybe it's better to have in a coastal province. It probably would have been better to move it to a coastal province, but that's whatever. We already clicked the button. All those things, yet 100% American. Should I play on this patch or roll back? I would play on this patch, maybe. I So the thing is, is I don't know how bad performance gets in the 80s. We're on speed 5, though, right? And the game's needing to chug. Unfortunately, I think the answer is I would roll back. And I hate saying it, but I guess if I have to pick one or the other. I'm not going to roll it back, because I like I just... For the purposes of content, I just have to be playing the newest patch. Like, I'm categorically not going to roll... Well, I'm... Uh, actually, you know what? Uh, my answer would be, don't start a new run. I would wait. I expect them to fix it uh, in relatively short order, maybe tomorrow. Bro is moving the capital back to Burgos. It do be like that. So, yeah, I would just not start a run. Actually, would be my advice. I would wait. Ooh, Germany. That's a fast Germany in Austria-Hungary. AI be doing things. What are the pops wearing? Just classic clothing. Just normal, everyday clothing. I don't know what you're talking about. Just normal stuff. Just normal-looking stuff. I don't know what you're... I forget what I forget where we were. Where they were wearing like the, the pajamas or whatever. Where were we looking at? Where they were wearing those? How noticeable is the performance drop? It's quite noticeable, especially considering how early in the run we are. Me who plays on 1.0.6 based radicalism on the new patch is growing. Time to wait for the 1.6.1. Yeah. And this is something we talked about earlier. It's, it's very frustrating because, in particular, like, people come back and they check out the game and they're like, is the game good yet? Every single major patch, the 1.6.0, and they, they're not going to check back again 1.6.1. Like, but, like, the I think the most obnoxious thing in Diplo... I think the most... The very worst thing, right, for, uh, for newer players and, like, uh, players who don't want to save kind of stuff is this where you can't tell who's going to join and why. And now you can. So this is such a big, like, improvement. How slow is it? It's big slow. More like not hungry. But this is really nice. The fact that we can now kind of see why people want to join if they want to join. Like here, we would know that the Ottomans would side against us. So if that's a problem, then we could do it. Or they're likely to side against us, but not guaranteed. And so, like, I think this feature is just so important and so good especially for newer players because it the plays felt just completely opaque and now this is like just a big improvement but it's overshadowed by the fact that like bro migration's not migrating and then like the construction bug is not fixed and performance is worst yeah basically the the deploy like this is a, the diplomacy being not transparent has literally been my biggest complaint for a long time so like and this is the patch they fix it, but they got some other problems, basically. I don't think we want to get involved in a Diplo play, so we're just going to do that. Only the one where they automatically accept, so... Spreadsheets are always good. Guess they don't need to check performance when they cite, when they test 490 and Ryzen 57. Time to wait a month for 1.6.12 when, when they fix the bugs introduced in the previous 11 hot fixes. Yeah. I don't know. I, I'm trying not to be jaded. I'm trying to be optimistic about stuff. I understand how... Well, actually, maybe let's pull it. How do people feel? Jaded or optimistic?
We're gonna start a little bit of a poll on the YouTubes. How do people feel? I mean, we also have, uh, So we're gonna have optimistic, neutral, jaded, and then we need a third option. Okay. There we go, or fourth option, rather. So, oop, trains should have been all caps. Just pretend like trains is all caps. They're charging 30 bucks for a DLC. Well, to be fair, this isn't the game on the DLC, but yeah, the the DLC is not cheap. I also just think that that's gonna be the new price point for like a lot of this type of stuff. Oop, look at us We're getting to do the philosophy department. Whoops. Yeah, they had patch notes on performance improvements. You can definitely see the, the the argument for Jaded. I am optimistic, but I definitely I definitely understand. As someone who's been interested in the game since launch, I've been waiting for 1.7 to rekindle your interest. I love your name, IDK Lamau. That's a high quality name, but yeah. I think that that hopefully that's the thing, and I mean I really hope that they ship it without any like issues. Oh, okay. I'm glad to see a lot of people are optimistic about it. I guess the the people who aren't optimistic are just, uh, or the people who are jaded are much more vocal. But like I'm thinking, in a couple days they do fix whatever problems are here. You know, and the transparency is like huge. On the diplo play. But that's very interesting that it's pulling it's pulling like that. I was I was expecting a lot of people to say jaded. Or a lot of people to pick one of the two meme answers, but, like... You were hyped uh, this afternoon for Spheres of Influence, but man, this uh, patch being so bugged, just so mad. Makes sense, but I'm, I'm also expecting it to be... Recently. Let's see, we got... Currently, we have 37% of people are optimistic. 21% uh, of people are neutral. 18% uh, are jaded. And 25% are trains. Which, you know, trains, I agree. To be fair, trains. So of all the of all the things to be saying right now, trains is trains is the thing. The things do be thing in. I think we're just gonna add some of these here, and then in Zanzibar and LM, let's add a university actually, so they can actually employ up some stuff. Maybe, maybe, hey baby, maybe, maybe baby, baby, maybe, hey baby, something like this. We can't trade. Why can we not trade states with you? Oh, they're in a Diplo play? Okay, fair. Fair, fair, fair. They's involved. We's not involved, but they's involved. Benin will accept a reduction of autonomy, and Kutai is holding out for something better. Play says, I'm a hater. FPX, that's not very nice. Just give us a CB to force China to open borders, basically. We'll see if they schism again. Chris Brooks says I identify as a train. Truly, Chris Brooks has, as a train has the most humanity of us all. I didn't think the game would slow performance-wise if the buildings didn't take so long to construct. Maybe I'm going crazy. Well, to be fair, they slowed down construction. Construction used to be faster. In general, modern Paradox gamers are kind of spoiled in that, in that Paradox uh, grand strategy games are so polished. Any other grand strategy games are much more jank. Really? Do you have an example? The thing is, is like I almost think that like Paradox is in its own genre. When I think of grand strategy, I definitely think of Paradox, but I actually can't like in my head put something else in the genre. Don't people know that already Paradox games are a collection of uh, bugged features held together by spaghetti code? That you somehow thinks thousands of hours. Yeah. So this is the this is the classic important rejoinder. If you're spending thousands of hours in something, is it really that bad? Or are you just, like, such a nit for all the details because you've played the game so much and you don't understand it? I don't know. Performance seems the same to you as 1.5 and you have all the AMD stuffs. Yeah, but, like, performance starts to dive, like, later on in the game. 
Wouldn't more buildings result in more lag? Yes. So I think this is one of the reasons that they slowed down the player pretty categorically. Warhammer? Total War? Is that is that what we're comparing? I think Total War is a dramatically different game because the the map based stuff seems very superficial and then the like battles are just like RTS, right? The only uh, one you can think of a geopolitical simulator and it's a shit show of performance features bugs. Yeah. And bowl of spaghetti with balsamic and olive oil is help, better held together than most recent Paradox games. Mm. Says Barndo. Oh, it's that bad. You literally can't play 1.6? Mr. Barkos, you literally can't play it? Wait, why not? Like, as a moral reason you can't play it? Like, I, I would not want to... Is that the, the moral reason, or like you can't actually launch it? We forgot to build explosives anywhere. Maybe we put them, we slot one down in Antifagasta, maybe Castile, put them on auto expand. And then also put one down here. Put the other one at the back of the queue. Really got to do a lot of stuff auto expanding though, because we we have control of the queue. Forex games and total war games are way too simplified to be close grand strategies. Yeah, this is kind of my opinion. Forgot to get Mosque of Jinne. Says Playa. Facts. Forever forget. Never forget. But like, yeah, the thing that gets me about this one though is like. They are explicitly trying to improve performance. Performance is worse. And then... And then they're imp they're improving it by means of a, a migration mechanic. <laughs> migration seems broken. <laughs> I guess we're getting one migrant every once in a while. Brazil? What the hell? What is this about, my guy? What are you doing? What is this? That's certainly optimistic, I guess. It's very optimistic, I would say. Yeah, I don't know what to make of this. They're just going a little psycho. I think we're probably just gonna try and land them twice, so I guess we do some of this. Yeah, I missed the plot. No, just kidding, they didn't miss anything. So well, now Germany's looking towards our side. Looks like you want war goals, uh, probably banning slavery, yeah? You want war goals, probably banning slavery. USA. We're not going to put any war goals on the USA because it makes them much more likely to transfer subjects. I don't think we're going to go for that. I think we don't mind owing an obligation to Russia, so we'll just do that. We could conquer the Amazonas. We'll still have an obligation thing there. I guess we wanted to revoke the claim. We revoke the claim on California, but they'll still want it, so. Oh, maybe we're supposed to try and sway one more guy. Oh well. 
Good property, women. Big nice. See, will this cause a rev? Doesn't look like it. So we'll get no health system so that we can go public health insurance. One step forward, two steps back, something like this. Wait, what is this? Why does Brazil have a freaking... Bro, they change the AI so much in terms of how much navy they like to build. <laughs> That's such a fat navy. That's a super fat navy. That navy is big. Ooh, girl, that navy thick. Like, yeah. Yeah, when the bike fix introduces more features. I like the joke, the. You can only see census data with census suffrage. People should try stuff like Distant Worlds, Terra Invicta for somewhat modern grand strategy game with the jank. Yeah, I think that, like, I don't know, a lot of people just want to complain as well. Did anyone hear a doorbell? Did I miss something? No. Certainly don't want to keep the guy out in the rain, though. Like, uh, I, I think some people just want to complain. Like, I'm not trying to, like, throw a bunch of shade. And also, I'm complaining here about some of the stuff that's here. But, like, in terms of interest. I guess we'll throw this up. It sucks that Austria is, like, putting in way more... These guys are putting in way more stuff than the other guys. Like, I don't see any Russian troops here. I don't think. Do you see some UK troops? And we have to wait and see where their navy goes. TBH. I mean, the UK navy should be able to clap them. Maybe we can do this. Also, they have multiple admirals and we just have the one. So we should win fights that are straight up. But they... Oh, they only have frigates as well. Okay, so we should be able to get in. I'm going to put up some rapid advance. Oh, we should have gotten the wooded guy. Whatever. General's throwing shade. Betrayed by the streamer. Always. Still trying to pin down which countries work or what's happening, basically. The AI is getting more ships than migrants. I mean, I do like the AI seems to be better too. Look at them, look, at, look, 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 look. They're looking to, they're coming for us here. I think we win this battle, but let's see if we can Maneuver around them. Let's see if we can dust them up. Alright, that's the... That's the... That is the doorbell that we heard. So let's do this. Let's get you guys... To our final locomotive. French locomotive that required a lot I'll of... I'll be work, right back. Broke down and broke down once quite famously. I apologize to our French viewers, but I'm going to butcher the name just a little bit, but it's the Class 170 West. Most famous for its uh, central role in the Montparnasse crash, where it actually had its brakes fail, blasted right through a terminus, crashed through the outer wall of the station, and then tumbled down a floor into the street below. It's not the most reliable of locomotives, but it's very emblematic of French engineering and French design in the later Victorian era. 
These sorts of locomotives, although they had some engineering faults, remained in service up through World War One. These are the sorts of things that you would still see hauling troops right, up to the front the uh, in Flanders. Might even still be chugging along, wheezing along in the 1920s. We picked out 10 locomotive designs that cover the whole span of steam railroading history. They'll be with you from the very beginning of the game through to the end. And will provide so much more flavor to every corner of the globe. I enjoyed picking them out and I hope you enjoy them just as much. Bye. All right. So can we cheese them? Or are they better at defending? Critical question. About 100. Okay, so let's cancel this one. So it looks like we're actually just gonna have to fight through them. But I also think we kind of win these. So we're gonna move him back over here. Looks like the UK is pushing through here. So they're gonna get bricked. And you know what happens when they get bricked? They get teleported back. So if we get a teleport on them, a teleport brick, that's gonna be the end for them. It looks like they're actually trying to set in here. No. Nope. We might be able to get the landing in before. Oh yeah, we get a landing before they come in. Yeah, so still somewhat abusable. They seem a little bit better about it, but there's no guys here. To, to get the thing? Oh my god. I apologize. I apologize. Guy's streaming the wrong thing. I was too excited about being a choo-choo. Je suis un choo-choo. But, um, what we were saying, we did a little bit of a moving back and forth between trying to land up here, which was in this node, and down here. And, like, we just kind of got in for free. And so, good narration. You understand what's going on? Big nice. Big nice, big nice. Everyone loves how good I am at switching between panels. Nice, 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 nice. <laughs> Alright, but now we have this with a rapid advancer, so like, now it's just over. It's Jover. It equals Jover. So we'll, we'll, set, we'll bring over the other cab unit, which should be able to get here faster, but it's Jover, friends. Now, we can still get landed, and we have meaningful war goals left on us from both Austria and these guys, so, but we will just be able to enforce on them and just defend the home, like, the homelands. Looks like, oh yeah, Great Britain gets a nice push. They're gonna get bricked up. Basically like hockey on the radio, facts. I'm so distracted because I'm hungry. Because we have these papas. Or paella. E papas fritas. Alright. What are you going? Where are you going? Traveling on the wrong front, my friend. Yeah, but this is. They're, they're wrecked. It's Jover. It's Jover, friends. We have a huge rev to preserve charity hospitals. No way. I guess we're gonna give up. That's a really big one. We could go Parliamentary Republic. Catholic Church is just mad at us right now. Maybe we go Poor Laws. Don't hate the Poor Laws. Where's the secret police when you need it? I guess this might be the next one we want to go. And in order to do this, we need the... Central Archives. So maybe we do this instead. Sir Eat Law. Yeah, basically. Do we get Papa John's? Papaya John's? Oh, baby. <laughs> Papaya John's. Alright. We, of course, will show pizza. I guess we're going to start with... Meatball Jalapeno? This is meatball jalapeno. We got Tapa Bell. <laughs> Tapa Bell. No one out pizza's the. No one out papaya's the the hut. 
Have you done Paraglide Turtle Island run 1.5? So apparently the, the theory crafters for the, the Turtle Island theory crafters are in the chat right now so they can tell you. Tur um, Paraguay isn't the best start for doing the, the cheese as Paraguay. Or for the Turtle Island cheese. But they can let you know. Speaking of cheese, let's have some of this paipaya. 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 What's the one? Plantains. <sighs> Why did we start with the jalapenos? They're so spicy. Sometimes they have really spicy jalapenos at this pizza place. That we feel like a wuss. <coughs> Oh, it's so spicy. Journalist mukbang, basically. I could do them. I, I can eat a lot. I can eat like six pounds of food, but. We got the Tswana Native Uprising. We're gonna send our nine stack there. Although the native uprisings still seem to have zero troops, so that's probably not wad. And we're just gonna chill after this. Leave the people alone, leave Brittany alone. That was an interesting play, though. We haven't seen AI get aggressive like that in a while. Paraguay is suboptimal for the cheesing. What's the optimal cheese country? That's the question. I think uh, you can catch and release, so it might be like the UK. Can we get the general space cam to be the whole screen and the game to be where the face cam is? No, we can't. Sadly. No hyper mukbang stream. Perm front, did UK land? Oh, it's over here. Oh, I forgot this is a front, what the hell? Yeah, Austria-Hungary is out. We just need to defend the landings. Ching also gets a silk tech. Ah, this is... Yeah, if you're comfortable with Swing, go... Uh, with Swing, Ching, go Great Britain. If not, you aren't, then Ching. Ching has silk tech. It passes down. So, Ching. Ching is the best performing Turtle Island. Although, uh, I maybe ousted you guys a little bit. You guys have been brewing on the Discord. We got 200 viewers here. It might get patched now. Can anyone tell me what the Turtle Island cheese is? Uh, I'm probably not the best at explaining it, but the idea is you start as Paraguay, which you don't need to start as, and then you move your capital to the New World over here this part of the new world, which allows you to form Turtle Island. Once you form Turtle Island, if you share a, um, if you share a, what is it called, um, a cultural heritage with someone, you could just instantly annex them. And since Paraguay has both European, the idea why Paraguay was important was because it was, uh, his Sanophone and European heritage. It makes it so that once you establish the it allows you to just annex Europeans, just for nothing, is something like the idea. I, I'm not very good at explaining it because I haven't done it, but I've seen the consequences. You get to annex people for zero infamy that are neighbors that share a culture with them, and then you get their cultures as well. So then you're also like doing cheese to develop their cultures and this type of stuff, or get into their cultures. I think uh, maybe at five, we will go over the changes, um, which we've gone over a few times before, but the changes that we are going to be seeing in spheres of influence. Also, I guess it depends on how much pizza I'm able to, I mean, paella I'm able to eat, so. 
Because I am still really hungry, but then, like, it's really spicy. It's not that that spicy, but... Bajos. Get some Bajos. Do we have iron here? We don't. Okay, we're just going to cancel that. We we're just kidding. It's from the... We want places that have iron, specifically. Here, let's also build a tooling workshop here. Put it on auto expand. And steel, auto expand. I don't suppose Lazy Fair Plug was batched. No, it's not. It's broken still. Well, also infuriating based on how PDX codes transfer state acceptance. Yeah, so what you need, you need to like, you need to vassal feed and like release and do funky stuff. If you want to check out my Discord and you're on the YouTube, the link should be down below where they like talk about a lot of it or they have been talking about a lot of it. That's being them being uh, Kyrian, hopefully I pronounced your name right, uh, Mr. Marcos and uh, Pelea, who I think are all in here. It's so Jover. I think they'll accept a white piece here. I wonder what they're trading for here. We'll find out in just a sec. Niger Delta. If you want British North Cameroon and you want South Cameroon. Or they give up North Cameroon and they get South Cameroon. That doesn't seem like a good deal. What about the reverse, my friend? I mean, if you think it's such a good deal... Alright, we gotta wait for them to... Pending approval or whatever. But we have an obligation with them, so we can make them trade more... I think we're back. Please? Not back? No! It says we have an excellent connection. Maybe it's just flirting with me. No. What a world. It looks like we're back on Twitch. You see a handsome face frozen in time? Try reloading. We back? We back? All oh, right, we back. <clears throat> we back, friends. We back in it. We back at it. We got the pizza. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. Viewers cratered, though. Holy shit. We went from, like, 200 to 100. The pain. The pain. Oh, that hurts. Alright, I guess we're gonna relink that the stream is back live. This was my Jeep when I got it. And here's how I gave it a me In the Discord. Okay, streams back online. Streams back online, allegedly, ecumenically, spiritually, physically, spiritually. The truth hurts. We're back. We're so back. All right, guys, let's continue on. Although we're mainly in chill mode, although we should have no chill when we have this much construction. To be fair, or actually, that's about to drain out, baby. That's about done. So just kidding, we don't really have a positive balance. Why not go after Mexico at start? Vroom says, uh, to Pelias too. Because that's a lot of infamy. And to be fair, they've, the AI's been a lot better at defending landings. And they built a lot of navy. Like a whole lot of navy. I'm not even sure if the amount is correct. It seems like... The AI is really bad at building construction, and maybe that's part of why. Mm. 
the thing about Navy is like, um, or military in general, if you don't need it, then it's bad to be spending money on relative to construction. But these jalapenos is hot. They kicked out the stream. Terrible. Let's make sure we are laying down as many strategic regions as we can. This will give us a lot more opportunities to side with the UK to maybe get obligations and other stuff. It will be useful to us. Yeah. Oh, the truth hurts. The truth is so painful. Oh wait, all our viewers are back. Welcome back, guys. Did you guys just like refresh? That's wild. We went from like 200 to 100 to 200. I don't know how that works. But well, we're back, friends. Let's let's check out Paul Allen's migration. So we have like incoming migration from Alsace Lorraine. That must be I think we're encouraging migration in a couple places. But to be fair, we still have uh, turmoil there. But here, haven't been able to nick anything like useful. Great Britain and Netherlands is expiring. I think what we want to do is we want to get something from Great Britain that's useful. Yeah, that sounds like so asinine to put it like that, but like... Can we get anything from you, my guy? We could use it to get Guyana. That's pretty nice. It's gonna have gold, eventually, if it doesn't right now. That seems fair. France wants to give us Inner Morocco, is that a joke? Well, let's see if we can, uh, yo-yo swam. The loyal viewers have returned. Return of the king. Gondor has no king. Gondor needs no king. How's the railway expansion going? Good. Addy says we're all bots. That's probably true. We get to say we're just kidding. We do get to say we're just kidding. Oh, we can ask for an obligation from France. That's going to be nice. I think we'll take the obligation here. Poor Haiti. The truth hurts. Can you address the allegations of you are looking like the guy that eats chips in the Discord he sent to you? I am the guy. I am the guy. I think that guy is actually, isn't he like a WWE guy or a strongman? I forget which. If he's a strongman, that dude's way stronger than me. Will you take Mexico? At some point. We have a lot of infamy right now. We are also hoping To maybe get them through some sort of reverse sway shenanigans. And not have to pay that much infamy. This is kind of the hope. But. Um, God, I wish paella was easier to eat. Loki want to restore our colonial holdings in uh, Persia, a historic uh, bastion of Spanish colonization. Obligations are OP, basically. I love that one clip of the guy, like the middle-aged guy who's very clearly not the guy. Um, where he's just like, you're not that guy, pal. You're not that guy. You're not that guy. You're just like having this like straight up crazy conflict in the middle of a grocery store. 
And then the guy do that who has the camera out is like, well, are you the guy? And the guy's like, yeah, I'm the guy. <laughs> You're not that guy, pal. You're not that guy. That's what we'll be saying to Great Britain in a minute. While we're still a, a major power. The truth is, we're really not the guy. Italy is even more the guy than us. How do they have more prestige? Is it the Navy spamming? Must be the Navy spamming. Now, Central Archives was so we could pass a law. We wanted to go secret police, right? And test that out. Test the people falling out the windows. You wish they brought back the lower make subject infamy for countries in your market back? Wait, what? You mean you can make someone a subject for a six infamy or whatever? That was super OP. Then again, so is like swaying to get them for free, so. Well, that's not spreading to us, so maybe we don't kill that, actually. Joint stocks would be our next. Actually, maybe we just do it anyway. Maybe we go that into labor movement or something, or into Quinine. We'll get that right quick. But now, 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 now. Secret police requires armed forces or petite bourgeoisie. I guess we could do this. Yeah, it's this crazy that this is our thing. All right, that's our party. Secret police in time. Time for the next flavor of papas. Everyone knows with tapas and papas, you need to you need to get more for sharing. This is gonna be leftovers for like a week. Not a week, like three or four days, but still. Ah. We also didn't have any breakfast, so I was very excited for this. Really, I just do 12 hour streams because it's an excuse for me to buy pizza. I mean, papas. Tapas. Least racist chatter. What happened? Did they fix the immersion breaking bud that likes Indian countries research sewage? Drill the third hole? I guess the name kind of fits, huh? They did not change who can research sewage. That is a crazy comment. I'm thinking, so generally speaking, I don't like to time people out or ban them, but I'm thinking I'm not going to. It's also not even modern sewage, by the way. <laughs> or modernized. I suppose it was modern by those ties. Don't they start out with modern sewage anyway? Like, bro comes in and says something inflammatory with drill the third hole as his username. It do be like that sometimes. Cater generally speaking though, I just don't like to ban people for stuff, so. I like to let people make <coughs> their attempts. Because obviously he's trying to be funny, right? But this is pep sausage. I think we'll just stay in the war because we're not in a rush anyways. We got our auto expand. Oh, we actually have a queue. We have a queue to mind. Alright, so how are we going to keep this thing going? I think... All right, we have a good we have good companies for the minerals. Well, actually, first of all, what are we doing here? Let's do that. And then secondly, we have good companies for these. Why don't we sort by where we have a lot of peasants? Something like this, and then for the coal as well, we have the companies. So that's not putting the stuff everywhere, and then we put the stuff on auto expand. 
put the nitroglycerin up on that and also the gold. I know that it's going to have to expand up a little. Well, it's, yeah, now it's wildly profitable because they just, just need to employ up because the price is really expensive because we are probably running a shortage off that. Age of information. They do have a point. You allow <laughs> most racism in my chat too and then make a meme of it unless it starts to annoy me. Yeah, well, I mean, um, generally speaking, I allow most things as long as it's not directed towards other chatters. If you're rude to other chatters, then I start being kind of aggressive. I also, man, like, meme ban people for stuff, too. Or let chat decide their fate. Like, one thing I meme ban is if you mention what didn't happen in June of 1989, I meme ban you. So if anyone knows what happens, what didn't happen in June of 1989, don't put it in chat, because you'll get banned. What did not happen. Never happened. I think we're okay to start eating. The problem is these slices, they don't come apart easy. They're not the easy come apart slices, so we need two hands to eat them. Or to split them apart. I guess we need one hand to eat them once they are, once they are split apart. You're not that guy, pal. Let's improve relations, because we want them to accept our, our request. Monka W. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I don't know. There's also, like, huge cultural differences between countries, and, like, I don't think that pe other cultures are going to be immoral because they have a different culture than ours. And I generally, yeah, well, morality streams for another time, probably. I was planning on doing a morality stream, just talking about ethics in general, like just chatting on my, on both the Twitch and the Ideas channel, which we still might do. Something did not happen. Taylor Swift album. BBM, that's an excellent guess what didn't happen in June of 1989, but that's not the one we're talking about. I'll give you guys a hint. It's ironic that I ban you for bringing it up. Which is why it's funny. Eh? If you polish construction, you're still paying the wages, just not the goods. Yes. Journalist gaming on the take. Absolutely. So this company is another unique company for us. Which I think is pretty good. But we already have these two. So it's between this and generic gold. Which would increase the throughput of all these gold places by a lot. So that's going to give us a lot of free money. Oh, it's Tark. The sweet CCCP, Yuan. Basically, I even figured it out without saying it. Glad, you, glad you're talking about what didn't happen in June of 1989. Nah, it's probably just gold. Because we wouldn't be getting a construction or a throughput bonus with the iron steel company. Really awkward having Duro E Compagnia alongside the other company because both are really good. Diogo says, It's Tark Star. I actively avoid you. Why do you avoid him? Or I assume you're a Tarka, Tarkus viewer and you're just saying that for the memes, which I can respect. Any avoiders in chat? If you're an avoider in chat and you avoid talking, let everyone know that you avoid. I actively avoid. You're out for the night, Mr. Marcos. See you all in the hot fix. Godspeed. Sleep tight. You sure? I'm says I'm paying 100k in iron alone and nothing about wages. We have a construction good cost of 120. Construction good cost went away. I hope that it, it right? Adios. Dark says I would avoid me too. Fair. If 
Investment pool is... Wait, what? Oh, it doesn't... It hasn't updated yet. Yeah. Stuff had to update. We are increasing some of the institutions. Let's check our numbers after the, the great lossening. So, I think at 5.30 we're going to go over the changes. Let's actually pull it, though. Go over spheres changes. And for those of you who have been here a long time, bear with me because this is what uh, most people are concerned with. I think. Or it's the most interesting thing. Great Britain's got some problems. And this is for us that's a really good opportunity for us because... We could maybe revert. We could maybe yo-yo sway here. So we're gonna save and take a look at what we can yo-yo sway for. Maybe your game is bugged, Robert. Yeah, that seems good. How's performance this patch? I have some bad news. It's the worst. It's actually worse. I apologize, but it is worse. Okay, it doesn't look like that worked. It's Jover. What time zone are we in, Generalist? We're in PST. So, I'm, the poll is for 15 minutes from now. But if someone came and they weren't... 15 minutes from now, you can't start a poll that says something 15 minutes from now. Bro, why is your speed 4 faster than my speed 5? I've got... Well, how late are you in game? Eventually our speed starts slowing down. I guess we could just ask for a bankroll and then toot it and boot it. Toot it and boot it. Train review. The train review. We've watched that train video twice now. High key, I'm here for it. Worst performance? Oh no, my poor high 3770. We have 20% promised performance increase. Yeah, another thing is migration does not seem to be working as intended. Or it's like, uh, the numbers are super off. We have migration attraction of 132 here. And, yeah. We cannot spike a mass migration to save our lives. To be fair, mass migration is calculated for the entire nation, so it's not calculated on a single destination, but... There does seem to be problems in regards to, you know, ability to get any sort of migration to happen, really. Migration just, like, isn't really happening. But, like, maybe maybe once we get to the more mass migration-y numbers, like, as an overall... Because mass migration tracks your entire country, so maybe as we deep out the entire country, it'll get a little bit better. But it's definitely... It feels a little bit different. Hoo-hoo! Counterintelligence time. This is very useful information that should remain private. <laughs> we captured an Italian spy. I guess let's improve relations with them. <laughs> Not cooperative no more, are you? I don't think we're going to actually help them, but... Or we need to help them because they won't bankroll us otherwise. Yikes. We'll help them a little bit. We'll help them a little bit. You have to start up at 1880 every time because your potato ass computer plays like a slideshow. Yeah, I'm anticipating a patch in the next few days. And so then I think 1.6 will be tremendous, especially because they fixed what in my mind was the biggest problem, which was lack of transparency in diplomatic plays. Have you tried a new world country, played a bit of Australia, migration was insane. It, it seems like entirely feast or famine based on mass migrations is, uh, is how I would characterize like what's going on. Um, where if you have mass migrations, you get a lot of migration. Because uh, that's a decent chunk of weekly migration, right? And look at them, they have a bunch of mass migrations. Um, here? But then, like, we can't get anyone to move from, like, one place to another in these areas. So, like, 
I don't know. The numbers... Well, I mean, it seems way different. Maybe migration's fine. Ish. I don't know. Looks like we're, we're pushing in here. I don't know why we can't decide to that front, to be honest, but whatever. But, so maybe migration's working as intended, but the numbers are just way off, but like... Well... Now you have like a national migration attraction and it's not local. So the greener grass campaigns were like floating on a bunch of areas to try and provoke mass migrations aren't going to do anything really. Unless we want the mass migration to go there specifically when we have one. So maybe we put it down in Transvaal because we would want it to go there in Lima. And we keep those down in case we get a mass migration because we want them to go there. And we tax coffee or something. General, stay off. Oh, I think there's an upgrade all. Upgrade all units. Yeah, baby. I think we're going to run an ammo shortage almost instantly after doing that. But, worth. Why is it so cheap there? I feel like construction should cost a little bit more. Western Andalusia. Yikes. I think we're gonna set all these to, uh, trains to auto expand as well. The ones we currently have at least. Just, ugh. Don't need those, but they're helping for the central police. Store information on the citizens. I'm setting all things to minimum and see if performance is the same as worse as before. It's going to be worse. Your USA game has the state uh, sending 1.16 migrant out to other states. Yeah. Oh wow, maybe Rev UK. I mean, we're getting a ton from the Diplopack from the UK. They're paying us 46k, so this is paying for the war for us, but... Where exactly is the revolutionary UK's cap? So it's here in the religious revolt. Why don't we try... This? Maybe that'll work. And okay, they got this navy, but they have four commanders, so the commanders will just lose. Or they just leave. How do I advance enough to be on par with the Great Britain as Ottomans? That will take a while. And if you're answering that question, you're probably more of a beginner. So I'd recommend... The Ottomans are a little tricky because Tanzimat is hard if you're more of a beginner. I'd recommend not playing the Ottomans, but also um, a big one's going to be getting a hold of Persia. In for a penny, in for a pound, I guess. Did you play a lot of Vic 2? No, I played like 60 hours total. Vic 4 when? Jesus. Let them fix Vic C3 first. <laughs> We can talk about Vicky 4 later. Why does having four commanders make them lose? Because every battle, they're going to only use one-fourth of the troops. You know what will make them win, though? Probably having 47 ironclads. I just realized that. But also their ratio is off, so they have the too many modifier. Maybe that makes them... It caps them at 25 here. Uh, which I forget what 25 org does, what the penalty is. Minus 25% offense and minus 10% defense. To be honest, actually, they'd probably clap our clap us. Well, no, actually, we might win this. 
We'll see, I guess. A little bit of a struggle bus here for Great Britain. Great Britain's having a time with their uh, revolt. But it's because the the way that it works. We get to, with one commander, we get to use all of our boats. And with four commanders, you see they, how they're using way fewer boats than us uh, in the individual battle. Or wait, what? Why are they using all the... Oh, no, wait, yeah. So you see them, they're on the left. Uh, they're only using a quarter of the boats that they have. And we're using all of our boats. And this is what happens. So even though we have a worse defense than they have offense, we're just going to get four battles in a row that look like that. And then we'll land. So. This is only applied to navy, basically. For the most part. Yeah, so with your navies, you generally only want one admiral. As a general heuristic. Because whatever you want your navy to do, it would be better just to have a different navy with a d another admiral. Than just stacking a bunch, because they can't borrow between admirals. So I don't think they're enforcing. Can they enforce them below zero? Maybe they are. Rip the dream. So we got an obligation from someone who's not going to be able to... I think they lose here. So this obligation is probably actually worthless. But... I mean, I guess we'll see. Sure, guy. You're not that guy, pal. Yeah, this might be Jover. I think this is Jover. We'll see our way out. The Rebellion's just gonna win. We're gonna stop killing our troops. Godspeed. Hey there, Fafetto? Prelude? I like all your content. Thanks for it. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. Well, so what do we do now? I mean, they're going to keep paying us for a little bit, but they're not going to be paying us forever, so we're going to have this minus 20k. So we actually don't want to spend more construction. I think we just chill. For the most part. I think... Maybe in LM we can look to do something like this. It's not even employing up anyway, though. Um... Alright, let's get some of the sulfur mines up and going. And take a look at trade. Let's, because we are managing the queue by hand now. Yeah, so we're going to create long term some of these problems. So let's import some of this stuff. British market's going to die in a second. So I guess we just probably shouldn't be importing it all from them. And we will need some dyes and we need some silk. I guess we get some from the Ottomans here. And then export. We would love to export sulfur. Can't. Can we export tools? We can to Ching. Uh, can we export iron? Exporting iron and coal will be fine for us. I don't suppose we can export this. I guess we can a little bit. We'd love to get a bunch of trade volume with Russia. Export that. Hardwood, maybe? Oh, we can export hardwood. Again, the British market's about to break. But we can export here. So that'll improve things a little bit. Yo, hey Toxicity Rose, how's it going? Is it the toxicity? Is the toxicity of our city? No. How do you in the world? How are you doing disorder? Disorder? You need to learn more about import and export. For the most part, you're exporting uh, for industries that you want to build more of yourself and you're importing on industries you want to build less of yourself is the simplest and most straightforward way to think about it. There's some interesting cases, like the case of luxury goods, which maybe we'll talk about now. Um, luxury goods are really good to export because uh, the buildings for the luxury goods uh, are going to be bifurcated. They have like two outputs, right? And they have the regular clothing and the luxury good clothing. As you increase the price of the luxury goods, this means that you can have a similar weekly balance while having a lower price of the regular goods. And since the regular goods are consumed in a linear fashion, uh, the needs for it are linear, 
and the luxury goods are exponential, you'll increase your SOL by exporting luxury goods specifically. You could also import the the regular goods, but you this is not a bad industry to invest in. So specifically uh, exporting the luxuries while just leaving the other ones blank can be a really strong strategy for you know increasing your SOL by a little bit amount. But like Victoria 3 is a game of inches, so you improve some stuff a little bit and then um, you know, it has like a snowball effect later on in the game. You play more Vicky 2 than Vicky 3 due to PC crappy. Oof. Your Papal State uh, to Roman Republic really impressed you. Big nice. We do like the Roman Republic. Italy is like, uh, Italy feels really good to play, like any of the Italy ones, because coming on up, you just feel like you gain a bunch of power level really, really quickly. Although there are like stronger starts, you, but you you start off incredibly weak and then you gain a lot in like a relatively short order, so it feels pretty nice. I think. Let's reduce autonomy. They will just accept here. And that kicks us up to a pretty high level. So they'll just accept. We'll be high level. And now we don't need to reduce autonomy anymore. But now. What we actually really want is pan-nationalism. So I guess we'll get started on that. I don't know if we're gonna research it. We're probably not gonna research it all the way, but we'll look to get to 1250 or whatever and get that pretty, pretty quickly. Because that way we can form Iberia. We are missing the stuff, but we can just uh, integrate them instantly. You second the games like the times you play with Bahrain. Bahrain's like low key unplayable. Anyone notice that normal migration is broken? Yeah, it is, it is broken. It basically doesn't happen right now. I think the numbers are just not working as designed. Well, this one we're losing migration. I don't know what that's about. To Bornean. We got Bornean people. They came and then they're just like leaving back to Borneo, I guess. Or not. Like, it's not functionally dead, but, like, you you effectively get very, very little, even if you have a decent chunk of migration attraction. Um, I guess Lima's doing a hot. Did we get a mass migration event? But I think what it is is, like, more is... More is, like, locked in on the mass migration. Right? And I think it's the mass migration is really a winner-take-all type of affair. Where if you're not like USA or one of these new world countries, you just get wrecked. But we have a, my, we have a mass migration attraction of 43, but then they get a bunch of these, and then they kind of, it seems like a bit of winner-take-all type of thing. Because this is actually a really strong clip. This is 100,000 per annum. Because now it's also weekly, so... Still kind of newbie trying to trigger corn laws, but keep getting moderate in the conservative event. Wait, what? He is supposed to be a market liberal. I'm, cons uh, I'm confused why he would be a moderate. You get an agitator that you can grant leadership of. Yeah, this is exactly the thing. So what it does is it gives you one of these guys. This might be the score. It gives you an agitator. And then once you have the agitator, you can promote him to government. And that's how you need to do it. Well, the agrarian parties looks like they're going to be doing well this time. Gonna have a bunch of clout. Wonder what that's about. Strange. USA is going for Mexico. We're gonna take a save. We are probably gonna want to intervene in that in some way. Purple Spain. How Spain turned purple? Did we turn purple? I don't know how to turn in purple. Beautiful purple. You don't see that very often. Are we purple? Purple? No, we're not purple. Wait, what? How do we turn purple? I would love to be purple. I don't know how to do it. It only has 25% chance to kill a character. Secret police new interaction isn't very good. 25% is not that good. What's the cooldown on it, though? Or what's the resource you have to spend? A oh, five-year cooldown? Yeah, that doesn't seem very good. Seems funny. We're gonna go with that. So we're gonna take another save here and see if we can do the yo-yo sway for Mexico. Spheres of influence time. Did it win the poll? Let's take a look. It looks like it did win the poll. It did crush the poll. So let's go over spheres. All right, you are correct. Thank you for reminding me. So let's go to the browser. 
we're going to talk about new spheres of influence stuff. Okay, so first up, we have uh, included in the free update for 1.6. Everyone is getting a free pack for all the players. First up, the free trains bonus. Choo choo. Um, we are not going to watch the full trains video, but we will watch this one. Because it shows all the trains that we're going to be appearing on the map. When you have it activated, you can see each of these trains is different. And so if you like trains, which we like trains here around, around here, that is going to be a good one. It tells you all the five experimental trains and from the mid-century. There is a rather long, um, detailed uh, thing where this guy goes into it, talking about trains. We've already watched this a couple times. We're not going to watch it again unless I need to use the restroom, and then I'll just put it on while I use the bathroom. Um, here's the trailer for this. Peggy 12. For spheres of influence. Well, you did it. You united them into one powerful block. It's octopus in time. One banner, one ideology. Your good friends came gladly. And though some required a slightly firmer grip. The great octopus. Not a single time. bullet yeah, has been fired. And for, in terms of doing secret police. Slip, 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 slip. Just uh, one problem. Your tentacles will get tentacled. Okay. So releasing on May 6th, that is two months from today. Um, is Spheres of Influence. It's available on pre-order now, so you can pre-order it. Big hype, big dice. And also, if you are gonna, like, so in general, if you know you're gonna spend money on a game, pre-ordering it does help the, out the development of the game a lot, as well as their financing and their ability to allocate resources. So that is something I would recommend. Love the art for the Spheres of Influence cover. Uh, put your diplomatic skill to the ultimate test in Spheres of Influence, a new expansion of Victoria 3. Pull other nations into your orbit through diplomatic skill, economic leverage, or straightforward bribery. Build a durable international faction like of, a faction of like-minded governments pursuing the goal of common good or for the glory of power. Paradox Interact's grand strategy game simulation of the Victorian age offers new ways to impose your will on the world, coalition, etc., etc. Uh, and this is... Uh, this one excites me a lot. We might make a video on this anyways, but coalition of reactionary powers to form power blocks to work against the liberal threats. So you are making power blocks, but not only are you making power blocks, they're going to have a certain philosophy or orientation, and you're going to be able to build the power block around that idea. So if your power block is stated goal is reactionary, it's going to be easier for you to form like a reactionary type of thing. And if it's stated as like liberalization, then it's going to be easy. Why an octopus? Well, have you heard how many tickles it takes to make an octopus laugh? It takes a lot of tickles. Octopus is a very serious thing. And you're like thinking, One banner, it's not that serious. They're, perfect, they're the perfect representation of imperialism because of how many tickles it takes to tickle an octopus, which is, of course, 10 tickles. Yeah, okay. Um, use your economic might to co-opt uh, or coerce other regimes, spreading your banner of your ideology wherever your fleets might sail. Big nice. Resist or uh, embrace domestic pressure to change your foreign policy. This one's super cool. Now there's lobbying and stuff as well. Uh, and so this is going to be really nice. Spheres of Influence adds the, uh, many new interactions systems to illustrate the quick-moving nature of diplomatic relations the era, including specifically the Great Game. So that's the fight over Central Asia between the uh, British and Russia. We'll get into these a little bit. We have like kind of a brief overview, but I think a lot of this stuff is easier to like uh, visualize through um, some of these... Uh, uh, screenshots, so we're going to get to the screenshots in a second, but Fierce Competition, you can kind of get this power block customization, you'll be able to cu customize the ideology, whether it's concerned with, you know, economic expansion, uh, liberalization, uh, you know, conservatism, this type of thing, which is going to be really nice if you want to make everyone communist or everyone fascist or whatever. There's the great game between Great Britain and the UK, or sorry, between Great Britain and Russia. There's foreign investment. You can invest 
in uh, the other economies. And also it seems to be the case that you could open up different industries to investment or control them by the state. And this seems to have some sort of bifurcation in terms of how ownership will work. It's unclear how exactly this works. There's nationalization, which is tacked on top of that. You can seize, uh, diplo uh, seize foreign assets in your country and prevent your wealth from going overseas. Um, there's subject interactions uh, that you have more, uh, like flexibility. Uh, the lobbies, which we discussed, allow your, you know, interest groups to agitate for stuff regarding like foreign policies um and so like more than nine exactly 10 tickles it's the number of tickles um and there's power block monuments that you can build and new historic flavor um which is going to be nice um but to me less exciting than the other stuff so let's take a look at some of these screenshots here yeah um we see here there is uh, this Zolverain, or however this is pronounced, power block. It's got Prussia, a bunch of these other powers. We see this cohesion thing, which again, don't know what this refers to. This might increase bonuses it gives you, decrease bonuses it gives you based on the, uh, all the groups, uh, you know, kind of having, being in line with the principles. And we see the principles and we can change these principles. You see add principle and this principle is construction. And so um, you can, I'm assuming there's gonna be like liberalization, conservatism, uh, you know, trade like all this type of stuff and you will be able to uh, change what the principles are and based on what um, the principles are different people are going to be willing to join the, the the content so is Persia getting content because of the great game I think maybe I'm not 100% sure I never understand how pre-ordering helps the developer they can't book the revenue until they ship the product uh, it gives them an idea uh, of how successful the product's going to be and also if they are trying to leverage any sort of financing or investment from an outside group them being able to say hey we have one million pre-orders helps 11 tickles i don't get it yeah <laughs> so you could also make the thing i assume that a day one patch is going to be like the anime waifus uh for the power blocks but we'll see how that goes um i think the most popular like normal mod is like the uh whatever britannia waifus or whatever patch or thing uh we see here this is going to be the great game i don't know what this is about but this is kind of neat looking it's i think this is implying the degree of influence russia has versus the degree of influence great britain has because bukhara is kind of reddish um or there's more of the great game like Kabul, harat all these underneath we see uh these new subject interactions including knowledge sharing which i have no idea what that does but uh if it's giving tech and this type of stuff it's very interesting we can raise subject payments, decrease them. Um, and also, there seems to be a progress bar of sorts, which I don't know if this has to do with uh, diplomatically annexing them or what exactly, but there's uh, a progress bar or some type of bar here where we see, you know, on the left, we have this domineering attitude and then this versus protective or something like this. Uh, don't know exactly how that works. And then we have uh, the lobbying system, which is gonna be but, but big and nice, you see that there's two interest groups in this lobby. They're the pro-British lobby, and they appease by, you know, doing trade alliances, defense pacts, basically being like this, um, what is it, uh, the big brother of the world, let's say, you know, the leader of the free world type of thing. Um, I've always thought that that title was so insipid. Like, uh, in the United States, um, everyone in the United States calls the president the leader of the free world. And in most other areas of the world, free <laughs> world, uh, you know, in like Europe and even the developed world in the Western world, they're not calling the president of the United States the leader of the free world. But anyways, um, I guess some do, but like it's it's a very Amerocentric like type of title. Appeasement decreases by kind of doing the other stuff, including breaking diplo pacts, launching diplomatic demands, going to war. So it's this like playing nice and diplo slash eco bullying people will make this satisfied. The lobby has clout. I don't know what this means, and it has appeasement. I don't know if it gives bonuses or what. It has journal entries, possibly, based on this active journal entries thing. And so there's, like, a whole lot going on. Uh, here's the great game, and you can see a whole bunch of stuff in uh, Central Europe. Um, Robert Frial says, I refuse to pray order. I can respect that. But, like, I'm just saying, if you know you're going to get it anyways, I think it's better to pre-order. Um, and it can affect the cat, Yeah. Uh, you pre-order Paradox stuff because you know your Donuts is going to buy it anyways, TBH. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's a matter of if you want to help the company out or not. And if you want to, then you can do it. If you don't, then I guess don't. But if you know you're going to buy it anyways, I don't know. Um, so, anyways, continuing on. 
Uh, and here's a very interesting one. You could toggle private, uh, privatization, which allows investors to buy iron mines. And this seems both foreign and domestic. Uh, I assume the resources you just won't want to let other people uh, buy, and for the other ones, you'll want to buy their stuff. Uh, but then they can seize it from you, which is a little bit of uh, a problem. It says liberty to desire in the in the thing. Okay. Just kidding. So maybe that's what the bar progress bar is. Well, then if they have very, very low liberty to desire, maybe you can Diplo kind of take care of them. But no one cares uh, about the cash flow if the income statement doesn't look good. That's why you backed out items. Uh, you back out items for the cash statements. It's also a publicly traded company, so it also helps for their investor meetings. Oops. Now here we see the drip. That's what this is about. But here, this one's really exciting to me. It's the Manor House, which is showing that they own stuff here. They see they own the subsistence farms. They own rye farms, right? And so I think this is how we're organizing ownership of buildings between being like uh, potentially foreignly owned versus like or owned owned. Let's take a look here. Here we see more drip. Big nice. We see blue Persia. Also nice. And here, this is one I'm really excited. This is probably the screenshot I find most exciting because we see Midlands, Highlands. Each of these places has a financial district and the district appears to own a variety of buildings within it. And so I think that this is going to be the shift of how capitalist ownership works. And I'm assuming, look, it has country flags. So we can have a flag, our flag, in another person's country. They're not showing it here, but we can have a flag in someone else's country if we're foreign investing in it, and it will show the ownership as well as how much of the funds we are pulling out as a result of having ownership. And so this means that going like eco and building tall and building a bunch of resources stuff in other people's uh, countries so that you can pull the profits and really extract this type of relationship might not might not be possible and actually building tall might not be possible and you won't necessarily have to go to war if you can just dump money into other people's uh you know economies to buy up all the good resources to exploit them and so this is going to be good are we playing right now or just uh watching the ais i am playing but we're taking a break to go over to the sphere stuff which this is the end of the sphere stuff so i guess we can hop back into the game <sighs> We don't want that off to the side. So we can return to game here. But that was uh, an interlude about the sphere stuff. But the ownership of the buildings is like by far and away like what's really, really exciting to me because that's going to make the strategies like completely different if you're doing that type of stuff. Lobby cloud, probably addition of interest groups in the cloud. Mm, probably. Just jumped in the stream. Is 1.6 stable or full of bugs? Well, it's stable, but we also have some bad news. The bad news is performance appears to be worse, migration appears to be broken, and they didn't fix the construction bugs. So, there's that. Um, but, 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 they did fix Diplo plays to make them more uh, transparent, and I'm anticipating that they are going to fix patch, patch performance and migration. Our migration, we're not sure if it's broken yet, but if it's not broken, then it's just way different. Um, and kind of winner take all with mass migration. You basically no migration unless you're getting mass migration, and only the country with the leading mass migration attraction is really pulling in a lot of migrants. And so it might just be a lot different. And so big drip, no private queue. Is the construction bug still in? Yes. Yeah, that's what we were getting at. So we're gonna try and r r do one of these. Become subject. Are you willing? Are you willing, son? Diplo packs. No. All right, so we're gonna load and just go for uh, a kind of standard looking, um, see if we can get a trade agreement just regularly. So wait for a few hot fixes per usual, basically. Unfortunately, basically. So we'll just peel a trade agreement off from them and hope that they don't back down. We'll assign a few boyos to the front. Keep that one guy at home. And bite the pillow. Oh, pff. just kidding, we don't need to bite the pillow. Why are you worried, what the hell? Yeah, looks like USA is gonna bite, have to bite the pillow. France is coming in dry. You guess uh, that there wasn't a senator in your chat, Goat? Wait, what? 
one day we will have patches that are good on release. It's, like, really frustrating as, like, a content creator because I know how well all of my stuff does really strongly correlates with the number of people who are playing the game. And, like, a bunch of people, every time there's a major patch, will come in and they will start playing... I've already said this, like, on stream, but I'm just, like, repeating myself here. Um, a bunch of people come in, they go, oh, is this better now? And then it's like, uh, nope, there's still a ton of problems. And so, like, there's a very large segment of the population that checks it just after the thing and then like if it's not if something's not working then they just like don't play for like three months until the next major patch and so like i would rather they push something back a, like a week or two weeks and like release it without problems but we're not sure the migration thing is a it was like problematic yet we still don't know bro you want to maybe do something my guy call ally you want to do something in france Maybe you want to get in it. No, you're just gonna wait until. You're just gonna wait until, huh? Well, in certain means they're not gonna back down, so we're gonna have ourselves a war. We also probably need more navy. Let's see what this is about. Windward coast. All right, let's build that. Did I see the series of influence posts? Yes. <laughs> We just went over it uh, for everyone. Yeah, we've been going over it every three hours or so on stream. Or four, four or five hours, maybe. Have we played Age of Wonders for it? Yeah, I played it a little bit. I tried to stream it. It didn't get much traction. And it's kind of not really the game for me, so. Are these guys at home? Yeah, so we won't even bother trying to land. But this means that guys aren't on the front, if they're going to stay home. So we have the 18 stack that we're not using, but they're just defending against the naval invasions. Well, they were. I guess not anymore. Alright, so we're going to have to play games. We're going to have to play games with our hearts, guys. We're going to try and land here. And do this. I'm curious if Victory's dev cycle seems different than other Paradox games. It seems more buggy than others. Yeah, I've long theorized this, and in a lot of my dev diaries I mentioned this. I think they have less development resources than the other ones. I think after Imperator, I think Imperator, uh, they dedicated a ton of resources to Imperator and had way too big a team, and that made it so they were just lighting money on fire to continue development, and that's why they had to pull the plug. In order to not repeat the mistake of Imperator, my theory, and I don't have data to support this, but my theory is that they made the dev team for Vic 3 much smaller, so if they continue development over at a long period of time, um, it's not like lighting money on fire when it's not doing well, and in this way they can guarantee like the longevity of the thing, and then a Vic 3 will be supported, like its development gets supported over the long term by the people who are just very big fans of it, uh, you know, like the 5,000 people who keep playing. Um, and those people support the development of the game rather than, uh, like, dumping a ton of resources in and needing to, like, maintain 10k concurrent viewers or whatever. Otherwise, you're lighting money on fire. So, um... A knife in the back. A knife in the back. Okay. But we can now use the assassination character mechanic. Colonial administrator is kind of nice, I guess. So it looks like they're traveling some back to New England, but we're not landing New England, we're landing Dixie. So we'll see how this shakes out. Also, visually, they might be over here in w while we're landing here. But yeah, so I, I think that they they learn from Imperator, and the idea is you just have a smaller team, uh, and then you scale up the size of the team based on revenue. And so um, I think that we will see development for Vicky increase in size a lot when... Um, I guess we want to switch all these guys to defense. Uh, we will see the, the amount of development in Vicky increase when... Uh, the, the player base increases. You like the word plethora? It means a lot, but also varied at the same time. Yeah, I'm not a fan of the word plethora, mainly because of the use uh, 
the way, way commonly gets used, which is by people who are trying to use a big word, in my opinion, rather than, like, actually using the word for a more nuanced version of, like, many or varied, or both. But, we t yeah, we talked about this earlier, with the, with the word plethora. But they do say plethora. I assume you're watching the beginning of the stream and then commenting here. No, actually, but the, we had to restart the stream. Paradox Games' first couple years have always been bugs, but eventually it gets worked out. It's been that way a while. Why don't you want the Intelligentsia in party? You want them in gov for legitimacy? It wasn't more legitimate earlier. It's not more legitimate right now. We, we have this weird thing where the Catholic Church has all the clout. No one expected the Spanish Inquisition. You never expect it. I mean, if they're gonna... This guy currently defending against the naval invasion. So, what we'll do is, when this actually gets through the navy, we'll cancel this invasion. Because this naval invasion never succeeds. But, what it is doing is it's tying up that 49 stack. So what you're saying is there's a plethora of ways to use the word plethora. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. No, like... My experience with the word plethora and people using it is a lot of people using it in, like, early high school, in essays, when they use it as a means to, like, they pull out a thesaurus and they start switching words to try and sound smart, so that's why they come on plethora. More so than necessarily, like, uh, a dislike of the word itself. But in practice... My experience is that most of the people using the word plethora are just trying to sound smarter. Or oh, this is my my view. I don't think using the word plethora necessarily means you're just trying to sound smarter. But I think most of the people who, in my experience, have used the word plethora in my life, that's, like, what they're trying to do. Alright, so now all these stacks will go back. They'll go back to the front, and then maybe we can try and get in again on the capital. Either way, like, uh, we're tying up... Tying up armies. So these guys are still defending. These guys are stationed. We have to actually hover them because they're not... The, often the tooltip lies. Or, like, the way they visually appear is, like, a lie. Oh, it's because of the landowner's reformer? Yeah. Catholic Church in Spain? Powerful. Sash shook, basically. We have to get the mixed chat in. I gotta figure out how to do that. So you guys can see what they're saying on the other things. Joe Pro says, I'm worried about how long it's taking them to release big DLCs for their new games. Yeah, but I think that... So, I think people would agree, generally speaking, that the cataclysmic scenario, uh, right, is if... Um, the cataclysmic scenario is if it gets imperatored, right? This is, like, w what people want to avoid at all costs, right? Or this is my assumption, and I think that going slow and steady is a good way to avoid getting imperatored. But it also means... I mean, I hope Vicky 3 has less development resources. Because it, it feels like... Slow, if that's not the case. What's your nationality, if you may ask? Someone asked this earlier. Um, I am a quarter German, a quarter uh, Armenian, a quarter Mexican, an eighth English, and an eighth Welsh. Albanian. <laughs> Telehuche or to what? Are we sided on that? Where's Telehuche? Yeah, this is the one we want. So it looks like they're slowly pulling guys off these fronts, but I think that the AI is much better. Yeah, the AI seems better at defending naval invasions. To be fair, the US has never been an easy one to land, anyways, but. We might swatch these all to defend and actually put them on the front. Kinda sucks because Lancers are not the truth when it comes to this, but I guess we're gonna do this. You one, look 100% Greek. Makes sense. I mean, with that mix, like, I get the Greekish complexion. It feels like Vicky3 has two developers and 25 designers. Oof. I don't think it's going in Parader. Vicky is one of their core games, and Parader was a sequel or spinoff from EU3. But the idea of 
I remember the... They were pushing Imperator so hard. Imperator definitely seemed like a game they were trying to make flagship. And then I think it's the... I think the problem is they were lighting money on fire. And they couldn't, like, turn around to their investors and be like, we gotta keep doing this. Imperator had way less players. Imperator had, like, a third of the players... It's not like an order of magnitude difference. I mean, there's a difference, but it's not like a cataclysmic difference, I think. If my recollection of the Steam charts is correct, and like Imperator was having like uh, high 1000s, like almost 2000, and like Vicky is like. Around, it's been like kind of around five in a lot of times. Do I think an unnamed game Joe Han is working on is EU5? I don't have an opinion on this. I don't know. No way Vicky 3 gets Imperator. Yeah, I also think that uh, the th there would be a great loss in confidence in them in people willing to cut them slack if they repeated Imperator. And to be fair, some people, like, literally just say, oh, I'm not buying in until the game's good because of Imperator, because they don't want to see, like, pay for a game that's not going to have continued development. Imper Imperator before Lathe was averaging, like, 4 to 6 concurrent players. Vic 3 is, like, 5k to 10k. <sighs> no, but I'm talking about Imperator where they pulled the plug, not Imperator before now. I'm not talking about Imperator now. I'm talking about when they pulled the plug for it. When they pulled the plug for it, or Imperator, like if you compare Imperator to 15 months after release, I mean, we can look it up. We can look it up. Okay, so we have the Steam chart for Vicky. It's around 5k right now. Or it's around 5k... This isn't, like, updated. I assume this is going to be higher now. If this is actually what we're getting on today, that's actually really bad. Because 1.6 just dropped. I don't think that's the case. I mean, like, there's, like, a few hundred of you guys in here, which isn't normal. Um, uh, so I, I assume it's going to be doing better. But we can look at Imperator. But we, let's look at the overall trajectory, right? Uh, which is, let's look at all, which, you know, 70k on release, drops down to like 8, 10, 7, whatever, and then now it's been kind of, it's actually been a little bit lower than this. I don't know why it looks like this here. Can we change the way this looks? Let's look at just the past year. Okay, I guess maybe 10k, 6k. Uh, then we have the spike from, this was for 1.5. Uh, up to 27k. This is decidedly smaller, and then it's really been falling off now. Um, except for, we'll see today if it if it pops up uh, after 1.6. Uh, but players right now is only 5,000, so that's a little concerning to me. I was really hoping for a huge bump. That kind of sucks. Um, because it sucks. Because my correlation between how many like how much viewers I can get and stuff, it correlates really, really strongly. But let's look at Imperator Rome. Let's look at the charts, not the price history. And let's look at Imperator one year. But let's Let's look at Imperator like one year after release. So let's look at this. So on one K, and they're down at fifteen hundred, sixteen hundred. And then like this is kinda like a year later, like they're like roughly okay. To be fair, this part period was like way worse than Vicky having like 10x this. But when we're looking like this far back, which like the game had support up to here, like there was a free week, and I think they had some update like over a year later or something like this. When the plug got pulled, it was only like 3x or 2x what uh, what Victoria is now, and so. Um, but I think they can't afford to Imperator another game. And so here, this is, like, kind of in the range of the time period now, where, okay, a patch comes out, it gets up to 6k. Or is this two free weeks? Okay, I guess it's two free weeks. 
Um, compared to the Victoria's free week hitting 29k when the patch released, though, so I guess it's like 5x, but eh, maybe that's close to an order of magnitude. Maybe that's a more fair characterization. I think uh, a lot of people talk about it like Imperator, like, but I think I, I think that they just. I think that the proportion of the resources that they are dedicating to the game is just way, way, way lower. Um, and so, because of that, let's see, we got back a game. Yeah. Raw numbers for today are accurate. <sighs> That's incredibly disappointing. How's the patch overall? It's got some problems, so I guess maybe we don't, yeah. It's got some problems, so it's slower. Migration seems weird. Um, but the biggest thing is it doesn't make uh, things more transparent. I don't have an opinion on this equals uh, I know, but I'm not allowed to say. No, I would just say I know, but I'm not allowed to say. I don't, they don't have any, uh, ex I do not have any sort of explicit agreement where I'm not allowed to talk about something except for I'm not allowed to spoil stuff. I'm allowed to talk smack. Although they would probably, if I talk smack, I have an incentive not to talk smack because they'd be likely to uh, pull stuff out or like not offer me stuff. Or they'd have some sort of incentive, but... I also don't think they had a clear vision of how to monetize Imperator after they released it. What do you mean? They released the DLCs. Imperator was on average like 500 players. That was like... If you're talking... Yeah, I think you're talking... I, I, we're not caught up. Yeah. Big spike off of 1.5. Yes. You're not playing because I'm playing CK3. Those legends and diseases do be satisfying. Maybe that's it. I was hoping for a pretty substantive bump because that creates a huge bump in terms of like my viewership. Yeah. Like how is their cash cow it doesn't stop growing player base basically. The spike was from free period on Steam. The the 1.5 coincided with a free week as well, when they had like 29k. So, but yeah, I mean, there's no free week. Um, maybe next week will be free. 1.6 is really not a big update, and Spheres of Influence will be no, more telling. Yeah, but it's the fact that it's like under 5k is like right now. Right now is a bit of a thing. So. Also, those charts update the day after, so tomorrow we'll see today's player count. That's not what Playa said, but Playa can also be incorrect. It's allowed. Oop. Almost did the wrong one. Almost gave away the bag, guys. Almost gave away the bag. You see Galacia. So Glacia have iron? No, they don't. Valencia has iron. So what I'm hearing is that Generalist has access to hidden game, which EU5, <laughs> which is EU5 as a content creator. I was currently playing it, but can't tell you. I'm playing it right now. Bear in mind that EU4 and Hoe 4 have more years of development. Yeah. Imperator had content packs, not full DLCs. Wasn't there a full DLC for Imperator? You didn't know Imperator existed until after Victor 23. Yeah, they pushed it super hard. There was so much hype. And it, like, it just straight up didn't live up to the hype. I feel like I don't think that Imperator was as bad as other people did, but... Now when I go back and I try and play it, it gives me motion sickness. I'd probably get over it if I like, actually wanted to sit down and play it, but it is a bit of a thing. It is a vibe. Because the map, like, rotates in a funny way. Pull for pre-order of the DLC? Yeah, okay, we can pull this. Who's pre-ordering the DLC? I don't think you get a discount, but if you want to support the game... You might get a discount, I'm not sure. 
but it would help them out if you're gonna buy it anyways. If you're if you're not sure, then obviously don't do anything crazy. If we reduce autonomy, I love that I can look at what people are gonna do. Guatemala, Nicaragua, Costa Rica all don't like us very much, but Netherlands, there's a chance. Belgium seems fine. France can't join against us. Uh, they really don't want to join against us. The German Empire looks like we're kind of in good shape on. So we'll just do this. I like how it's also sorted with the big guys at the top. And the big boys. Player base is accurate within the hour. Interesting. At around noon, there were 6,800 players, so I assume that's the Euro population. Yeah, I mean, maybe it's because the U.S. population hasn't gotten home from work or whatever. It's, a, like, weekday. It's not the weekend. So. Yeah. You discovered Vic 3 because of Spiffing Brits. The one video where, like, Spiff, Spiff, like, has me in there is, like, wild to me that that would happen. We get Netherlands side with New Granada. It's kind of awkward. Okay. And I'm not in there, in there. I'm, it's, like, the Marbles video. I, like, had no idea. He watched some of my videos. Which is, like, crazy to me. Shout out to Spiff. Very funny. I do like his content. I don't watch a ton of it, but I do like it when I do watch it. I don't think we can sway anyone. The UI in this is, like, kind of not that legible in terms of who can be swayed. War goals, what do you want? Take Treaty Port? Not off of them, no. Yeah, give them the Panama Treaty Port. <laughs> That'd be a vibe, huh? Tempted to take Guyana off of the... Off of them here. Actually, high key? Let's see. Let's try and liberate. Oop, almost clicked back down. Let's try and liberate the Dutch East Indies and war reparations on the Dutch. Netherlands protector, it's a little bit tempting, but I think we're gonna look to just pop them. Oh, I forgot that's how this works. It pulls them in. That's not exactly what we want, but okay. Humiliate Venezuela. We don't kind of mind about giving that up. Gold discovered in Transvaal, big nice. Spiffing Brit is the journalist's number one fan. I think that's very unlikely. If you've already bought the DLC pack, can you vote yes? Yes, vote yes if you've already bought if you bought the Grand Edition or whatever and it came in. Spiffing Brit plays in England and makes tea plantations. No, he plays Jan my hand. He has to break the game. You're probably a few. There are probably a few people like yourself who don't want to start a new game during the week. Yeah. So maybe it's just the weekend we have to wait till, but, like, also... I don't know, the status patch got released. I uh, made sure I don't pre-order spheres to shatter him. Yeah, so, like... I think that there's some fumbling the, the ball that's getting... that's happening here. We're actually gonna move this stack over here, just in case. We're gonna move this over here. Promote this reformer, boyo. And what we're hoping is that they move their their stack away. Um, I think last chance to put in war goals. We'll do these. We don't need to ban slavery, so this will be an okay war for us. What is the utility of the canal in the game? Uh, I know the real life utility. Uh, it allows you to run convoys through the region which isn't that valuable and you can activate the company the company's that good canals should be a lot better than they are Guyana conquer state this would be okay i thought about it but i decided not to now what we think happens here is as soon as the war starts then they move their army And we wait for it to get way over here, and then we get involved. 
But it looks like they want to have their fleet right there. So why don't we just move our fleet to uh, body their fleet? Because we're going to have to body the fleet anyways. We're finishing up an EU4 run. Interesting. Influence day one will have performance so bad that it will be unplayable on spheres, says Playum. I don't know. I hope that they do stuff. What do you uh, What do you think of the new game Johan is working on? I don't know. Published a map. As opposed to going around Africa. Yeah. It also, it lets your troops go through, which is also pretty nice. I, I, so, like, uh, if you're playing, like, Italy, and you're, like, fighting Persia, it's actually really nice that your troops can just come through here. It, like, cuts the time, amount of time that moving troops by, like, a lot. So, the, the Suez Canal is probably more useful overall. But, yeah. We're gonna take out their navy and then try and land. And it looks like... Looks like they weren't very successful in making it so that people don't want to stay behind or whatever. Play well, is trying to make everyone in chat scared. Maybe we start a new one. Looks like most people aren't pre-ordering the TLC. There we go. Looks like we're pushing just fine. The thing is, we don't necessarily want to push as quickly as possible, because if we win and stop pushing... Uh, we won't be able to land them. Because they, if, if they keep all their troops at home, we can't land them. So we're going to have to maybe have a think on that. So we got two fleets. Neither's been defeated. Let's... These guys are on all defense. These guys are on defense. Are they just getting borrowed? Our allies are borrowing to push. Let's just stop allowing them to get borrowed. That's interesting. Still happy that you can borrow on offense, but now we'll make it so that they can't use our allies, or our allies can't use our guys. So it looks like one navy's out. So we just have one more navy to defeat here. Which is all frigates. Don't really want to grab another admiral, especially because we just have the one more to defeat. We're just going to wait, bide our time a little bit while they're in the wrong spots. And then we'll turn on borrowing in just a second. So these guys is out. Now we will try and land Holland. I'm glad, like, some stuff carries over. Looks like people aren't scared of play. The truth hurts. Play is fear-mongering. Where are they taking off Tripolitania? Conquer Tripoli? Jesus. Oh, and I'd only be able to take a war goal off of Russia or something? Or off the Ottomans? They're just full annexing. But, we do like living in Iraq. <laughs> we big fans of living in Iraq here. Looks like we get him for free. Yeah. So it looks like the AI has not managed to figure this out. Which is a little bit disappointing. Also not too big a deal though. Migration get any better once you fix your border laws? Not really. It's still... We still have huge migration attraction in some areas and really not getting any migration. Like they're trading migrants back and forth. The, specifically, like, the Spanish pops aren't really migrating that much. I mean, they're migrating a little bit now. I guess it's kind of improved. These guys is really leaving. 
Um, it seems to be very winner take all -y with in terms of uh, the bigger movement seems to be the mass migration, and um, it seems to be kind of winner take all. So if we don't manage to have the best mass migration attraction, which is 43 for us, if based on average, and the US is 53, it's like feast or famine, it seems. Did we not have any rapid? We didn't. So U.S. is top popping off. Yeah, and then they get these huge cultural. They get these big cultural communities, and so it gets them to keep popping off. We're also not used to processing the number in terms of per annum. So this is like plus 52,000 instead. So it's better than it looks. Ground force there. Big nice. Time to grab a couple slices of our last piece of pizza. Bat gonna hop on a USA run. Well, I think it might still be. Well, maybe the USA is super keyed in right now. I mean, we're doing all right, but yeah, maybe this is a play. Maybe you right. Ugh. <laughs> I didn't realize we've gotten bodied over here. Not sure how much we'll actually want to fight in this. Well, I think we want to stay in because our war goal stays in. I guess it's time for us to do cheese, play the cheese the Ottomans game again. Is it this time of year again? Yeah, it is. It do be like that. You also we it's weekly instead of annual. Yeah, a hundred weekly would be five point two k annual. One hundred percent. I think it's it's still like really low. It's just yeah, I don't know. It's a little bit better. But you also like the you have to expect the game balance to change a little bit too off the back of this, so But we're gonna get some of the last pie, which was the bacon and pineapple. We'll of course show off I mean our pie tapas. Tapas. Some people don't approve, but some people don't have good taste. They're like, pineapple on whatever. It's about having the sweet and the savory, my guys. But there is it. Pineapple e bacon. E tocino. You finish your first game of Victoria 3? Nice. Regards from Brazil. Hello to Brazil. What did you side for? Regime change in Van Diemen's Land. Diplo packs, trade agreement. Trade agreement would be not bad. What do you want? War goals. Kind of don't want to piss off the UK though. Super not really about that. Well, it does seem like they're really bad at defending against naval invasion still, to be honest. If I'm being 100% honest. 1,500 hours played. First time finishing a game. Oof. 1,500 is a lot. Of course, like, yeah, hours are hard to evaluate, too, because people... Different pl people are going to leave on the game a different amount of the time. Oh, yeah, we're going to do more home, please. Let's do some of this. Yeah, like some of this, maybe. Is 
like we're getting in pretty comfortably on these guys. Bacon and pineapple, what the fuck is wrong with you? Bacon and pineapple is fine. <laughs> Time to have another poll. Hey, Zack Attack, how's it going? Weren't you... I thought you were a Twitch guy. I recognize the name from Twitch. Okay, let's, uh, let's change the poll. People are half frightened of Paleo, but... Feel easier to finish Vic 3 games than it is CK 3 games. That's true, CK goes on forever. But I feel like the problem is different there. Somehow. I guess we could cancel this naval invasion. And just move the guy to the front. And use the 20 stack to land over here. Yeah, this is hard for them to deal with. They're really not good at this. Yes, you are? Okay. They didn't fix the prompts when, for when a bill advances. CK3 goes on exactly as long as it should, which is forever. A wizard arrives precisely when it means to. Not morally wrong, but weird. But we're talking about morality. Should I be burned at the stake for my choices of pizza? In particular, and this is the best argument I've ever heard for bacon and pineapple, in particular, as a pizza to have next day in the morning for breakfast, pineapple and bacon is a particularly good pairing. And I agree with that. We got some people saying, what about bacon and bananas? These are the real heroes slash psychopaths. Is it morally wrong? Tarkasar, is that the real Tarkas? Play, where have you been? He's been in the chat like the entire time. What the hell? Google's how to handle fame. Play, you're inflating his ego. He won't hang out with us if he thinks we're not cool. Hmm. We did want to go cultural exclusion. Now it looks like it's pretty easy, so... Let's do it. Wow, you're still streaming? Yeah, I said we'd probably still stream until we hit 12 hours or until um, we were down at 100, below 150 viewers. Which, to be fair, we're losing viewers at a decent clip. Um, so, which is because most of the people just wanted to see what was up, and they're seeing what's up, and they've kind of asked their questions and seen their things, and so, yeah. Is pharmaceuticals ever viable as a first tech if you're a GP? Probably not, no. Well, I mean, it depends what you mean by viable. Is it a catastrophic mistake? No. It's probably fine. But, like, uh, I think that... The the countries that stock exchange is not the best first tech on are is going to be few and far between. And then the ones that start with stock exchange, water tube is... It's hard to make... It's hard to see that a water tube's not, like, better or whatever. You really need this ego boost, bro? Some people disagree with their takes on CK3 and recent DLC and you're injured now? Alright, you can get this one. But not the next one, only one. Don't worry, I agree with you, t uh, your takes, Tark. Been annoying people by calling le Legends of the Dead mid all day. Never played CK3 before. <laughs> <laughs> Never played CK3, definitely mid. So it looks like we're gonna get to release Iraq here, which is gonna be super nice for us. It's everything we ever wanted. 
Imperialist Simulator. Oh, bacon's so good. My two favorite toppings on pizza. Well, it's a little complicated, but... So, one topping on pizza I really, really like. Sausage is probably overall my favorite, but... Putting that aside for now. One topping I really, really like is fried eggplant. And... There's only one pizza place I know of that has fried eggplant. And so I would like to go there to get pizza because of the fried eggplant. However, this place does not, I repeat, does not have bacon. So they have fried eggplant, but they do not have bacon. And so that makes it, I have not seen a single place where I can get fried eggplant, bacon, and sausage all on a pizza at once. Which is like the pizza I really want deep in my heart. There's another pizza place, though. Or it's not a pizza place, it's an Argentinian place that I like a lot. That's close to my house. Relatively close. Actual Argentinian, not like pizza Argentinian or whatever. And that place has chimichurri pizza, where it's like, instead of a marinara base, it's a chimichurri base. And it's got like flank steak as the topping, and that's super good, too. In terms of pizzas. But that's almost like not a pizza anymore. That's starting to be something else. Could you leave them some feedback? I'm planning on giving some feedback. Specifically, I'm, I, I actually want to leave feedback on local prizes. I think there should be a pre-game option. Like, so if you go into game rules, I think there should be an option to turn off um, local goods. Because local goods are really obnoxious. After a lot of time playing with them, I'm, like, just not a fan. I think it, it adds realism, but, like, the exchange that you get for... Um, the quality of, uh, the play is, like, just not worth it. Uh, we over research pin that. Unfortunate. Uh, we're gonna switch to... Finishing this. And then finishing this. And that should give us pin that afterwards. But then we'll get to form Portugal. Ayo, back on Twitch. Hey, Zach. Did you see the Twitch emote? The impossible to recognize loud car? I gotta get someone to professionally do that. Argentina mentioned. McCultra activated. Basically. Reviewed Indian style pizza. I feel like I can't actually have a discussion about pizza on stream because I feel like people are just gonna meme me super hard. But I haven't seen chicken butter sauce instead of tomato sauce. Shit's busting for real. That does sound super dope if that is real. <sighs> Chimichurri pizza sounds like a good way to slip into a food coma. It's so good, bro. And they have, like, on, like, empanada day, you just, like, you cruise in, you get, like, three or four empanadas, and then you split some some stuff. Loud car says playa. Not seeing the loud car emote. Damn. It's Twitch only right now. I gotta see, I think there's a way to put e uh, emotes on the YouTube, too. So we really gotta, we've gotta update that emote. Gotta fix it up. It's a fixer upper emote. Why is Glacia so cheap? It's because the. Uh, Toledo, Eastern Andalusia. Do any of these have iron? Well, to be fair, we're about to switch to steel, so it's gonna be less important that they have iron specifically. Glacia has iron. I guess we can build a couple of Glacia. And then, we're going to need a couple of these. I'm just dying in your arms tonight. Anyone ever notice how, like, the 80s, like, romance songs just have the absolute, like, most insano, like, freaking music videos ever? Like, if you ever watch the music video for Total Eclipse of the Heart, it's just like... It's just like, how many drugs were you on when you were like, you know what's gonna make a good music video? This shit. We're gonna have little boys singing with uh, eyes that are completely white and shining like they're demons. This makes sense. 
we're gonna do that. Total sense. I guess since we enforced on the Ottomans, we can now see our way out of here. Kutai will accept the reduction of their autonomy. They will not accept. Or they'll maybe accept. We're looking right here. I guess we'll just try hit these guys. We don't get it, but we have a t we have plenty of like uh, infamy or whatever to deal with. I guess we should have taken a closer look on uh, ch the chances of people doing it. Let's go at Joe Pro. Whoa! Did Joe Pro sub? Is that what we got? Ah, Joe Pro, thank you for the subscribe subscription. Thank you so very much. We don't have the freaking. We don't have the notifications. Thank you for the subscriber. How's the migration mechanic? Have you been able to test it much? I'm really not sure what to make of it. It seems like the values are a little weird, whatever's going on. And it seems really hard to get a cultural community to get uh, migration um, in a general sense. And it, I think once you get, once you add the cultural community, it maybe allow outer market migration. I'm not 100% sure on this. But the getting a mass migration seems to be the big driver of how you can generate a cultural community. And it seems to require, I don't know how this place got Bornean, but there's like only a couple Bornean people here. I, I don't know the exact drivers of a lot of this stuff. But it seems to be the case that uh, it's like really feast or famine and like if you're the USA, you're getting a, you're sitting pretty. I mean, let's look at the USA's population, I guess, right? Like that's a, a trajectory that seems more killer than average. And this is a lot more flat than we normally have. And so, yeah. Total Eclipse of the Carcane is cocaine, the song, so the video fits. Yeah, that's fair, but... Did you intend to form Iberia? Yep, that's why we're going pan-nationalism relatively early. Bonnie Tyler was great back in the 80s. Oh, I believe you. I'm just saying that the music video is insane. What's the best thing about the update? The update has the fix to the thing I've complained about more than anything else since Victoria 3 came about, which is, uh, it... Makes it so the diplomatic plays are much more transparent in terms of why people are going to join you against you and if they're going to join against you. And so, yeah, it's like a really big one. You haven't played with it yet, but conceptually it seems really good. Oh, is this for the migration? Yeah. Conceptually, I agree, but like we're also getting, we're encouraging migration in some places and we're like getting kind of nothing. And now we're getting like, okay, what is it? We have polls coming in, and we've been encouraging migration in Lima. We didn't get a mass migration event, so what's going on here? Oh, no, wait, we did get a mass migration event in Lima. From a Uruguayan mass migration. Okay, and so how did the polls get here? I don't really know. I don't know if polls start out in Lima. It's only 260 of them. But also, way fewer, like, pop fracturing as a result. The new immigration system gives you way less pops. This is my impression. So this actually might make slavery viable, slash good. If the slave numbers aren't changed, and it's a better way of getting pops. Pops is what you want. Pops is what you need. At least being slavery for a long time. Until qualifications become a problem, where there's not enough, like, mines or whatever for the slaves to work in. Would you call Diploplay's fix? No. I would not call them fixed, I would call them much more transparent. I still think the entire Diplo play situation is like crazy. Like, uh, I think you should not, I think you should be, have to declare war goals at the start, but you should be able to enforce whatever you want at the end, and you pay way more infamy if you don't enforce what you said you were going, declaring the war for. So if we did something other than reduce autonomy, like if we just full annex them, we would pay extra infamy at the end. But I think you should be able to enforce whatever you want. I think that you should be able to be engaged in multiple Diplo plays at once. I think the ticking below zero or not ticking below zero thing is crazy. Like the way enforcement works is crazy. The decays work. Like almost everything about the diplomatic play, like I find unsatisfactory, even though I like it really a lot in theory. But we'll see how Spheres like fixes it. Have you fixed the issue with barracks is not recruiting the correct number of units? I was getting that issue a ton. I don't know. I haven't seen that issue, but I also don't know. I know what you're talking about. Like, vaguely, but I'm trying to think how we can check or force it. 
I don't remember. And that just says nah, dog. That's gonna be a no for me, dog. Blungan will accept, just straight up, so that's good. Okay. See here, this is what we mean with this lot transparent. It's almost certain that Brazil joins against us. It doesn't have a prediction, but they have, oh wait, it does have a prediction that they join. Wow, our mouse just like perfectly covered that up. But it shows you why, and not only that, but like also why people are shouting against you. It's a bug, Crimson Lace. That's not what... He's not talking about the qualifications thing. If that's if he's thinking what I'm thinking, he's talking about. It's that the number recruited in the states like wouldn't correspond to the number in your like battalions, and there was a weird sort of disconnect. I don't know exactly how to check or replicate if it's still happening though. It's just kind of a weird thing you notice a little bit. We also really like the new outliner. Like, new outliner seems dope as hell. Like, it's so easy for us to check information here. Right? And we're gonna get more used to this. I'm sure you can use hotkeys on this, too. So. Oh, you know what? This is probably a pretty nice one to go for. For the... Well, maybe we chill for a bit. So we go for Morocco. Of course... Oh, after we make them our subject, we can make them colonize this. You haven't seen this bug for a while? Interesting. Oop, I forgot we could annex some of these guys, maybe. Yeah, this seems fine. We'll send the Africa army and the South American army to deal with this. I think at least one of these guys is on rapid advance, so yeah, they are, so that should work. Borrowing on offense now works now, so that's like a huge one, so we can kind of make much more customizable stack sizes and this type of stuff. How's the military AI? It seems pretty bad still. We've been trying to test a little bit how good it is at defending. I think it's a little bit better, but it's not like um, far and away better. Is migration broken a bit? Uh, the v I don't think I'm not sure the mechanic itself is broken, but the, if the if the mechanic's not broken, the values are just like insanely off. Three weeks to research. I think we'll just do this into this. Save ourselves. Well, three weeks now. We'll just finish this. We'll just finish pan that. It'll be a little inefficient, but it's fine. Is this the... Well, he's a Republican. Let's cover up the story. You had an issue a couple days ago where your entire army would be set to defense and would join a battle of 30 battalions while the other 200 AI battalions would just got to attack one or two of my battalions and push states. Was this a skill issue on man? I had an issue a couple days ago where your entire army would be set to defense, okay, and join a battle against 30 battalions, okay, uh, while the other 200 plus AI battalions, I don't know what you mean by AI battalions, got to attack one or two uh, of my battalions and full push states. So you're saying that all your army joined against one and then the other didn't have enough for the thing? I don't know if that's a skill issue. I would have to see exactly what's going on. With bar on offense, I wonder if the AI will be, will have less meat grinders followed by white pieces in Europe. Almost certainly. Yeah, they will actually be able to push each other. This is a hugely significant one. I think we go with Quinine here now. And... Iberia, time to farm! Yeah, buddy! A glorious union. 
I don't think we annex the Philippines, but we do annex all of Portugal. Which is super nice. Super kawaii. Can't colonize anymore, but... We do get the bag. Bag has been acquired. Oh, it also incorporates for us? Nice. Bag has been acquired. I guess we will reset PMs in the Portuguese states. It should be good, pretty good. Whoops, we forgot to swap on all this. Oh, I'm surprised that's so profitable. But I think it does require more employees, so. Yikes. Big nice. I think we're, like, locked in now as a GP. Wow, USA's having some problems. You're playing as Ching and you think internal migration is broken and the game is slower than before? Are you, uh, yeah, so... Earlier, we were not able to get Spanish migrants to migrate between Nate's spots. And to be fair, this might be still what's going on. I think it's that they, well, now we're actually getting some Spanish migration, but it's pretty small amounts. But I think it has to be, it might be the case that it's only going in areas where we've established a new cultural community. So we can't actually m migrate Spanish pops to Spanish homelands. They have to be another place where we've created a Spanish cultural community elsewhere or something like that. I mean, I wish we had a Spanish cultural community here, for example. Like, so it makes it so, like... I mean, it's preventing pop fragmenting, but also it's, like, preventing a lot of migration that would have happened otherwise. What you described happened, yeah, meant not attacking AI. Oh, so the way it works before... Oop, I guess we're illegitimate. The way... Yeah, so uh, before you would used to not be able to borrow at all on offense, so whenever your troops attack, they can't borrow other troops, but they can borrow on defense, which just completely breaks your ability to do stuff. Let's get this. Kind of weird things going on. Slavery viable, perhaps even optimal. Hope you're allied with France, they look strong. Eh, France is doing alright. They're strong in some ways. What's going on here? Landing in Alaska. Ecuador's gonna be nice. You're late for the stream, can you start over? No. <laughs> We're like nine hours in. We're nine hours in. And we're going 12 hours or until we dip under 150 concurrent viewers between Twitch and YouTube. Which right now we're at around 170, so. Best version of Vic 3 so far? I really like patch 1.5.5. With the hyper overtuned migration and discriminatory migration. Because it made it feel like you didn't have to go how you do every single run. Which is every single run you go total separation and multiculturalism which I think is probably still meta especially if this greatly affects you know the mass migration events and stuff yeah well to be fair our migration might pick up a little bit once we get off this cultural exclusion but like I don't know migration feels kind of bad I guess it's not like broken broken though we thought it was broken broken Performance definitely does seem slower, but not like catastrophically slower, it's still probably playable. Maybe we're just like being freaking out earlier. I don't think so, but maybe. Number one. A decree to help bolster cultural community spawn might be cool. 
Yeah, because right now you can't really use the migration attraction to do that. Um, because it's based on your average for your entire nation. So you can't, like, cheese create them. But at the same time, uh, if you're using uh, Migration Edict like we are using in Lima, this will make it so that the, it's more likely to spawn there when it spawns. But... Yeah. What pot, kind of pop we got here? We got plenty of peasants. Plenty of peasants. Undeserved blame. Parliamentary Republic or Migration Controls? Well, I think we'll go for a parliamentary republic. We would not hate passing that, to be honest. If you're playing 1890s Russian, it's very slow, higher than before, yeah. Oh, I think we already read that one. If you fire a bunch of people through automation, wouldn't migration spike? Nope. I don't think so. We've had really high values for migration attraction without it actually starting to do anything. But, like, now... Well, so now we have the Argentine and the Catalan cultural communities, so maybe it's just the hard part is seeding cultural communities more than anything. And so the strategy will become revolve around tr trying to influence the seeding of cultural communities. And in particular, getting the intelligentsia above 50% clout, since it seems to be winner-take-all type of affair now, in regards to migration and forming of migration-like unions or whatever. Uh, it probably means we want to be considerably more aggressive about finding intelligentsia guys, bolstering them, this type of thing. Which makes maybe our idea for a Spain run, where we're going church-oriented, maybe that's, like, not a good idea. Do something like that. Oh, I thought you wanted to push Spanish towards the colonies. We would. Kind of, well, I mean, like, uh, we want to siphon off migrants from people inside of our customs union more than anything else. Yeah, we'll let the ethno nationalists retire, I think. That seems like a good plan. We could get the radical who wants presidential republic. I think the peace guy will want parliamentary, anyways. Which is what we gotta try and pass. Catholic Church won't like it. Landowners really won't like it. They might still be monarchists. Oh yeah, they're still monarchists. Did you turn off private construction? Yeah, it's still bugged. Unfortunately. Ooh. You don't say... We're going to declare neutrality here. We're going to annex Ecuador here. We're going to take a save and we're going to try and yo-yo sway. But yeah, we turned off private construction. It's bugged still, unfortunately. Uh, it's been a couple hours since we reviewed the changes for... Um, the Spheres of Influence. Let's take a poll. Who's aware of the Spheres of Influence changes? Who has seen the Spheres of Influence stuff? And if there's a lot of people who haven't, then... Then we will maybe go back over it. So if you haven't seen it, you can vote either no or show again. Rate the patch, launch edition. <sighs> yeah.
you'd, you'd have to give me, like, the parameters of what means what. If the average patch for a game is, like, a 5, which I think is how... Or a 5.5, which I think is how ratings should work, but no one rates that way. Uh, I would say it's below average, but not, like, way below average. I don't know. Average being a 5.5, by the way, because everything should be graded on a bell curve and it's not. We could just ask them to become a subject. We don't even have to yo-yo sway. All right. It's been real. Yeah, I'd say maybe a four under those parameters. Which is kind of a bit of a bummer. A little disappointed that not a lot of people are playing it right now because that's, like, good for me when a lot of people play it. A lot of you guys are out here, though. But I have, but I'm going to vote that I haven't anyways. Then you just vote. I want to see the update again. How's the private construction doing? It's bugged still. This is the crux of the issue. Yikes. We hate that the UK does this. It's such an ugly border goal. I've seen your dad's spheres. Oh man, this guy. E. You've seen it, but you'd love to hear the insights. Yeah, we've gone over it a couple times, but I think this is more what people want to see. So people have seen it. So it looks like tied between yes and show again and then a lot of people who haven't seen it so maybe we in a little bit will show it again so maybe at seven we'll see how the poll shakes out though if people have seen it and they're tired of seeing it please for the love of god vote yes on the poll because then i will be able to tell i don't want to inundate you guys with reviewing the things over and over and over again but i mean each time we look at it we see a little bit more so this is kind of something interesting You tried playing the new patch, but your love for Vicky 3 ain't coming back. Bro, Vicky 3 is going to be so nice out of after Spheres. Patch is hype. Okay. Yeah, man, the peasants, like are not migrating like they used to before. What's that Ed Sheeran song? When the peasants don't migrate like they used to before. Something, 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 something. Waiting for the first wa uh, wave of fixes. This is probably the wave. I'd say Spheres of Influence looks pretty good. I'm definitely feeling optimistic for it. But this patch? Yeah. No, I get you. If you're an Iron Man connoisseur, this is the most exciting patch ever. Like, 100% full stop. Not close. Because the, the transparency in Diplo plays is just, like, insane. Like, holy fucking fuck. That transparent Diplo plays of yours is absurd. I shouldn't even reference that Adam Levine thing. It's not even that funny. I have to drop two F-bombs to make the reference, and it's really not a very funny reference. And the YouTubes will demonetize me. Or they'll put me into a different advertising bracket based on it. Series will be only good if there isn't grave banking problems at launch like every Paradox DLC. We'll see how it goes. But. Let's see. We have 14 infamy. I guess we'll see who we can reduce autonomy on. Obviously don't have to worry about Portugal anymore. Maybe we see... I don't think Portugal has a good mappy state. As we look at a good mappy state. Actually, that mappy state's great. This one's fantastic. So... I think sulfur is better than lead, but I'm, my degree of confidence in that is relatively low. But I think that it's better to have the six explosives integration than it is to have the glass integration. Yeah, not really very confident. But explosives feeds into construction goods and into all the mines. I think it's a little bit better. Oh, fuck. I didn't want to double check for that event. We picked the stupid answer. That's okay, though. But 
But AI would talk, take the building cost of, of building into construction. What? I'm not sure what you're getting at, Dimitri. All right, we do annex these boys, or we get to the... Now we can reduce their autonomy. They'll accept. The Spanish Empire is getting restored, everyone. No need to panic. I know some of you were panicking, but there's no need. The Spanish Empire is getting restored. Weird game. USA had start board date borders, but we got Germany and Italy. Yeah, that is weird. And Austria-Hungary. And it's like, this is a very strong Germany as well. And also Slash Holstein is part of Scandinavia, it's like sphere, so I don't know how they do that. Or I guess maybe they were independent, I don't know how that exactly happens, but yeah, starting borders, España. To be fair, we influenced the España thing. You need 30 unused agriculture for mass migration, this could make many of your province uh, getting it. Yeah, so maybe the strategy now involves around deleting agriculture a lot bit more aggressively. There's two messages above you. I read the second one. Oh, do I have it on? There's two messages above. You read the second one. I think I missed something. Who's... Okay, so it seems like most of the people have seen the Sphere stuff. Okay, so we will not go over it again. Unless I have to use the restroom, in which case we're watching the train guy again. Or you're watching the train guy again. But I think we can maybe hold it. I think we can hold it, guys. Chat, we're going on strong. I think we wanted to go after Bolivia next. We're just making sure that, yeah, we just gotta get the infamy below like 9 or whatever. Also, curious if the cultural exclusion allows for a bunch of mass migration so it could pop off or not. One of the problems is we are Catholic. Okay, so we instantly get a mass migration to Lima from Danes. Which I assume is creating should create a cultural community for Danish. Okay, and now we're getting 3k. Hmm. I'm trying to think how exactly all this is going to shake out, to be honest. I think we're gonna make the tooling workshops start using automation PMs. Which is generally something that's good for, you know, pushing migration a little bit. Can I let us improve the health system? No, not yet. Uh, we do have to... Trisha's gonna hate our guts when we swap Man, the church is so powerful. Maybe we're supposed to get rid of them. We're probably supposed to get rid of them. We should have gotten rid of them when we could. <clears> hmm. <throat> Guess we'll start going for this. I think every place we have steel can auto expand. We'll just take a quick look. We're okay with auto-expanding steel. And then Navara. We gotta put it down in Aragon. Reinstalled 1.6, crashed in 1840, uninstalled, oof. We haven't crashed once, so. 
You missed the industry ban stream. Are you doing farms and or plantations? We didn't stream it, but um, that was industry banned, but it was like meme industry banned. That was just trying to leverage California's gold mines to get the SOL for the achievement before the time ran out, more so than anything. Rich says, hi, I'm back. Has it been decided migration's broken? I think it's not broken, but it's just now very weird. It seems very winner take all uh, in terms of provoking mass migrations. Also, it seems bugged in the sense that we couldn't get any intermarket migration, but 3k um, a week is, that's a really strong clip. But it seems to be the case that you're kind of fighting, it, I think for a lot of people, migration is going to be like really hosed, because they won't, the intermarket migration seems particularly bad unless there's cultural communities, it seems hard to spawn a cultural community without a mass migration event. Which makes you need to really care about mass migration events a lot. And so having mass migration attraction becomes uh, like a very strong and important thing. And so it's you're going to have to fight the USA for this. And they have a mass migration attraction of 58, we have 47. So like, at the very least the metagame seems wildly different as a result of it. You got 40k Amazonians to move to Illinois. Yeah, so it seems kind of feast or famine where a lot of the U.S. places have a ton of cultural communities. Uh, it seems that they can pull pops maybe from that aren't within their market. I'm not sure. Or they get the mass migrations and then they reorganize within. Um, it seems that, like, we, we're we not getting much migration at all among Spanish pops between states. They, like, wouldn't want to move around. Now we're getting some, I guess. Um, but not, like, a huge amount. Not that it should be huge. We have to remember it's by a per-week basis, and so... I think it's, like... I think it's weird, and it wasn't happening at all when we were on um, migration controls, even with our non-discriminated pops. So, I, yeah, I don't know. Entirely. Gold. Gold, please. So Japan is meta, because why need migration when you have a metric ton of pops? Basically, this might be the thing. Uh, overall, it seems like there's less migration, but, like, USA might have more migration if it's, like, this winner-take-all affair a little bit. And also, but maybe it just means we just have to, you know, um get a lot more industrialization going before we get the pops, and then we get a lot of the pops later. So. How do most people have spheres of influence not out here? No one has spheres of influence. Some people have pre-ordered it, if that's what you're thinking about. Why are we making so much money? fuck is this about? Stuff just got wildly more profitable. I'm a little bit confused, but okay. Maybe someone started a trade route with us? It's not like we swapped any PMs. Did we? Very strange. Very weird. Maybe we finished like a railroad somewhere? Forgot. This state over here is a mappy state. Big nice. A bit big nice. Okay, my brain is like, is that not even incorporated? I'm trying to think where we. Okay, we weren't scrolled up all the way. That explains it. I was like looking for the button that changes the UI so that we could put it on auto expand. 
What's wrong with the USA? Uh, to be fair, us and France joined against the USA when they went for Mexico. Your dad works at Paradox, so you've been playing Spheres? It's great. Yeah. A likely story. Play us as real. Real, real. A likely story. Yeah. Looks like the, the vote regarding Spheres is holding on pretty strong. I guess it looks like some people are going for show again, and some people haven't seen it. Just for, so everyone knows, uh, there's a big Spheres of Influence update. We've shown it a few times on stream, that's kind of why I'm a little leery about showing it again. But if a lot of people haven't seen it, I will show it. Maybe Investment Pool kicked in? That's what I was thinking, but the Investment Pool is fully drained. So it's not that. Oh, maybe it kicked- yeah, no, it's not that, it wouldn't be that. Yeah, I'm not sure- I'm not sure exactly what it is. So it looks like Brazil's very likely to join against us, and we can see why, because they're very likely to support- they like supporting Bolivia. And they have a low neutrality value, so we would have to fight Brazil. Brazil. Who, let's be real, is not that much weaker than us. But that's the only person we'd have to fight. AI is not very good at doing the landing weirdness. So... I mean, it's probably not too big a deal for us to go after them. I mean, they're the next one to go after. Maybe we take this big stack. Ugh, yikes, we don't have enough infantry in it. Alright, well, let's see about getting a few more skirmish here. And then see about declaring on them. Well, my dad is Paradox. That does sound like a paradox. Is it just me or is it solipsistic in here? That's one of my favorite philosophy jokes that no one ever gets ever. Making it much worse. Solipsism is the philosophical belief that only you exist. The other one I really like is the joke about the utilitarian doctor. Which this joke, for me it's really funny because no one ever gets it unless they're like... In philosophy, this is the only context in which you get this joke, right? But... Guy goes to the doctor, goes to the utilitarian doctor. What the hell? Do we not have a front? Okay. How do we not have a front? Isn't Brunei involved in the play? I guess they're a dominion. Oh, they fixed it so that works properly? Okay, well... Um, guy goes to a, a utilitarian doctor, and doctor says, I have good news and bad news. Uh, the news is that you're perfectly healthy. And that's the joke. Yeah. Because in utilitarianism, one of the thought experiments that makes utilitarianism look particularly bad is the notion that you have to do the greatest good for the greatest number of people. So if you had a healthy person, just completely healthy, all their organs are great, um, it would make sense to kill that person in order to... Um, harvest their organs for people whose organs are failing because it'd be better to distribute the organs, let's say, amongst five people. So you could save five lives instead of having one life continue. And so the good news is that the guy is healthy, and so he's, you know, healthy. And But the bad news is since he's healthy, he's going to be harvested for his organs. Well, that's the joke. Yep, 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 yep. Did you form Iberia to integrate Portugal or any other reason to? It was just for integrating Portugal. No, just me, it's Mr. Bombastic. That's the spirit. Now you're thinking with your dipstick, Jimmy. I guess we want to station over here. So we can do it kind of as quickly as possible. But classic utilitarianism. Which the there are two major like philosophical ethical theories. One is utilitarianism. The other is sometimes called deontology. I forget the other philosophical name for it, but it basically means a rules-based ethics. 
So if you were believing in this type of ethics, you would never lie, no matter what you thought the consequences were. Good joke, I didn't get it. Perfect. <laughs> That's one of the reasons I like the joke, is because no one ever gets it. Like, my favorite pun is whenever someone says something is intense, you just say camping is intense, because no one gets that one. Because it's, it's such a stretch, but... And when, then when they don't get it, then you say circuses are intense. And it's... Camping is inside of tents. Right? They're in tents. Circuses are in tents. But usually people think you're, like, making a commentary on circuses and the nature that like, circuses are... You're like... Someone's like, oh, yeah, wakeboarding is intense. And you're like, yeah, circuses are intense. And you're like... They're like, wow, weird tangent. But I guess circuses kind of are intense. You got the elephants and stuff. And you're like, no, you're just talking about something else. Kantianism is the other name. It's not the other name I'm thinking of, but it is it is Immanuel Kant who's the main forefront of the deontological ethics. But like, um, so like the the doctor thought experiment, most people consider a failure. For most people, take a look at that thought experiment and they think that um, utilitarianism has failed to provide kind of the right answer. You know, in that they don't think you should kill someone to harvest them for their organs or whatever. And they consider it a failure. And an example of a failure in a rules-based ethics is, um, you know, you're harboring Jews. It's the Holocaust that's going on. And an SS officer comes to your door and says, are you harboring Jews? Well, if you believed in a rules-based ethics, and you believe that people should never lie, then when the SS officer comes to your door and asks, are you harboring Jews? You have to say, well, yes, of course I am. Or refuse to answer, but if you refuse to answer, that's tantamount to telling them that you are harboring Jews. Which, of course, means death for the Jews. But you do not care about... Um, what you care about is the, the nature of your own actions themselves, not the consequences of your actions. And so most people regard that as a failure because they think that, you know, ratting out the Jews is uh, immoral. Which I'm inclined to agree, and I think, you know, I think it's a failure. But those two thought experiments are examples of why the two main moral, like, theories, why people regard them as deficient on their own. But they are important for understanding, um, you know, how things go. Okay, utilitarian. I understood totalitarian. Nope, not totalitarian. But the totalitarian doctor might be a little bit similar. Good lord, uh, now I'm happy not to be healthy. Yeah, if we lived in a u pure utilitarianism. But the truth is, is more people should sign up to be organ donors. It's the cheapest and most efficient form of philanthropy. It costs you nothing and it saves lives. The organs are really expensive, like, in terms of if there was a free market. Partially because you're not allowed to sell organs. So, like, if you wanted to engage in a form of philanthropy and you don't have a lot of money, like, signing up to be an organ donor is free. And it's like... The expected value is, like, thousands of dollars, right? So, um, it's like giving thousands of dollars to charity, but it's free. I was maybe going to do a charity stream, kind of trying to plug that really hard and get people to sign up to be organ donors. But people get a little weird when you suggest that they should be an organ donor. They're like, why are you trying to get inside my guts? <laughs> it's like, oh, fair enough, I guess. Is the construction bug fixed? Nope. Which is why we're using uh, controlled construction. Pretty disappointed about that. Uh, there are some stuff that is working nicely, though. Like, uh, Diplo plays are now transparent. I consider this an enormous uh, improvement. What is... The UK is going after Gobeer? I mean, the mean thing to do is to fix Gobier. No African colonization? Africa's getting colonized. Oh, we need to put in a colony in Oolata, though. I don't know why that was not getting colonized. Wait, what? Did... I guess our colony stopped when we researched Quinayan, actually. That's weird. Iberia is like an interesting tag because it's really good because you get all the the Portuguese like colonization ingresses. It's 
So we're getting Lithuanian mass migration. So like not discriminating is such a huge factor maybe. So maybe we, maybe the problem is, is we also have to get on free religion or whatever. Cause now we're getting this here. And it's going to our highest attraction state. So we also could say to ourselves, hey, I think we got enough here and like pull the plug. Oh, we get another mass migration here. Yeah, it seems maybe winner take all -y. Diplopax bankroll. We take those. Yeah, it seems a little bit more willing to give up bankrolls than they did before, which is not sure a good thing. What is the bug? The bug is, we've explained it a lot, but very, very briefly, the amount of control of the construction queue the private construction is supposed to get proportionate to the amount of uh, investment pool transfer. So this number divided by this number, that's supposed to be the percent control of the private queue it gets. And instead of getting that percentage, which for us is roughly 50%, it gets the max possible under your economic system, which under laissez-faire is 75%. And so the extra 25% of the construction queue, you just have to pay for it, but you don't get control of, or the government pays for it and you don't get control of. I don't see why I would not give your organ when you're dead, but that, my opinion, yeah, that's kind of my opinion too. Some people, for some people, the it's like their body is sacred and it's a religious thing, and I can respect that. Uh, I think that's a lot of people who don't want to give it up. But like the people who are like, oh, I just don't want to go to a website and spend five minutes to like save someone's life. It's like, you know, if you if you were ever thinking of doing something nice for someone in your life, and it's going to be someone you don't know or like this type of thing, and it, there's a chance that your organs don't even get used. I think it's pretty feast or famine. I think either they use a lot of your organs or they use none. Um, but let's say hypothetically, on average, they're using like a fraction of an organ of yours, right? And this is saving like uh, a life on average. Then like, I don't know, like you let someone have like create like a decade's worth of extra memories with their kids or something uh in exchange for you like spending five minutes on the internet to change your registration status at the dmv to uh, being an organ donor it's like the ev is super easy on that right but like if you, if you think that your body is in some way sacred and it needs to all be buried together and you, this is like a religious view of yours like i obviously understand that but like the people like um who like don't hold any view of that sort. It's like, it's a super easy way to improve the quality of someone's life. You'll just never get to see it happen, but like it still happens. As a liver transplant recipient, thank you for your support on organ donation. You're very welcome. I mean like you get to, you get to spend more time with your kids or your parents or like your whatever, you get to live longer. To be fair, like uh, there's like uh, autoimmune issues when you have like an organ transplant. So it's like, it's so, like it's it's rough also like you definitely don't want to it'd be preferable for your organ not to fail but it feels like 1.6 mass migration makes it even harder to push for multiculturalism which doesn't feel like the answer makes it even harder push to go for i think so because it's so it, it feels winner take all -y because what's going to happen is we get this ma we get this mass migration here and like if it doesn't come to us, it goes to the USA, right? And the intermarket migration seems really ass. Like, our ability to siphon off migrants from our subjects or whatever. Or them from us. And maybe maybe this is not quite the case. I, I mean, we have to look at the values a little bit closer. But um, if that's the case, then yeah, like, you, like, extra want to push for multiculturalism because it's winner takes all. And if you don't discriminate, and they do, like, it's going to be a problem. The thing is, is like, for theme, we don't want to do this. I think we might do it anyways, though, to be honest. It might make our government illegitimate. Actually, no, it probably doesn't, because the Catholic Church, this progressive party is like an absolute pain in the ass. Yeah, we're going to go total separation. I think that, at the very least, this is going to be an important test for migration. Is the bug only applicable for autonomous investment pool? Yes. Yes, it only... So if you have the controlled construction queue, then you, you won't have the bug. And this is why we're playing without it. Normally we would be playing with autonomous. But yeah, this is it. That's the reason.
Oh, we would want to do the sway thing. Tangaika. We unfortunately are not gonna help Gobir. Wait, who are we backing? What did we get? Bankroll? Okay. Fair. Now we're not legitimate at all. Bro, real real? There's no way we actually stave off this. That sucks. Okay, uh, we're not gonna pass this. Wow, they gained a ton of clout because we canceled that. Interesting. This party is so strong. Loki want to exile this guy. Arrange accident. Let's do it, baby. So 25% chance he dies. Let's go, baby. We get a pacifist instead. That's really not much better. That actually might just not be better at all. God, this progressive party sucks really hard. We need more secret police in our life, I think. So you don't subscribe to this conspiracy theory of EMS and doctors letting you die for your organs? I do not. That seems very unlikely to me. I wouldn't say impossible, but like... Look, if also, if everyone... Uh, if everyone signed up to be an organ donor... If everybody signed up to be an organ donor... Um, there would be an abundance of organs, and the incentive for such a conspiracy would also disappear. Ooh, we wanted to sway in on this. We wanted to try- no, we, we wouldn't be able to, because we have this. Right? No, let's try. Let's see what we can do. Save scum time. I don't know. It's... it's... Maybe I should do a poll if people, like, want me to, like, play Iron Man again. Now that this has changed. Why is it your preference for doing that? Because, uh, I think that the construction queue, uh, it's a better simulation, and it also adds texture and nuance to the game that I think is interesting and makes decision-making more interesting, uh, by having the private construction queue, and also with the private construction queue, um, there is, uh... So we'll just try and white piece out this, which they will accept. Um, but also I think that uh, it makes the game easier and smoother to play because then you just, you focus on moving your economy overall in a particular direction. Oh, we're not gonna have a chance anyways because of this. Yeah, and then total separation. We can't do. And we gotta cancel. Oh, this needs to pop before the Argentina thing. It might not. They might still want to accept. No meaningful difference. And we can't try and yo-yo sway them. That's unfortunate. Okay, we loaded for nothing. But yeah, the like it, I don't have to spend as long like stacking a whole bunch of stuff into the construction queue as well, so I can play faster. So I can make videos faster and you don't have to see as much of me stacking stuff into the construction queue. It makes all the like it makes every run lower power than like being super anal about everything, but like I don't think that that's too big a deal to be honest. So we're kind of okay with it overall.
I guess we can go elected bureaucrats. Why are we making so much money? Oh, now we're getting bankrolled by France, which is actually catastrophic for them. That's why we're making a ton of money. Um... AI Great Britain still invades Beijing with 15 navies and 19 armies. It's not even about the size of the army, but the fleet of that army. Uh, but the fleet less than the army. What? What do you think of the new update? Are we loading up the game or no? I would wait until 1.6.2. Uh, the game's overall slower. Um, I'm not sure migration's working exactly. The values probably just need to be... It's probably working as designed with a little bit of hiccups and the value's not working exactly what it should be. This is, by the way, per week, not, like, per annum. Uh, but it seems, like, very winner take all I I don't know. I, I, the, maybe we just have to completely revamp our ideas around migration because cultural communities operate so much differently. Like, the overall amount of migration might be happening might be the same, but it seems more winner take all. So I guess we gotta think through that. But, like, what is extremely nice um, is the diplomatic players are much more transparent. This is a huge feature update, or... Uh, it being nice, so. Is this hard to have discriminated pop immigration? We haven't noticed... So we've noticed a little bit of Bornean, I guess, move around. And I think that this happens... Which is discriminated against. And so I think we're having some discriminated migration, but not like a ton. Um... And I imagine it's actually Borneans who we like, end up being Catholic. Nope, there's no Catholics there, so it would not be Catholic Borneans, but... Um, overall, migration seems to be lower in values, although now we we get Brazilian... Oh, we got a mass migration here, this is why. So this is gonna... Now, the thing is, this is gonna seed Brazilian here, so then, down the line, it makes it way easier for us to get Brazilians and Galatians. And so, like, the seeding your pops with a cultural community, or seeding areas with cultural communities, seems important. Um, it can only disable new save. Interesting. Imagine Catholics being called a progressive party. Thank you, good points. Being a donor should just be the standard, and if you don't want to donate, you have to contradict. This is the way it is in some areas, and they've done a study on this, and... If they make it opt out versus opt in, it's like goes from something of like an eight, like I think it's like a, in the teens participation rate for people wanting to opt in, to being a seventy percent participation rate if you change it to being opt out. So the way you frame it actually just has an enormous like change. And this is something I've considered writing my representatives about too. Uh, in California, changing the driver's license from opt in to opt out. But I also like from like a libertarian perspective, don't have a super strong opinion on this. People should be allowed to do what they want to do, but like. I don't know. Also, I think that, like, people who, like, for, if your body is, like, somehow because of your religion sacred to you and, like, can't be separated or something like this, like, I think Catholics, uh, separating your body one part from another is, like, against the faith, right? So, like, if you have something like this, I totally understand, but if you're not in that, in that camp, I think being an organ donor is a good shout. Holy shit, you have 350k Frenchmen in Virginia? Yeah, it seems super winner-take-all. And so, Cal USA crashes. But maybe this is actually a better simulation, a better thing. Do we have a goal for the stream? Um, we want to restore, like, the, the French hold- Or, sorry, the Spanish holdings kind of everywhere. We have a massive- We're looking to get after South America and trying to find a good opportunity to go after Mexico. And probably gonna snake our way up through here. Um, more than we normally would. So, we, we got some goals. I thought we declared all these guys. What the hell? I'm so confused. Wait, why can't we start a play? Okay. Let's do this. Ah, uh, we have to fight Brazil. And so we built up more army so that this would be easier. But it's very likely Brazil also joins in against us.
we're expecting them to join in. That was not in the script. Humiliate Iberia. That was not in the script. So here's what we're gonna do is we're gonna reload and see just exactly what the USA looks at us like for it. In theory, the USA should actually not be able to get to the front, but I don't think they fixed that bug and it's bugged so that they can get to the front. So we absolutely get clapped. It's theocracy in time, basically. We were thinking of doing a religious run, but like um, we also like wanna test stuff, so. Yeah, let's just capitulate out of here and then let's see what the what the values were. So what's the value for USA? So USA is just minus four. So after we incur some of the infamy, maybe they get more sympathetic instantly. But they also hate our guts, so And we're still getting used to interpreting what all these money numbers mean. So let's actually hover over to the USA. Antagonistic towards Iberia. Uh, cooperative towards Bolivia. Sympathetic towards Bolivia. Do you think Big 3 would benefit from something like mission trees? Yes, but I want them to not use mission trees. They have mission trees in their other games. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I would want something different. I would want a new system. Not like... But yeah, I also think mission trees would be better than nothing. So... Yeah. So likely anyone helps there. Wait, this isn't Turtle Island. No, this is 3v3. I think the journal entry system, it just needs content for most nations. I'd be super okay with this, you know. I'm okay with them trying to make it more sandboxy and less, like, um... There are less, uh, sort of bonuses for specific countries, which is what the mission tree tends to, like, lean towards. But I think they need to have, like... Like, they, you know how they have laws tab here with the, all these different laws? I think they should have a culture tab. And the culture, like, should have, like, jingoism and, like a variety of other stuff and they should be able to like utilize the fact that they track every pop to maybe make like a bit of an like in-depth experience for like an underlying cultural system um i'm wondering if foreign investment a building will have the tech of the investor production method that's interesting i assume no but that would be interesting well which team is winning uh egypt russia and germany is winning how do you find the patch so far um uh, so there's some features I really, really like, and on the other hand, I'm disappointed about some things. I think we're going to lower taxes here. Um, <clears throat> in particular, pretty disappointed that, well, migration might be okay. We're just getting used to it being different now. Uh, but the construction queue bug's not fixed, and performance seems worse. So... But they did make diplomatic plays more transparent, and they made a new system for, like, identifying this transparency, which is going to make it feel like you're making more of an informed decision in Diplo plays, which I think is a huge improvement, so. We're probably going to keep playing on it. I don't think we're 100% we're not going to try and make any deep runs, considering the, the speed at which the game is, like, starting to slow down, too. I think it's slower. I mean, everyone's saying it's slower. People have gone, like, way deeper in runs and just, like, gone super fast. So, yeah, with Argentina, we're going to get tons of chances to sway them. 
so we're beco for become subject, and here we get it. There we go. They become willingly our subject. I think we're gonna move this guy over here so we can land faster. Move the fleet over here. Modders are doing some good flash working out for nations more, for example, the Australia mod. Yeah, I mean, Australia just has, like, an unforgivably low amount of resources. I think journal entry rework would be a huge benefit for the game, as some of the countries have little to no difference from others. M almost everyone feels exactly the same. Spain is, like, no exception, being perhaps the most vanilla of all countries. I think we'll take that. Like, if you could... <laughs> if I could name a country that felt, like, more vanilla than Spain, I would have a hard time. Spain just feels like the true neutral of, like, countries. Like, no distinguishing features, basically. While still simultaneously, like, exemplifying, like, the normal gameplay experience. What's the construction cube bug? We've explained it so many times, but it's when... So the amount of the private queue is supposed to get, the amount of construction is supposed to be proportional to the amount of the investment pool transfer is relative to the construction goods. So you see this number is roughly a third of this number, so they should get a third of the control of the construction queue, but instead the percentage of control they are getting is just maximum based on your economic system law, which in the case of laissez-faire is 75%. So they just get control of 75% of the queue, even though the government is paying for... in terms of proportion of that construction, like, you know, 60% or 80% or whatever. Game slow as hell for 73, yeah, basically. But it will be a long while before the base game has good coverage for more countries, as it does France and Brazil. More regional DLCs will be coming as time goes on. Yeah. Restarts seem to help with game speed. Yeah, we haven't restarted, so it could be a memory leak thing. Marcos was saying it was a cachet thing, which I'm not actually 100% sure what that means, but... It could be that. Please let us sway and give us something. Obligation? Cool. Uh, really hoping to see more intelligentsia, guys. That's unfortunate. All right. We'll spread rover those guys right over. I don't want a mission tree that gives you stats, something that gives you unique objectives. Yeah, I want I want something with unique mechanics and teeth, which is why I would like a like a cultural system. So like cache is memory basically. Interesting. Cash. It's pronounced cash, not cache, but I'm Canadian, eh? Thank you for letting me know on the pronunciation, though. So, we're starting to get more people showing up that hasn't seen the Spheres of Influence stuff, so we might take a look at that stuff maybe at 8 o'clock. We'll see exactly how the poll is going. Um, we might see the trains video again. Cash versus cachet is a regional English thing. You know, do I have at least the right region? <laughs> I want to be using the American regionalized thing. So if American regionalized is cache, I, I thought it was cache, but like... The, I do everything the, like, kind of the standard American way, with the exception of the spelling of glamour, where I do include the extra U. Secret police interaction is kind of underwhelming. Although the one guy we did use our cooldown on, we killed. I don't really get, really get what the what does researching the max gold reserve. Uh, it increases your line of credit, because I think it increases your credit reserve as well. We really should have more construction, but to be fair, we're getting an absolutely massive diplomatic back that we're going to lose. Are we not? Wasn't France bankrolling us? What the hell? Yeah, bankroll right here. So we're effectively spewing money right now effectively which should like kind of screw over the French economy but 
I guess we can add a little bit more. Transvaal is actually getting pops too, so let's add some of that. Let's also do some of this. <clears throat> Those will be good. I'm playing two hours in the past two years. Oof. The main attraction of some countries is literally their natural resources, Russia, USA, and the devs pretty much left us it up to us to roleplay, yeah. There's Australia of coded migration, the last prisoner transported was in 68, oof. Uh, Americans are maybe are mainly cash, Australians are cache. The American way, also known as the incorrect way, basically. I like to calculate things in freedom units. Nice. How many bald eagles is this? Someone tell me. Sorry, I couldn't hear what you were saying over the sound of my freedom. <laughs> and let's go this one into investment banks, into civilizing mission maybe. Actually, no, we're probably supposed to push multiculturalism. Because it's winner takes all for migration, it feels like. Actually, you're just some Australians, they mainly say, uh, cash, actually. Cash. Cash. How do you get by on that? We're gonna throw our defensive stack over here, just cause I don't think they try and land us. What's the USA gonna lose? Texas, maybe? Hey, maybe, maybe. Not very much American Texas to be lost. 4 3 Bald Eagles, hell yeah. Will we be trying the Hoey 4 DLC? We are not gonna be trying that tomorrow. I haven't played very much Hoey, I'm not very good at it. I also don't have all the DLC for Hoey. Um. If Paradox gave me, like, all the Hoey DLC, I'd probably do it, but I don't want to hit them up for it, so. And I've not talked to the content creator, like, person for Hoey, or, like, Europa. I've only I've only talked to the person who's in charge of content creation for Vicky 3 So, like, um, I thought about reaching out to the one for Millennia to try and get Millennia early. Maybe we do that, but, like... I'm also pretty small. It feels weird asking these people, just like, hey, can you give me the game early? <laughs> pretty please. Okay, thanks, bye. Need to double check with this one, because it's first time here in Cache. Yeah, I'm seeing uh, cache, uh, cache for Australian. Cash for the US and uh, UK. Well, then, someone said it was regional. They patched Paraguay. Did they really patch it? They patched the... That sucks. You guys were theorycrafting hard in the paint on that. Did they pat- so now you can't do Turtle Island? The Turtle Island exploit? It's dead? You guys were going so hard. General, do you plan on continuing the run after you finish the stream tonight? That is the plan, but if they patch it, make it incompatible now, but... I'm assuming they patch it. Alright, I think that given... Now there's a lot of people who want us to show again or have said no, and we will show... In 13 minutes we're gonna show the Spheres of Influence stuff again. They didn't patch your method. Your method still works, but not Paraguay. Interesting. Doesn't Hoey 4 have a dis uh, subscription plan? Yeah, we can sign up for that. I think that we would rather... We have enough DLCs that it's better for us to buy DLC. It looks like we're finally losing money again, which is where we want to be. Alright, let's see. Do we have any places with unemployed? We do. Iberian Gambia. Let's 
set those to auto expand. Nova Goa, Iberian Guandong. I forgot we got the treaty ports. Do we make opium here? No, it doesn't look like it. Maybe we make one rice and then auto expand this out. And then Guangdong. So the problem is we're gonna fire a bunch of pops when we employ up stuff. But I think we're okay. Maybe a few textile mills in Guangdong. It's a shame. Uh, I think we're still supposed to start a diplo play. We're at one infant man, so. Well, we already have the obligation. We could always just smell these guys later, but. I'd also rather not smell them later. We want to smell them now. But Paraguay lost the culture, you're. Yeah. To be fair, I think, like, what you guys are doing shouldn't be in the game. This is, like, highly, highly gimmicky. The, there was, like, a dev diary, I think, on, like, possibly, maybe, and then thinking that it just causes too many problems, allow you to declare multiple wars and spheres. If this is the case, then that's going to be the World's Conquest patch. We haven't attempted a World's Conquest, but I think we would in that case. Catholic Party is going to be super nice. Does that mean our Reformer guy died finally? Yeah, we got a traditionalist. Thank God. Now we will be able to make a legitimate government without them. And now they won't be winning elections. <sighs> Smell you later, dogs. That's just been painful. I think we nuke some of these. I think maybe we get rid of the tobacco one. Something like this. Even if they patch it out, you can reload earlier versions. Yeah, but you know what I mean. It shouldn't be, but it's nice to toy with in the meantime. Yeah, I definitely think it's interesting. So I, I understand the sentiment. It also makes, like, any run where you're playing as Turtle Island, like, not like, um... Like, you're playing a different game, right? Effectively speaking. Hey there. Why, hello there. So that's gonna break our ability to maybe try and do a little bit of an interesting sway, but we could take we could peel an obligation off of the revolt. I suppose we wait and see what people join in on. You don't wanna just like walk into something crazy. Yeah, we'll just keep our throughput. Law progress to voting. Be nice. The increased suppression impact is also pretty nice, in terms of the, the police. I guess if you're using this, let's make it maybe make the police a lot better. The character in action seems underwhelming, but these guys are about to not be very powerful. And then we can use them. There's an election coming up. I guess once we see how the election kicks out. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, they haven't fixed the AI's ability to defend against creative landings, let's call them. So... That remains to be, like, fixed. Travel to this front instead. Whoa! We have so much defense, please stop it. I need an adult. Stop defending. Stop resisting. 
We also have way more troops, so maybe we get in anyways. That's why I play 1.0.6 for speedruns, because the protector is strat is OP for starting multiple diplomatic plays. Protectorate strat is OP. Not sure which one you mean, but yeah, the the you definitely on earlier patches can like world conquest super way harder. All right, let's give it to him. Well, now nobody wants to side. Wait, was this become subject? What was that play? It was this. Oh, they're just belligerent. Call ally, sure. Sure. Kurt. Oh baby, they just left. They're like, never mind, just kidding. We didn't mean it. They want racial segregation. We're not passing either of those, so we're just gonna hit with them with this. Being able to do this is also super nice. Being able to say, nah, dog. Because that was an annoying as hell, like, event. They've made that event so much more fun. I don't know what your content has done to you, but I never thought I'd be willingly to make interactive Excel sheets for calculating prices for a video game. Well, but the, the, the thing is, like, there's layers to the game, right? There's playing the game, and then there's learning the game. And learning the game is, like, a separate activity that's entertaining in its own right. It's probably more entertaining, to be fair. Like, I think trying to understand the game is super fun and interesting. Uh, generally, the more I feel I understand the game, the less I want to play it, as a general heuristic. So... Let's try and land these guys, then. How do you white piece that? Man, Mexico's spineless. No, wait, no, they enforced. Just kidding. I thought they white beast. I was like, what the hell, brother? What the hell? But they did not. We might go after Bolivia now. Well, USA is very likely to side against us if we do that, but... Now, we have an obligation. We can pull them into the customs union using the obligation. Let's do that. They're still in the French market. And we can get to see, like, what's maybe happening in the terms of migration here. So, we don't have cultural communities for Mexican, and they don't have cultural communities for Spanish, so there's gonna be, like, zero mi migration. Ah, but Poles! The Poles might be leaving, because we do have some places that are Polish. We still elected bureaucrats going through. We used our one time, but I think it wasn't successful. So clearly a bug. Lacking the one time being successful. The one time is, of course, when you call one time, you are supposed to get whatever law you're trying to pass. Independent of enactment chance. But you can only call it once a stream. So... Basically, uh, if you become someone's protectorate, you can call them into a diplo play. You start making it their diplomatic play, like allowing you to start another, then another. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, clearly an oversight on their part. Yeah, that does make sense. Learning games is by far the biggest motivating factor for you. Yeah, I, well, I think that the Victoria's game systems are really interesting. I think that the problem is, one of the biggest problems with the game is the replayability of the game is not all that great. Because the meta is, like, the same. We go for South Africa every run, then we go for Peru, then we go for Brunei. It's, like, kind of the same thing. Yeah. So we're gonna enforce here. on Belangan. I think at 8 o'clock... Actually, now's probably a good time for us to go over the 1.5 stuff. We're also nearing kind of the threshold um, of 150 that we were planning to stream until we dip below 150, so we're getting close. Just a heads up to everyone. 
So let's take a look at um, the 1.5 changes again. For those of you who haven't seen them, or sorry, not the 1.5, the spheres of influence changes that are upcoming. We've gone over this a couple times today, but a lot of people haven't seen it because a lot of people have been coming in and out. And so uh, we got new news for today uh, for spheres of influence, uh, which is going to be kind of coming out. Um, we have also, just to be clear, uh, this is part of a free uh, DLC that came out with 1.6, which is you get a bunch of new choo-choos. They're all different. They all look different. It's going to be big nice. There's 10 different choo-choos. There's a video where this guy talks about the choo-choos for quite some time. He's a big fan of the choo-choos. There was even a time with the choo-choos where uh, they ran a choo-choos through a wall, which was big sad for everyone involved. Generally not seen as a good thing. Here's the... Oh. This is for the DLC. The trailer. Big octopus, big hype. Well, you did it. You Very united them email. into one powerful block. Blah, 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 blah. One banner. It's tentacling time. One ideology. Your good friends came gladly. Sport. And though some required a slightly firmer grip, <laughs> not a single bullet has been fired. Just, uh, one problem. Uh-oh. <laughs> Someone's got a bigger tentacle than us. The truth hurts. It's not the size of the tentacle, it's how you use it. But in this, we have a whole bunch of stuff. They have bullet points coming on to kind of describe it, but we're just going to quickly go through it. And then we're going to take a look at the uh, screenshots, which I think are much more significant. You can now form power blocks, invite people to the power blocks, declare what values your power blocks stand for, whether it's liberalizing economics, uh, conservative agenda. You can do foreign investment, uh, which will allow capitalists, I believe it seems to be, uh, inside your country own stuff that's built in other people's country, and you can even seize stuff that's owned by other people uh, in part of a diplo play. There's the great game, so Central Asia between the UK and uh, Russia. And so this will be interesting. Uh, there's interest groups lobbies. So now they will lobby for... Your interest groups will not even only be lobby for laws, but they'll lobby for international or diplomatic policies. Uh, and so this is going to be big nice. Damn, he's still going. Yeah, we're probably going to wrap it up soon, though. Because as soon as we... We're, we're playing until we drop under 150 total viewers. Um, we have new subject interactions. Um... Maybe we'll go a little bit longer, but we've been... I'm tired as well. Uh, new subject interactions. Uh, we'll take a look at some of those. Uh, enforced and nationalization, which is what we talked about earlier. Seize the means of production. Big nice. Uh, you can build monuments and more historic flavor. And so just to take a look at some of this, um, we do have uh, some screenshots that kind of show you what's up. So we have uh, Zolverin, which is uh, a power block. You can see, look, there's all these people inside the power block. There's cohesion. We don't know exactly what this does. We assume that this is giving modifiers because you see there's modifiers. And there's also this tab that says unused, um, which is obviously just going to be some sort of placeholder. Um, uh, there's the this crest, which is customizable. And you see here principles. So you can say what your thing, what your power block stands for, which in this case they have construction, but you can also be like liberalizing trade, like this type of stuff. And so um, this is going to affect, I assume your modifiers as well as people are going to want to join on the basis of having like this high cohesion or this like type of thing. Um, and let's see, let's continue on. Here's your ability to make a crest, uh, central identity pillar. This one's vassalization. So I think this is, you vassalizing them, but you can select three other principles here. Um, and then available resolutions. So there is a bit of a thing, but this is looking at like the creations uh, screen. This is part of the great game. Uh, we're not sure exactly what this uh, thing means, but it is uh, a thing, I think. Let's take a look here. I am, I do have the right thing on. Oh no, I don't, no, not again. No, wait, I am in the browser. Okay, okay. I am in the browser. I'm not in game. I was freaking out there for a second. We're still in the browser. We're still in the browser. Okay, so take a look here. Um, <laughs> uh, we have uh, the British East India Company. This seems to be... Um, someone's corrected. It's their 
how loyal they are, but I'm wondering if you get it up to the upper brackets, if it does anything interesting or special. Um, but there's a few more interactions. Notably, knowledge sharing is a little bit of a unique one that we haven't seen before. Um, here's the lobby. So this is the pro-British lobby, and it's got the industrialists and the intelligentsia, and you appease them by doing trades, alliances, defensive pacts, and starting wars, launching diplomatic demands, for example, decreases appeasement. And so this might make it a little bit harder to be going to war constantly and make it so that, you know, playing tall and not starting a bunch of plays is like a more reasonable thing alongside foreign investment, which I think is in the next tab here. No, this is the great game. We see a bunch of, we see some stuff for the great game. We see way more uh, Central Asian uh, tags. I'm assuming there's going to be a lot more resources there too, uh, in order to make going for this uh, viable. There's even Turkmenia, which you can colonize. Um, here we have iron mine, the important one being toggle privatization, which will allow people to buy or it will allow private ownership in the area, which is pretty significant, I think. Um, and so other countries can buy this out if you allow privatization, I think, depending on your agreements with these companies. But also, it seems to be the case that internally your capitalists can buy. And here we have the manor house, which is a building in the Midlands, uh, which is the financial building, which they appear to own a bunch of subsistence farms and some rye farms. And so this is the collective ownership of what's going on. And so uh, these are the buildings which we are thinking can own stuff overseas, but we'll talk about that more in a second. We got the drip, a shout out for the drip. Here's more drip, big nice, also blue Persia. And here's what we were saying in regards to, we see East Inglea, West County. And I'm thinking, look at all these, uh, it's showing a different a bunch of different buildings highlighted. I'm thinking that you will get these in foreign countries when you invest there, and they will pay out according to how profitable the buildings are. Um, and you will uh, effectively have built it and own it in another person's thing, but that they can seize it from you in a Diplo play is a very significant thing. And so um, I assume whenever you fight someone, you will have to, you will trust that they will try and seize stuff. And so this might change what exactly you're doing and what you're forcing to be built where and this type of stuff. But having someone be a subject and then just building out all the resources uh, might be a good way of just completely extracting wealth from them because they will have to manage you know, the workers while you have all the ownership class of everything. And so this is a, a bit interesting. And so that's kind of just a little bit of an overview of some of the 1.3 changes. We're not going to, I don't think we're gonna need to take a look at the the Choo Choo's video. We would if we, well, actually, let's watch the one for the French thing. This guy's so disappointed in the French train. Let's They're see just it. meant to run things over a long distance and not have to worry too much about like what you have to build. We're gonna to see support. it for the train guy. This is in contrast to our final locomotive. The French final locomotive one. that required a lot of work, broke down, and broke down once quite famously. I apologize to our French viewers, but I'm gonna butcher the name just a little bit, but it's the class 170 West, yes, most we, famous we, so, so. for its uh, central role in the Montparnasse crash, where it actually had its brakes fail, blasted right through a terminus, crashed through the outer wall of the station, and then tumbled down a floor into the street <laughs> below. It's not the most reliable of loops. It's not the most reliable, you don't say. But it's very emblematic of French in engineering. It's not very good, but it's a perfect example of French engineering. <laughs> and French design in the later Victorian era. These sorts of locomotives, although they had some engineering faults, remained in service up through World Profit War for the I. ownership. These are the sorts of things that you would still see hauling troops up to the front uh, in Flanders, might even still be chugging along, wheezing along, really, in the 1920s. We've picked out 10 locomotive designs that cover the whole span of steam railroading history. Yeah, it's not the size of the tentacles, it's how many, how right you are, do you know how many you know how many, uh, how many tickles it takes to make an octopus laugh? Do you know how many? Octopuses are, are difficult to make laugh. You don't get them on the first tickle. The amount of tickles it takes is 10 tickles, normally. It takes 10 tickles, boys. All right. Diplomatic actions or demands. We'll see about reducing autonomy. These guys just accept, so we'll do that. Crew a decent chunk of infamy, could tie, we'll probably just accept, they do. Crew a nice, decent chunk of infamy as well. And I think now's maybe a good time to protect them. We see USA is less likely to join than they were before. 
And why is this? Well, they're really not going to join against us because they're antagonistic, but they're not as sympathetic. I guess we take a save. But the French Republic might join against us here because they're only minus 26. They can't support Iberia because they're, they're allied to Bolivia. So they almost certainly join. So I guess we just mind our own business with that one, huh? Alright, I guess we're minding our own business then. Maybe it's time to go for Costa Rica. Just gonna take a look. Nicaragua siding would not be a problem. Let's go to Cuba. Yeah, it takes 10 tickles to make them laugh. Let me sign under 20 alt accounts and have them all watch the stream. I mean, I feel like that doesn't count. You're doing a big good job though, yeah. You've not been able to annex the Papal States with two Sicilies, a Sardinia paid one, and a 69. Why no Dreadwolf? It's been a while, Dreadwolf's been in the chat. Uh, do you have good relations with them? Or are you talking about diplomatically annexing or manually annexing? Profit for whom? I'm guessing that when you own the building in another state, what the way it's going to work is just to give my two cents on how I think it's going to work, because I don't really know. I do not have foreknowledge. But what's going to happen is uh, the, the, num the employees in there are going to be the normal employment sans the ownership class. And then the ownership is going to get the weekly balance here, and that's going to be the difference. And the ownership is instead going to be in a different state. And I think that's going to be how it works. He really hates the French train, it seems. Yeah, he, like, despises the French train. He, like, lives to make fun of the French train, but he's also a professional, right? So he can't just absolutely drag that French train, but you can tell he hates it. You're major and you've gotten a million Tuscany and Annex, but no, still no Papal State or Two Sicilies. Uh, I think they have to not consider themselves uh, as potential, so you have to, like, eclipse them. But... The Paris government has no legs to stand on, sure. The train gets you every time, kick W, bro, it does. I don't know if uh, it's a 1.6 issue. It might be. I don't know either. You remember seeing that train crash image at a random McDonald's? That's wild. Shushu. Paradox said, yes, this is the commentary. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. Is migration great again? Yeah, we think migration is working. It's just way different. And it's like mainly based on mass migration. And it's very winner take all, it seems. Um, and you're not going to get very good intra-market migration, uh, like, especially with your, like, uh, your primary pops. I think people will not leave homelands very easily for intra-market migration. And so, uh, it makes it, so I think the U.S. is getting an absolutely, so, I mean, you could compare this to a different chart, but the U.S. population chart is insane, uh, for an AI. Um... And, like, our our population chart is, like, very much not insane for, like, a human player. And so I think that this is the thing. They hired a train nerd. Perfect. They did. Unless they have a tickle kink. That only takes one tickle. Oop. Almost let that time out. We still want them to back down. So we'll just put in a couple other war goals. Just in case... Are willing. And I the only unification candidate in the menu, but Pavel supports Austria Hungary. Wait, that's strange. I don't know what that's about. I don't think Austria Hungary is supposed to be eligible. I mean, they have San Marco territories, but that seems weird. It almost seems like it was more realistic when you didn't know who would join the war. Uh, it might be. M so, what realistic would be would be you sending some sort of diplomatic message. And like checking with someone, hey, would you be bothered if we did this? And then uh, they might alert the country that you're planning on annexing them, but you don't automatically get a war against the person who you're checking in with. I think would be realistic, most realistic. But we still got something. Time to take the multivitamin. Shout out to multivitamins. Multivitamins are like the ultimate free roll. 
If you don't take in a multi, you're doing it wrong. Because if you have a deficiency in a vitamin or mineral, it's like such a bad thing. And taking a multivitamin, the opportunity cost is basically zero. It's like nothing. Um, you, it's like five, ten cents or something a multivitamin, and then like the inconvenience of taking it, it's almost nothing. So. We can't let them leave, except it doesn't matter if you're, like, if you already have the Midas 50% malice, a little bit of a bigger malice isn't going to matter too much, but. We do get the gold depleted in Antifagasta. Uh, maybe we just build a couple. I think they don't have, actually have the pop to employ up, so... Oh, they have a bunch of unemployed. The freak? Alright, well... We'll do some of that action. I suppose. Is the Papal States in their market? Yeah, they have to be in your market. And be... They're in their own market? I think they have to be in your market. I'm not 100%. Is Japan FFFFF? Japan's looking alright. They're doing things. They're still isolationists. Sponsored by Big Vitamin. The sellout. The more minerals you get, the higher you can scale construction. Basically. But you can build it in people inside your customs union. And then you get the ownership class and you don't have to deal with the workers. The chance you choke to death while taking a multivitamin is slim but never zero. Yeah, but that's the slip in the shower like argument. It's like, you can slip in the shower and hit your head and die. Does it mean you shouldn't take a shower? Probably. No more showers. You heard it from me. That by, the, that, by the way, is sarcasm. Don't stop taking showers. Don't stop believing either. Thoughts on magnesium supplements? Magnesium is water-soluble, so, like, it's very, very hard to, like... Your, your, your liver will just process the extra magnesium. Um... They help a lot with migraines, or preventing migraines, I think. Um, they're good for some other stuff. I can't really me remember exactly what my magnesium does. I think mag Cal Mag Zinc, though, like, as a supplement stack, is generally very cheap. And I think it's one of the better supplements for, like, um, if you're working out. I, I can't remember what it does, though. Like, my, my memory of, like, how I rated the supplements, like, excluding whey protein and creatine. So we're talking about just the pills. Um, it would be like, uh, multivitamin, fish oil, vitamin D, and then I think like cow mag zinc, something like that. But I can't remember what everything does anymore. That was like, I used to be super into that stuff and I can't remember. I just remember like the conclusions, which some people in terms of analysis might find unsatisfactory. But now we're getting a bunch of like... We're getting mass migrations because they have turmoil. They have turmoil because they have discrimination. So maybe it just feels like it takes a lot longer for everything to get rolling. But we just hit, we just pipped three mass migrations. So what I'm thinking is happening, right, is we, so we have a mass migration here, ma mass migration here. We have a mass migration here. It's like starting to winner take all in our favor instead of the US's favor. And we're at 42, because we just got some. They're at 57, which is not so much more. Yeah, Diplo Annex by event. I'm saying just F it, and I'm going to protect her at the Pavel States. Yeah, you can protect her and then form Italy. Are you taking mineral supplements to depower the working class? Yes. Or use gummy multivitamins? Yeah, gummy ones are okay. They're generally a lot more expensive. Multivitamins are really cheap is another reason why I'm like, a big fan of the multivitamins. But like, if you have a balanced diet, the multivitamin does nothing. The point isn't that the multivitamin is going to have an enormous effect. It's that if the multivitamin has an effect, it's going to be really big. And the opportunity cost of taking multivitamin is really low. It's like, more what the analysis is about. Like, it's not an ex uh, expensive supplement. You're probably not deficient in anything, but if you are... Also, if you're a woman, like, uh, you probably should take iron supplements, like, during your menstrual cycle. Or a lot of women become anemic. And that's something worth considering. But, uh, iron is fat-soluble, so you can... It's much easier to run a toxicity in iron, so you don't want to over-supplement it. I think it's kind of hard to, though. 
do you ever see yourself focusing on other games? Uh, if... I like Victoria 3. I would not play as much Victoria 3 if people would watch me playing other games. People don't watch me playing other games, so... Um, and I think it would be a huge grind to try and get it to where people would watch me play other games. I might do a little bit of Millennia. We'll see if I can get any traction. If I can't, that's fine. I'm just so stay focused on Victoria 3. If... Uh, but if, like, people 100% like, didn't care what I was doing and just, like, watched whatever I was doing anyways, I probably wouldn't make as many tutorials as well, right? Which, I think people like the tutorials in general more than anything else, uh, really. So, like, what people watch is a huge driver of what I choose to play and, like, do content for. Like, this is... Uh, like, Pal World. I played a ton of Pal World. That was an indulgence. People weren't really watching that. Um, but I played it on stream quite a bit. But also, like, I'm kind of done with Battle World now, so. I guess maybe we check what our viewership count is at. Ah, we're, we're approaching. We're approaching the end here, boys. Je suis un chouchou. But. If you want to try Omega 3s, try a Flax Oil. Um. With the Omega-3 specifically, I know that the brand you take of the stuff actually, like, matters a whole lot. I don't remember exactly how it matters, but I know it, I know it matters a lot. We don't care if Costa Rica helps out. We see this plus 6 in Honduras. We see minus 50 in Mexico. That's a bit of a problem. They do look like they support us more, or would be more likely to side with us. But maybe we just chill out in that, like, region. Especially because we have, like, Pontiac and Benjar to go after, so let's go after and Jambi, which these are going to be hyper-efficient. Let's go for Jambi first. Um, let's try Ban Slavery, War Reparations, Open Market, see if they back down. And, uh, Elected Bureaucrats, big nice. But yeah, I know, I know your brand of fish oil matters, like, a ton. I forget which brand I was, like, taking when I was taking a lot of it. Um, to be honest, like, supplements got kind of expensive, and I'm not on, like, the, the stack I was on before. Church. I mean, maybe we can pass something through the church. Kind of low-key want to go total separation. But before we do that, we actually have to try and do public health insurance, so we... Let's do no health insurance first. No health system. And then we could do the other one. Flax is vegetarian fish oil way of thinking about it. I know the omega-3 to 6 ratio is important. I know less about flax. But is flax more expensive would be a reason why. Wow, we're getting so much mass migration from them. Migration might need push factors to get people to leave. I'm thinking push factors are more important and pull factors only are not gonna work. Have we played Rise of Industry? I have not. Gonna head off now and say that uh, even if the launch was a bit of a dumpster fire, thanks for the great stream as always. You are very welcome. I think, uh, yeah, definitely trying to be entertaining slash informative even if, um, even if people decide that 1.6 is a bit of a problem. I think it'll be really good once they fix whatever, like, the performance thing just seems to be, like, a bug, I think. Well, right? Not, like, a, a part of, like, the new normal. So, we're hoping it's just a bug. I guess. Going after Pontiac now. Are you watching the new show, Shogun? I would be if I had, um, what's called Hulu. I don't have Hulu. Almost full on cash reserves, we are. I thought we were getting Diplo Pact bankroll from someone. Yeah, we're getting bankroll from France, so we gotta be a little bit careful about that, but... Also, because migration's, like, weird, it's been hard for us to actually find places where we can build the construction. Where we have... Oh, I guess we have peasants in a couple of these spots. I was looking at the wrong thing. I was like, wow, it's, like, pretty hard to find places we want to build.
This was the old capital. Rise of Industry is like if you had the economic segments of the game and none of the political stuff, you might enjoy it. Not many good guides out there, hint hint. Yeah, the problem is, is like, in order to like, get to the point where I can make guides in a game, the upfront investment cost in hours is so high. Not that expensive IMO regarding flax. I guess we could take a look at it. The generally speaking, um, I'm more leery about vegetarian supplements in terms of efficacy. Because, like, a lot of stuff that's, like, less of... The vegan and vegetarian community try and argue that a lot of stuff... And specifically in strength sports, a lot of stuff is more effective than it is. And it's, like, it's made me a little bit jaded and leery of, like, the vegetarian stuff in general. I don't have anything against it, but, like, people try and argue that, like, uh... The protein in meat is not, like, any better for building muscle than, like, the protein in soy and, like, this type of stuff. But, like... Um, there's not a single absolutely jacked out of their brains, um, like, vegan strongman or powerlifter. There wasn't an Olympic weightlifter in the USA that was pretty strong who was vegan, but I think it was vegan after, like, uh, he did really well and went to the Olympics. So, like, I don't know if that even counts. Get a Hungarian mass migration from Austria, Hungary. Are you guys okay? What's going on? So is it turmoil in the capital? There's turmoil here, but we're not getting Italians. There's some turmoil over here. I mean, we'll take it. Wow, we're making hand over fist. Oh, part of it's because we're not constructing enough. All right. Not to turn this into a supplement hour but also like supplements are like there's some problems with supplements in general like um uh there's like very little oversight in terms of how they get made and this type of stuff so they could just be like absolutely unhinged like wild stuff in their supplements and they still like there's like no oversight for supplements basically which is a bit of a problem. So if there's an argument against a multivitamin, it's that you're concerned about them just putting absolutely wild shit in your thing. But like, I think you have to have a really, really clean diet for that like concern to be like a uh, kind of big one. I forgot we freaking Herpaderpa. Oh, we also want to have Arts Academy auto expanding here. We do. Okay. But I forgot we were, we we haven't swapped everything onto steel frame building. Valencia's got a lot. Navarra's got a lot. I think we can slap some down in Asturias, in Lima. In these two states, Asturias and Lima. And so Valencia, since you have a lot of the steel already, we can do this. And Navarra, I think we already swapped over. And now we have a glass problem. So we can do some glass here and there. I think all those places are on auto expand, so. Or Amazon, if correct brand, let's see. $12 for 1,400 milligrams, uh, 100 count. That doesn't seem too bad. Vegetarian stuff is perfectly fine for a normal lifestyle, but realistic if you're building both. Not really. Yeah, I mean, it's it's hard to, like, rule out, but, like, the thing is, is, like, when you start getting to the nosebleed sections of, like, or nosebleeds, like, might not even be a word that's, like, normal for most people. When you start getting to the upper, like, levels of strength sports... Um, like, the number of studies there is, like, zero, and, like, most of the data points you have that are anecdotal, and, like, there's just not anyone who's been extraordinarily successful as a vegan or a vegetarian, like, in regards to strength sports or putting off enormous amounts of muscle tissue, um, which isn't to say that, v like, vegetarian stuff isn't important, but the inclusion of meat seems pretty essential. Like, you can put on a ton of mass eating a ton of carbs, um, but, like, uh, specifically, like, uh, 
the the your ability to synthesize proteins seems like way better with like meat. But like also like as a moral issue, like I think uh <laughs> I'm not a vegan, but I think veganism's, like, a good shout. Like, it's 100%, like, reasonable to me. If, like, you're doing it, uh, like, uh, as a moral issue. Quinoa is complete protein without the soy. Yeah. Quinoa does the complete. And you can, like, you can mix and match, uh, like, beans. Beans are harder to digest on a, like, per calorie and protein basis than, like, beef, though. So if, like, you're trying to eat two to three hundred grams of protein it's like rough and that's like what i'd be with like the upper echelons but for an average person like i think you can put on size it's just like maximum size i don't know i've thought about this a lot because like i'm i'm not like an elite level like strength athlete but i'm like considerably ahead but shogun is awesome worth getting the d plus bundle man you've been at this all day pretty much We've been at it 11 hours now. I can't afford the organic. Bottled dollar store in air for me. Yeah. Gotta be free range. The A lot of... Uh, yeah, that stuff can make a big difference on some of the supplements. I think vegetarianism is a more balanced dietary shout on ethical grounds. Uh, it's definitely more balanced and easy to do than veganism, if that's the, what you're comparing it to. I also think some of the veganism stuff's a, a little bit, uh, a little bit much for me. Or specifically, I think the not eating honey is a little strange. I also think that, like, in order to make farms to make a bunch of the stuff, you, like, have to clear the land, and you have to, like, kill all the insects, right? So, like, you're, if you're spraying pesticides, and then you're gonna worry about the bees being exploited, when the bees can, the bees tacitly consent, right, because they can leave. Bees being, like, a particular case, so a lot of vegans don't eat honey because they think it's an exploitation of the bees. It's like, well, okay, but you're eating plants that have a bunch of pesticides sprayed on them to kill all the, uh, all the insects, and, like, the, as far as a relationship looking consensual, nothing looks as consensual as the bees, so, uh, in particular... But also, like, clearing of land, like, that kills animals, it destroys habitats, all this type of thing. Um, but, like, you also need to clear land in order to get the feed, in order to feed the cows. So, like, it's more sustainable than, like, eating cows, but it's not without, like, uh, impact. It does look like we've dipped under 150, though. So, I think we're gonna catch up on chat and then call it a day. Or actually, no, wait, you guys are back up to 150. Okay, just kidding. I looked at it, it was 120. You spoke to a famous chef and nutrition who blurted out that he thinks vegans are essentially killing themselves. Uh, I think it depends what your vegan's diet looks like. I mean, Oreos and Lay's potato chips are vegan. I think it's, I think it's easier to have a vegan diet that's really unhealthy than it is to have like, uh, a diet that has meat that's unhealthy. But, you can't not eat honey yet. Well, the, the, like, pure vegans don't eat it. I dated a girl who was vegan, so I learned quite a bit about it. I also think, like, in terms of the moral issue, I think, um, vegans are probably on the right, like, side of things in terms of not eating the flesh of animals, and that, like, I low-key think that everyone who eats meat should probably have to execute one animal <laughs> to just, like, see what that's like. <laughs> I haven't done it, but there's, like, not a good way for me to, like, go to a butcher place and be like, I would like to execute one cow, please. <laughs> They'd be like, what? <laughs> but I'm also super not interested in dying on that hill, and also as long as I'm trying to get strong... I'm not gonna care about me eating meat because I think that it's like there's not a single like vegan guy who's like really strong out there. There's like one vegan strongman guy, but he's not very strong. And he's like he talks about how strong he is and how good being vegan is, and he's like just wrong. Honey is your big disagreement on hard veganism. Yeah, it's just like it's a miss for me. 
as long as the bees are paid a living wage, well, they can leave if they don't like it. They don't like the arrangement. They, they like, feed the bees stuff so that they can make the honey better. Organic, and they also, like, keep away predators and stuff. Organic foods also doesn't mean pesticide-free. Super hard to find pesticide-free stuff. Huge issue with uh, things like ground turmeric powder, contaminate with sides and lead. Yeah. If you're... Yeah. You're just, like... There's not a way... There's not a way to acquire food that is not intrusive on some other animal, like, point blank. Like, there's just 100% not... Anything that I know of that is 100% sustainable. Because if you're clearing land, like, or using pesticides, you're affecting things. Uh, and I think that's the standard that vegans want, and I don't think they can achieve that. But also, uh, like, uh, <laughs> what they do to the cows, like, to get them to produce milk, like, is somewhat analogous to torture. <laughs> Like, if they were doing it to a person, it would be clearly torture. Same data to vegan? Yeah. It also killed bugs. Does that mean I'm good at honey? You killed bugs. Does that mean I'm good on honey? If you're trying to be hard vegan, you're, you, can't do, you can't do honey. You also can't do anything that was tested on animals that aren't human. That's the funny one, is you can use products that were tested on consenting humans... But you can't use products that were, like, first tested on monkeys. <laughs> You're a vegetarian, but personally I think uh, not everyone has uh, to take a moral stance on every topic. I agree with that. I think it's alright to eat meat just because you like meat and it's not political. I'm generally kind of in that camp as well. Also, I think there's, like, uh, there's a lot of things that people will either be missing or hitting on when it comes to, like, being moral. And it's 100% impossible to, like, uh hit all the good marks and I don't think you're also morally obligated in any way to hit all the good marks I just I do think it is like a moral issue that like is it's a moral position that's sensible but like also like <clears throat> when I buy a pair of nice shoes right I could have sent that money to save children's lives in Africa so if I buy a pair of nice shoes this is the uh, thought experiment Peter Singer it goes something like this you have a pair of Yeezys, $200 Yeezys, and you're walking in the park, and in a pond in the park, you see a child drowning. That child will 100% die if you don't save them, and you are the only person capable of saving them. This is the setup of the thought experiment. You are also wearing a brand new pair of Yeezys. Now, he doesn't say Yeezys, he says $200 shoes, but we'll use Yeezys. And Yeezys isn't as good an example anymore since Kanye became, like, well, more Kanye. But let's just say Yeezys. You have a $200, $200 pair of Yeezys. Do you go and save the child and destroy your Yeezys? Most people would say, yeah, you ruin the Yeezys, you save the kid's life. Okay? What Peter Singer argues is that you have the exact same thought experiment in regards to saving, sending money to like save children in Africa. In that, you could send $200, the exact same thing, and save a life in a similar way. Now, Obviously, Peter Singer's... I, I, I have problems with Peter Singer's example. One is you are, like, viscerally removed from the situation. But if you're looking at it just in terms of consequences, anytime you spend money on anything that isn't, like, saving the lives of children, in a sense, you are, like, allowing them to die in the same way uh, as if you were like, nope, I'm not going to ruin my Yeezys. Is it a perfect example? No, but, like, it makes sense. And so, like... Um, you could, in my opinion, like, eat the flesh of animals and then choose to ruin your Yeezys, right? And, like, the there's, like, a matrix of, like, moral actions, and they're, like, all overlapping. And, like, I don't think you have to be perfect to be moral. Um, I also think acts of commission and omission are functionally the same. Like, fa failing to save someone... or yeah, I, I don't think an act being an act of commission versus omission is, like, a substantive distinction, which a lot of people do, but, like, that's a bit to unpack, so we're not going to do it. But the point is, is that, like, you can be extra moral in one department and not be moral in another department, and then, like, it's a wash. It depends on the farm. Yeah, same with chicken and eggs. It's basically... Seep deprivation? Yeah, I think so. I think eggs is a more moral, like, form of protein than, like, the flesh of the animal. 
generally speaking. The problem is, is with the male chicks, they like throw them in meat grinders when they're born, so that's like a vibe. You also can't drink store-bought orange juice. It's not vegan. That makes sense. Many farms try and make cows happy because they produce more milk when happy. Uh, I mean, I have seen... Yeah, I mean, I guess it depends on the farm. I've seen setups where they, like, uh, impregnate the cow, and then, like, she gives birth to a calf. They take the calf away from her. She's very distraught about the whole thing. She starts producing milk. When she starts slowing down, they knock her up again. Like, I, you would have... Like, watching that happen to a... Like, if, if I thought about that from the perspective of watching that happen to a human, and then they installed a scratching post to make the human happier, I would be like, that's not, like... <laughs> How would transacting $200 save a child's life? So the idea is, like, you could send money to a place where children are starving um, for the purpose of buying food to feed the child to prevent them from dying. This is the, this is the idea. So now, what's new on 1.6? The big one is when you start a diplomatic play now, uh, you actually get to see, very transparently, how people feel about joining. This is the biggest plus. Um, I think this is the biggest uh, feature improvement. You see CX likely to join, and you also see why, if you hover, how they feel about you, the other guy. Everything's way more transparent. I really like it. We're subjugating Borneo, baby. Also, it doesn't mean that I think that everyone who, like, buys expensive shoes is immoral. I'm just saying that, like, the... There's, like, more than one thing going on, and whenever people talk about morality, it seems like they are only focused on the exact subject that they're talking about uh, when evaluating whether or not someone's moral. And, like, vegans are often, like, super judgy because you eat meat. And, like, the vegan can, like, eat meat and then not do anything else to make the world a better place. And then they, like, be hoity-toity. And they might be, like, doing significantly less on the net than someone else who, like, eats the meat. And then they, like, are doing philanthropy, like, saving, like, lives or whatever in some other domain. That's, like, the main point I wanted to make. I didn't want to make an argument about... I think I got a little sidetracked with the Peter Singer thing. Because I just wanted to talk about Peter Singer's thought experiment. Like, the, the idea is, like, you shouldn't be, like, judgy about whether or not someone's a good person on a singular thing, because it's, like, in the, like, grand scheme of things, it's, like, a small thing. Migration is different. I'm not sure if it's nerfed. I'm not sure if it's bugged. Never mind that. I hear what you're saying. Yeah. Also, I think Singer's example is not entirely uh, uh, generous to, like, a person's psychology. It's much different to be walking past a child that's drowning. Like, you have to be a special kind of callous to walk past a child that's drowning versus saving a child you'll, you've never met and you'll never get to see how you save them, which is, like, one of the reasons why, like, donating your organs or signing up to be an organ donor, you never get to see the person benefit, and you're not seeing the person that would benefit suffering. And so it's, like, I think it's, like, different. I also think that that's, like, the cheapest and easiest form of philanthropy. And so, like, it takes, like, five minutes to sign up to be an organ donor. And, like, if you, if it's, like, a religious thing and you can't separate your body or donate your body, then that's fine. But, like, if you can, then, like, I think people generally should do it. Still going? Cooks are trying. Trains. Trains. Trainage. It's not standard in the U.S. because that's not like uh, with this, uh, it's not in like with the science on how to get the most milk. That's fair. I I don't know a lot about the milk thing. I'm saying I've seen setups where like it does not look really good at all. But like I also recognize that what I've seen is uh, definitely has an agenda is trying to push a particular narrative. So it could just be incorrect. Oh, we don't want to add construction sectors. We want to swap up. We want to square up. Just turn on more of those things. 
I think I've seen that adult form before. Huh? But not all preferences indicated for morality are futile. I'm not sure what you mean by that. I mean, I think I would know what you mean if I knew exactly what you were responding to in terms of what I said, but the delay makes it tough. You're bad? Wait, what's wrong? Wait, what's wrong with your bad? Why are you saying you're bad? I don't have anything wrong with what you said. Yeah. Generally speaking, the person ranting about the immortality of something uh, quite comparatively minor is also attempting to show a high degree of intolerance, which might not be considered moral. Yeah. Yeah, this is also an excellent point. I think a lot of people are trying to appear moral, and uh, they want to have something that allows them to give a story on why they're moral, more so than actually like actively examining ways to be more moral. I think the singular thought experiment is one everyone should be aware of. I don't think it like morally obligates you, but I think that you should like you should be cognizant of the fact that anytime you spend money, you could have given it to charity. And not that you're morally obligated to give it to charity or something like this, but that just like, uh, this is an option of what you could do with your money. And so, I think perhaps you're morally obligated to ask the question, is this going to make me happier? Like, in a way that, like, I think is true and if the answer to that is no then you probably shouldn't do it if it does make you happier then yeah but like if it's like super marginal then like maybe not i don't know i haven't thought through that entirely my conclusion is like there's like this study where past like a certain point like seventy thousand a year money tends not to make you happier and i think if you pass that point you should probably donate a large share of the amount of money you make to charity Or there's 70,000 a year when the study was done, which was a while ago, so it'd probably be over 100,000 a year, but... Uh, dairy cattle in the U.S. is pretty close to the Pareto Principle. 80% of dairy cows are on 20% of farms, so there's a lot of farm with ethical practices, but a small fraction of the uh, production. Yeah. Stonks. The GDP line, though. It do be going up. That thing be thangin'. We're kind of cleaning up Borneo here. I think I like this play pattern where you release the Dutch East Indies from the Netherlands so that you can subjugate it for low infamy because it's unrecognized now. And then you can leave Java unsubjugated because Java is the one that's really not efficient or is really expensive on the pops and the other ones aren't as, are not much cheaper on the pops. They're like only two infamy at like a, a go and they have a lot of resources. So overall I think I like this play pattern a lot. You heard that back in middle school? Are you talking about the Peter Singer thought experiment? That's wild that they would teach that in middle school. But yeah, I mean, like, I think Peter Singer's conclusion is also just, like, not tenable. Which is that you should donate like every dollar you make uh, above subsistence. I think that I think that that's just like insane. <laughs> or just like any time you don't donate money, you're killing the child. <laughs> it's like Jesus, bro. Like I, I think the conclusion he takes that too is a little bit too extreme. The 70k a year happiness thing for the what you heard back in middle school, yeah. The I I also think <laughs> shaming people for not giving to charity when they're like not making like enough to like be food secure or like housing secure is like fucking wild. <laughs> I think if you're not housing secure or food secure, you should not worry at all about being like philanthropy. Or maybe you should think about it, but, like, the, the, the you shouldn't feel guilt. Because there is, like, there's a ton of value in, like, feeling secure. Like, you're able to be m way more productive if you feel safe in terms of, like, your resources and what you have going on. 
I believe we are an inflation of goods to uh, buy, but not enough money to buy the goods like in food and technology. Buy the goods, but we are in an inflation of goods to buy, but not enough money to buy the goods. I don't know what you mean by that. Job is nice for uh, Pacificist outlook since they'll oppose some of the minor powers in the region. Pacifist outlook. The problem is going for Java takes a lot of infamy. It's like 50 infamy here. And everything else is like dirt cheap. Like collabs is pretty cheap too. I think we have decent resources here. I actually don't go after this probably as often as I should. I think they have iron here. Yeah, they do. 20 iron. A payment processor company in Seattle paid everyone minimum for... Oh yeah, I, I follow that guy on Instagram for minimum 70k, but that uh, CEO was batshit insane and overworked his employees. They eventually went under. Oh, we're thinking of a different guy. There is a guy in Seattle who like paid everyone 70k and he's like very successful and he's like retired but like i don't think you can do that for every industry also fairly not naive conclusion too because some charities are legit and many are not and you're not saving much of anything in those cases yeah one problem is like areas where there's a lot of um corruption like not all your money gets there but also charities in the usa are incredibly inefficient on a per dollar basis like, I would recommend Bjorn Lomberg how to spend, like, $83 billion or $3 billion or something like this to make the world a better place. Um, some, I, the title's something like this. That book's really good about studying the efficiencies of charities. Like, one of the, like, efficient things you could do is, like, multivitamins. Multivitamins are really great. I also think uh, if people are, like, starving to death and then, like, they don't have population controls and their populations are also growing too, like, I think trying to solve the starvation problem doesn't actually solve the problem. It just, like, makes more people to starve to death. But it, specifically improving the nutrition of children really affects their outcomes positively when they grow up because it helps brain development, like, a whole, whole time, makes them more, like, well-balanced and better at, like, uh, you know, basically everything in the future. And so, like... If you can do something that's like really, really useful, so sending multivitamins to kids is like a really good one. Peter Singer was really interesting to learn about in uni, but I couldn't help but feel uh, like the end of util uh, up at a utilitarian is absurd and not useful. I think that um, he's, I think he ignores like what it means to be human in his analysis. Like he ignores like the psychological like aspect and expects us to work as like moral calculating machines. And that, like, the conclusion is kind of absurd. Because it's, like, assuming that we calculate stuff like machines and we're not machines. For Iberia is Philippines. Can you? Gravity payments is still running, but the CEO got pushed out. Interesting. I'm not sure it's fair to go for Java when he's not even here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's not worth it. 43 infamy for this. I mean, it's a ton of resource. Like, the resources are decent. Like, there's a lot of sulfur here, but, like, sulfur's often not the thing we run out of. And we also have South America, so we're not going to run out of sulfur. You know what I mean? Is there a way to improve nations' attitudes for you? The most straightforward is join their side of a diplomatic play. So here we have this diplomatic play in Niger for colonization rights. And we see that France is, uh, let's see their attitude. Hopefully it's not good so we can kind of show it off. Oh, it's genial. But if it was not genial, uh, it would be useful if we just join on the side of France, it will make them have a good attitude and then we could just capitulate when the war starts, as long as there's no war goals on us. And it's basically a zero cost way to improve the attitude. This is kind of the way you do it. But yeah, like, uh, if you if you would not analyze anything from a purely utilitarian, like, perspective, like, the conclusions are absurd. Um, like, under Singer's analysis, if there were five people who could live 
another 20 years for your organs and you can only live like another 20 years with your organs you should unalive yourself just to give them your organs like uh well i don't think singer would have that as his conclusion but that's the type of ways of thinking that like uh singer's like kind of framing of issues would commit you to which is like they're kind of absurd so But I, I think Singer's got, like, a huge point. I just don't agree with, like, the whole bag. Or the whole, like, conclusion, yeah. Morality is a funny one because I find if someone operates on a different moral framework, there's an immediate breakdown in communications and most people don't realize or adopt it. What most people do is they will analyze using um, consequence, rules, or intention... And their mode of analysis will basically 100% correspond to whichever makes them look most moral in that situation. Uh, <laughs> and functionally, this is often how people do it. There was, like, a study where they showed that the, the like, ethics uh, theorist actually was the best at being immoral <laughs> uh, in terms of real-life practice. And I think the, the idea that was given in the study was that it was because they're better at justifying... But I think that people often uh, mor moralize in a self-serving way. And so they will try and... Um, which is unfortunate because it's like hard to come to conclusions. But they will just be slippery. And so if the outcome was good but they were like a dick about it or something. Or like they really weren't a nice person. They'll focus on the outcome. If the outcome was bad, uh, they'll say that they had good intentions. Uh, if the... Like, well, if they can't really lie about their intentions, they'll, like, say, like... So a lot of people ask if they want to... If they can be brutally honest about something. Uh, and then you say yes, and then they'll be an asshole. And from them, uh, their, like, moral justification for being an asshole is, oh, I'm just trying to be honest. I'm trying to engage in this rules-based ethics where honesty is important. But really, often when people ask, can I be brutally honest about something, they're really more concerned with the brutality than the honesty. And they're just, like, being a jerk, and they're, like, trying to... Uh, put someone down uh, and but they just like are asking for permission first not universally but I'm just saying like this is an example uh, and so for them then like the moral justification is like oh being honest is important and I'm moral because I'm honest and so you're simultaneously being an asshole and then patting yourself on the back for being moral and the consequence is you're making someone feel bad right so if you're evaluating it based on the consequence and then the same person can turn around later you know, and then justify something morally based on the consequence of the thing. And so, like, people are really not consistent generally, but like, I don't have a solution. Like, and I don't, I'm not trying to argue that I'm not a member of the inconsistency. I try and be consistent, but like, what are you gonna do? Like the, the this is like kind of the way the human works. Also, another thing you could do is if someone is, uh, don't like you very much, you could side with their rev <laughs> and force them to reset, basically. Philippines is the most powerful dual culture start in the game, uh, since they nerfed Haiti. Well, I believe that. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. But... Yeah, the, I, I think that only using rules-based ethics is absurd. I think only using, uh, like, consequence-based ethics is absurd, and people tend to agree with that, and then they tend to go on and use whatever's most convenient. You know when to do a run with Brazil, what market should I join? On 1.6, I don't know what the rules are anymore. Uh, in general, Russia's the answer to that question, though. But maybe Austria... Austria might have more discrimination, and so they might have more of a push-out mechanic, even though they have a higher average SOL. We've been getting a ton of mass migrations from Austria, so I don't know what to what to make of this. I think in the terms of the pop, yeah, we're starting to pop off, you know what I mean? After being not very doing very well relative to the U.S. for a while. And the U.S. is starting to slow down, I imagine. No, they're still cranking. So, he doesn't accept Polish. Sag. That is Sag. Where will the Poles go? Where will the polls go if not to Haiti? We're still over 150. Holy shit. I guess we're just gonna go the full 12 hours. It do be like that sometimes. 
rip rush and migration strat at the moment. Yeah, I don't know what the, the like, we're trying to, we're trying to evaluate how migration is working and like how we feel about things. Look at, we're now just absolutely blasting in the space because we're getting the Poles and the Romanians and we've like now have a lot of these like cultural communities, which I think are allowing us to siphon out migrants that were, even when we don't have a mass migration. So here's mass migration attraction, right? Hmm. It's hard to tell. So I think that this edict might just be insanely strong. Um, Cause that's a hundred thousand a year. Like that's not a small thing. You know, and we're getting Croats and all this stuff. And it also goes to surrounding areas, but I think it's really mostly going just to the ones that we're actually able to make cultural communities. I think, did we make glass here? No, we didn't. We should make glass here, though. Romanian free stat. I was hoping to use it, but since you're on the opposite play, you're antagonistic. Ah. Didn't even know they have a new reverse sway for independence. They do, yeah. But here we're getting a lot of weekly migration, I guess from the Poles and the Romanians, but I don't know if it's a result of if we're able to siphon off when we don't have a mass migration or even when we are. Wow. Mass migration to Persia, too. Yeah, so it seems somewhat winner take all eh? I mean, they have a pretty decent game trajectory, minus when they lost the state. Did they revamp migration? They did. Now it revolves around this cultural communities mechanic, which we're still putting our head around. Um, you basically, you, your pops can't migrate unless they're going to a place where there is the cultural community. So we see like here, we have some Czechs and we have some Slovaks and stuff, but we can't pull Romanians here, for example, or Hungarians, but we can, hold, we can pull Czech people here. But it looks like we're not pulling any right now. So only during our mass migration would we be pulling them. People are leaving here. I'm guessing the Czech people are leaving. Um, and so this is sending immigrants to Transvaal in Alabama. So let's see if we take a look at Transvaal. So here's the thing. Who are exactly are they sending to Transvaal? Because Transvaal doesn't have an overlapping cultural community with Glacia, do they? Unless, Gla unless it's Glacian. Oh, it's Glacian. Okay, I take it all back. Uh, but yeah, super high on migration attraction. It seems very winner take all -y though, um, in terms of like how things are working. Where you're either getting mass migrations that are setting up cultural communities, but like the intra-market migration seems significantly nerfed. Like we are not pulling migrants from our subjects under conditions we would normally pull migrants with our subjects. Like for example, we would normally be pulling from Santiago here, right? Um, because they only have migration attraction for 31. We have really high migration attraction in a bunch of other areas. Um, like, in theory, normally we would be pulling from there. And it seems like you only get a migration pull if you have ridiculously high attraction and you get a cultural community or you have some intermarket migration. But, like... So it seems like kind of winner-take-all. And it seems like you're, like, fighting for these mass migration slots with countries like the USA, where the USA has a lot of them. Like, it, when we look at the USA's graph, the USA's pop graph looks nuts um, relative to, like, how they normally perform as an AI, and our pop graph looks relatively flat uh, relative to how we normally perform as a human. So... Yeah. Sure, we don't mind a trade agreement, to be honest. Oh, 
Let's actually see if we can get any more of those. Great Shing. We probably should be improving relations with them. And then... Do we rival anyone? We can rival Scandi. Let's do that. Dynam. Let's see if we can get them... Do they start off with closed borders? Defend the borders, probably. Closed borders, yep. As US, you got an average of one migra mass migration in years as the first five years. It's not. Yeah. Guess we can't cheese it now? I guess not. Well, it just... It, yeah, I mean, just seems more winner take all -y. It's harder to rearrange and reorganize pops. I don't know. I'm still thinking about it. It just seemed like it was categorically broken initially. And some people were saying it's just broken, and I I think it's not quite broken, but it's like, 